We have all listened to a Naruto fanfic at one point or another. Most are downright predictable, boring, or riddled with plot holes. But this isn't like any of them. Meet Yami Inuzuka, an utterly pragmatic and selfish, bordering evil, and C, who has been reborn in an alternate reality. Not one of plot armors and Marisu characters, but of war, death, and cruelty. One where only the strong survive. And our protagonist is certainly not planning to die again anytime soon. He plans on surviving, no matter the cost. Woe to whoever is foolish enough to stand in his way. Welcome. Guys, to what if a sociopath was reborn as in Yuzuka becoming immortal in Naruto? If you enjoy my content, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share, and leave a comment. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. I don't know where I am. I'm only sure of one thing. I got here after I died. I have been stuck in this black void. This. Help purgatory, or whatever it's damn called, for what seemed to be an eternity. I have lost track of time, and in this ocean of emptiness, there are only my thoughts. And my memories. Flashback, look out. Flashback and. I got run over by an asshole in a sports car. No truck come for me I guess. That was probably DUI, as I walk down a boulevard. I look around this bit of darkness. Then I think I see something moving. There are some hands made out of darkness. I don't know what they are, but they are freaky. So I move the opposite side, I don't look behind me. I just keep moving. I keep thinking. You've got to move. I've got to keep moving. I keep moving until I see a light. I run towards the light. After I reach it, I black out. Next time I wake up, I hear someone speaking. I can't move at all. Time skip. 42 seconds old. I woke up again, and this time I try to open my eyes, but I can't. I can only hear. It's a boy Masoon Sen then I can faintly hear another voice say. He is so cute you have your father's eyes and my hair. I assess the situation. I have no doubt about it. I have read fanfics to know what happened to me and where I am now. I immediately started crying. It's quite easy to cry like a baby. I don't know where or when I am, so I got to act like a baby in order not to be suspicious. If that happens and the best case scenario is that they brand me as a genius, or I could get the worst case scenario in which they brand me as baby possessed by a demon. Then I hear one of the feminine sounding voices say, I already have a name for you my baby. Your name is Yami. Time skip. Age 3 months after some time I confirm something. I am in a world from an anime I knew in my previous life. Naruto. It is confirmed when I look out the window and see the three heads carved up in the mountain. Time skip. Age 1 year old. I started crawling at 5 months old. Which is not weird, considering that chakra makes babies develop faster than in my previous world. I said my first word at 6 months old. It was mama. My mother cried tears of joy when I said it. I started walking at 8 months old. I now also know which clan I'm from. The Inuzuka clan. I was a little disappointed that I wasn't from the Echeha or Senju. That would have helped me in my plans a lot, but no use crying over spilled milk. I didn't really connect with my new mother, and I didn't really care about her, but I act as I do. I act like a kid, I play with other kids, if there is one thing I have is patience. I didn't act special, now that I have seen myself in the mirror. I have an average face with black pupilless eyes and brown slightly spiky hair. During this time I also tried to sense my chakra which I didn't seem normal chakra I don't know the quantity, because I don't have to compare it to. I also developed a new technique I don't know if you could call it that, but I tried to sense someone's chakra of course. I couldn't, but if I touch someone I can tell their chakra amount. I have tried this with my mother, I have the same amount as her maybe a little smaller. My birthday wasn't anything special. There were a couple of mom's friends over with some of their kids a little bit older than me and nothing else. When I tried my sensing technique on the kids I had higher chakra than them. Then I also discovered that I had a bigger than average chakra pool. At least for children my age. Since my mom who I think has a bigger chakra than me is a civilian. It's either that or she is a medic ninja. I don't think that's the case though. Given that at my birthday there were only civilians and just a couple of Inuzuka ninja. Literally only two. Time skip. Age 2 years old. I started talking more fluently. I also started training my chakra control with the leaf sticking exercise from a couple of leaves from a small backyard. I was sure nobody was watching me as I was doing the exercise in the bathroom. I can stick up to five leaves in my forehead. One day out of curiosity I asked my mother with a curious voice like any child. Mommy where is my daddy? Everyone else has a daddy. Don't I have a daddy? My mother gets an uncomfortable look on her face as she said. Well, honey, she's so easy to read. I hit a sensitive matter. And I got her nervous. I've got to tread carefully so as to not raise any eyebrows. I really don't want any dangerous situation to develop. But I also need to know about my father if he was also an Inuzuka. Or did he have some other heritage? That could help me advance in strength faster. My mother Misun sits down on the couch, makes a sad smile, and says with a broken voice and tears almost out of her eyes. Well, honey, 
about your father. He was a ninja of Konohagaka. I immediately put on the mask of an amazed child as I say. Wow that sounds cool. What's a ninja mommy? I acted like I didn't know. My knowledge mustn't be known to anyone else except me. She looked extremely uncomfortable and made no effort to hide it, taking a risk here. But let's see if it pays off. Sniff tears started appearing as she said in a sad voice. Well a ninja is a great hero who protects the village. She handled it better than I thought. She does love me good, it'll make it so much easier to move forward with my plans. A difficult relationship with her would suppose a much unwanted hindrance in the beginning. And for my plan the first years are critical, was daddy a strong hero? Sniff sniff, while trying to keep herself from crying in front of her child, Misun just says. He she is too sad to answer me. She still isn't giving me the information I want. And I'm growing tired of her sobbing, to be honest, using a faked enthusiasm. The kind used to fool children. She has a very fake smile on her face as she continues saying. Yes, he was strong. He was a Chunin, a middle-ranked ninja. His name was Yami and Yuzuka. I named you after him to honor his memory. Then she continued. He died protecting everyone in the village. You weren't born yet. When she said that it was hard to keep the disappointment out of my face. I was hoping for him to at least be a Jonin or something. But was a mere Chunin who probably died in a mission gone wrong well. I can't say I wasn't disappointed that I didn't have some type of hidden Achiha or Senja heritage. But I guess I'm still in a better situation than your average civilian not too much better. But better nonetheless in all honesty. I figured her for a single mother since day one, and knowing my father's fate is good. But I'm not taking her word for granted in this world, everyone keeps secrets, and I'm going to be prepared for all kinds of nasty surprises. Like a supposedly dead father appearing later on and messing up my plan probably not the case, but better safe than sorry. Well now I better start the next phase of my plan. Wow I also want to be a ninja. Like dad it sounds so cool. I need her to get used to the idea of me being a ninja, so she doesn't forbid me from going to the academy. Luckily for me, she's as malleable and docile as it gets my new mother just has an uncertain look on her face as she says. Look, I will allow you to enter the ninja academy, but only if you manage to impress me. Sounds good. I just smile excitedly on her and hug her very tightly full of fake love. Yay thanks mom, I'll make sure to impress you. One week later, I heard that the clan head just had a daughter. We all went to the birth party, clan heads celebrate when it's their firstborn. There I saw a lot of civilian in Yuzuka and ninja in Yuzuka with their Ninkin dogs. There were at least 500 people in the restaurant. A huge difference from my first birthday party, that had a maximum of 20 people. Then as this party got boring, 5 minutes in, I was trying to hear anything useful. I overheard the clan head talking with somebody who I could see was trying to flatter him. The guy was a professional ass kisser. The unimportant guy just said, What a cute baby girl you have there in Yuzuka-sama. I know she will become a great ninja. May I know her name? The clan head looked annoyed. Her name is Tsum. Now would you get out? Or do I have to tell my dogs to it? I don't want my daughter to be around beta males like you. The guy looked scared and went away, ah. Uh, I see that little baby was Tsum, the mother of Kiba. Well, that's quite interesting it seems like I have some time before the third and fourth ninja wars. I am not quite sure if the second ninja war has already started, and I don't remember if Tsum was born before or after it did. I don't have a photographic memory. So I can't remember everything that happened before the canon of Naruto well. It doesn't matter I will learn about which exact time I am in the academy. Time skip. Age 3 years old. I have advanced my training in chakra control. I can now stick leaves all over my face and my arms. My chakra pool has also increased. I can keep doing the leaf sticking exercise until I have around 5% of my chakra reserves. If it goes any lower I'll start feeling lightheaded. Now that I am 3 years old, I have started jogging. Chakra use really does miracles with one's physique. Time skip. Age 4 years old, now I have started doing push-ups and exercising in the monkey bars in the park. My agility and stamina have increased to something that should be impossible for a modern earth man. I tried doing the tree walking exercise on my bathroom walls, and I'm not ready for that yet. I have the right chakra control, but not enough body strength, also how does gravity even work on this world? I can at least stick my feet to the ground using the same principle. Kind of like walking if someone punches me I can stand in place and increase the damage the punch does to me well. I didn't say this technique was good. Time skip. Age 5 years old, I am finally able to do the tree walking exercise. I have also easily convinced my mother, as expected, to allow me to get into the academy. I accomplished that by telling her how much I wanted to become strong, so I could protect her and the village that I love. Of course, I could care less about her and the village. This place is one full of propaganda and fake love. Atachi killed his whole family just because of their so-called idea of the Kanoha village, being like a big family. So I don't care about anyone in the village. But I do care about getting stronger though a lot stronger in order to reach my dream to immortality. Time skip. Age 6 years old, now I can go to the ninja academy. I am quite proud of the progress I have made. I can now do water walking. My stamina, strength and agility have advanced to another level. My chakra now surpasses my mother's by miles. Not that impressive since she is just an average civilian who probably hasn't trained a day in her life. Now if I concentrate I can sense chakra 5 meters around me. The clan caretakers have also called me. Now that I am going to the academy, it is time for me to pick an Inkan. It's essentially a ninja dog that is to be my partner and guardian, in accordance with the Inuzuka clan tradition. When I went there I see that it was like some kind of stable. But for dogs with chakra then I was called by the ninja guardian.
observing it. When I get close to him I try to sense how much chakra he has. I can sense his flame which is my way of describing how I sense a chakra the flame is around his stomach, and we have around the same amount. I was a little surprised this guy should be a Chunin. These Ninkan are quite important to the clan then. Important enough to not let a Jenin guard them, but not quite important so as to assign a Jonin to guard them. Now I have a frame of reference to judge people's strength. Of course, not Jinchuriki they are an exception, but this will work with normal ninja. Then the Inyazuka guard just looks me with with an annoyed look on his face. Come on, why are you spacing out boy? Get inside already. I simply smile with a little embarrassment like a kid. Sorry. Sorry guard San. I just am too excited to be finally getting my Ninkan. The guard smiles in a condescending way with a nostalgic look on his eyes. I used to be like you. I was so excited that I could not sleep the night before I acted like I cared and laughed. Ha 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 I'm going in now thanks, mister I am not nervous at all now. When I go inside the dog training camp, I see so many puppies of all colors. Red, blue, white, black, orange etc. I start looking for a dog trying to find the strongest puppy. Then I have an idea and use my chakra sense, and try to sense the one with most chakra. After some time I sense one with strong chakra it was a white fur with red eyes. I went to pet him and he licked my hand. Well your name will be Shiro well. I was never good at naming, so I just named him after his fur color. Apparently, it is common for clan members to do the same, so I guess I'm not the only one that lacks the creativity for this. After going outside and registering my dog with the guard, I went back home. As I got close I see my small one-story house. Time skip. Academy entrance. I wake up in the morning. Go to the bathroom look in the mirror I look with black slightly spiky black hair like Kibo and black pupilless eyes, and formed with a baby fat face. I wear a hoodie and black ambu pants, and normal ninja sandals. I was accompanied by my mother to the academy which was quite far away from my home in the Inuzuka district. My mother looks quite sad to accompany me here, then she says, Don't worry honey, even if you decide that being a ninja is not for you. You must know that there are a lot of careers out there, and that I'll always be there to support you. I just smile excitedly and wave my arms around while saying, Don't worry mom I am going to be a strong ninja so I can protect you. She looks a little bit sad. Then she says, Of course honey, of course, you will. When I hear her say that I just wave say, Bye mom. Then I go to the yard where the other students are gathered by teacher. Then the third Hokage comes in a shunshun at the teacher's side. Since they have time for this bullshit that confirms the second ninja war hasn't started yet good. The Hiruzen then makes a speech about the will of fire, which certainly impressed the kids. Then we are assigned to different classrooms. I am in one of the clan and civilian kids with potential. We go to the classroom. I sit by the window and look around and don't see anyone notable from the show. Then the teacher comes in and says in a very non-enthusiast voice. Hello everybody. To begin, take a good look around you to your right and to your left everyone you see here is now your comrade in arms. They might save your life one day. And you might call them one day a brother or a sister in all but blood. He sees that not many of us got the message he was trying to convey. So he just sighed and said. Alright then, let's start the introduction. Stand in front of the class and state your name and dream. Then the teacher started roll calling, with each kid doing as instructed. There were only two other clan kids in the classroom. They were twins from the Saratobi clan, one male and one female. The buy is first and he says with a confident smile. Hi my name is Esatori Saratobi. And my dream is to be the Hokage. The children looked impressed like they saw the next Hokage or something. He was definitely the Naruto of this generation I sent his chakra and he only has an academy student amount. Well he will definitely die an early death, since he doesn't have the rage power, plot armor. That comes with having a nine-tailed beast inside of you. Also he really is a dumbass. He probably doesn't train and is arrogant just because the current Hokage is a Saratobi. Then his twin sister's turn came. She was a little more reserved than her brother, so she said with a normal voice. Hi all, my name is Assume Saratobi, and my dream is to help my brother achieve his. What a sheep she probably has no dream and just follows her brother around. Meh not my problem. She will also probably not go very far in life either. She doesn't have the drive for it. True she is still a kid, but if she doesn't have talent like Kakashi or Itachi, she will die an early death too. Then my turn comes. I put on a smile that I trained a lot during my first life to not worry my mother after father died. Then I said with a fake cheerful voice. Hi my name is Yami and Yazuka. My dream is to be a strong ninja, so that I can protect my mother and the village that I love. Yeah right my dream huh? As if I care about such trivialities after all the introductions it's time for the lunch break. I go out to the schoolyard. Then I see someone I'm able to identify as a character from the Anime. I smile brightly time to put the game face on. I go towards him and say with a gentle voice. Hello there, may I sit down next to you? Hello there, may I sit down next to you? I see him sitting on the ground while eating a box lunch. When he looked at me I saw his full appearance. He has blonde spiky hair, blue eyes and a slightly feminine face. He is Minato Namek as the future fourth Hokage. But right now he is just another orphan kid. When he sees me he has a friendly smile on his face as he says. Yeah sure, no problem. I just have a fake smile on my face as I say. Thank you I don't know anyone in this academy. And I could see you were alone and thought hey that guy looks friendly. So when he hears me say that Minato just smiled. Ha ha ha, thanks. I was actually waiting for my friends. Oh, there they are. I turn around and see three guys coming toward us. I immediately recognize them also. They are this generation's Ino Shikicho. The one with the long blonde hair that is tied in a ponytail. He also has blue eyes. Then he says, Sorry for making you wait Minato. Chowza got hungry again. 
and we had to buy him more food. The fat one who I assume is Choza Akimichi, the father of Chaoji. He has a mouthful of chips as he says. Shoei, sorry. Munch munch just then Shiro smelled food and popped his head out of my hoodie and barked towards Chaoza. Bark Chaoza sees this and smiles towards towards Shiro. Then with a kind voice he says to my Ninkin, Hey there little guy, are you hungry? Chaoza gives him some chips which the dog takes. I also take this as my moment to introduce myself. Hi my name is Yami Inuzuka and this is my Ninkin Shiro. Inuchi is the first one to respond as he says. Pleased to meet you Yami-san, my name is Inuchi Yamanaka. Then the one with black hair and sleepy looking eyes who I assume to be Shikaku says. Yo, I'm Shikaku Nara and the guy eating's Chaoza Akamichi. He confirmed my guess. Then Chaoza just waves a little as he said. Hello, Minato smiles at this and says. And my name is Minato Namikas. As soon as he said that I decided I'd better use my skills of small talk. So which class are you guys from? Minato answered this by saying. We are second year we're from two a class. We talked about lessons, dreams, and aspirations until the bell rang. As we were talking I checked the chakra levels they were. Shikaku Nara High Academy Level Chakra and Noichi Yamanaka High Academy Level Chakra Chaoza Akamichi Low Genin Level Chakra. Then there was Minato he has High Genin Chakra. That surprised me a little bit because even though that is quite far from the chakra level of Hokage Minato, it is still surprising for his age. It means that he was born with Academy Level Chakra as an orphan. Now that is what I call lucky and talent. He is not like me. A reincarnated person who trained chakra since he was 2 years old. What a talented guy. He probably trains a lot physically to grow his chakra like that without being a jinchuriki or knowing any special chakra exercises. When I went home that day my mom said to me that a ninja from the Inuzuka clan has summoned me to the Inuzuka clan training grounds. After I ate some food, I went to the training ground. There I met the guy who guarded the Ninkan. He was tanned, had a goatee and a Kanoha headband in his forehead that covers his hair. Then he said, Hey there little pup. I just looked at him and said, Yo, hey there guard San. She just looks at me with a nonchalant face as he says, My name is Gaki you little squirt. I act like I didn't listen to him as I say. So why? Why did you call me here guard San? Immediately Veins appears in his forehead as he angrily screams. My name is Gaku Brat then when he noticed what he did he sighed just sighed and calmed down. Then he continued saying with a calmer tone this time. Anyway, I was ordered to teach you the Inuzuka clan to Jutsu and Ninjutsu. You will come here every day after the academy. And we will train the clan techniques until you get them right. I just looked at him with my normal face as I said. Oh okay when do I start? He thinks for a little then said. Well first we will have to get your body strength up to snuff as well as your agility and stamina. Begin by running around the training field for as long as you can and at your top speed. I just nod at this. I also look at my Ninkan and say, Okay Shiro, run along with me. So I started running at max speed. And I ran and ran and ran for about 5 hours I ran. Then, bam I fell face down on the ground. Shiro fell only after 3 hours. Gaku just looks at me with an impressed look on his face while saying, You know I was expecting you to run at max speed for at most an hour turns out you are ready for the official training tomorrow. You don't need to train your body anymore. And you'll start with the techniques right away. Your physical stats are already at genin level. Then I decide to ask him with. We'll still do normal body training right? Gaku just shrugged and said nonchalantly. Not with me. You'll have to do it by yourself. I am only here to teach you the clan techniques. He turned around and started walking away. Anyway see you tomorrow. Oh and don't forget to bring your Ninkan for tomorrow's training. He then used Shunchen and went away. After resting for a bit I went home and immediately slept like a lord. I was just simply too tired. Time skip. Three weeks later. I have learned a lot of Tejutsu and the Inuzuka Ninjutsu. Four-legged technique and its variants. Also every day at lunch break. I would hang out with Minato and the Ino Shikicho trio. I heard a lot of things from Shikaku, since his father is the head of intelligence. He told me that Kanoha is attacking a village called the Dragonfly Village. I realize the situation around the world is tense. I am pretty sure that the second ninja war is going to start soon. Well, in any case, today is Tejutsu sparring class in the academy, time skip. Sparring class, the teacher just said with his usual nonchalant voice. Well then, class today as you know we are going to have a sparing class. I have explained to you the basics of Tejutsu in these three weeks. So no need to be afraid I will match you fairly, okay? He explained the rules of a spa which were No ninjutsu or jinjutsu, only tojutsu. When one of us is down or out of the circle we lose. The matches begin and civilians got matched between them except assume since she fought against another civilian girl and she won easily i was paired against asutori saratobi he went into the circle as if he had won already asutori had a smug look on his g face as he said you don't have to worry yami i will not fight you at my full power as a saratobi we are after all comrades I just keep quiet and don't say anything. Though in my mind I am extremely angry. This trash has the guts to brag like that when he only has that amount of microscopic power okay breath in and out. No need to get angry. What if this was the ninja war? I must always stay calm this could have been a fatal mistake. Remember, you are not an anime protagonist you don't get any stronger by being angry no nakama power ups. No plot armor anger only dulls your senses and makes you an easy target. Then I put Shiro on the ground. Okay, now I'm ready. The teacher just said. Okay guys, do the unison sign. I get into the ring do the unison sign with Asutori. 
auditory, and then the teacher says, begin. As soon as the teacher says that, I strengthen my leg muscles with chakra. I run towards Asitori my speed jumps to Genin level, but to him and looked like a blur. I am in front of him before he can even blink. I kick forward and with the leg I had on the ground, I cancel the strengthening on it, and concentrate the chakra on the ground to make me stick to it. I then kick forward with all my strength, and even twist my leg at the point of impact to do extra damage. I can see his eyes widen he doesn't have time to block, so I kicked him directly in the stomach, he spits some blood and flies out of the circle, crashing on the ground 20 meters away needless to say. All of the students are shocked. His sister launches herself toward me, looking like she's ready to kill me at a moment's notice. The teacher stops her with a firm hand in her shoulder and brings her down to one knee. He then goes to the side of Asutori, suddenly shunctions away with him and then comes back alone. All within seconds, he looks at me with a bit of anger and slight killing intent, not enough to terrify the normal academy student me but just enough to make him uncomfortable and nervous. Though I don't even feel uncomfortable at all, the teacher then said with a slight judgmental tone in his voice, Why did you use so much power against Asatori? Well, time to play innocent I think. I make a shocked and sad face as I say with an uncertain voice. Sorry sensei, I didn't mean to use so much strength against him. I have never sparred against someone before and I just used all of my strength I am so sorry I didn't mean for this to happen. When the teacher hears this he lightens up a bit and his killing intent goes away completely as he says. I understand, but don't ever use this much strength against a fellow classmate in the future am I understood. I immediately nod and say with a resolute voice. Hi sensei, time skip. Age 7 years old, the second great ninja war has finally started. I am not planning to graduate for at least another year until I'm ready, because I know I will be going into war as soon as I graduate. During this year I have trained my body to the ground, and have learned most Inuzuka techniques. I've already mastered the three academy jutsus, especially the replacement jutsu I trained with it until I could do it without any hand seals after all. It is a life-saving jutsu I can now do a physical transformation jutsu too, not just the illusion one. Asutori was stuck at the hospital for about a week after my accidental use of excessive force, although, he keeps challenging me at every sparring class, which is once a month. He hasn't won even once. I'm beginning to think I've left him with some kind of brain damage. Or maybe he's just stupid, Memonato has graduated early at 8 years old. His teacher was Jiraiya of course. Now I'm having lunch only with the Ino Shikicho trio, as they haven't graduated yet. Time skip. Age 8 years old, I am at last graduating. Even though there is a war going on after all, if I can't survive this war, where the strongest ninja is a cage level shinobi how will I ever survive the fourth ninja war, where cage level ninjas are just cannon fodder. I have also been studying a little on medical jutsus, now that I have some free time from the Inuzuka techniques, since I've mastered them all. Even though I still can't use the medical palm technique, I am training my chakra control with it. When I got into my classroom I sat down and waited for the other students to come. As the classroom filled up, I was surprised to see two familiar people. Then the teacher came after the last kids. After the written and practical tests, those who failed were asked to leave the classroom. Only a couple of poor civilian kids failed. The teacher starts with his graduation speech. Okay students, today you have graduated from the academy. It's have been an honor to form you into the next generation of shinobi that shall protect our beloved Kanoha and its citizens. And now the moment all you have been waiting for, it's time to call the team placements. Team 1, Team 3. Yami and Yuzuka assume Saratobi and Asatori Saratobi. I was afraid of this result, but it doesn't come as a surprise either guess that'll have to do for now. Asatori has only been concentrating on training and has practically abandoned his studies. He only had finally beating me on his petty mind, so his written test results were probably bad. The sister is just a sheep, so no comment there the teacher continued. Team 3, your Jonin sensei will be the teacher says. Your team's Jonin sensei will be Tsunade Senju. She said for you guys to meet her at the hospital. When we hear that we just go forward, get our headbands. As me and my team leave the classroom, it got awkward. Even though this is unfortunate I need these guys at least not to kill me in my sleep after all it is war. Quite an easy way to kill somebody without blame. You could just say that an enemy ninja sneak attacked, and no one would really even investigate it too deeply. After all, they don't have the time to do that. They have a war to fight. So while thinking for a while, I come up with an idea on how to handle this situation. Then with a confident but also serious voice, I say, I am glad to at least have you guys on my team. Asutori looked scared of me, even though he hides behind a mask of confidence he was probably traumatized from a first fight. But Asume was the one who responded with a snark on her voice. What's that supposed to mean? Ah, so the sheep finally got some backbone, probably from me beating her brother. I just answer to her, you guys are better than all those guys in the room put together. Even though I beat Asutori in every Tejutsu match, he still improves by leaps and bounds. Well, that is a lie. In all these years his Tejutsu is only about high genin and chakra amount average genin, and his Jinjutsu is probably non-existent. But about Jinjutsu even I only know some useless ones that were taught in the academy. Light changed the color of a flower. The Inuzuka do not really have any Jinjutsu techniques. The academy library does not have any Jinjutsu or Ninjutsu only medical techniques, poison techniques, the art of flower arranging, and finally seduction knowledge. As about Asume, she only has low level genin Tejutsu and medium genin chakra amount. 
I am not quite sure about their ninjutsu arsenal, but they might know some fire style ninjutsu. When Asutori hears me say that he just scratched the back of his head as he with an uncertain voice said, Ah, uh, thanks. Even though he looks unsure, I can tell he is happy to get a compliment like every kid. But I still continue with the compliments. And assume you are the strongest Kinoichi in the classroom that excels at everything she does. She just nods. But I notice that she too was a little happy at my compliments. Then I talk about how our teacher will be. If she is a medical ninja or is sick and staying in the hospital and so on. The Sanin are not famously known yet at this time. Then I see a ninja about 20 years old waiting at the front of the hospital. When he sees us he said with a nervous voice. Hey, excuse me are you team 3? I walk in front of my team to subconsciously make them of me as their leader. I smile and answer. Yes, we are sir. He seems somewhat relieved as he says. Oh, okay can you follow me I will escort you to Tsunade Sama. We all nod and follow him. I analyze him a bit. He has Gen and Chakra mount. He does not have a team. And is doing chore missions. He is not a medic min. Because they have too much value in war to be used as a chore boy. He is probably a genin from the genin core. Then we reach a door white door in the third floor. The door had a simple only personal allowed sign on it. Then our little tour guide open it. Inside there is a simple wooden table. One simple wooden chair had two windows. A bookshelf with medical knowledge. And there she is. Sitting in the chair reading some medical reports probably. I notice that she has the necklace. So her brother is dead. But damn probably not. She probably only just has met him. Then she looks up and then throws a small scroll to the genin chore boy while saying. You finished your mission ninja you can retrieve your pay in the mission building. The genin just nods and goes away while closes the door. Sunade interlocks her fingers and looks at us. She released a sigh and said. Okay now. I don't have a lot of time. So go say your names. Likes dislikes and dreams. Asutori is the first to talk. My name is Asutori Saratobi. I like my sister and barbeck meat. I dislike smoke from cigars. And my dream is to become Hokage. Then he looks at me and said. But first I have to surpass a certain someone. Sunade looks at him with frowned eyebrows and simply says. Dumb. Asutori immediately has a frown on his face. And looks like he wants to say something. But is stopped by his sister when she stepped on his foot. Then his sister continued. My name is Asum Saratobi. I like my brother in tea ceremonies. I dislike a certain someone in cigarette smoke. And my dream is to help my brother accomplish his dream. Sunade looks unimpressed. And she just waved her hand and said. Next. When it came my turn I just smiled slightly and with a soft voice I said. My name is Yami Inuzuka. I like my Ninkin Shiro and my clan and mother. I dislike arrogant people. And my dream is to become a strong ninja to protect Kanoha and those I love. Well, a good ninja would not give any important information or a weakness. I didn't give neither because I don't really care about the family I have here in this world or Kanoha. I already had a family in my last world that I loved, so why should I love some other family and abandon my first one? Also Kanoha is just a place where killers gather together so I could care less about it. The only good thing about Kanoha is that it will help me advance. Then Tsunade looks at me and says, Interesting. She probably sensed my chakra. I don't know if she can tell my body's strength by just looking at it by her large medical knowledge and experience. I am never underestimating a soon to be Sanin. She just continued saying, Well tomorrow we will hold the real Genin test. We will see if you are able to pass or not. Assume is the first to speak with a frown on her face. We already did the genin test. Sune just looks at her and impress while saying, Yes you did, but not the real genin test to see whether you go back to the academy. Go to genin core or get a genin teacher. Now scram. Then as we are about to leave, Sune says, Oh, I almost forgot. When she says that we turn around and throws three small square papers at us, she just says, These are chakra papers they test your chakra affinity, which helps you learn ninjutsu faster and spend less chakra on it for that element. This is my gift to you even if you go to the genin core. She then explains what each element does by demonstrating the usage of chakra paper. The paper suddenly wrinkles in her hands. Then we go outside, and I say goodbye to my teammates, and while walking, I start thinking that this piece of paper will determine my future path. I then put the paper in my hand and pass my chakra into it. Then the paper dot I open my hands to see that the paper has a cut in it. Sigh so, my chakra affinity is wind. To be honest, I am a little disappointed. I was hoping to have lightning affinity or two other affinities. However, I guess there is a light at the end of the tunnel I do not have water affinity. I mean, where are you going to find any good water ninjutsu on the land of fire? True the second Hokage was good at water ninjutsu. But he was also the type of genius who figured out how to bring the dead back to life. So I don't think I would find myself a teacher. And neither would I have the ability to reach a higher level in water style. Like the second Hokage did. Anyway I will have to prepare for tomorrow and think of a plan. I am sure what the test is going to be. So I will plan for it. If it is not the bell test. I will still prepare to the best of my ability. Sune POV. As I see the kids go out of the door. I think about their answers. The twins have straight black hair. The one that has short hair is the guy. And the one with long hair is the girl. They both have brown eyes and oval faces. The Saratobi boy? He is a dreamer and not skilled enough to have that kind of dream just like Nawaki. As I think of my brother who died in a mission before the war, I almost cry. Sigh the Saratobi girl she is average and only has dreams of helping her brother. I see a little hate inside the girl the hate was directed at the Inuzuka kid. That might be her downfall in the war and in the genin test tomorrow. Then there is the Inuzuka kid. The kid is not a Jinchuriki. But to have the chakra of an average jonin and the control of a low-level jonin combined with the stability of his chakra 
That kid is a monster even his body is strong. But he doesn't have the experience to capitalize on his strength. His tell is by the way he walks, it just reeks of inexperience. Most Chunin level and higher ninja have a certain way of walking. This is so Medic Nin can't estimate their body strength. In ninja battles, it is best to not give away even the smallest amount of information. Anyway, his body strength is around Chunin level. That kid really is something even his wolf puppy is high genin level. I only took this team in favor of Saratobi Dash Sensei. Also, I am the only one of his students who hasn't had a genin team yet. But now it looks like it will be interesting having genin students. Well, I should get going now. I don't want to keep my new friend Dan waiting. Time skip tomorrow, Sumid POV me and Dan. Had a nice date yesterday. I think as I get up, I wake up, shower, wear my Jonin uniform and go to the hospital, and notify the nurses there to tell my Jenins to tell them to go to training ground 3. Anyway, as I wait for those kids to show up, I hide in my surroundings. This is to see if they have any spatial awareness. However, I keep my chakra signals up, so I'm not completely hidden. I see the Saratobi kids coming 30 minutes before the appointed time, and the Inyazuka coming 5 minutes before the appointed time. Then I hear them talking. Assume is the first that I hear just say, Hey you are late, what if the teacher was here you would have failed. Yami had a completely uninterested look on his face as he said, A black cat crossed my path, so I had to take the scenic route, and I am still 5 minutes earlier than the appointed time. Plus, if the teacher had a problem with it, she would have already told me. He then looks in my direction and says, Right, Tsunade Sensei. Well, the Inuzuka are not a tracking clan for nothing. Fwash, I just shunchin in front of them. I clasp my hands and say, All right then, Jenins, I will explain the test. See these two bells, the one to get one before lunch passes. That means that one of you or all of you will have to go back to the academy, or will have to join the Jenin Corps. Now begin. The two Saratobi go into hiding. The Inuzuka still has not moved from his place. I just ask him with a questioning look on my face. What are you waiting for? He looks at me and puts the puppy down. Then Yami nods at the dog. After looking at me, he just says with a certain glimmer in his eyes. I want to see for myself the distance between us. Ash general POV four-legged technique. Yami's eyes become slits, his fingernails become claw-like, and his cannonous teeth lengthen. This guy is quite arrogant, thinks Tsunade. He rushes towards her on all fours at about low Jonin speed. She sees this and scoffs as he is about an arm's length away from her. She punches him in the stomach, and bam, he crashes in a tree. That should teach him a lesson. Ash thought Tsunade when she looks at the tree, there is only a log. Substitution thinks Tsunade. Then she hears a wing cutting sound and sees Kunais and Shuriken being thrown at her from a tree. She dodges them all, and then she sees the one who threw them is the Inuzuka kid. He runs at her in all fours, and as he is about an arm length away, reflexively she gets ready to counter with a strong punch. However, suddenly she feels something behind her, and so she kicks it straight in the stomach. It blocks with one hand, and it jumps back to lessen the impact. Then the Yami in front of her jumps back also, and transforms into a Ninkan. Tsune then looks behind her and sees the Inuzuka kid with his swollen left arm. Then with a criticizing voice she says to Yami, That was quite reckless of you. He then looks at me and points two fingers in my direction, with two bells attached to two chakra strings from each finger. Yes, but it was worth it. He had the Ninkan act as him and throw projectiles at me, and he transformed into a kunai and waited for the right moment. What a brilliant mind. But let's see your character now. Thought Tsune as she said, Well now you've got two bells. One for yourself and one for one of them, choose which one you want to pass you have time until lunch. Let's see now will you choose one of them or none of them, thought Tsunade. She then looks at a tree and says, you guys can come out now. The twins jump down from the tree. They both have shocked and worried faces. They couldn't even see the fight clearly, and it all ended in around 5 seconds. They both have kunai in their hands and are looking at the Inuzuka kid. They're probably going to fight him for the bells. So what a disappointment. Then I look at the kid. He looks at the bells and throws the bells at the Saratobi twins and says dot quote I don't want to see us, a team fight, you guys can pass. I'll just wait another year. This shocked me. What a selfless kid. Is this the will of fire that Sensei always talks about? What thinks Tsunade? After a second Tsunade gets over her shock and says, well then you guys all pass, and from now on you are all ninja of Kanova. Then Tsunade looks at them, and she went to heal Yami's arm when she gets close to him. She just whispers to the kid, You will make a great ninja one day. Then after healing Yami, Tsunade with a calm voice just says, We will meet here tomorrow to start the training. So today you can all go home and rest. Yami, MC, POV. When I got home I kept looking at my left hand. She barely touched my hand and it was still swollen. If I had gotten hit by that kick directly I would have died. Thank god she held back against me, even though that last kick should be at her full power. And this is the monster that Madara toyed with. I had it all planed, but not quite the last part it didn't go as planed. The plan was I would have gotten the bells with the chakra strings, and I would have jumped back immediately not harmed at all. While Shiro distracted her, I also bought some explosive tags, I am glad I didn't have to go for plan C well at least I put on a good act in front of them. The twins at least won't kill me in my sleep now. I just went home took a shower and went to sleep to tired. Time skipped tomorrow. I got up went to wear my clothes and took my ninkin and we ate a full breakfast. And we went out to the training ground. The siblings are here again early. 
I wait in a tree until it is exactly the meeting time. I walk as if I just arrived. Assume just like yesterday she berated me. Hey you are late. I just shrugged my shoulders. I saw an old man on the road and I had to help him. Plus I'm not late I'm exactly on time. She just pouts and turns her head away. Honestly kids these days then I start talking what sensei is going to teach us today. And she lightens up and we start talking with Asutori. Exaggerating the things that she might teach us today. After 3 minutes Tsunade shows up. Then immediately she says. Today is the only day that I am able to take you directly I am busy in the hospital. So for a week you will be taught by my clone after that we are going to the land of rivers to the front lines against the village hidden in the sand. Then Asutori said something extremely dumb. Why are we going to the land of rivers if we are going to fight the sand village? Tsunade then looked at him as if he was dumb. Why would a great village fight in their own lands, when they could fight in the land of a minor village in the middle of them? It's not like a minor village is going to hold two great villages at bay. Sai she just sighed with a little disappointment from Asutori after that she just continued saying. Well anyway first I will get you a scroll from the library of a jutsu of C rank from your elemental affinity. So tell me your chakra nature and I will get a jutsu that you know about. Immediately I say. Wine style great breakthrough. Asurori is next. Fire style great fireball. Assume is last. Fire style phoenix flower. Sun nods then does a hand sign. And a shadow clone pops up. Go get me the jutsu scrolls from the Chunin library. The clone nods and shunchens away. Tsunade looks back at us and says. Okay then let's start with chakra control Asurori. Assume you come with me to the pond. Yami you start with chakra strings. Try to make them longer. Make more of them. And try to lift heavier things with them. I keep doing that for about 30 minutes. Dot I can make my two strings about 3 inches longer. Tsunade's clone comes back gives me my scroll. And goes to give the twins their scrolls. Then I think it is Tsunade's clone comes back. Then she says. Well then let's start I will supervise your projects. I just look at her with a calm face. And I just calmly say to her. Actually sensei can we talk about medical ninjutsu I feel that this is more beneficial for me. She looks at me and founds why. Do you think you can do the chakra control even alone? I put my innocent face on and say. No, no, no. I just want to know more medical jutsu. What if someone important to me gets hurt? By important I mean me what if I get hurt in the middle of a battle? I have another plan how to train chakra control fast in a week. Tsunade's clone just narrows her eyes at me and says. Okay, I hope you don't regret this later. We then talk about medical knowledge and the theoretical knowledge of the mystical palm technique and chakra scapel technique. How to detoxify poison etc. We train about 9 hours and then the twins who looked exhausted and the real Tsunade comes back. And she dispels the clone. Her eyes widen a bit and then she says. Come on I am going to treat you all to some food as today I have a free day. As we are walking I ask the twins. So how was your progress today guys? Asutori is first to answer. Well as soon was able to do it. But I always lose concentration when I walk too deep. This is just like the tree walking exercise that our clan taught us assume did it first. I smile and say. Don't worry too much I know you will be able to do it. He looks at me surprised then he then smiles and rubs the back of his head. Yeah you're right. I shouldn't worry about things like this. I am going to be hokage after all. Then we have some small talk and make jokes at each other. At the corner of my eye I see Tsuned looking at us and smiling. Then we arrive at the restaurant that is one of the expensive ones around. I guess Tsuned hasn't wasted all her money and her inheritance by gambling yet. Come on inside now. This restaurant has my favorite sake. Well she already has her drunken habit. We go inside in a private opening with a table for four. Sunda orders sake and chicken breast. I and assume order sushi she also orders tea with it. Asutori orders barbecue meat. And Shiro got some steak and dog food. We wait a little bit for a food to come. We genins make some small talk about our favorite foods our least favorite and at one time even Tsune joins in and says that her least favorite food is liver sashimi. She looked happy. Then now that she relaxed it is time to advance my little plan and ask her something. Hey Tsune sensei what was that clone technique that you used? Tsune just looks at me with a casual look as she says. Oh that is the shadow clone technique. Immediately I take this opportunity and out of curiosity I ask. Can you teach it to me? She then looks at me and seems to think for a little and said. Sure but don't overuse it don't make more than 8 clones. Or you will fall into chakra exhaustion. By the way no you two cannot use it. You don't have the chakra. She then explains to me the working of the shadow clone. She says that when the shadow clone is used, it takes 50% of the chakra. But if the clone pops itself, it returns some of the chakra. How much it returns, it depends on how long it's been active, or if it has unsaid any jutsu. If the clone is destroyed, it does not return any chakra. She showed me the hand signs. She then told me to be careful with my training. After we ate, she then invited us all to a bathhouse to relax. As we were walking to the bathhouse, I thought, I am not sure if she intentionally left out the returning memory or not. But from what she says that every time I use the shadow clone technique, it takes 50% of my chakra. So if I create 5 at once, each will take about 10% of my chakra. If I try to create 20 clones and my 50% is not enough to make them. So they will take from my other 50%. And I will suffer extreme chakra exhaustion. And might even cripple myself by halving my original chakra amount. Ah, I wish I had a giant fox in my belly to not worry about that. As we arrived in the bathhouse, I got to the men's changing room and got rid of all my clothes. And only had a towel around my waist take Shiro and go to the men's side. Asutori also comes in also with a towel around his waist. After some time we hear the girls get in their own side, which is separated by a bamboo wall. 
Then Asadori says to me, Hey, push me up the wall, I wanna get a peek. The idiot probably doesn't think walking up the wall with Chakra, well anyway it does sound fun. But I don't want to get punched by Tsunade, so I will find another way of entertainment. I look at him like he is trash and say, You want to peek at your own sister you creep. Immediately he gained a panicked look and said, What? No, I meant peek at Tsunade. Boom the wall crashes down, and an angry Tsunade comes through with only a towel around her, and punches him repeatedly. I only enjoy the view for a couple of seconds before making a stealthy tactical retreat. Then I go home and learn the shadow clone Jutsu and go to sleep. Time skip, one week later. This week I trained to the maximum about 16 hours a day plus my shadow clones. I made five each day, and they had their own tasks. Clone 1 trained the great breakthrough jutsu until I could do it without hand signs I couldn't do it. But I got it from five hand signs to three. Clone 2 he trained the shunshin technique that I got from the Genin library. I mastered it by Tsunade's guidance comma get it to use only used for short distance travel. But I did get an idea for jutsu which I will try when I have time. Clone 3 this one trained chakra strings it was able to get one for each finger to 2 METERS 6 5 and it got my chakra control up. Clone 4 learned medical ninjutsu from Tsunade's clone, and was able to use the mystical palms to heal small cuts and scrapes. Clone 5 trained my ninkin to low tune and level. I always dispel them in the evening one by one. And finally I was doing the wall walking while holding a boulder bigger than me up a mountain which increased all my aspects. My training speed was monstrous with shadow clones. As for my teammates, Asatori now is low tuned into Jutsu, High Gen and Chakra, and learned both the Fireball and Phoenix Flower Jutsu and Water Walking. Assume also has the same stats as her brother except to Jutsu is High Gen in, and Chakra Control is better than his, she also learned both Fire Jutsus. They didn't train even as half as hard as me, and I had Shadow Clones, so I left an unsurpassable distance bet on us. Then Tsune came to congratulate us in a well spent training week, and told us stop quote you have all come very far during this week. She took a glance at me, then continued, but you must pass one last trial before going to the front lines of the war. After Tsune said that she told us to follow her, we followed her and we went towards the Tea and I department building. We go there the Anbu in front nods towards Tsune, and opens the door we go in and take the stairs and go down. When we go to the last level we hear screaming from Dot The prisoners all around us. Won't help us. Please get us out. I already told you everything please let me go. And other stuff some were angry, some sad, some were begging. The twins get pale faced. Even I am not used to this. But I just keep thinking about the trial that Tsunade sensei told us I think I know what it is going to be. Tsunade leads us toward a cell there seemed to be three people with tied and broken limbs, even their mouths were covered they had tears in their eyes. Tsunade looks at them with a cooled face and says, We would have done a bandit extermination, but we are at war, so we can't exactly waste a ninja like that. These guys were Jenin from the Cloud Village. They were spies in a craven, and they were caught. She gives each one of us a kunai and simply says, Kill them. Strangely there was no emotion in her voice like usual. Her voice was cold and without love or anger in it. The twins were frozen in shock with the kunai in their hands. But I did it and went towards one of them and sliced the guy's throat with a swamp of the kunai, efficient and without pain. I looked at his face. I wasn't even seeing him clearly. What I saw was myself with the cutthroat dot no. No way am I letting myself die. My view clears again, and I see him dead lying there lifeless. I see my reflection in his eyes, and look at my own cold face and black Sal's eyes. Then Tornay Dash Sensei looks at me and says, You can go home if you want. But don't forget tomorrow we will go to the front line meet us at the village gate at 7 o'clock. Her voice wasn't proud or anything like that. She simply stated a fact. Okay? That was my answer to her. I don't directly go home I go to the weapon shops, and they let me buy exclusive ninja weapons, when they see my headband. I spend almost all my money and savings in buying different weapons like paper bombs, comma, more kunai, comma, more shuriken, a gas mask, two storage scrolls, one of them for food and basic medical stuff, just to be safe, and the other one full of extra weapons. I go home and greet my mother, talk with her a bit and go to sleep. Time skip tomorrow, when I wake up I go to the bathroom, take a shower, eat breakfast. My mother looks worried for me. She is probably afraid that I will die in the wall. I go outside, give mother a hug and start walking out of my house. She waves at me with tears in her eyes. I also wave back and start going toward the gate. I arrive there about 5 minutes earlier, and see that the twins are already there with black rings under their eyes, like they didn't sleep at all last night, they don't even say anything to me. We wait for Tsuned to show up. He shows up at the right time she nods at us, and we start going towards the land of rivers. Around the middle of the way I start making conversation with my teammates and discussing formations when we fight enemies to lighten the mood. Then Shiro who is in the hood of my hoodie, barks to me that is a sign that he smells enemies nearby. By the way the other signs are a lick, which means that we are being followed or a lot of licks. Which means that we are surrounded. I tell Tsunade Sensei this, and she says, You guys fight them to test your teamwork. If there is any Jonin I will take care of them. We nod and make ready and ambush the plan is after they pass by us me and Asutori. Make a combination jutsu. As I see them I sense them there are four of them with Sand Village headband probably scouts. And they have Chunin Chakra. But I will still be ready about any surprise. I give Shiro a thumbs up to signal him to look out for any sneak attacks behind me. After all I could still die by a kunai at the back of my skull. I still don't have enough experience or instinct to know that about a kunai behind my back. If he sees one I will know Inuzukas have that kind of special connection with their Ninkin. As they pass us I get out of my hiding place in a tree. And aim my jutsu on their running figures. Wine style great breakthrough. One of them senses something and turns around dot earth. Style earth wall he has 
has been in war before and has greater experience in battles than me. He blocks my jutsu I give a side glance to Asitori he was supposed to do a fireball jutsu. But he seems frozen and just looks at his hands. Damn I Jess I will have to do it alone. They have one puppeteer, one guy with a wind fan, and two ninjas one of them used the earth jutsu with now kunais in their hands. Well then time to get serious. I get in the ground in all fours, Shiro jumps in my back in Yuzuka style rare beast transformation. Double headed wolf we transform in a giant two headed beast. I then on top of it use four legged technique my claws get longer and my fangs more defined. And it raised my agility high even though I have a big body. The four tune and look at me surprised. Then I use some chakra to strengthen my body and suddenly disappear from their view and appear behind them behind the ninja with the fan, and swipe my claws at him, and one shot him, then the two ninjutsu guys use earth style earth gun at me. I don't even attempt to block I just simply doge use a substitution jutsu with a giant log, and appear bang them swipe at the pubic guy, kill him and then, bite at the two other ninjas who use sand substitution, and both do a earth style earth wall, and try to trap me inside an earth dome. Ah this is the weakness of a big body against one on one, it is an ultimate technique, but in group fights, it becomes a burden. The ninjas look tired I cancel my jutsu, and then immediately me and Shiro do the wolf fang technique, we spin in high speeds towards them, and I injure my target heavily, but the other guy dodges Shiro's attack. I immediately use four-legged technique again to get Bej in the guy, and with a kunai stab it behind his skull. He falls dead on the ground. I am still on guard. I feel something behind me and immediately swing my kunai behind me, then someone catches my hand by the wrist. Relax Yami. Hero 03. I slump my shoulders and breathe a heavy sigh. That is our code to not have somebody impersonate us with a transformation. I look at my chakra and see I have about 80% left. The substitution took about 10%, great breakthrough about 6%, and the others about 4%. The Inuzuka techniques are not really chakra intensive after all, a Jenin Kiba was able to use them. Though I look back at the stupid decisions that I made back there and think that if I was more clear-headed, I could have made better decisions. If I used my Tajutsu and Ninjutsu correctly, I could have taken them out with the half the chakra I used. Tsunade looks at me and says, you did well on your first death fight, so don't beat yourself over the mistakes you made you would have normally had to fight against bandits for your first death fight. But you went way and beyond against Fortunin. Then Tsunade looks at the twins and goes to them and slaps both of them. Knock IT out you too. You need to get the your head on reality your teammate could have died because of you. If you do this again, say to your carers as ninja goodbye. Then we keep going towards the land of rivers nobody says anything. We stop for the night and go to sleep Tsune takes the first watch. And I take the second we don't let the twins stay watch. Because they are sleep deprived and useless at the job. After I wake up the twins, they apologize to me with tears in their eyes. And me putting on a smiling face and accept the apology. Even though in the inside I held myself back from killing them if that was the battlefield I wouldn't be alive back out of their incompetence. Then the rest of the journey is normal without disturbance. We arrive at the Kanoha camp and I see hundred tents and ninja laying around, and medical ninjas and doctors tending to them. Then I see the camp leader Sakumo come and talk to Sensei. Tsunade, I'm glad you arrived safely. We need you to help us. That old hag Chiyo is making new poisons. Also the HP Jinchuriki has joined the battlefield I can hold him back easily, but I can never kill him back out of that Chiyo. There are also rumors from our spies that the third Kazakuch together with the Bizo are holding the borders against the stone village. That is all the new information from our Borida science you have been gone. Then he looks at us and says, So this is your team, huh? Tsune just looks a little bored and says, Yes, the twins need some adjusting, but the Inuzuka is ready for war. Sakumo then looks at me directly and says, Where did you find such a kid, Tsune? Damn, it really is annoying by these ninjas being able to read how strong I am. Tsune has a slight look of pride on her eyes as she says, I didn't find any found me, but anyway I will leave him to you, Sakumo. Sakumo just nods, looks at me and with a reassuring smile on his face he says, I have intel that two days from now Sand Village will attack. So you should rest kid. Time skip. The day of the battle. I spent yesterday learning the earth style earth wall technique from a senior ninja, and together with all my clones, and the ninja's advice was able to get it from four handsings to two. I also keep thinking strategies for the battle tomorrow. I had to wear the Kanoha uniform that every Jounin wears to not get hit by friendly fire. But I asked for a special big pocket in the back of my uniform for Shiro. They agreed. They said if there is a ninja trying to kill you even if he is a Kanoha ninja kill him. He might be a spy or a transformed sand ninja. They even made me learn a secret code which changes every day to be able to tell the ninjas apart. They also gave us antidotes that Tsunade Sensei had made anyway. Right now I am in the middle of around 700 Kanoha ninja advancing towards the battlefield. I was there to not be in a place which is first attacked. Of the 700 Kanoha ninja there are 200 Jenin, most of them from the Jenin Corps, 450 Chinin, and and around 50 Jounin. They say we used to have more ninja, but they got poisoned or killed in battle. Anyway as we got in a clearing we can see some enemy ninja there were a lot of them there dot. Sakumo went ahead and killed about 20 ninjas in 2 seconds with his sword before Sang came towards him which he cut it in two and jumped back away from the battlefield which the Jinchuriki covered in a sand dome with an eye above followed. He probably didn't want to kill his comrades in the crossfire. Then as if by a signal all kinds of jutsus were trown around earth and water dragons, water balls, wind bullets and all kinds of jutsu. I just made an earth wall and stayed behind it. I am not going to lie I'm scared. After about 30 seconds of calming my mind and reminding Shiro which is in my specially made back pocket to be careful of sneak attacks. 
I take a kunai in my hand and use four-legged technique then I sense a big chakra mount heading towards me. As soon as I go out I see an earth dragon jutsu heading my way I make a big earth style earth wall, jump on top of it use it to jump over the jutsu and then the earth dragon jutsu destroys it and I keep gonic. Then I see six sand ninja looking my way and going towards me by they are stoked by a fireball jutsu heading their way one of them makes a earth wall. Then I use wind style great breakthrough to make the fire stronger which destroys the earth wall, four of them look injured. I throw four kunai at them, but they are blocked by the two others. Then the kunai which were bloked and on the ground, explode back out I had raped explosive tags around the handle it kills five of them, one survives heavily injured in his knees. So I throw a kunai at his head and it sinks into his eye, and he dies. Just then I feel the earth under me shifting and without thinking I jump back. I then use a paper bomb and throw it to the now hand sticking out of the ground. It explodes and kills whomever that was. Just then Shiro warns me and I duck down and a sword paces where my head would have been. I jump forward and turn around I see a sand ninja using a katana, and he runs towards me. I take out a kunai and block his sword. I act as if my kunai slipped out of my hand from his swing and is thrown back comma. Then I jump back where the kunai is under my feet, and use chakra to make it stick to my fort and then take out another kunai out, and block another one of his swings this time I act as if my arms are being pushed back, and use the kunai sticking to my feet to stab him in the leg he screams and jumps back with his other leg as he is in the air I signal Shiro, and he gets down from my pocket. I toss my kunai upwards, and then used wind style great breakthrough after that I grab the kunai which I tossed upward. I sense that the one on the air is not the real one. I sense a chakra signature coming towards me from my left. Then I just threw a kunai at it, and I hear the sound of metal clicking, which means he blocked it, and see the sword guy now holding a kunai running towards me, just as he is an arm's length away from me. He gets hit on the right by a wolf fang by Shiro. The sand ninja is holding his left side as it is bleeding quite bad. I take this chance and throw a kunai at his head, and he dies and his body falls down. I then make an earth wall to just take a breather. But just then a puppet with six arms and two legs comes out of the sand, and it flies towards me. I immediately use wind style great breakthrough at it, and the pupit breaks down just then all of the joints in the head sprout blades dripping with poison that fly. Towards me I immediately use earth style earth wall, and the blades get stuck into it. And then I sense a ninja come out of the sand 20 meters, 65 7 away and look at him. He has another pupit who looks like a shield with four limbs close to him. Even though he has tuning chakra levels, he is definitely a jounin. He looks at me, smiles and says, Well don't we have a little genius tree hugger here. While he is talking I give a signal to Shiro to attack him stealthily. As Shiro is about to attack him, I also attack him with wind style great breakthrough which he blocks with the shield puppet, and as Shiro also attacks at the same time from the other side, he is stayed with another joint blade of the first puppet with poison. He whimpers and falls to the ground with blood around him. The puppeteer looks at me with a sadistic smirk, only to get shocked by my calmness he thought I was some angry kid. But I am not going to die for Shiro. He is after all only a dog I look at him, and see the shield puppet he has in control with one of his hands, and the other hand controls some puppet parts, with blades covered in poison. This is going to be hard I only have around 35% of my chakra. Just as I was thinking that a guy comes out of the earth with a sword and cuts the puppeteer's arm off, H H H H. The puppeteer just screamed. I look at him and he is a Kanova ninja and has Jonin Chakra amount. You sand ninja sure are good ninja to not be aware of your surroundings. The Kanoha Jonin taunts the puppeteer. Then the Kanoha Jonin stabs the sword on the ground and easily weaves through Hansine's fire style fire missile. The puppeteer puts the shield puppet in front and it gets destroyed, but it gave him enough time to use substitution. I sense his chakra where he has substituted, so I use wind style great breakthrough in his direction. The Jonin sees this and runs in that direction. I go towards Shiro earth style earth wall put up an earth wall around us and give him the antidote that Tsunade made. He starts to get better. I then pull out the blade and start sewing his wound. I also make a shadow clone to use mystical palm to try to fix the internal damage. This is the first time that I've tried this. And I keep lookout but just then. Boom I hear a giant explosion and look towards it. And see a giant tanuki about 3 kilometers. 1.8 miles away and as soon as I see it. Its arm falls off as if it's been cut. Just then at the back edge of the battlefield where the sand ninja are guarding their medical ninja and wounded. A gigantic slug appears in and spits a giant blob of acid at them killing all the wounded medical ninja and the ninja protecting them. And then the slug halves in scissor and spills out more smaller. But still big slugs. Which go towards the Kanoha ninja in the battlefield and heals and helps them. I see five puppets flying toward the Ichibi, and after that the gigantic Tanuki dissolved into sand completely, and I see them carrying an old man out of the battlefield, and the sand ninja using a signal to retreat. After that the Jounin who followed the puppeteer returns back to me with a severed head and a slug around his body. The severed head belongs to the puppeteer. He looks at me, then at the giant slug on the other side of the battlefield and says, so the plan was a success. When I heard that I was a little surprised, but I should have thought of it Kanoha had a plan to cripple the sand forces, it was probably a plan only common to the Jounin. The slug around his body slithers down and goes to my Ninkinshiro, and starts healing him. I nod at my clone to dispel, and he does so it also taddens some of my chakra. Now my chakra reserves are at 15%. Ah, I am so tired. After that there is still some fighting done with the sand ninja staying behind to buy some time for their comrades escape. But I stay close to the slug no way am I risking it. 
By the way my chakra scent seems to have gotten beaten now I don't need to concentrate to keep it active. I can feel 15 meters 492 around me. If concentrate I feel around 30 meters 984. As we are returning to camp I stay in the middle of the group in case of a sneak attack and even have the slug wrapped around me while she is still healing Shiro. Even though it is unlikely for an attack to happen, it is never good to let your guard guard down. After we get to the camp some Jenning calls me and says, Whoa hey you, excuse me a Jounin is calling you too met him at the Jounin tents. I go there and see the Jounin who helped me against the puppeteer. He waves over to me, walks over and says, Hey can I take some of your time? Of course I can I helped you after all. So anyway I am not going to be unfair to you. The ninja that we killed has a 10.000.000 yen bounty. So I will give you 20% of the reward back else I am in a good mood. That should be 2.000.000 Ryo is my cut of the money. I could buy a medium seized apartment in Kanoha with that. I will give you my part of the money if you teach me some fire jutsu that you know. The Jounin just looked at me with a little pity on his eyes and said, So I quote, my name is Chaka Kid, and I will only take half of your reward. I will teach you all C rank fire jutsu I know in some wind jutsu, if you are able to impress me. I might even put a B rank in there. By the way kid you are bad at haggling. I wasn't even trying to haggle. I don't really care about money. If it ensures my survival I will burn all off it. He then gives me a check of 1.000.000 Ryo to cash in when I go to Kanoha.he, then smiles and says, Well since I am in a good mood I will explain how things work around here. He then starts explaining things such as battles like yesterday don't happen very often it only happens once in 2 or 3 months. And now that the sand suffered so many losers, it might take even longer. Most of the battles are skirmishes between scouts trying to cut supply lines. And if such a big attack force moves even if they are ninja we will notice them from spies, the summons place around or even the scouts. So most battles are fought between scouts which are usually Chunin or a Jounin leading a Chunin squad. Jenin usually only take part in the big battles as cannon fodder, usually they do chores around the camp for D rank missions, and around 1.000 to 5.000 Ryo pay a chore. He even explained the bounties to me 5 million dash 15 million Ryo is Jounin 15 million dash. 50 million Ryo is elite Jan and 50 million, and higher is S class ninja. Suned Sensei has a 57 mil Ryo bounty, which will probably be raised after the fight with Hanzo. Her nickname is Slug Princess Suned. He even joked that he himself had a 13 million Ryo bounty, and wished he could get that money. After the war he said he is going to cash in all the Jonin he kills in this war, and is planning on starting a family. Oh wow, he sure talks a lot. Time skip, one month later, after that first meeting with Chaku. I meet with him almost every day for the last month I learned all of his C-rank fire jutsu in 18 days with shadow clones, and cut down almost all of their hand signs to two, after all, in battle speed is essential. He even taught me his fire style fire missile jutsu bekaus I impressing him. I also learned about three C-rank wind ninjutsu from him. I also cut down their hand signs to one. Shiro my Ninkin has healed and recovered nicely, even though I didn't react when he was hurt, he is still loyal to me obviously, after all a dog is always loyal and I did save him. Anyway, right now I got a message from a Jenin I am being called to the Jonah meeting tent. As I arrive there and see the big tent I get inside, I see about 35 Jan and 10 had died at the battle, and 5 died this month in the skirmishes. I see at the head of the group is Sukumo, Sunaid, and another female Jan and I didn't know about. She had a bored look in her eyes. Sunaid has a proud look in her eyes. Then Sukumo opens a scroll and reads out loud. By the order of the Hokijiami and Yazuka Jenin of the village hidden in the leaves is hereby promoted to Chunin. And then I am escorted out by Tsunade who has a smile in her face and says, Well I am quite proud of you kid. You were supposed to be promoted after the battle, but you had been a Jenin for only a week and a half, so they postponed it. Okay now that you are a Chunin I will give you something that you wish, within reason of course. I at first wanted to ask for the slug summoning contract, but there was only one slug, and we were in a time of war with a lot of battles going on. So I didn't ask. I then remembered that Mito Yuzumaki is Tsunade's grandmother. I then put on a fake exited smile and asked with a childish voice. Okay then do you have a super duper strong explosive tag? Tsunade thought for a bit pulled out a storage scroll and poofed out a single explosive tag and then looked at me and said, This is a stronger explosive tag made by my grandmother, the wife of the first Hokage. It is an instant explosive one, which is activated when you put Chakter in it and do a one-handed tiger sign. Be very careful and far away when you use it. Well time to act like a kid and try to become her favorite student, so she will teach me her secret medical ninjutsu that she will develop later. I hug her and say, thank you Tsunade Sensei. She smiles at me and pats my head. Time skip, one month later. This month I just keep training Shunshin technique until I could get it bad already. I think it's going to be almost impossible to use it like Shisui after all. I don't have the Sharingan to see where I'm going, but I did make it kinder bad already. I have my Ninkin smell a certain smell, and then I follow the smell and shunch into my dog. So I guess it is a good escape technique after all. Substitution needs one second to be completed even without hand signs, but shunch without. Hand signs is instantaneous. I am able to use it without hand signs, but after doing the technique I get a bit disorientated about 2-3 to three seconds. Time skip, one month later. The past month I have been studying Jinjutsu to ease my curiosity a bit I learned a few, and also was able to make my own version of Demonic Illusion. Tree binding death called Demonic Illusion. Dog binding which shows the illusion of dogs holding you in place with their bites just like Kakashi did's abuser. The original Jinjutsu was B rank, 
but I am not quite able to use that yet, so I made my own C-rank Jinjutsu even though it is not as strong as the original. I think it is the only in Yuzuka Jinjutsu. Anyway now I have started going on my own scoutings, and even have my original team and two other Chunin with me. I didn't want to take them, but Tsunade Sensei asked me too for them to get some experience. They also have become stronger as Hitori Chunin level, and assume low level Chunin. I have seen some Tsuna Chunin this month, and I took care of them quite easily. The team has also started getting along better. Time skip, one month later Tsunade Sensei has been called to the Land of Rain battlefield, because we have suffered Hifi losses there back out of hands over Salamander. Anyway now I am going in a usual mission with my now usual team, to get some supplies for the camp from a confidential merchant. As soon as I get there the guy greets me. Hey guys back for another hole. I smile and nod and get close to him as soon as I do. I take a kunai and swipe at his throat, and as he bleeds, he transforms into a sand ninja. He was supposed to say a code. Just then I sense 23 chakra signatures appear in the trees in front of us. They throw projectiles at us I grab Asutori and Asume, who were closer to me from their shirts and jump back. The two other tuning get killed by the projectiles before they can react. From their chakra signatures our enemies have 6 Jounin and 17 Chunin. Shit. This is bad I sense there were 6 Jounin and 17 Chunin. I signal my Ninkan to hide. I am not even 100% sure I will be able to kill one Jounin in a direct battle, and definitely not 6 of them together. I must plan and act very carefully or I might die. Now that I think back on it, I extremely regret not asking Tsunade Sensei about the slug summoning. Well no use crying over spilled milk. I must concentrate to the max. Among the Jounin there are two puppeteers, one with a round pupit with a head and four short limbs. It is able to shoot poison Senbin from the holes in his round body. He also has a cockroach Lukan puppet, as big as his body. The other one has a shield pupit and a round pupit like the first guy. About the others two are fan users, and the last of them one of them uses a sword, and the last one is probably an ninjutsu oriented ninja Bekaus. He doesn't have anything in his hands. But that might be deception so I will be ready. The Chunin are also mixed with different type of ninjas and puppeteers, some with swords etc. I then say out loud. Formation 1 Asutori did a fire style fireball, and I did a wind style great breakthrough towards the enemy's direction. Then the Jounin which I suspected is jutsu oriented, comes forward and does earth style mud wall, which is the upgrade of the earth wall jutsu to B rank. That makes a gigantic earth wall that blocks our jutsu completely, then Asutori looks at me, and Asume says. Guys you run away leave me behind I will hold them back. Just as Asutori looks in either section the sand ninjas take this moment to throw projectiles. So I use earth style earth wall, and grab them both by the back of their shirts, and jump into a tree, and throw Asume behind me, and with the same hand, grab something out of my kunai pouch, and put it under Asutori's shirt he doesn't notice. I then think oh I would gladly leave you buddy but you won't be able to hold them back for even a second. So I just say to Assume. Assume you go and inform the camp we will hold them back. Assume looks conflicted for a second before saying, Okay, don't die guys or I will beat up your ghost to death. Asutori just reassured her by saying, Don't worry sis I will become Hokage one day so I can't die now. She then turns around with tears in her eyes and runs towards the camp. I hope a Jounin follows her to stop her from going to the camp, so I can get at least have less pretty sure. Then I hear a Jounin say, Wo'aki, Borokoma, tether kill her and come back immediately. Three tune and follow her I am disappointed a Jonin didn't follow her. But I was hoping for far too much what person in their right mind would send a Jonin to kill a low level Chunin when you have plenty of Chunin around you. Asutori is about to stop them, but I say, don't worry they will probably meet a Kanoa scout and they will help her and assume is a strong girl trust in her. We need to concentrate here. He then nods with hope in his eyes. I then think that was a lie. She has a low chance of surviving against three Chunin and an even more impossible chance to meet any Kanoa ninja they don't patrol this way almost at all. This is way too far from the battlefield and they don't want to leave any traces for the sand village to find our supplies merchant. Then five Chunin surround us and try to attack us. I use four-legged technique. I have the body strength of a low Jounin and agility of average Jounin. Because of my age, I am unable to raise it higher. But after the technique I have average Jounin body strength and my agility at high Jounin. I take out a kunai and quickly strike at their necks and kill four of them, and one of them puts his puppet in front of him, and lets it get cut to save himself and jumps back. I then throw my kunai towards him, and it hits him in the throat. I took them off guard they didn't expect this from a kid, now there are 9 chunin left and 6 jounin. I quickly jump on the ground, and Asutori follows me. They are not underestimating us anymore, and I am immediately surrounded by 3 jounin around me and 3 others around Asutori. As I see this I run away from Asutori's direction, he is too concentrated to notice this. Then the 3 jounin who are after me and 5 chunin follow me. As I am a relatively safe distance away I make a half tiger seal the Jounin in front of me, think I am going to use a jutsu, so the fan and the sword Jounin, get behind the guy with the shield puppet, who now has the shield puppet in front of him, and the round one behind the shield puppet, just to be safe. The Chunin jump back and cast use 3 earth style earth wall jutsu in front of the shield pupit, they are really on guard now, and the Chunin are really tense now, and they just wasted chakra and they weren't even sure what kind of jutsu I was going to use. So I just look towards Asutori who has now stayed by the other Jounin's puppet Senban, and wait for a chance when the other Jounin's are close to him. Then they immediately get around 3 meters close to Asutori to finish him. Then I say, Katsubuon, and a Gigan explosion happens. Ash flashback dash dot dot then with the same hand I take something out of my kunai patch and put it under Asutori's shirt. Dash flashback 
second jest, I did put the stronger explosive tag given to me by Tsunade in my friend's back. Do I regret it? No, I do not. It was to save Nusulf, and I would do it all over again if I had to. But nobody must know what happened in here, so I will have to kill all the ninja here. The ninjas are all in shock, so I go toward their left side over side of the wreckage that they are looking towards, and use fire style fire missile jutsu. The pupit guy has the fastest reaction, and defends them with the shield's pupit, and also drags the two Jounin and three Chunin behind it, with his chakra strings the two left out. The shield puppet gets destroyed, and the two Chunin unprotected by it die. The debris is stoked from hitting them by the round pupit. I am quite surprised that even the Jounin were distracted so much. I guess they had good friends that died in that explosion tag, which had the power of a B-rank jutsu at point blank. Then I see the sword Jounin coming towards me with an angry face. Then the fan Jounin calls out to him. Won't stop don't go in alone he is a tricky opponent. The Jounin with a sword doesn't have that kind of calmness. He instead just says. He killed my brother I am going to chop him to pieces. Then as he is coming to me and he is fast at around high Jounin speed. He is in front of me and he swings his sword at me. I try to block it with my kunai. Then I feel something wrong. And as soon as my kunai touches his sword, the kunai gets cut. I jump back immediately and dodge. But I still got a large cut in my torso. At least it's not too deep of a cut. As I am still in air I look at him. I see so the sword is covered in wind chakra. As soon as I jump the fan Jounin does a joutsu at me when release. Great task of the dragon and then a tornado is coming towards me. And the puppet guy shoots poison senben at the tornado. Combination jutsu. Great poison senben dragon. And as soon as I step on a tree. A dragon made out of senben comes towards me. I then make a signal to Shiro my ninkin. I then use shunchen and a pair beside my dog. And behind the puppeteer and wind Jounin tell my dog to hide behind the puppeteer. I then make two shadow clones and one hides close to the three Chunin for them to not interfere, and one goes to attack the wind Jounin from behind, but he blocks it with his fan. The fan Jounin then looks at my clone and says, that was the wrong move kid, and then I see the sword Jounin coming bang him, then the sword pointed behind the clone ready to stab him as soon as the clone is stabbed. I go behind the sword Jounin and try to kill him immediately, but as soon as I am about to stab him, he puts the katana right where my kunai was going to cut and stops the kunai I immediately use shunshin and leave the kunai there. As soon as I appeared where my dog was behind the puppeteer, the kunai I had left behind exploded back out of the explosive tag around the handle and then even though I am disorientated, I use fire style jaya missile jutsu toward the puppeteer who is surprised and tries to block my jutsu with the round puppet, but the puppet exploded and he got thrown back some debris and some senden from the puppet stabbed into him and I think he is knocked out but I can't afford to check it. My clone also uses fire style fire missile jutsu on the chunin. They try to block it with earth style wolf wall jutsu, but they couldn't and all got burned to death. But I don't have time to be worried about that anymore. I look towards the fan Jounin and sword Jounin's place with the fan Jounin, trying to stop the bleeding of sword Jounin, which has his sword wielding hand exploded and had some grievous wounds in his back. And I am low on chakra I cancel my four legged technique and I call my ninkin he jumps on my back and we use double headed wolf and we transform in a gigant two headed wolf I then again use four-legged technique. Beckhouse now it doesn't use just my chakra, but also my Ninkin's chakra, and he has the chakra of an average Chunin. And then I run towards the fan Jounin when he notices us he takes his fan, and uses a wind-style great breakthrough through the fan as the Jutsu is coming towards me. I jump sideways and dodge the Jutsu, and then I get close to the fan Jounin, and the other Jounin which is laying on the ground. The fan Jounin tries to block my paw coming towards him Beckhouse if he doesn't, I will kill the sword Jounin. But I still push the fan Jounin on the ground and break his ribsage, and he spits out a glob of blood. Just to be sure I stab my claw trough his chest, and repeat this with the sword Jounin, and the puppeteer Jounin who both die. Then I try to sense anyone else around before I cancel the jutsu, and then I surprisingly feel two Chunin chakra and go toward them they were towards the paper tag explosion site. I then see two Chunin who were probably the farthest from the explosion, one of them was without an arm and leg the other was with alt legs. I then kill them both, and I cancel the jutsu. Then went to the three Jounin cut their heads off and stab a Senban in their brain, just to be sure I am quite positive the Yamaka can't read the memories of dead people, but just to be sure. I was super low on chakra I had about 9% left. I got all the body together, took out my storage scroll. Got some alcohol for disinfecting wounds, poured it on their bodies, and did a C-ranked ninjutsu to burn any trace of them, to stop anybody from using the Edo Tensei on them. Made sure that there wasn't any body pieces at the explosion site, of course there wasn't. I really don't want anyone learning I killed my teammate even though I went overboard to take measures against it better safe than sorry. I then opened the emergency food scroll, and pulled out a cooling bag with a bunch of ice in it, put the heads in and close it, and put it back on the scroll. I was in need of some money when I go back to Kanoha for a plan of mine. I now have 5% of my chakra. I take the sword of the Jounin and put it in my weapon scroll. I then call my Ninkin he nods. Then he transforms into me, and carries me on his back towards the direction of the camp. Then we stop after we get out of the battlefield zone and jump on trees, and wait for the Chunin which followed assumed to return, and I make Redi an ambush, and put almost all my explosive tags around, leaving only 5 on me. I don't really have the chakra to deal with them, and I am tired. So while waiting I sew my torso wound I am afraid if I use any more chakra I might pass out. So I wait for them to return, 
Then I see the three Chunin returning one of them has a horribly crushed arm. They are not really on guard. They walk right into my trap even after they notice the trap and try to jump back they are caught in the mace of explosion and die. I then walk towards the camp I see the dead body of Asum in the way. She has a kunai at the back of the skull and a crushed hand. Then I remember the other Chunin's horribly smashed arm. I tell my Ninkin to carry her body when he is transformed as me. He sews so and while walking toward the camp I keep thinking. Did Tsune try to teach the super strength technique to Asum? But she hadn't learned it yet, so she just used it in a desperate situation. I think why would Tsune teach her that? And then everything clicks into place, Asum reminded her of herself. Her brother wants to be Hokage, pervert teammate that she compared to Jiraiya and my supposed genius to Orochimaru. Then I see the camp and use a medical jutsu to knock me out and make me look even more exhausted. And I have my dog to carry me to the camp. Even though unlikely if the Yamaka try to search his memory, he has only been observing my battles, and they can't check mine back else I am wounded and knocked out. After all they can't check the memories of a comrade without asking. I then open my eyes slowly, and the first thing I see is a female medical ninja is cheeking on me and says, Call Sakumo-sama. When I woke up and then as soon as I do so, the medical ninja says, Woke please stay down, Haddock-sama will come ask about the dittles, and how you got injured. By the way your dog refused to leave your side. Then she seemed a little sad and regretful as she said, Your torso might feel a little numb from the wound I am sorry, but we couldn't heal it to leave no scar. I looked at my bandaged torso and look around and act like I am confused. So I just see ask with a hoarse voice, Where am I? The medical ninja softly answered, You are in the hospital. Then I widen my eyes and act shocked over my eyes with my hand and start crying. Damn this used to be easier when I was younger. I just screamed full of despair as I said, Damn IT I was too weak. Too weak to even protect those I care about. Why the hell did I even become a ninja if I can't protect those I love? It was not your fault. A child shouldn't take responsibility for the actions of an adult. I then look at who said that and see it was Sakumo. He then looks at the medic nin and tells her to leave. It was our fault we were not able to secure a territory to not let an enemy pass. When you feel ready you can tell me what happened. And he starts to walk away I say. Wait I'm ready right now I don't want anyone else to die back house I didn't say this information. He looks impressed and nods. Then I start talking a story I had made up after all I was expecting this question. I tell him a story story of how we met the ninja when they had killed and impersonated the merchant. How me and Esutori were planning to hold the ninja back while Asum gets her enforcement, but some ninja followed her stealthy, and we didn't notice. Of how Esutori killed three Jounin with a suicide type jutsu, and I killed two Jounin and all of the Chunin with my explosive tag from Tsunade, and how a Jounin survived. I fought him to the death and won, but got injured and tired, so I surround my resting place with explosive tags, and how coincidentally, the Chunin ran into my trap. Seeing this, I returning to the camp saw Asum's body and paced out in front of the camp. I then started crying again. He just looks at me sadly and says, You had good teammates ready to sacrifice themselves for you. And I am sure they are glad they had you as a teammate. They wouldn't want you to be sad so be happy. They are always watching over you. Wow this guy is a great motivational speaker. Anyway I look at him make a sad smile and say, I guess so. But with some newfound fake determined eyes I say, I will become a legendary ninja a ninja so strong that I won't ever lose anyone. That is a promise to myself and them. He looks at me and nods and then gets a serious look in his eyes and says, the sand ninja were probably sent to make traps and kill our scouts to weaken us. We also have news that in a week and four days. The Sand Ninja will attack us with Chiyo of the White Troop leading them. But this time we will attack them first in a week's time. I look at him and nod. This time after this battle I am going to ask for a short leave to go to Kanoha. I won't ask right now because it would be probably refused. Anyway I need to train harder this week and need to learn more Wind Ninjutsu and Wind Nature Transformation. I check my reserves and they are 60% full. I then start using the Mystical Palm technique to get rid of the numb feeling. Then I look for my things I find them in a counter close to me look at my dog. Then he nods at me. That means that they haven't checked my memories. Then I look at my hand there are no bite scars. I also told my dog to bite me really hard at my arm to leave a scar. If they are going to check his memory, and they then erased it. I see nothing in my hand, neither do I feel the numb feeling that comes with healing and using my medical knowledge to see if they try to ease the feeling. I guess I was too paranoid. They wouldn't really suspect a child to do what I did, and the Yamaka are more focused on dealing with enemy ninja information. Anyway I get dressed and I put Shiro on my head and go towards the Jounin tents look around trying to find Chaku the Jounin who taught me ninjutsu. I found him trying to flirt with another female Jounin who he looked like begging her for something and hugging her leg. Hey come on marry me please I plan to start a family when I return to Kanoha. The woman just looks at him like he is trash. Then she scolds Chaku. What the hell Chaku you have been asking every female Jounin like this for the past months, you already asked me four times. Even more tears come out of his eyes, and his snot starts to flow from his nose like a child. Pleosi, the woman Jounin just looks at this with a diggested look on her face. She gets angry and screamed. I said stop it damn it. Then the other Jounin steps on his face and starts kicking him. And then she walks away. This is really embarrassing to even watch. How can a Jounin be so pathetic? Anyway I get close to him and am about to ask him something. 
But he interrupts, Ah Yami my favorite student. I just looked at him with an emotionless face as I said to him, I am your only student. But he ignores what I said and kept talking. I need you to be with me next time I ask a girl out. Your childish charms may help me. When I heard that my face scrunched like I just swallowed a lemon. No way am I helping you with that. Anyway I will give you 1 million Ryo if you teach me all that you know about Kenjutsu. When he helped me against the puppeteer ninja in the war, he used a sword. So I thought he might be skilled at using it. Yes I will help you. But you don't need to pay me. Do I look like the kind of guy that would take money from kid? Asked Chaku while trying to act cool and noble. Dot dot yes. I answered with an emotionless face. He then squats to the ground to press drawing circles on it. And with tears coming out of his eyes. What a mentally unstable Jaunin. I think. Time skip left parenthesis one week later. I have learned Kenjutsu from Chaku and his clones teaching my clones. I also did the wind training exercise of cutting a leaf using wind chakra I did it in two days. I have gotten quite skilled at using a sword. But not quite at Chaku's level even with shadow clones. He told me not to worry about it, and that you get way more training and experience, by using it on the battlefield. That's where I am going right now we are going to attack the Suna camp immediately, even though they might know by now we are attacking them they might not know. Because in our camp, the others got word today in the morning, that we are attacking Suna camp, and only the Jounin knew science. A week ago and me who is a Jounin in all but name, I also have the sword Jounin sword in my back. It was a chakra metal sword, that lets you Chanel chakra easier in it. It is good back house I have a short reach because of my age. Even though I feel uncomfortable I am in front of the formation of the formation as a Jounin strength ninja it is my duty. But I am sure I can look out for myself now. I then see the San Ninja army in the field. Well then time to go to war and make a name for myself. I see the Suna Ninja in a little of a disarray they probably prepared in a hurry. Then as the rest of the Jounin go forward I go forward in a slower speed. And then I see a mud dragon coming toward my direction. I then sense some of the rookie tuning get behind me for me to protect them. I act like I don't notice them signal my dog to stay a little far away from the main skirmishes and to be careful of an attack. I have him separate from me in case of an emergency I can shunch into him my sense of smell is quite good. And I also can even turn it off with my medical jutsu, not to be like Kiba who got defeated by Fart. Then the mud dragon was getting closer. I just simply did a substitution after all it was from the other side of the battlefield. I then see some Suna Chunin in a group working together, and I use fire style fireball jutsu, and while I'm spewing fire off my mouth. I do the wind style great breakthrough, and the fire cuts off and is pushed by wind, the Chunin all get burned. Then I look towards the Suna forces and use fire style dragon flame bomb towards them, and 40 Chunin and Jenin get caught off guard and are killed. I then take out my sword and pump my chakra sense to the maximum, and use four legged technique, and now my senses are at maximum capacity. I jump in the middle of a field of Chunin, and start cutting up. I need to make a name for myself for my short leave to be allowed. They don't allow just anybody to take a leave. I then see four Chunin in a row and swing my sword towards them. One of them tries to block it with a kunai, but just before they clash, I use wind chakra and cut through the kunai, and the four Chunin. I sense a guy behind me I sidestep to dodge, and then cut his head off two people are coming towards me from both sides. But then I sense something underground, and I jump two hands come from the ground, pull my nest to my chest, and kick both the ninjas from my sides and, stab the sword in the ground. I feel the wind cutting sound behind me. I tilt sideways to dodge grab the kunai, and throw it at the throat of someone. Then some ninja come towards me with a kunai and swords, as soon as they are in my range I cut their throat and then some ninja throw projectiles at me, and I use one of their bodies as a shield, and jump back and ninja again comes towards me with a puppet. I go past the puppet grab a paper bomb from my punch, and stick it on the puppeteer, and kick him towards a group of ninjas, and then he explodes. I grab some explosive kunai from my kunai punch spin, and throw kunai in 8 directions, and then they explode. I then look at the carnage around me. I then look at the ground and see all kind of swords I grab one in my other hand, then I have an idea I put the sword in my mouth, and then grab another sword, and use my right now self-made technique at least it's against Jenin and Chunin, so even if I have a screw up, it won't be fatal. I then use the wolf fang technique with my three swords, and use three sword style. Wolf fang I spin around really fast and go towards ninjas and start butchering in about 10 minutes I had killed about 100 Chunin and Jenin. I cancel my technique and look at my swords they are covered in blood, and throw away the two swords I picked up. Five Jan and notice my killing spree and come towards me. I sense them and look at them one puppeteer two fan and one jutsu nin and one swordsman and use wind style. Vacuum bullet then one of them uses earth style. Earth wall my jutsu gets blocked, but the wall gets destroyed and some dust blocks their vision. I then make a shadow clone, have him store a bunch of explosive tags under his shirt and use substitution to get behind them. My clone then makes a panicked face and throws a fireball jutsu at them. They block it again and one of them says, he is panicking and is just wasting his chakra. At this point he is going to run dry. He probably hasn't had a jounin after him yet. I get behind the puppeteer and put the tip of my sword behind his skull. The other Jounin notice me I then attack one of the fan Jounin immediately he tries to block it with his fan. But as soon as my sword is about to touch the fan, I use wind chakra to cut through the fan and the Jounin. I then immediately jump back and use fire style dragon flame bomb at them and then Anusta Jounin is about to do a mud wall to block at my clone behind them. Goes toward the Jutsu Nin who is about to use the mud wall Jutsu with his wind coated sword, the one fan Jounin and one swordsman Nin goes to block him. But as soon as they do the clone explodes and kills them and heavily injuring the Ninjutsu Ninja and then my Jutsu kills him. 
I was expecting some more to survive killing Jan and is getting easier and easier. I think it is Beckhouse my planning and fighting experience growing. But also Beckus they always underestimate me. Wow being a kid is so useful. I alone gave the sand forces a heavy blow I have taken 11 Jounin out of their forces. And that is a lot they used to have a Jounin number advantage. But now they don't. I look towards Sukumo who is fighting Chaiho and a Chibi Jinchuriki. Which has covered both of himself and Chiyo with sand. Sukumo can't quite get close to them with the sand and puppets. I look at this fight and think apostrophe I have a plan what is a better way to get my name out than fighting legends. I have 45% chakra that shadow clone got me low. But I am sure of my chances in escaping. I saw Sukumo getting close to the duo in the sand sphere. And cutting through the sand being thrown at him. And some projectiles thrown at him. By the ten puppets which belong to Chiyo. Two puppets look towards me and come towards me. The two touch one of their hands together with the other's hand. And when they separate their hands and are coming towards me. As soon as I see that I use substitution to appear some place behind the sand sphere. Even though I couldn't see it from the distance where I was from. I am sure that they had wired between their hands. That could cut through thick wood like it is nothing. I remember this from the Anaim. Then I go towards the sand sphere. The two puppets appear in front of me again. And they go in a close distance to me. And one throws a punch. And me I dodge sideways. Swing my sword at his joint the other puppet catches my sword, and I run when Chakra threw it, and I cut its fingers, and I'm about to cut the other puppet's hand he swings the same fist at my stomach, and I block with my edge, and his fist gets cut to his wrist, my sword is stuck I don't have enough wind chakra control to cut something probably a strong metal at the wrist of the puppet and the other puppet kicks at me as the kick connects with my left hand I put a paper tag on its leg and I get thrown back by it comma I left my sword behind as soon as my feet touch the ground comma quote boom I explode the paper tag and then the two puppets come out of the dust unharmed towards me I then feel something below my feet and I jump back and use fire style fireball jutsu at the two puppets coming towards me they jump sideways and are still coming towards me then the puppet gets out of the earth and comes towards me also and I use earth style earth wall and use transformation to blend with the side of the wall and take out a kunai and then two come from both sides of the wall and one from above they look around and don't see anyone and i take that moment go behind one puppet and cut not at the puppet but at the chakra string behind it with my kunai with wind chakra i throw the kunai in the ground without a paper bomb because i am running out of those i only have some left then grab the puppet by the hand and use wind style great breakthrough to throw it far away and then i look at the two other puppets and use fire style fireball jutsu and while fire is running from my mouth I use wind style. Great breakthrough and the fire cuts off from my mouth and gets pushed by the wind towards the two puppets. I then run towards the puppet I threw and when I get to it, I take out the weapon scroll make a shadow clone and he puts the puppet in. I am keeping watch I am not letting my guard down against an S-rank ninja. I then look back and see the two charred puppets going back around to the sand sphere. Then some puppets around the sand sphere they throw some projectiles against Sukumo. And while he is blocking them, something gets out of the sand sphere and comes towards me. Sukumo tries to stop it, but a wave of sand stops him. I then I look at the figure out of the sand sphere and I see it as Chiyo. She land in the ground in front of me about 30 meters, 98 4 away. She then looks at me and says, Kid this is not a place where you are supposed to be. I look at her and analyze the situation and come up with a plan. I give a signal to my clone who then goes in the direction of my dog. I don't answer her and just immediately rush at her. Her nine puppets block the way and they come in close combat to me. I take out two kunai one in each hand and as I get close to them, I am about to swipe at one of them. I sense something behind me and I jump sideways. But then I am again surrounded by three puppets they are about to punch me. I block two of them with my two kunai and the other with the soles of my feet. Then they open their mouths and spit out Senben I have just enough time to position my body to not hit anything vital. But still, I have Senben sticking out of my body. And I think that they are obviously poisoned. I then jump up from the fist of the puppet and do a substitution. Immediately after it my substitution is skewered by projectiles. Then Chiyo looks at me and says, Kid just return the puppet and I will let you live. I obviously didn't trust her if I gave her the puppet she would become stronger. And I am not sure she would keep her word. Even if I knew her from the Anime this is war. So I absolutely don't trust her. I first take out the Senben out of me. Then I take out from my belt an antidote from Tsunade and inject it. Chiyo looks at me and says, Kid that is not a poison from the one Mars produced for the Sooner army. It is a special poison poison made by me with some rare ingredients in about a minute you will start throwing up your own guts give me the puppet and i will give you the antidote i look at her and ask how about you give me the antidote first then i give you the puppet she seems to think a little at first and then nods and says okay kid but no tricks she then throws me a vial i catch it and just open the lid and go on as if about to drink it but i put chakra in my nose to make my sense of smell even stronger then I take a sniff without her noticing, and I cover the vial with my hand, and act as if I drunk it. I also made it look real with some Jinjutsu. I already know what was in it from my medical knowledge. Just more antipain with paralysis poison, to make me feel like I am getting better. But in reality I am getting paralyzed. I then throw the empty looking vial covered in Jinjutsu in the ground, and act more relaxed. Take out an empty useless scroll from my front jowl and jacket's pockets, and walk towards her with a kunai in the other hand and say, Okay? But I don't want any puppets close to me. I then start walking towards her, and the puppets start backing of I act as if my body is more rigid, but as if I don't notice it, and I smile and say while walking towards her, 
You know you are a nice person even though we are enemies after the war is over. I would like you to meet my grandma. She is super nice also. She just has a cold face on. But I could see in her eyes the complicated feelings she has about me being a kid. Good let your guard down old hag. But I still keep a small reminiscent smile on my face. I then am in front of her I extend my hand toward with the scroll. She also extends her hand and that is the moment I struck towards her. I swipe at her. That moment she notices something is wrong and jumps back a little and tries to pull the extended hand back. But I am not about to leave with nothing and channel wind chakra in my kunai and swipe at her right hand it goes flying to the ground. She immediately throws kunai at me with the other hand. But I immediately jump back and dodge and immediately do the substitution. The kunai explode they probably had explosive paper wrapped around their handle. I sense my clone and dog. Then five puppets immediately surround my substitution and sprout different weapons and shot projectiles at it. And then they get close to it and hit him with different weapons. I then immediately use Shunshin and appear at the side of my dog, and my clone is there too. This is a little far from the battlefield. I look at them and then say to my clone and dog, make earth walls all around me. Shiro you keep watch around it and stay hidden and kill anyone who comes close. They nod, and while my clone is doing his job, I take some anti-venom to give me more time against the poison. After my clone does so I dispel him to get some chakra back, and then make another clone. He knows what to do. I give him the scroll with medical supplies in it. He opens it and summons all the medical supplies in it. And then he puts a sleeping bag on the ground I lie in it. He opens a bottle, and puts the liquid in a bucket. He fills about 10 buckets. With that kind of liquid, there are bottles all around the ground. He brings the 10 buckets close to me. He makes hand signs, and then uses chakra scalpel. Technique on two of his fingers, and he starts to make cuts above my heart, stomach, kidneys and one small cut at my intestines. He stabs a semben on my neck to temporarily stop all feeling from my neck and down. Then he puts the hands on the a bucket with liquid and pulls out a blob of liquid and starts putting it inside my body through the cuts after some seconds he pulls out the liquid with some brown spots on it. It was the poison he keeps doing this about 8 times, and 8 buckets are now with used liquids with poison. He pulls out the semben, and I feel kind of sluggish he then uses mystical palm to ease it. I get up and pull out the food scroll and summon water bottles and start drinking them. I then dispel the clone pack my stuff back and go outside the dome and see my dog fighting a chunin, and my dog seems to be whining. But I interrupt the fight and get behind the chunin, and with a swipe of my kunai I cut his neck and he dies. I also see another body on the ground he looks to be a gen and he has a chunk of his neck missing. I look at my ninkin and tell him to follow me. I go back to the battlefield and go towards the Battle of Sukumo, and the Ichibi Jinchuriki while going there. I kill a couple of San Chunin and Jenin with pure Tejutsu. I don't have the leisure of wasting chakra on them as I get close to their battle. I signal my dog to go behind the Jinchuriki and stay hidden there. When I arrive there I also see Chiyo, but she now has a puppet arm, and she is not accustomed enough with it to use chakra strings from the puppet arm. So right now she is only controlling 5 puppets in the fight against Sukumo. I get in the battle by throwing a kunai with an explosive tag towards her. A puppet comes in front of her and blocks it. She then comes behind her puppet without any harm. And the puppet is also okay. And she tells me. Kid you are going to die now I won't make the same mistake again. Bampuku throws some sand towards the kid. But nobody answers and she says again. Bampuku we are at war we don't have the luxury to go easy on enemies. Especially on the kid. Then Jinchuriki uses sand tsunami. As soon as I feel the Mars amount of chakra on the sand around. And the Jinchuriki's large drooping in chakra level. I was ready to retreat immediately. But then it all goes towards Sukumo which cuts the tsunami in half. But he still gets pushed far away. Then an old bald man with a long beard comes out of the sand sphere and says, No matter what I won't kill a kid. Even if the order comes from the Kazakiage himself. My deal with the Kazakiage was that I must hold Sukumo Hattic back not become a child killer. And I am not a killer like Uchiyo I am a monk. Shiyo looks at him and then frowns and says, How about just capturing him with me? I promise I won't kill him. He seems to think a bit. Then I look at both of them and think apostrophe I am going to execute the plan. And if it fails I will immediately escape. As the Jinchuriki is thinking I use substitution and appear in a tree and throw shuriken and kunai. With all the explosion tags I have at them. The Jinchuriki gets out of thinking. And the projectiles are blocked all by sand. But that is the view blocker and noise I needed. And I also. Notice something small but significant. He needed to concentrate to use the sand. I use shunchen and appear beside my dog and behind them. And throw senbin at the Jinchuriki's neck. Let's see if my theory is correct if he does or doesn't have the sand that protects him automatically like Gar. As the Senbin are thrown at his neck, they don't make much when cutting noise. But that is their speciality. But they are also not lethal if you don't have good aim, and don't know lethal points in the human body. Then the Senbin. The Senbin pierce his neck, and he is knocked out and in a fake death state. Chiyo sees and looks at me with anger, and she is about to get close to the Jinchuriki to get the Senbin out of his neck, and I am about to stop her. But then I sense someone with enormous chakra get in front of the Jinchuriki. It was Sukumo Haddock. Chiyo sees this, backs off and runs away in the back of her puppets. Smart, if she had started she would have gotten killed or captured by Sukumo. As she is retreating she gives out a signal for all the sand ninjas to retreat. Sukumo makes a shadow clone gives it a paper and then says to me. I am going to take care of some Suna ninja look after the Jinchuriki. He then runs off to probably try to save as much Kanoha ninja as he can. He really is dedicated to his comrades. His clone looks at me and with a calm voice says. 
You know Kiju helped me a lot today. We just gave Suna a devastating blow. Not only did we take one of their elite soldiers Banpaku, but also their tailed beast. I then look at him and act like I feel the same too, and say, Wait, I am just glad that I could help my comrades. He looks at me with a kind smile and says, You did more than just help. My battle science after the first battle in the war that I fought against the third Kazakij, and it ended in a stalemate. But Kanoha suffered against Abizo, Chiyo's brother that killed hundreds of our shinobi. Tsunade held against Chiyo at that time. Saihi then continues, After that battle every battle that came after that, the Ichibi Jinchuriki held me back even when I was about to kill him. He would get saved by Chiyo. By the way I was surprised seeing that old hag with a cut arm I thought she killed you. But you were able to take her arm off. I then looked at the ground seemingly distracted, but I was actually in full alert and had my dog close to me. I then asked, what is going to happen to the Ichibi and its Jinchuriki? He seems to think a little and says, Ichibi will probably be sealed in somebody from Kanoha and the Jinchuriki will die. That would change the Naruto plot quite a lot. Well, I will just have to do a small adjustment to my plan. After all, it doesn't really matter in the end. Naruto and Sasuke taking care of Kagaya is only my plan C on how to get rid of her. Well, whatever. In about 20 minutes, the battlefield becomes quiet, except for some groaning from the injured and some screams from time to time. During this time, the Jinchuriki got a little riled up with some heavy Ichibi chakra about to wake him up and some sand about to surround him. But the Sakumo clone just slapped the paper in his forehead, and it calmed down. I look at the paper curiously the clone sees this and says, It was made by Mito-sama, if we incapacitate any Jinchuriki. She is the best Funjutsu master in Kanova and probably the world. I look at the seal dot well then. I can't wait for the war to finish I have so much to learn. Then after some time we are returned to camp Sakumo's clone carrying the Jinchuriki, and then Sakumo tried to encourage the others by saying, Kanova ninja we have given the sand village the heaviest blow they have taken in this war, we have taken their strongest weapon, the one-tailed beast. The Kanoha ninja are excited and yelling Sakumo's name. They are really yelling, how are ninja like? Well whatever I am about to return to my tent, but I am stopped by Sakumo who comes towards me and puts a hand in my shoulder and says, I am not responsible for the capture of the Ichibi. This young ninja a true talent of Kanoha, didn't want to see his comrades die, and made a reckless almost suicidal attack on the Jinchuriki, and it worked. His name is Yami and Yazuka a true hero that saved hundreds of lives today, and thousands that would have followed. The ninja around me grabbed me and throw me in the air, what a bother. I wasn't even risking my life, I had so many ways to escape it wasn't even funny. Anyway, I make a childish smile and act like a child. Then after some time, Sakumo called me to the meeting tent. Well then this should be a perfect time to ask for the break. I go inside and see about 20 Jounin and Sakumo who has a scroll in his hand. He looks at me and with a serious voice he said, I need you to send this to Kanoha and deliver it to the Hokage it explains the situation here, and the last battle situation. I send this every month, and after every battle it is usually sent by Chunin. But this time you with three other Jounin will send it back else the San might try to intercept it. You will go tomorrow after you have recuperated. Three Jounin stand up. He throws the scroll at me, I catch it and then ask. After this mission can I take a small break? I haven't seen my family in a long time. Sukumo looks at me and nods. Of course you will get a one month break. I don't bellow the sand will attack us for a long time. Now that they don't have a Jinchuriki. I nod at him and get out of the tent. Time skip tomorrow. I look at my team two of them look like Hyuga with headbands in their foreheads. They are probably branch members probably for lookout. And the last one might be in a Chiha I am not sure. But he does have black hair and pupil less black eyes. Okay guys let's introduce ourselves. My name is Yami Inuzuka. They look at me, and the one who I assumed to be an Ichiha was the first to talk. My name is Kamiri Ichiha of the Ichiha clan. The Hayuga with a serious face said, My name is Himi Hayuga. Then the last one had a smile in his face. That was kind of unusual because he was a Hayuga. Hi Hero Dash Sen my name is Taki Hayuga. The most smiley Hayuga ever. He jokes. Even though they don't say it, they seem kind of not sure if I have the experience to lead this expedition, and they are right. I am not very experienced in leading a team of ninja in a journey of different terrain with possible enemies. So I just look at them smile and say, Okay, then I have a thing to tell you guys. I am not really experienced in leading a team of ninja, but I want to learn to do so. So will you give me advice on what I can do better along the way? They all nod seriously with impressed faces after all a genius child asking for help instead of being arrogant or overconfident. But instead is not letting all the praise go to his head is quite surprising. Then we start our journey then I tell them. By the way guys do you know any bounty outpost? Then Kamiri Ichiha takes out a scroll from his Jan in vest pocket and throws it to me. I open the scroll and it has the fire country map with various points in it and says, they're all the points of bounty outposts, but you have got to look for something that can hide the smell of bodies to specifically pinpoint it. So it usually is a bathroom, meat shop or an animal farm. You can also turn in bounties at Kanoha. I nod at him and then as we are going on the road and make some small talk we talk about if the meat shop's bounty outpost also sell meat. The answer of which is yes because if there is a meat shop who doesn't sell meat is suspicious. And they might even sell meat cheaper because they don't really care for the minuscule amount of money they make from it in comparison to being the middleman in a bounty hunt. Interestingly we didn't encounter any sand ninja. 
they probably couldn't get too deep in fire country, because they will get killed or captured, after all Sakumo took measures against its science the first time it happened. Anyway we arrive at Kanova relatively fast in 30 hours, and we made no stops because the message is so important. When we go inside after some checks that we are not transformed and not missing then we are allowed in and go to the Hokage Tower, and with the urgent battlefield report excuse we went in immediately to the Hokage's office. When we go inside there is the third Hokage and two members of the Kanoha Council. At least Danzo isn't here he probably is doing something immoral and fishy or trying to eliminate someone that is against the interests of Kanoha. Not like I really care. As long as he doesn't do anything against my interests. The Hokage sees us, and the three Jonin bow immediately, and I bow after I put the scroll in his table. He reads it and says, I will contact the Kazakij and see if we can come to a mutual agreement. You have done well Ninja, I will put 1B rank mission in all your records, and 2S rank, 5A rank, 3B rank and 30C rank in your record Jami and Yazuka. You will be paid 1 million Ryo for your mission services. Dismissed. I then walk out of the Hokage office after he has given me a check. In war times ninja don't get paid much or none at all for missions they make most of their money from bounties. If this was peacetime I do some quick math in my head. I would have gotten paid around 5 million Ryo at minimum for all those missions. By the way missions pay like this. E rank missions pay between 30,000 to 100,000 Ryo. E rank missions pay between 80,000 to 200,000 Ryo. A rank missions pay between 150,000 to 1.000.000 Ryo's rank missions pay at least 1 mil Ryo. If the village paid missions like it did in peacetime, it would go bankrupt in no time Beckhouse clients are not paying these missions, and it has to come from the village. By the way it was a dumb decision by the Hokage to want to negotiate with the Kazakij. I already know what will happen, and really, he will probably give back a chibi for a price or deal for ceasefire. But still to give away a weapon for mass destruction, even though the Achibi is not as strong as the Nine Tails, it gives its Jinchuriki the ability to manipulate sand. That is pretty much an S-rank ninja guarantee for a lot of generations. He thinks like a pacifist like Hashirama, but he can't just give a weapon like that away he is not Hashirama. Hashirama did so because he had the kind of power that any beast below the Nine Tails was nothing to him. Anyway enough about politics I can finally start my main plan tomorrow. I go to my house and greet my mother. Hello mother I am back. She was watering a flower when I did so. When she hears my voice she drops the watering can and looks at me. She then tears up and comes and hugs me while crying and says, My baby, my little baby he is finally back home I was worried sick about you. I look at her, wipe her tears with my fingers and say, Don't cry mother I am here now am I not? She nods at me while crying, and we sit on the small porch of a small house, and I tell her some stories, of course, not me fighting and killing kind of stories, but me learning new jutsu, meeting new people and being taught by Tsunade talks with Sukumo, the beauty of the rivers and different biomes. I lead the conversation around and making her almost forget I was in a battlefield killing and massacring, making her think that it might not be so bad as the gossip say. While I'm talking I look at her and think sinisterly, how she would react if I told her I took over her baby's body while he was still in the womb. She would try to kill me, get my mind read and even torture me. That is why I will never care about her, because if she knew the truth she would hate me with all her heart. That is the best scenario possible, and in the worst scenario well. Never underestimate humanity's potential for evil and cruelty. Well it's not like I'm ever going to tell anybody about my deepest secret, I am taking it to the ground no my eternal life. Tomorrow is the first step of my plan, time skip tomorrow, I wake up, go to the bathroom and take a shower. Hadn't had one of these in a long time. I then look at myself in the mirror. I have short dark slightly spiky hair, an oval face with dark pupil less eyes, and two red upside down triangles on my cheeks. These are my Inuzuka tattoos, they are not permanent, and I can easily get rid of them. I used to have brown hair, but as I got older, it got darker and darker until it became black. Anyway I wear my ambu pants, my sandals and my green hoodie, and put Shiro in my hood. Then I go to the kitchen and see my mother making breakfast for me. Well that is good, in the war I mostly ate ration bars which tasted like cardboard, when I got bored of them. I ate something from my emergency food scroll, not a lot, just enough to at least get my taste buds working. We usually didn't hunt because the meat of the animal could have been poisoned, or it has a paper tag in it, and as soon as you got close it would explode, and it could be an ambush etc. Ninjas give a new meaning to dirty war. Anyway I go to the table, eat breakfast and make some small talk with M-I-S-U-N-E my mother. After that I ask her if she knows if the clan head is around she says yes. I then tell her I'm going to go for a walk as I haven't been in Kanoha in a long time, but I just walk towards the clan head's house. As I am walking I think in my progress these last few months. My physical stats haven't grown, my chakra reserves only grew a little, and my chakra control grew to be able to use Mistival Palm properly. The thing I got from this war was experience, and my ninjutsu amount has grown by a lot, and my sensory abilities have skyrocketed. I can now sense up to 50 METERS 164 with AUT concentration and 100 METERS 328 when I concentrate. It's really surprising I got way more progress in 4 months than in all my life, but to be honest, 
I really wasn't training it, and only used it to feel people's chakra levels. In the war it was always at maximum alert and always on full concentration. As I am thinking this I go to the clan head's house. He is a Jounin. The only Jounin in our clan. The other members most are Chunin and some special Jounin specialized in tracking. Also a clan only has about 70 people, and 50 or more of them are civilians. We are not like the Achiha who have around 300 members, and about 100 of them are ninjas. They also have a lot of Jounin in their numbers. It is the clan with the most Jounin. But they have to be a lot to be in the war and in the police force, and to have confidence to pull a coup dead against the entire village. There it has also shown the genius of Itachi Achiha even if he had help from Obito. To be able to kill all of the clansmen even though probably most of them were silent assassinations. It shows his talent and willpower to kill family, and he did it all silently, no one knowing what he had done until later. But that might have also been influenced by Root. If I went to kill the Inuzuka clan right now I could do it silently with poison and stuff. But comparing Inuzuka with Ichiha is like comparing an elephant with an ant. The other clans that has more members than us there is the Hayuga around 100 members. But if I am not mistaken, they will be cut down heavily during and after the third shinobi war. Saratobi clan members around 70 to 80 not many members. But most of them are ninja or retired around 50 ninja. I believe they also got a lot of benefits from being the clan of the Hokage, and one of the first to join Konoha. They also have a very strong loyalty to Konoha, and as some people say it, they have the wall of fire. Then the other clans like Hattic clan more like Hattic family, Shimura like Hattic also Ino Shikicho alliance, is quite good, and has a lot of influence especially Bekao Sakamichi Fupils, Yamanaka mind reading, which gives invaluable information and Nara intelligence and medicine. Also the Aburan clan around 80 members most are ninja, except the ones who married in the clan. The clan is also a superior in tracking Bekaus of their techniques, like the female insect can be left on a target, which then can be tracked by smell by the male insect, or scout insects can be sent out and returned to tell the host information about the area. For this reason, Aburan clan members are experts in espionage. They can communicate with the insects, and the insects specialize in stealth, because they make no noise or motion during combat. And on top of it, the clan is a noble clan in Konoha, one of the four in it together with Akamichi, Hayugurn and Chiha. There are also some clans that aren't even worth mentioning Bekaus of their small numbers, and also their non-big name Shinobi. So yeah, our clan is really trashy. But then there is also the Senju clan, it was the greatest clan in Konoha on its glory days. But now I can count its members in one hand, and by the time Cannon comes with one finger. There were a lot of Senju deaths on the first war, and a lot of assassinations on them, as soon as Hashirama died. They didn't want the power of a man who was able to capture the tailed beast to be passed on. After all what Hashirama did was shocking at the time, so the Achiha were overlooked even though Madara fought Hashirama, Madara had the Nine Tails, and he still lost, so the Senju were primary targets during any mission. Anyway I now am in front of clan leader's house a big house with a big yard. I go through the gate inside without knocking and go to the front door and say, I am coming in. I then go towards the chakras that I am sensing one Jounin and three Haichunin, and go towards an open area looks like a sparing dojo like area. And there is the clan head surrounded by three big wolves, which probably are his Ninkin. He seems to be relaxing on top of them, and reading a book. When I arrive there the three Ninkin open their eyes and look at me. But I simply ignore them and look directly at the clan head and say, I am here to become the new clan head. And I immediately start concentrating chakra in my throat after that and start to prepare something. His body jolts, he drops the book down and looks at me gets up, and the wolves get up and start growling at me. The clan head looks at me and looks angry and starts growling and says, you are quite arrogant little brat, you think that you can just barge in and say things like that. I guess I will have to teach a lesson to a pup WHO became arrogant just because he made a name for himself. Well the Inuzuka clan are a bit more primal than the other clans, and a clan member can take the clan head position, by challenging him. If anyone has a problem they have to just sort it through violence, though killings are not allowed. That is how the current clan head took his title he even took the previous one's data. Truly a clan of savages and unintelligent people. As he looks ready to pounce at me. But as he is about to do so I release the technique in my throat, and it comes out as a loud growl of a beast. Demonic illusion, dog binding and as soon as that happens the clan head's eyes become unfocused, and he stays in his place even the dogs seem out of it. I then just appear behind him and kick the back of his knee, to get him in my level, and take a kunai, and point it at his artery, and draw a little bit of blood from it. He then uses Kai and gets out of it, but when he sees his current position he gets nervous. I even put out some killing intent, and amplified it with a small jinjutsu, to make it more sinister he won't notice in the panic. He was really easy to beat, probably because he is more of a tracker, plus he was probably focused in only learning the Inuzuka techniques, and didn't think he needed any other, and took pride in his talent and clan. And I charged my Jinjutsu which wouldn't be possible in a battlefield. By the way my Jinjutsu is transmitted by the sound of my growl. I release him from my hold and just say to him. He falls to his knees and is gasping for air like he saw a monster or something. Time to get to business. After all even though the Inuzuka clan is a middle low class clan in Konoha, I am still going to use the resources and founding, to start the next stage of the main plan. I then look at the book he put down, and it is bingo book it looks pretty new. 
so he probably got the updated one recently. My curiosity got the better of me, and I took the book casually and scarped all the pages of it, and finally came to a stop, and I see a child with red markings and black pupil-less eyes, it's me. I then look at my nickname and bounty. Yami Inuzuka code name, Red Fang H, 8 Bounty, 13.000.000, Ryo Rank, E Class Ninja proficient in Tajutsu, has large amount of chakra for his age, and his strong point is Ninjutsu. Be aware the ninja is a scheming type ninja who uses his young age to do sneak attacks and misdirection. He usually strikes when the enemy think they have got him, best known for taking out the Chibi Jinchuriki. Wanted in by Wing Kautry for his part in the capture of the Jinchuriki and multiple kill counts of San Ninja... The page was filled with information about me after the first few lines. It was all useless information of how I was an Inuzuka, when I entered academy etc. The bingo books require information to fill a page. It usually puts your most noteworthy actions in there, but I don't have that many, so they just put my academy graduation age, my usual clothing etc. If you really want more information you got to go find an info broker. By the way the nickname is truly unoriginal Red Fang. It kind of makes sense in Yuzuka and all, but they probably did it back else I fought besides Sakumo the White Fang. Well anyway, I could still get a new nickname from another country like Kakashi did copy Ninja Kakashi and Kakashi of the Sharingan. By the way the bounties are not put up by the village, but by the country. Anyway I look at the clan head now he is standing, and I then ask, how much money is in the clan bank account? He looks at me unsure, and I just immediately realize my killing intent. And then he stands more straight as he says, there are 53 million Ryo in the clan account, it is all the clan head savings, plus the 10% we take from every in Yuzuka individual's mission. I nod at him. It's true every mission you do 10% is taken by the village from the payer, and 10% from the clan if you are in any. The clan budget is of course for maintaining the clan stables, roads etc. The clan takes 10% of the profit also if you have an establishment like a restaurant, clinic etc. I then tell him, okay then, where is your office where you keep all your paperwork? The clan head tells me the directions and I make a clone, and it nods at me and goes away. I then look at the clan head without saying nothing. He starts getting nervous and then looks uncertain and finally asks, are you going to take my daughter as your wife? If you are I guarantee you your children will be strong, especially with the Inuzuka secret breeding technique. That was how Tsum was conceived. I just narrow my eyes, signal my dog to get down from my hoodie and do something, and I then say, the best your daughter can be is a concubine of mine. After all if I'm going to marry someone it's going to be a political marriage, not some weakling's daughter. He looks angry and just grinds his teeth together and immediately uses four-legged technique. His brown long spiky hair stand up his claws lengthen, and his fangs become more defined. I just look at him and simply use shunshun and appear beside my dog, and behind him, I also use four-legged technique, and just simply jump up catch the back of his head with my hand and smash it down on the floor, and the floor cracks he is unconscious, and I cancel my technique, and I then use medical ninjutsu to wake him up, he wakes up and looks around confused, I then calmly say to him, did you see now, you lost without even knowing how, if this was a real battle you would have been dead, he looks afraid and unsure of something, well then I need to get rid of him fast and silently, or he will become a thorn on my side, after all a pack doesn't need two leaders, I keep acting like the definition of an alpha of the pack, and he still is unsure about something, well any Anyways I then tell him, show me the way to the clan head's library. He nods fearfully. Just then the clone comes in with a one finger thick stack of papers. I take it and put it under my hoodie to check later the status of the clan, and how to make it better. Then the clone dispels. Then I tell the previous clan head to lead me to the clan head's library immediately. He does so and as we are walking I think, he has gotten really submissive all of a sudden. Probably when he saw our difference in strength. He probably thinks of me as a monster or something. But who cares I will get rid of him silently in the coming days, and make up a story about it. Anyway as I go into the library I see only a shelf and a small room I go inside, and then I made my decision known. From now on I will be living in this house. The clan head looked shocked at this. What? No you can't do that where will me and my daughter live. I just wave him off. I don't truly care, but since I am merciful you can stay here with your daughter. I am not cruel to do like what you did to the clan head before you. Because I am way crueler. I then look at him and ask, by the way what's your name? He looks perplexed and then says, you didn't know your clan head's name. My name is Akira by the way. I just shrug my shoulders. Huh, I never really cared about it. Anyway Akira spent 25 million Ryo from the clan's money in building me a medical lab in the dojo thing. I then take out a paper and write everything that I need on it. If you need more take it from the clan's money by the way if I see you are stealing money from me. I again use demonic illusion. Dog binding and he is in the Jinjutsu again this time he gets out of it in 5 seconds. While he was in that I used some useless Jinjutsu I learned in the academy to make my eyes shine red and then I coldly say. I will kill you. His face pales and his body started shaking. But I still just simply said. Anyway for the things I need to buy. You could send someone to go do the chore themselves. Then I continued. By the way where is your daughter? Akira seems uncomfortable as he said. Well, ah, uh, she is learning the Inuzuka techniques in the Inuzuka training ground. I just looked at him like he was insignificant. Okay then anyway I am going to bring my stuff in this house. I then make a clone and tell it to bring my stuff here. Well then time for some manipulation. I just smiled a little. You know what, don't tell anyone that I am now the clan leader. Akira just frowned a little. And why would I do that? I just look at him and narrow my eyes. Do you know why I don't want the glory of being the youngest clan head? And that I took down one of the strongest people in the village. He now looks confused. And flattered. What a dumbass. 
I then tried to put the idea in his skull by saying, when I took you down I didn't do it to take the clan head title from you even if I barged in like that. I did it to prove to you that I am able to do so. Now, do you know what the other clans would do with that knowledge? He still looks even more confused. What an unintelligent person. They would rip us apart try to make us fight each other. We must keep this a secret after all me and you we could rise this clan to the top. No dream can be too big with the two of us working together you as the light and me as the darkness. We will be making history together. He looks proud and happy for the future he has our anticipating face like he can't wait for the future to come. Then I put the final nail in the coffin to my little scheme as I said. You could just say that I am your successor to any person who asks about me. And the most important of all we are family no matter what don't forget that. After all, even if you are erased from history, or Shun the only ones who will stay forever truthful to you as family. He nods. He really is an idiot. And really easy to manipulate. He might not even notice it yet. But he already sees me as his leader after all. I just used force to make him submit, and then flattery and fake promises to make him feel important, also to make him think that after all is over, we are still going to be family and a strong one at that. Anyway my clone comes back and I then dispel it. I get some memories from it. It was me explaining my mother that the clan head told me that he will train me to be the clan head. She looked super happy and told me to come visit her sometimes. I really need this rumor to spread out as much as I can. I need to be known as the successor after Akira dies. And then I go to his office and break the wall that connects to the next room with a punch to make a passage to it. It's not really a strong wall it's made out of cheap wood. I then tell him, I will be taking the room next to the office bring a bed in here, and I or a clone of mine will manage the clan. By the way I don't believe I have to tell you, but don't talk to anyone about me in a bad light, because they will use it against us. Not even your daughter or she might tell someone. Akira just nods as he said, okay don't worry I will become a great figurehead for the clan. He seemed happy probably that he won't have to do paperwork, and he is getting rewarded, and is going to get praised by doing nothing. I then sit on the office chair and say, by the way be careful of everyone, trust no one, think of all the people as your enemies, and think of every outcome possible. Think about everything, never show any weakness to anyone. He gulps and says, of course I will. I didn't really try to warn him. I said that to make him paranoid and not trust anyone. He will see everyone around him as an enemy and all that. Sometimes I wonder how I would have fared if I was reborn in Game of Thrones universe. But in there I would have to use softer power. And there are master schemers all around there. Also I would have to keep up the relationships that I built. Thankfully ninja in here are better at killing that being political schemers. Akira went to order the items I told him ahead of time. Anyway after bringing a bed in my room and now I am sitting in my office papers on the table. But I have clan secret technique books that I am reading together with my clones. You know my non-existent respect for the Inuzuka is going down to negative numbers. What's up with these useless techniques? There were only two slightly useful ones where Inuzuka's secret breeding forbidden technique in which two partners breed in their wolf forms. And when the child is born, it is a child with higher instincts and better affinity for the Inuzuka techniques. But there is also a drawback like for every forbidden technique the mother has a 70% chance to die on childbirth. That was how Sume was conceived. And then there was the fast growing Ninkan technique it helps grow your Ninkan fast and make it become bigger than average but it shortens their lifespan. Anyway I sense someone with high academy level chakra coming in the territory. It opens the front door and comes inside and says, Father I am home. I get up and go in the hallway where I see her. She truly looks wild with her naturally slit eyes and wild hair. She looks like when she was grown up except she is now a miniature version of her grown self. This might also be another drawback of the technique to look more wild. But that doesn't matter I just smile and tell her, Hey there you must be soon. She immediately is on guard when she sees me. What a good little ninja. Who are you? What are you doing here? I smile and put up a friendly face. Hey no need to be on guard. I am your father's disciple. Then make a face like a kid and then whisper to her from far away like it's a secret. I might even be his successor. Soon got angry at this. Wait what no way, his successor is me. I then just pull out the bingo book out of my hoodie inside pocket and open it and point at my picture while she said, No way, you are in the bingo book and you are so young. She seems to be thinking something then looks at me. Then she blushes. She is probably thinking that her father plans to have us married. As if that is going to happen little girl. There are benefits to be made by my marriage. Even if there weren't any gains from it, there are a lot of hotter girls to chose from than her in this world. Then she looks more relaxed and she asked my name, age, hobbies, dreams. I of course answered with what she liked to hear like dreams of a big family with a loyal and strong Inuzuka wife. Anywhere after some time Akira came in and I then say, Akira-sensei did you finish the thing that you said you were going to do? He looks confused at why I address him so respectfully when before this I was treating him as trash. Then looks at Tsum. Then he remembers why I did that, so he just says, Yeah! Why yeah I finished it. He really is a bad actor that can't think on the moment. It's really surprising how he became a Jounin. Really sensei how long is it going to take? Now that he is no longer surprised by my childishness he answers more clearly. Well for everything it's going to take about a week to do the installment and refurnishing it. I just smiled slightly as I said. Are okay? I hope it's worth the cost. He looks confused again, after I make a circle with my thumb and pointing finger, then he gets the meaning. Then he answered, Ah uh, yeah, it was in the budget I even hired a group of professionals to put it up fast. That's why it's getting done in a week. Soon looks confused by all this. Okay then time to train I will leave the paperwork to one of my shadow clones. But before I do that I say to Tsum, 
You have to get strong to catch up to me little girl. Soon just pouted as she said. You are young yourself also only 8 years old and I am 6. Just wait I will definitely catch up to you. I smile at her without any challenging look in my face. I need a good relationship with her for the future. Then I just get ready to train hard with shadow clones. Time skip. One week in this week a lot has been going on. My medical lab is fully furnished and everything is ready. I have had 6 clones every day one does the paperwork for our clan. And I have found out what most civilian Inuzuka do. They are dog carers, dog handlers, dog trainers, dog food makers. Pretty much 85% of them have dog-related kind of jobs. The other 15% have normal jobs like clerks, waiters, etc. Anyways, this week I have been feeding the clan head poison that weakens the heart. It is odorless. So his dogs can't smell it even though the poison is slow. It is a medical drug that helps to treating dangerous diseases. But it also weakens the heart. I mixed it with some other ingredients to make it dangerous. But that is the main ingredient. Two of my clones have been learning new stuff about technology. And three others have been studying Chiyo's puppet that I have. Time skip. One week my clones are still training. And I have opened a dog fight arena in the Inuzuka clan for dog fights for civilians to come watch. It is to bring a new form of entertainment for people, and a distraction against the war that is going on. Of course the fights are all fake like wrestling it looks dangerous. But it's not really we don't really want to hurt our dogs after all. We don't want to spend all the money we earn in medical fees. I have also been keeping tabs on the news from the rain village, because I want it to align with my plan perfectly. The clan head has been getting some pain from his left side, but they are small, so he thinks it's nothing. After finishing technology installment and learning how to put technological parts together. Technology here is so weird by the way, and surprisingly, I learned some new things about it. Clones sure are convenient, except the head pains I get sometimes when I pop the ones with a lot of complicated information. They are nothing just temporary memory overload. Anyway after finishing that I got into Jinjutsu training to try and learn more about it. Now that I have access to C-Rank Chunin section in the Jutsu library as a Chunin, I learned a lot of Jinjutsu from C-Rank and D-Rank. I learned one that I got really interested on the Paralysis Jutsu. The same Jutsu that Orochimaru used in Sasuke on the Chunin exam. Also the same Jinjutsu Itachi used on Orochimaru. It's a C-Rank Jinjutsu that if you add your own twist to it like Itachi did with the stakes that hold him down, it could go potentially A-Rank. I put dogs in it to raise it to be rank Jinjutsu. Now my dog binding Jutsu just got upgraded. I learned Jinjutsu to get it to become useful to me in battles. Even though I don't have the Sharingan I am pretty good at Jinjutsu. Time skip. One week, now the clan head keeps getting worse and worse heart pains he doesn't tell anyone not even me. He just keeps training more he thinks that it is from not doing enough training these last years. And even if it isn't he hopes it goes away. He now even has dark circles under his eyes when I ask him about it. He just says it's nothing. Before he says anything to anyone I give him some painkillers also mixed together in the food to make him feel better and some sleeping medicine and dinner to make him sleep. He even brightened up for a couple of days. Good, I don't need him to go talking about it to anyone. Time skip. One week. Well then I have two news one is bad and one is good news. Let's start with the good news the three now called Sanin fought against Hanzo the Salamander it came out a draw from Kanoa's propaganda presentation when in reality he let them go. The Sanin now have also started working as a team and taking on a lot of S-rank missions that keep getting the residents of Kanoha pumped up. Also most of the missions are being made public after completion with confidential details hidden to keep the morale up. I even studied the basics for Fujutsu of what different seals mean. This is truly complicated even with my clone after a week of studying. I can't make even a good explosive tag. I can only make a firework explosive tag which is pretty time much for pranks, and it is an E-rank seal. And now the bad news the clan head Akira has died in his bed his daughter was there when he died. I remember it like it was yesterday. Flashback to his day of death, Akira POV. Clan head, how? I can't move, damn it. I thought I started getting better. Then my daughter comes in the room because I was not down for breakfast, and sees me in pain and clutching my chest and not moving. The pain is truly unbearable. She seems panicked and does the first thing that comes to mind. Yami, Yami come here father is not feeling good. I hear him say, okay come with me to him you might be able to help me. Then I feel a feeling of relief wash over me even through the pain. After all, he is a student of a famous medical Kanuchi, which is the first Hokage's granddaughter. I am thankful that he doesn't want to be in the light, or I would have been seen as a weakling. If everyone knew I was defeated by child. I even had a bad feeling about him at first. He really is a true family when I beat the old clan head I couldn't wait for him to die. Now that I think about it, the pains they started immediately after Yami came to live with us. Then as if hit by a one-ton brick in the head everything falls into place. This, this can't be true. Yami he did this didn't he? That dishonorable scum. Okay dot I need to calm down first maybe it was someone else. Then I hear my daughter come in. And I look at her then at Yami behind her. I just look at his eyes. And I immediately knew it was him. Even though he has a worried look in his face when I look at his eyes, my instincts scream at me. I don't even look at my daughter and try to say. E dash T dash Tsum B dash B tears come out of Tsum's eyes. Yes father what is it? Them as I keep my eyes on Yami as he catches on what I am about to say. I am filled with abject despair. I see even his mask go away. And he just has a cold look on his face. And the only thing I can think about is. Ah uh, how unlucky of me to meet this kind of scary monster. So before I die I want to tell my daughter the truth. But I know he will kill her if I do. I can feel it in my bones. So I just tell her. Won't be dash be safe to you. And see POV. After he died I made sure he was dead. And even to be sure I stabbed a semen inside his mouth. Down his throat and to touch his brain. He is definitely dead. 
Now I also made sure he didn't leave a secret message or anything. Soon was crying next to him. I then took him to the hospital to the emergency ward. Normally people would be asking questions about his death, and I had a lot of made up answers. But as he was in the hospital, one hour later the news of the making of the Sanin came. I didn't know the exact date of it, but I planned it to be around the same time as the death of Akira like a day or two before the Sanin. But to be on the same day I really lucked out on this. Now everyone is distracted by the Sanin. The Inuzuka are about to have the funeral the same day, and I am ready to go and report it to the Hokage's office with Soon behind Dot. But someone stops me at the Hokage office door, he has John and Chakra and says, Sorry, but the Hokage is in an important meeting. I am sorry, but the Hokage must know this, a clan head has died. His eyes widen and he says, Quote as I see from your face markings, it must be the Inuzuka clan. My condolences but I am sorry, but I really can't allow you in there. The meeting is super important. Soon then screamed. Wait why yo dash. But as she is about to do that I cover her mouth with my hand. And as I calmly said. Wait I'm sorry for her behavior. She has had a bad day. And I understand your dilemma. Good day to you. I then take Soon back even though she struggles a bit. I take her out of the Hokage's tower. After we go outside I took my hand off her mouth. And she immediately said angrily. How dare they do that to one of the strongest clan in Kanova. Why did you stop me? And there comes the dumb Inuzuka pride and delusion. Well time to make a little manipulation. I didn't have a choice but to do so. You would have gotten our clan in trouble. Don't you know that the village doesn't respect our clan enough to let your behavior slide? What the hell are you talking about? Our clan is one of the strongest clans in Kanova. Said Soon with a voice full of conviction. I just side dot quote get over your pride we are one of the weakest clans in Kanoha, and at best we are in the middle of the power range. Soon just angrily stomps and quarrels with me. Shut the hell up. What do you know about the Inuzuka clan? When you are just an Inuzuka civilian born, then tell me a weaker clan than ours. We only have a handful of special Jounin in tracking, and all the other ninjas in the clan are tuning or lower. That was what me and your father were trying to fix. I calmly explained to her. She seems to think about it a bit, and she becomes sad. After all, when a clan head dies, it is expected of the Hokage to be in the funeral, and the Hokage not being able to come is another bonus to me to convince my clan to help me become their leader after all, even though the Inuzuka fight a lot against each other. When someone from outside interfere and when they have a common enemy, they will come together and support each other like a wolf pack. I will pick at their pride and make them trust me and follow me. But I must not go overboard or the Inuzuka might end up like the Ichiha did in canon. Even though it wouldn't happen immediately because we are at war, I then say, let's go to the funeral. At least we have to pay respects to the clan head. And don't worry about anything I will take care of the Inuzuka clan. I put up a determined face and go to the Inuzuka clan compound. And then we go to the gathering place, and we go towards all the Inuzuka clan head's graveyards, with a new hole open next to it. I also paid one mil ryo from my own pockets for the grave to be special and beautiful. After all every Inuzuka clan head had an expensive grave. Then as he was being put on the ground we all had a moment of silence. Soon was trying to be strong. But tears were coming out of her eyes and she was holding my hand. I just kept my head down and didn't do anything. When I looked at the people around me despairing because the only Jounin in the clan died and sad because they liked him as a clan head, he was good to his people. I didn't know what to feel. I was also almost overcome by some unknown feeling that I had buried a long time ago. But then I look at the grave and think, no way am I giving up my dream back out of some stupid thing, like making other people feel despair. I will do whatever it takes. I will follow the plan after all for every person I kill. I am killing a son, brother, father, uncle, daughter, mother etc. I understand that. But I am not going to let that hinder me in my dream. I don't care what happens to these people, these killers, these barbarians, even those innocent. After all the completion of one's dream is the process of stepping on the dreams of others. The bigger the dream, the more steps you need to take. There doesn't exist anything like a free meal in this world. Others will just try to hold you down like weights. They can't wait for you to be their stepping stone. After the funeral ends I just go home and take Soon with me. In the funeral there were only Inuzuka no other clans at all. What a strong clan indeed. Sarcasm. Dash flashback and after that there were some clans that came to visit to offer their condolences. Only the Nara, Akimichi, Yamanaka and Aburam clan came. There also came an Ambu to offer condolences from Hokage, and tell me for me to meet him in front of the Kanoa gates tomorrow for the negotiations with the Sand. The Sand requested this. I spent a lot of money buying ninja tools today. Before I left I told the clan to wait for me to determine the clan head. They agreed after I told them my mission. And I then told some motivational or coded speech. It depends on how you interpret it. What I said was, the lone wolf dies while the pack survives. Now they will definitely wait for me after all I said something that sounded so cryptic in the message to them. Some of them widened their eyes like they understood. Whatever they think they understood was probably wrong. What I really wanted was for them to wait for me before they hold the election. I really don't want to beat another in Yuzuka clan head and manipulate him. It is really time consuming to do so. Time skip tomorrow. I am in front of the gates in the morning. I then see Hokage come with his fighting outfit and five Ambu around him. I can sense another five on the trees. After all, the sand are still our enemies. I have a couple ideas why the sand requested me, but I was ready even if Kanova wanted to sell me to the sand. I had a lot of ways to escape as soon as I saw something suspicious. Even though it is unlikely for Kanova to do that because, one Kanova doesn't give up its ninja too, 
I am the student of Tsuno 3, I am a clan member 4, I am well known, 5 if it did so, the morale would go down ek, etc. There are many reasons, but it doesn't hurt to be prepared. Anyway then we start going towards the land of rivers, and as we are going in about 10 minutes on the road, Hiruzen says, my condolences about the clan head's death, I am sorry I couldn't be there. I look at the ground to seem sad, no need to worry Hokage dash sama, you had to deal with the Senin situation and the peace talks with the Sen village. The Hokage then sighs in relief, he looks at me and says, thank you for your understanding. By the way, how did the clan head specifically die? I look around and see the Anbu. I even see the one Anbu with a cocoon of paper and a ceiling tag on it with lines all across the cocoon the Ichibi Jinchuriki is there. I then look sad like almost crying. It was an internal disease he didn't tell anybody except me. The reason he trained me was because he wanted me to succeed him. But there is also another reason, he wanted me to try to cure his disease. He did so because he didn't want to appear weak. He even built a whole laboratory in his house to assist me on the procedure. I started trying to make a cure for his disease. But it started getting worse. The pain was unbearable some time he couldn't sleep all night. I finally figured a way to prolong his life. Then I told him it's better if he went to a hospital. I said with a deep sadness and helplessness in my voice. Even some tears started to fall from my eyes. But he didn't listen, and it got worse until he died. I continued saying. I then wiped the tears out of my eyes and turned to the Hokage and said, Sorry for that behavior, Hokage. I put up a front of a kid trying to be tough by hiding my feelings. Plus, would you suspect the doctor of the one who died assassinated him? Who would suspect an eight-year-old kid to do that? And who would build somebody they suspect would kill them a laboratory? Here is and looks at me with a softness in his eyes. Don't worry, Yami, crying when someone close to you died is normal. I know that this war has toughened a lot of kids. But Yami, let me tell you something. Kanoha wasn't a place made for children to die and be sad. Kanoha is an ideal Hashirama Dash sensei had to not see children die younger and younger each war that happens. He wanted to build a utopia, a place where he and people like him could protect those close to him, said the Harrison with an inspiring voice. Damn, that is some really next level speech. If I was your normal kid, I would probably delusion myself in some fantasy that the village cares for me or something like that. Even while thinking that, I just look at the Hokage calmly and nod. After walking for a bit more, I decided to thank him. Thank you for the advice and wisdom Hokage dash Sama. Herzen just looks at me, and a small smile appeared on his face, as with a melancholic voice he just said. That is the least I could do after all you have been through. Akira dash Sam must have died happily to know that there is you to look after his family. If only you knew, if only you knew. I look decided to look down like I was contemplating something when in reality I did this. So the Hokage can't look at my face and read me, with my face down. I acted sad. I really hope so. I hope that he is looking over the Inuzuka. I said to Hiruzen with a sad voice. Then I continued saying. After all he can't expect a kid to do all that work without supervision. Now can he? Hiruzen looks at me sadly and looks a little down at what I said. He was proud of you also. Because of you we might be able to stop the war with sand. Then we could concentrate on the other nations. Said Hiruzen while he tried to cheer me up a little. I look at him hopefully and say. What I really hope it ends. I hope this war ends soon. It took so many things from me. Well, that is a half-truth at least. Let's see if he can find anything wrong with my expression. After all, I need to learn how to act better. Hiruzen just looks at me with the same look that he had before as he says. I knew your teammates Asutori and assume He wanted to be Hokage, and she wanted to help him be so. He would always get in trouble and play pranks on the other kids, and assume would always reprimand him. That seemed to work then we keep talking about different things. And we stop for the night and make camp we are still in fire country. We camp besides a lake called Fire Lake, and we set up camp there. The Ambu were taking turns keeping watch. But I still kept my dog up. I even make a shadow clone to keep watch over my tent. Then as I am sleeping my clone touches me on the shoulder. I wake up immediately and have my senses on full alert. I then sense 19 Jown and Chakra around our camp. We are surrounded. I signal my dog to stay out of the battlefield, and I dospel my clone. And as soon as I go outside I see a barrage of projectiles being thrown at us. Some even had paper bombs attached to them. Then I see the Hokage go in front, and use Earth style Earth Dome, and a dome of Earth surrounds our camp, and all I then hear explosions all around us. Hiruzen then undoes the Jutsu and all the Jounin surround us. They all have Sand Ninja headbands. You know as Jounin of the Villity hidden in the rocks, you are really bad at impersonating Sand Ninja, says the Hokage with a nonchalant look on his face. Some of them widen their eyes. And then 10 of them get in the back and start making hand signs. 8 of them use Earth style Great Mud River, and one of them uses a Fire style Ninjutsu to light the Earth River on fire. That is coming too is like a wave the Hokage just says to the Ambu and me. Stay close to me and don't fight to the death against them. I can take care of them without losing anyone. Said Hiruzen with a certain confidence in his voice. We go around him and he uses. Earth style mobile core and a platform rises us into the air like a pillar. Then the Ambu throws some fire jutsu towards the enemies. But they block with earth walls. Then we hear the 10 ninjas that have been using hand signs and concentrating chakra until now use. Earth style earth golem jutsu and a gigantic golem appears. And their chakra drop to about 85%. Hokage dash sama if you want to keep your life give up. I promise we will give you back to Kanoha after they have surrendered. Says one of the enemy ninja. Hokage just looks at them frowns his brows and uses. Does some hand signs and slams his palm on the ground. Summoning jutsu. And the monkey Emma comes out. Emma adamantine staff. Ordered Hiruzen. Then the earth golem immediately attacks. Hiruzen just looked at the attack calmly without a trace of worry on his face as he just simply said. Lengthen. Quash the staff lengthens and easily pierces through the stone golem. Widen. 
And with that word the battle is over, the staff widens and completely destroys the earth golem. An s rank jets are gone just like that, 10 Jowmen died they were crushed by the debris, and the staff just like that the other 9 see this, and immediately throw some jutsu at us, the Ember use earth wall to block it. But after it clears out it seems they used that as a diversion to try to escape. The Hokage sees this, and then uses Shadow Clone 9 clones are made heroes and throws a scroll at them, then they nod and give chase immediately. Then we finally have some time to take a breather. Three minutes later a clone returns with a scroll on his hands, and gives it to the Hokage. Probably a storage scroll with all their bodies. Let's get out of here our tents were destroyed anyway. Let's just keep going at the meeting point. Said Hiruzen, like he didn't just completely decimate a Jonin squad especially made to battle a cage. After that there were no more interruptions in our journey. The Hokage and me made some small talk about stuff. Then he went into full professor mode and started teaching me how he knew they were stone ninja etc. We then arrived at the Kanoha camp. I haven't been here in quite some time. Sukumo comes to greet us and then sees me. Hey kid how was your vacation? I just look down and seem sad and don't say anything. And Anbu then does some hand signs to explain what happened. Then Sukumo looks sad at me and says, my condolences for your loss. I am here if you need someone to talk to. Then we go to the battlefield and there we see one big tent with sand ninja in one side and Kanoha ninja on the other ready for war at any time. Then me, Sukumo and the Hokage go inside in there and the Kanoha Kanoha ninja stand aside and open a path for us to go in the tent. Then two Kanoha ninja open the tent's entrance flap inside. I see I look inside, and I see Chiyo with the third Kezuki sitting in chairs with the hands on the desk that they have there with a map of the all five nations. Then the we look at them and we sit in our chairs. Hokage in the middle, Sukumo and right and I in the left. The, the Kazuki looks at me with cold eyes and says, Kazuki so you are the brat that was able to take out Orochibi. You sure don't look like much. I see what he is trying to do. I just smile and say, me. Ha 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 thanks Kazuki dash sama. That was what Chiyo thought before I cut her arm off. Then I make a vile smile and continue saying, me. That is also what your Jinchuriki thought before I took him out. Of course some other San Jounin had the same idea as them, but of course they had it. How should I say it more critical? The Kazuki looks angrily at me and releases his chakra with killing intent towards me. But then the Hokage releases his before it gets to me and says, Hiruzen, you know Kazuki attempting to attack a ninja of a village you are trying to make peace with doesn't send the message of peace quite clearly. Chiyo looks at the Kazuki with disappointed eyes because he just got angry and led on by a kid. Sukumo looks at Kazuki and frowns. I just look at them with my usual smile like I didn't notice anything. They already were in a lower position than us by being the weaker village they had to wait for us. So that puts them lower. And with what I did right now, they got even lower the only people in the room who get this are Chiyo and Hokage, the others aren't quite experienced in politics. Even I am not quite like them in political knowledge. But the Hokage has a weakness he wants peace so bad, and the others know, because they know this. That puts us in a kind of stalemate with them for now. Then the Hokage tries to defuse the situation. Here is an, come on now we are going to be allies soon no need to bicker amongst each other. The Kazuki sees this and follows. Kazuki okay but for us to sing this treaty. I need the puppet that the kid took from Chiyo and the Jinchuriki. Here is an, I can give you the Jinchuriki for 500 mil Ryu. After all this is cheap, the first Hokage sold the one tail for 1 billion Ryu per tail, for tail beasts. Then they started negotiating for it with the end price 100 mil Ryu. Wow the Hokage really is a bad negotiator that is where his wish for peace weakened him and lowered the price exponentially. They also signed a 5 year peace treaty if they want to continue it they will meet again in 5 years. They can't exactly break this contract because it was signed by the two daimyo. Then Chiyo looks at me and says, Chiyo, okay kid now that we are allies return the puppet you took from me. Yeah right you old haggers if I will do that. I know that I can't keep it back house this puppets are precious to sooner. But there is no way I am giving those for free. I then smile and say, me, sorry Chiyo dash san, but I can't exactly turn it in for free. I am studying it. You can come take it after the war is over. She looks at me frowns her eyebrows and says, Chiyo, well I will give you 1 mil Ryo for it. Me, I will accept if you give me 20 million. Chiyo, are you crazy kid I can make two of those with that amount of money. Me, yeah, but the ingredients aren't quite easy to come by, especially in a war time. And I know that those puppets were made by the first puppeteer from the Anaim. If they were so easy to make sooner would have more of them. Chiyo, I will give you 5 mil for it. Me, since we are allies I will give it to you for 17 million. Chiyo, kid don't joke with me 7 mil is the final price. Me, then you will have to pay me when the war is over. Chiyo is sweating a bit and this says, Chiyo, 9 million. I act like I'm fed up with this and say, me, okay, okay no need to beg for it. I will give it to you for 9,500,000. Chiyo looks at me angry and then says with grinding teeth and a vein in her forehead. Chiyo, I dash you sigh. She then calms down and says, Chiyo colon quote dot okay. The others in the room had surprise faces after all seeing her 8 year old kid negotiating with a veteran, and coming out on top is surprising. Then after some more planning by the Hokage and Kazuki on how to put some more pressure on IWAHAKURI Rock Village. Then we leave the tent. Then the Hokage tells Sukumo. Here is an. Sukumo you have to go to the Lightning Country borders. I am coming also we have to slow down the third rakage. From the information from Root they are in the land of hot water they are almost in our borders. So we will slow them down. Then we go in our meeting tent there are only me, Sukumo and the Hokage. Sukumo seems kind of nervous and says. 
Sukumo, it's going to be hard to stop him even with us together. The third Rakage is known as the Almighty A. Hokage. Don't worry too much, Danzo will have Root disguised as Miss Ninja and attack the village hidden in the clouds directly. If the plan works, we will only have to only hold him for a bit. Hirazan then looks at me and says, Hirazan, what about you, Yami? Will you join us? Yeah, right as if I'm going in a battle against the third Rakage. That even Kaimubi Chakra Naruto couldn't beat without the clue from Eight Tails. Plus he was weakened by Ido Tensei. So yeah, no thank you. I just put up a face like I'm thinking. Me, I am sorry Hokage-sama, Sakumo-sama. But I have to look after my clan for a bit because of our recent tragedy. And me taking down one tails Jinchuriki has used all the luck I have. I am too weak to help Hokage-sama. Hokage looks at me and says, Hiruzen, okay kid look out for yourself on the road. By the way Yami you have a talent at haggling if you weren't an amazing ninja. I would think you were a scheming merchant. I smile and scratch the cack of my head and say, me. Yeah, I would like to think I would make a good merchant. But I had to think all the journey from Kanoha to here just to say that and what I was going to say. That's a lie even though I had minimal experience in marketing in my last life. That didn't mean I couldn't act like I did. I have acted my whole new life and in most of my last, combining that with some shows in my last life. I made myself act like a professional in this. When really I am not. The Hokage has a small laugh and says, Hokage. Yeah, but I think that is still talent in the job. You could give someone a week to think about it, and they wouldn't come up with anything half decent. Take care of yourself, Yami. I have high hopes for you. I look at him sadly and say, Me, you too please be careful Hokage-sama, uh, I can't wait for this war to end. I am just so tired of it. I then go towards a medical tent to just sleep I am way too tired. But as I turn around the Hokage says, Hokage, oh yeah. I almost forgot Yami for capturing a chibi you get 30% of the money in the deal. He just throws a scroll at me I open it. And it's a letter to Kanoha's bank with the Hokage's seal and signature. Oh, so I get 30.000.000. I thought the Hokage wouldn't give me anything because we are at wartime. But hey, more money will help advance my plan after the war ends. Time skip tomorrow. I woke up told Sakumo that I am going back to Kanoha and went on immediately. I didn't have any trouble in the road, and went top speed towards Kanoha I arrived in a day and a half. I immediately went to a hotel to wash up and go to the market, get some new clothes to wear that look like the ones I already have, but hey they are new. I then slept to be completely focused and then go towards the Inuzuka clan compound. So then let's get this scheme into action, so I can start the mech's part of my plan. I then go into the clan compound and concentrate on my sensing and since all of the ninja members of the clan were here, and most of the civilian ones this is good. Well then I make a clone and tell everyone to meet me at the clan head house. Minus 10 minutes later everyone of the ninja side of the clan are here and even some civilians. Then I go inside the others follow me and go towards the big dinner and meeting room. Then I stand before the door and point with my hand inside, subconsciously guide them and get them advantage. They follow, and everyone ninja and non-ninja that came sit down on the big tables the room is terrible. It doesn't have any decoration just 5 rectangular big tables and a platform for speeches. I then make 5 clones and tell to disguise the civilians. Then I also go in and tell the people attending. Me. Ladies and gentlemen you can you sit down please. They all sit down after they do so I sit down last. Another show of superiority by me. They really don't understand the language of subtlety. Then after I sit down I immediately say. Me. I have something to say to all of you. I will become the clan head. I look at them all challenging them to speak. I saw Tsum with the head down all science she sat down, finally look at me with something like approval in her eyes. So all that manipulation during the time we were living under the same roof wasn't in vain. The girl probably has a crush on me. Then Suminyazuka says, Wait why should we listen to you kid? A brat that isn't done smelling of his mother's milk yet. He has tune in chakra level. I just look at him and use paralysis jutsu. And he is like stuck in a place in fear. Then I just keep looking at him and say, Me, sit down. I didn't give you permission to speak yet. He just sits down with a scared expression and full of sweat. And I just say, Me, from what I know the strongest in Yazuka is the clan head. So to not waste my time and your time I have decided to challenge all of you in battle. All of you against me. Wot arrogant prick. Wot who does he think he is? Some of them were annoyed when I said so. Actually there were less people annoyed by this than I expected. But really though it isn't exactly really hard to take them out. None of them have the battlefield experience that I have. Most of them are trackers to find any enemy that has crossed into the fire country. And that is rare. And for them to fight it is even rarer. Anyway I get up from my chair and go in front of the room and tell my dog to stay hidden the opposite of me. And that is behind anybody that challenges me. I then say. Me. Come on you have to get up I am getting old jut waiting for you. All of the Inuzuka ninja get up and one of them says. Wot how about we go outside no need to ruin the house. Me. No need you guys won't be able to even blink when I am finished. With an angry face all of them attack me immediately. Without saying anything I probably pies them off enough. I then signal my clones they all throw Senban at them fast for no civilians to notice. And it hits them all in the neck and as soon as I see this. I use Shunshin and go through them, and to the side of my dog behind them. The people only saw me going through like a flash and all the ninja falling down. I then turn to all of them and say, Me, from now on I am the Inuzuka clan head. Does anyone else have a problem with IT? They don't say anything they just look at me with fear and clap uncertainly. Then I take the Senban out of the ninja's necks and say to them, Me, I am going to make this clan the greatest clan the five nations have ever seen. Are you all with me? Do you want to see our clan our family to the top of the world? They all look at me like they saw their leader or some deity. They are really easy to convince when you have power and a little Jinjutsu. 
First step of my plan completed. Time skipped three days later, as I was going around Kanoha. I kept thinking of the ways I can improve the individual strength of every Inuzuka Ninja Clan member. I have some ideas and some experimental techniques that I could try on them. I could make the techniques usable even for me. In theory they should work. But no way in hell am I testing them on myself. Better test them on some Inuzuka Ninja first. I plan on how to convince them. I guess I will just use power and glory manipulation technique to pull them towards me. Even though cliche it is the best one after all everyone wants power. And most want glory. And it is more convenient this way after all if an Inuzuka went missing suddenly it would be difficult to explain. We do have a small amount of ninja clansmen. But him volunteering is the best way possible. Anyway on to the little stuff. I leave my shadow clothes to do paperwork and improve the economic side. Now, I just need some materials to start my experiment. I had my clone do that. Then as I am walking I see a Raymond stand. Ah, that is the Ichraka Raymond. It is really small Raymond stand that probably jut opened I see a teenager working there. And I see two familiar people eating in there one of them I know from the academy. And one from the Anime. I smile and go to talk to them. Me. Hey. Me. Hey Minato long time no see. He looks in my direction and I wave and start jogging towards him. And when I am close, I sit in a chair to the left of him. And he sees me, smiles and says, Minato. Hey yummy long time no see. So you graduated early also huh? Me. Yeah, I was to the sand battlefield also. Have you been in any missions? I heard that your Jonin Sensei and my Jonin Sensei were teammates. He just smiles at me and says, Minato. Really that is cool my Jounin Sensei talked about his teammates when he drinks a lot. So which one is your Jounin Sensei Tsunade or Orochimaru? Me. Tsunade, she is a medic ninja. Anyway have you been in the battlefield? Minato. Yeah, I was in the Mist Country battlefield. But when Jiraiya Dash Sensei went to the Land of Rain to fight there he sent me back to Kanoa with my teammates. I act a little sad and like I'm trying to hide it. Me. Really so do you do any D-rank missions with them anymore? Minato. Yeah we do, usually 3 D-ranks a week. Because we are training most of the time we don't do any more. Yeah and in wartime Jenin can't go out of the village without permission or being escorted by someone of a higher rank into the battlefield. Because they could meet any Chunin or Jounin spy that would kill them or kidnap them. The area around Fire Country is patrolled a lot. But any ninja could slip in and it's dangerous. So you need to be Chunin or Jounin to go outside of the village. So Jenin if they are not cannon fodder they are your boys in time of war. I make a ridiculing smirk at him and say. Me. Did you know that I have no D ranks in my record? Minato then looks at me and says. Minato. Oh good for you. You have no idea how boring they get after some time. I just look at him and think. I was trying to annoy him a bit. Any normal 9 year old would have been annoyed. He really doesn't have an evil bone in his body. Well that is an expression Beck else I am pretty sure he has killed. Then I notice the girl that was next to him. That had somehow eaten 6 bowls of Raymond by herself. Get annoyed at being ignored by us and says. Kishina. Hey WHO. Oh, are you kid? You are being disrespectful. I just look at her and make an apologetic face and say, Me. Sorry. Sorry I didn't mean to do that senpai. Then I look at her and say, Me. By the way you are a kid also. Kishina. What did you say I am a genin so it doesn't matter if I am a kid. I just look at her with a mocking smile and say, Me. Well I am already a chunin. So that means I am your senior already. She just looks at me in anger her hair is floating behind her head. Ah so my mocking smile does work. Minato just looks shocked at me. Then he looks at Kishina and says, Minato. Kishina please calm down. And Jami stop pushing her buttons. I then have a small laugh and say, Me. Sorry. Sorry Kishina Dash Sen. I was just kidding Rond. Then after some seconds she takes a deep breath and calms down and says, Kishina. Okay I will forgive you if you treat me to Raymond. I look at her hair intently. She looks nervous she probably thinks I will make fun of her. But I just say, me. So by your red hair I guess that you are a Nuzumaki. Then I will buy you Raymond only if you. I give her a cold look. She gulps a little. I then make a bright smile and say, me. Teach me Fujutsu. She looks at me with a pissed off face and says, Kishina. What the hell you anticlimactic little shit. After she noticed what she said she had a small embarrassed blush. When I notice that I say, me. What do you mean I was going to have you teach me Fujutsu? Because the Yuzumaki were well known for it. She then looks at me and says. Kishina colon quote sai okay every day 2 o'clock here at this stand 5 bowls of Raymond Minato will also come because I have the same deal with him also. I then make a serious face and say. Me. Okay Kishina dash sensei. She blushes a little when I call her that. Though we make some small talk after that a younger Fuchi comes and joins the conversation while also cooking. Wow it's so easy to make friends with Kishina. She is super friendly when you get to know her. Then after some time we get up each of us going back to their houses Kishina towards the Senju compound going to Mito to learn from her. And to visit her. Minato towards his rented apartment that is in the same road that is towards my clan compound. As we are walking I say to Minato. Me. Suo what's the deal between you and her? Minato. Well we have the same deal as you do with her. Me. You know that's not what I'm talking about. Minato. Well she teaches me some beginner fujutsu because I am interested in it. I just give him a side glance and say. Me. If I am not wrong your Jaun and Teka Jiraiya knows some fujutsu. Why didn't he teach you? He has a good mask, but he is still too young to hide his panic from me. Minato. Well he is at war he can't and doesn't have the time for it. Me. He could have left some notes for his young and promising student. Or maybe he did leave some. He frowns, looks at me and says. Minato. 
What are you trying to say? Me. I am saying that Minato Namikaze is not a kid who wastes money needlessly. He just looks forward and says, Minato, if I am not wrong Tsunade-sama's grandmother is a master at Fujitsu and Inuzumaki. Why don't you learn from her? Me. Well, I don't want to be a bother to an old lady trying to enjoy her last years on Earth. Well that is a lie I am afraid if she can sense emotions like Karen could I don't really know if that is true or not from the Anime, so I am staying away from her. Then I say again, me, by the way I know you are trying to change the subject, so let's get right into it again. He then looks at me, snorts and says, Minato, then what is your conclusion Yami the guy who knows everything about everyone? Me, well my conclusion is that you like her. He stops and looks at me with a shocked face and a small blush, and says meekly, Minato, w dash w dash what I don't know what you're talking about. Me, oh I think I do my friend, I think I do. Then his shoulders slump down and he says, Minato, okay, okay you got it right, but please don't tell anyone. You are the only one who knows. Me, okay, okay no need to be so nervous I wasn't going to tell anybody. Then I look him in the eyes with a small smirk and say, me, because we are friends after all aren't we? Minato colon quote sigh, you are right we are friends I shouldn't have been worried so much about something like this. Me, but I still want something. He looks at me with wide eyes I make a small smile and say, me, what I need is a spa with you. Minato then looks at me and says, Minato colon quote Sai, you could have asked me normally I would have accepted anyway. I just smirk at him and say, me, I know, I know I'm just feeling dramatic today. Anyway we will spa tomorrow after Fujitsu studies with Kishina. He looks at me and says, Minato, okay? We then make some useless small talk until we part ways. Then I go into my house and see my clones training in the backyard. I just go immediately in my lab to make sure everything is okay. Then do some exercises to keep in shape and go to sleep. Tomorrow we just wake up take a shower. Wear my usual tub of clothes, and then sense the closest tune-in. Go outside and go towards him in about 2 minutes I see him in the training ground training with his Ninkin. Then I look at him he looks around 19 years old. So I just say, me, hey there, I see that you are training very hard. He turns and looks at me and says, woke good morning Yami-sama. He bows a little. You know the Inuzuka really are easy to manipulate and control with power. Even though it's a trashy clan, there are not many internal schemes, so that is good. I then look at him in the eye and say with a determined face, me, I saw you training hard in here, and I have developed a secret technique that makes Inuzuka stronger and I would like to reward you for your hard work by using it on you. You will become the first in Yazuka that I will use this technique on. So that means when I start using it on others you will have to teach them. Will you accept this reward and responsibility for US to make the Inuzuka clan the greatest? He looks at me with admiration. You know if this was my old world looking at a kid like that in the middle of nowhere would be suspicious. He then says, Wait yes, Inuzuka sama I look at his eyes and say, Me colon quote okay then we are going to my house for you to learn it, and I will have to activate it. He and his Ninkin come towards my house when we are walking. I tell him to introduce himself like Tsune did to us, likes, dislikes and hobbies. I wasn't really interested in them what I really needed was his name. I don't want him to think that he was just chosen randomly, because he was the closest ninja to my home, but because I was impressed by him. By the way his name is Akimaru Inuzuka. Then we arrive at my home we get into the lab, and then I tell him to lie down on the table. When he does so, I pick up his Ninkin and tell him that if he shouldn't be so close and stealthy knock him out after all it might feel his owner in danger and interfere. I also put him in the hallway, tied up not to move, and have my dog watch the door when I close it for no one to interrupt me. I also put up the sign in the door that says doing something critical don't come in, so I won't be interrupted by Tsu. I then put two thin tubes his nose, and he is immediately unconscious. Well not really this is one of the things I had my clone by a kind of drug that you can't move and you are knocked out, but it keeps the chakra activity normal. Like you are awake it's expensive because of its rarity. I bought a lot of different things my clone spend about 1 mil ryo buying different things. And this first experiment is not dangerous. The worst he can get is memory loss or something trivial like that. I can just bash his head on a tree and leave him there on the training ground. And most would think that he got injured while training. I wrap him in the table tight with belts and ropes all over his body and the table, leaving only the upper part of his head open and above his heart. Then I took out an extra thin senban like needle run chakra through it, and stayed it into his brain. His body jolted a little after the stab. I immediately took it out. I just punctured a hole into the first gate, gate of opening. I run a full scan on his body. His body didn't have any injuries. The punctured hole in the gate closed, and gave him a small increase on strength and speed for 3 seconds. That experiment was just to check if the gates can be punctured by someone else from outside. Now starts the big experiment. If he dies I will have to make it seem like a training accident or assassinations or something. But it's not really that important nobody is going to thoroughly investigate a tune and death in wartime. Well the head of the clan might make further investigations, but I'm the clan head so yeah. I take another needle like the first one and run chakra through it. Then I look towards his heart and I make a small hole in it, his body immediately starts heating up, and now he is jolting violently. I then immediately pull out the needle the hole on the gate is not closing itself, but it's starting to become bigger. Well that is with an expectation I just use my chakra to forcefully close the small hole. But it only stops expanding, and it doesn't close so then stab him again in that hole. 
and use healing chakra through the needle while taking it out. It then heals. I wish I had a Dejutsu to be able to see what is going on there. But I don't have one so I have to fully 100% concentrate my chakra sensing in his heart and have different machines to be able to help me with the job. And even then it's not even 80% accurate. I then run a scan through his body. It's definitely taken a toll on his body. It even took some lifespan not a lot, but still not a technique I would use on myself. It did raise his original chakra amount a little, and his original body strength a little from the destroy muscles. So it has an ability to raise body strength and chakra temporarily, and even raise it a little of it forever after every usage. But it's really like giving lifespan to get stronger. Anyway I think I got the results I wanted, and it was within speculation. I now can raise the strength of my clan. I could make a curse mark on top of their hearts to open and close the small hole I will make for them, and keep the hole from expanding. I really need to be a master in Fujutsu to be able to do that. Of course, I also definitely will put a kill switch in the curse mark. I am not a rush married to let my pawns kill the king themselves. Then I wake the guy up and dose him on pain relievers to not feel the pain that his body is in. He seems confused and tired. I tell him that now I will call him after some time to get the final treatment. I even give him 500.000 Ryo and tell him to go get something to eat and not to push himself. Then he goes away. After some time of putting everything back in place and writing this method in a book of course, I wrote it in English, not in the same language as the Naruto world. I think it's Japanese. I don't want anyone to be able to read it. After some rest it is time to go to Kishina's lessons, and after that, I can't wait to fight Minato, to truly see his talent and how much he has grown after all he now does have the chakra levels of. After all he does have the chakra level of a peak tune and a step away from Jounin level, not really surprising because of his talent. He experienced a metamorphosis from advanced chakra exercises, even thought to grow his chakra so fast in just a year and a half science graduation. Of course don't compare his chakra levels with mine, which is almost high Jounin. I have been training chakra science I was 2 years old, and I even had higher that average chakra of birth. The higher the chakra level gets the harder it gets to train it. I think his speed will slow down exponentially when he goes to Jounin level, and it will be turtle speed. When you get the chakra to the level of cage, there is also the problem of chakra limit everyone has a chakra limit. It is how much the chakra can grow. Of course there are some methods to extend that limit. I still haven't reached my limit so I don't have worry about it yet. But anyways you can't really base chakra level to strength with Ninja like Minato. I bet he is already at a minimum of low Jounin in strength even though he is only 9 years old. By the way he really is mature for his age with his actions and ethic. Not the kind of mature I have, but the kind of mature natural geniuses have. Then as I am walking I go to a Chiraka Raymond, and I see Kishina already there I am 5 minutes earlier than the set time. I don't really want to test the limits of her nerves by being late. Then I sit down and tell her, me, hi Kishina, how are you doing? She just looks at me and says, Kishina, hi and what's up with that generic question? Me colon quotes I I'm kind of bored Sue. Do we have to wait for Minato or can we start? She then puts her head on the table and says, Kishina, well we can't really start. But you can show me how much you know about seals. I make an embarrassed face and tell her, me, I am not really that good at it. I just want to learn it. I only know some firework seals. Kishina just looks at me and then covers her mouth trying to stop the laughter and says, Kishina colon quote dot 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 pft dot ha dot ha 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 you want to learn fujutsu like that? After some laughter about one minute of it Kishina looks at my face, which is completely serious and kind of angry. I am not really angry after all she is just a kid, so I am just acting. Then I tell her, me, I have been learning fujutsu for only a short time I am just interested in it. She looks at me and smiles and says, Kishina, no need to be so angry. Won't she that pulls out a scroll and summons something out of it? It's a book she gives it to me and I read the title, and it says Yuzumaki beginner fujutsu. I immediately start reading it, and it's amazing it has all kinds of seals in it. It has from the finger carving seal which Jiraiya used to draw the code on the back of the toad, when he died. This is the introduction to fujutsu in this book. And at the end of the book is the three barrier seal, which is similar to the five seal barrier technique, instead the user places three sealing tags around their location. If anyone manages to enter through a secret entrance of the protected hideout, a deep mist is created, and the only way to get rid of it is remove the tags around the protected area. This is so good, this is a gold mine. If I am able to learn all the Fujutsu Kishina is able to teach me, I will become one of the best Fujutsu masters in Konoha or possibly the Five Nations. When canon starts after all the Yuzumaki at that time are almost all exterminated, and almost all their knowledge is lost. In the beginner Fujutsu in Konoha library, they taught Firework Seal as an introduction to Fujutsu, and the Small Explosion Seal at the end, which it's not really good against Ninja, because of its long fuse time and small explosion. This Yuzumaki book introduces the normal explosive seals that ninjas use on the battlefield in the beginner version. I can't wait about the advanced version. Finally something new and exiting. Anyway as I am reading this book I sense Minato coming towards us, and I then look towards him, and say to him hello, and then Kishina starts explaining and teaching him the intermediate book that they have started to learn, and Kishina explains him while eating Raymond, that I and Minato bought her. 
two hours later we finish our studying I even learn the finger carving seal to use in one finger. Them as we get up I put the Yuzumaki book in my scroll, and I tell Kishina, me, hey Kishina wanna be a referee me, and Minato are going to have a spa. She seems a little conflicted, but she said, Kishina, okay sure. Then we start walking towards the training ground, and as we arrive there Minato and I stay opposite of each other about 20 meters, 65-7. I give my ninkin to Kishina. Then she says because I am not going to show them everything I know. Kishina, begin. And Kishina immediately jumps back far away to view the battle and not interrupt. As soon as she does so Minato does a fire style fireball jutsu I then use earth style earth wall to block it. But I immediately jump back because I sensed a shadow clone behind Minato. And I am sure he was about to use a wind jutsu to power up his fire jutsu. But he doesn't use the jutsu he just keeps looking at me. Then he smokes and says, Minato, so you are a sensor. Me, you are also a sensor right? Minato, you are right I am a sensor I think yeah he is a sensor, but from the manga I know he is the opposite of me. He is a long range sensor, which can sense chakra further than me, and more clearly from far away. But from close, the chakra sense is more turbulent, and he has to concentrate to sense clearer up close. But I know in the Anime he learned a technique to sense chakra nearby. I don't think he has learned that technique yet. Then Minato comes to me in a tajutsu fight up close. And we are warming up fighting leisurely while talking. I still keep an eye on his clone also. Minato. You knew when I sensed your chakra when we first met. It was quite surprising seeing a kid younger than me with more chakra. The only other person my age that has more chakra than me is Kishina. He is right Kishina has about the same amount of chakra as me maybe a little higher. But I know that when she becomes a Jinchuriki, she will leave me behind a lot by chakra amount. After all being a Jinchuriki on top of an Yuzumaki, you are asking for a monstrous amount of chakra. Anyway as we are fighting into Jutsu I get serious as he is about to punch me. I activate four-legged technique, swipe his hand sideways, and then swipe his legs under him, and kick him in the stomach, and he flies away. As he is flying away I see him do hand signs, and I immediately jump backwards, and as soon as I step in the ground, I feel the ground moving I jump up and throw a kunai, when a hand comes out of the earth, and it pops in a smoke cloud that obscures my vision. I also sense that Minato's chakra has disappeared, but I can still smell him, but he was somehow able to suppress his chakra. Then I smell him and kick behind me. He blocks with a kunai pointed at my foot, but I still kick him away. My sandals are after all ninja sandals with light metal inside the core of it. I just look at him and ask him, Me, how were you able to suppress your chakra like that? He looks at me and smirks. Minato, it was from a seal you will learn in the intermediate Yuzumaki Fuinjutsu book. But it has a drawback you can't use ninjutsu while you have it on you. He shows me his wrist with a rip tag on it. Oh I see now. Well then I need to make countermeasures against that. Minato, how about you? How were you able to find me? I just point towards my nose. Minato, ah I see I didn't take that in account I forgot about it. He then uses lightning style. Spider net and the lightning spider net starts spreading on the ground I jump back on a tree. Then Minato looks at me and throws a kunai. I see the kunai heading towards me then as I dodge the kunai Minato appears from it. He used substitution with the kunai. Then I kick back immediately. He positions his body mid-air and dodges and still kicks me towards my face which I block with my hand and throw him against the tree hard. But then it turns out it was a log and he is behind me with a kunai about to stab at me. I immediately use substitution. He stabs the Jinjutsu on the log that looks like me lightly in the shoulder not to hurt me. But then it poofs out and it turns onto a log. Then I am behind him with a kunai at his neck. He puts his hands up and says, Minato, I give up. I look at him smile and say, Me, that was close if this was a real battle I am not sure I would have won. Not really because I didn't have my dog and I didn't really use my full strength. If this was a real battle he would have died in the first Jutsu fight. I would have thrown an explosive kunai at him when I kicked him away. But I am sure he also didn't use his full power to try and kill me. And I am not going to get a big head just because I beat the fourth Hokage when he was nine. Well me and Kishina have some laughs about the battle, and how Minato was beaten by someone younger than him. Minato just has a smile and says he didn't summon toads in this fight, or he would have won. We have some laughs about that and make jokes at each other. Well that is true. But I don't think he would be able to summon big toads like Gamabunta without having at least Jounin Chakra. But really that Minato has a monstrous instinct and spatial awareness. I did notice that when I got behind him, he had to stop himself from trying to stab me automatically and that immediate repositioning after a substitution. The Flying Thunder God technique is strong. But what makes it overpowered is Minato. After all, if you gave someone random the ability to teleport to a kunai, but he could teleport to a kunai and get a projectile in his skull thrown by a random ninja. Minato beat 1000 ninja like that, and he didn't do even the slightest mistake with it, or he would have died. But I still won because I had a kunai at his throat, and could have killed before he could react. Time skip, some months later age 9. I am in the shower right now as I am thinking of what happened in the past months. In the war side of things Hiruzen and Sakumo were able to hold the third rakage back. Then of course Kumogaka, Cloud Village, was mysteriously attacked by Mist Ninja. Which were actually Danzo's route they also died in that mission, so Rakage had to return back to his village. But the same plan won't work again, because now the third Rakage left Blue B the current 8 tail Jinchuriki to defend Kumogaka. So now the Rakage is currently attacking towards Land of Fire again, he'd probably discovered they were from Kanoha. But it will be a long time before he succeeds, because now he doesn't have the same momentum as before, because the Hokage and Sakumo are there to fight him. I haven't been to the battlefield anymore because of me being the clan leader, and using that as an excuse. I don't know how long that excuse will work, 
but I will use it until it doesn't work anymore. Also I had my birthday I celebrated it by eating ramen with Kishina and Minato. I learned all the seals in the basic Yuzumaki Fuenjutsu, and I am now in the in the intermediate book, which the introduction seal is the paralysis seal. That is a B-rank, supplementary Fuenjutsu technique. The user writes a seal on a scroll, or something comparable to a scroll, but the seal itself is a trap. As soon as a person looks upon this seal, the technique activates and sends the target into paralysis. This technique's weakness is that the paralysis can only hold for a short period of time, and so long as the target is looking at the seal, if the seal is removed from the target's line of sight, then the paralysis is broken if a certain amount of time passes. The seal itself will collapse and release the target. Yeah, Fuenjutsu is up as hell. Well, the Yuzumaki won anyway. Then the end of the book seal is the chakra draining seal. The user places a seal on a person that will drain the latter's chakra, so that the user can use it for themselves. I also have a theory that if this seal is applied to a person gathering natural energy, it will upset the balance, and then the person will begin to turn into stone. Well, I have almost finished the intermediate book, but I know that Kishina won't teach me or Minato more than the intermediate book, because only the Yuzumaki are allowed to learn the advanced and master books of Yuzumaki Fujutsu. Even though Minato still buys her ramen and hangs out with us while Kishina teaches me Fujutsu. Poor guy, he sucks at seducing a girl. Kishina has totally friend-zoned him. I even saw him once reading a book on love or something like that about girls' feelings, etc. I then get out of the shower and go towards my room. I remember how shocked Kishina was when I learned beginner Yuzumaki Fujutsu in a month and a half. She called me a genius like her in Fuenjutsu. Minato learned that in one month she told me he would be a genius amongst geniuses, even by the Yuzumaki standards. I then open the door to my room which has a no entry sign in it. I look inside my room and think, genius huh? There are pages with seals everywhere in walls, in the ground, in my table even in my bed, and four clones studying seals in there. I would like to think Minato also used this method also, but at most he could make one to three shadow clones with his chakra, when he was learning Fuenjutsu. I wear some clothes and go outside towards Ichiraka Raymond. I haven't been concentrating only on Fuenjutsu, I also learned a lot of B-rank Jutsu using my Slar Clan members, which are special Jounin to get me some of those Jutsus for me because they are not full Jounin. They have only one element to chose from the Jounin library. I had them bring me different earth, water, fire and wind jutsus of B rank, the C rank ones I could get myself. I learned jutsus like earth style. Iron skin it makes my skin stronger. I think it's a jutsu Kakuza used. I also learned a lot of B rank jutsu like, fire style, big flame bullet, water style, water trumpet, wind style, pressure damage, wind style, vacuum sphere that is like tubes of wind that cut you Danzo used that in the anime, wind style, vacuum wave etc. So I learned some B-rank Jutsu, and a lot of C-rank ones, so my power rose a lot these last few months. Yeah, I'm now Yami of the 1001 Jutsu or something like that I still think that Red Fang wasn't the best name for me. Well no use crying over spilled milk. By the way I didn't learn any lightning Jutsu, because my element is wind and lightning is kind of its oversight different affinities have some type of other affinity, that is their opposite, and it's hard to learn it and it uses way more chakra than normal. For example Kakashi with a lightning element he knew a lot of jutsu, but I never remember him using a wind style jutsu. Or here is in the professor I bell if he has fire affinity. It is said he knows all jutsu in Kanoha, but I never remember him using water jutsu in the anime. Anyway I see the rim and stand there with Kishina like usual already there, but this time she was eating alone, and from what I noticed she seems to be crying. Then I sense her chakra and I am surprised. When I sense her chakra I am surprised this. This is the highest chakra amount that I have ever sensed she probably became a Jinchuriki already. And that is just her chakra amplified by the Jinchuriki ritual, not when she releases the Kyubi. And as her friend I go close to her and touch her shoulder, and she turns around to look at me with tears in her eyes. I then make a worried face and tell her, me, hey Kishina, why are you crying? She then starts crying more and says, Kishina, E-G-Grandmamito is dead. Tears keep falling from her eyes like a waterfall. So I just give her a hug and say, Me, it's okay, you have me here, and I think that Mito-Sama would want you to be happy and not be sad. After all, I think that she still lives. I point towards her heart and say, Me, right here. She then looks at me, rubs her tears and snot away with her sleeves and says, Kishina, you are right. I just make a small smile towards her and close my eyes like they look like they are closed. But I can still see. I see her blushing. Eh, I guess she now has a crush on me. Well, this could get my plans to advance faster. I really want those Fujutsu books. And I don't really care about the Anon Canon timeline science I have plan A, B and C on how to be able to beat Kagaya. Sasuke and Naruto now are my plan D on how to deal with Kagaya. Anyway, I don't really care about the story, as long as I get what I want. If the story goes canon it's okay if Naruto or Sasuke aren't born. I don't really care that much either. But there is also that I don't really like kids in that way. I am into grown women, and adult Kushina isn't the kind of girl I would keep more than a week, just so I could have sex with her, and I know I would get bored of her pretty fast, because she has an overbearing, violent and nosy personality. I mean the only thing she has going on is her pretty and exotic appearance. Her personality is not really complex or unexpected for it to be interesting. Plus she doesn't have a scheming or super intelligent mind to be interesting or amusing to me. She could be hiding all that, and I will be in guard anyway. 
but that is my assumption of her. Plus I don't care about love the only thing I care is immortality. Then after some talking me and her for a couple of minutes Minato arrives and comes towards us, and his face is normal when he sees Kishina, I guess he sensed the changes in her from far away, even better than he can now probably. He then greets us, and we have a small chat, Kishina explains what happens to her and Minato consoles her. But it doesn't have the same impact as my speech did. But she was grateful and happy to have someone else to relay on. I still keep my head in the book about intermediate seals. And while I'm memorizing some of them, I think back to my first life and the first death I experienced. I still remember that day so clearly. Ash flashback dash, 12 years old. I was in my room reading a school book, specifically it was the biology book. Then I hear my father say, Father, hey Andy wanna come fishing with me. He loves fishing, he grew up in a fishing village. And now he goes fishing for old times sake, and he loves fishing. I also like it a bit back use when we get bored of it. We go for a swim in the lake. But I still have homework and a lot to learn, I want to be a doctor. I want to go to medical school like my mom. She has a medical degree. But she doesn't work because father works as the head manager at a close by big store, and has a good and big wage. When I was younger we used to have money problems because I always got sick all of the time. But not anymore we even have a nice house now. And our family has a new 4 year old kid to take care of. And my mother is very protective of us. She won't let any nanny take care of her little baby boy, she doesn't trust them. Then I hear a knock on the door of my room and my father comes in and says, Father, hey Andy did you hear me I said do you want to come fishing with me? He then pauses a little bit and then says to me, Father, when I didn't hear you answer I thought you were masturbating or something you know. Nothing to be ashamed of I used to do it too when I was your age. I then turn away from my book and look at him, smoke and say, me, yeah, used to old man counts your thing doesn't work anymore. He then looks at me and says, father, you don't know brat, but when I was young I had a lot of girlfriends. I even once had three at a time until they discovered each other, and I moved out of town. Then Mikolan quotes I, you have already told me that story 100 times. But I still won't believe it, until you say it in front of mom. Maybe I should tell her that. He looks at me, smokes and says, Father, yeah, tell her that and I will tell everyone about that girl you have a crush on. What was her name again, Ema? No, no. Was it Alyssa? No, that's not it. Aha, uh -huh, I remember now her name is Elizabeth. I then get a blush, why did I ask love advice from him? I then tell him, me, ah, uh, old man you are annoying as hell. And I won't be coming to fish because I'm going to finish a school project I have. Father. Sure, sure lover boy. Ah, that was embarrassing. Well, it doesn't really matter, he probably won't tell anyone. Okay, maybe he will, oh yeah? He will definitely tell that to someone as a joke. Time skip two weeks later. My father has been missing for two weeks now since his fishing trip. The day after he went missing there was a big storm. We were really worried. My mother sent me to my cousins for a little to get my mind of things. I was currently sitting in a car returning home with my cousin driving when he says, Cousin, do you have your father's ID? Me? Yeah. I keep that because I am going to return it to him, cause he forgot his wallet that day. He then looks at me sadly with almost tears that I back then didn't notice, and he says, Cousin, then you should keep it safe. I smiled a little and was happy when he said that. So he was probably coughed by the police for getting pushed away by the storm, to the restricted no fishing area. That is where his boat was found. Then we get in my neighborhood and stop in front of my one-story house. And I notice there were cars parked all along our neighborhood roads. More than usual actually way more than usual. Then we stop in front of my house while not exactly there. We stop next to my house. Where a gigantic tent was put up at the used to be flat ground. I know that land is owned by one of our relatives. But he is an old man. And he doesn't do anything with it. But then I see people in black funeral clothes and think. Ha huh, someone must have died. Then I see my first uncle crying which I didn't notice back then coming outside. I just look at him, smile and say, me, hey good morning uncle. He doesn't say anything and just grabs me by the arm and says, uncle, you have to say your goodbyes to him. My brain was working in full capacity to figure out what is happening. And it does so before my eyes look at the body laid in the middle of the tent in a coffin, with my mother crying in a chair at the side of the tent and a lot of people doing the same. After all the person and it was very loved by this community he always helped people and was fun to be around. I then hyperventilate when I see the person and it tears won't stop coming from my eyes. Nicole and quote quote heavy, breathing ah. Flashback end was that the first time I became obsessed with immortality. I don't think so. It wasn't then that was just the beginning of my fall into madness and the beginning of my story. Now calling it a tragedy would fit better. After all monsters aren't born they are made. I used to think that I was cursed or something because of how bad my life was going. I really love my father and my first family. I would give my life for them. I wouldn't care if the whole world was destroyed as long as they lived. That is why I won't betray their memory by loving another family in a world of killers. That is like spitting in their faces and their memory. The people who would do that don't really love their real families. Now do they? They just want a perfect family in another world to feel better. A family is not about being perfect, it's about being. Just a normal arguing, making up, loving, supportive, shoulder to cry on, accepting family. I remember science that tragic day I didn't want to ever be unprepared or caught of guard about something. Even later in my life when my little brother was late to coming back from school. I was thinking the worst, when my mother was a little late from work because of traffic. I was thinking of what might have happened to her, and made 100 plans on how to react against the situation. I didn't like thinking of something bad happening to them, it hurt just to think like that, but I also didn't want to be unprepared or caught of guard about something. I also became really worried, controlling and protective of them. I was noticing myself falling into madness, but I hid it really well. 
We didn't really have the money for a therapist, and we even had to sell our old home and move away. So mom could find a job I dot I, I really miss them my family. That was the only thing that mattered to me, they were my pillar from my corroding mental health. But I don't have them now and they are safer in the other world, and have a good life, which will be be better after my death, when they get the life insurance money. But I guess this is a story for another time, the story of how a monster was made, and a story until its death, which is followed by a new life. So now in this second life I will follow my dream without rest. Dot dot yes. I am truly self-aware I am considered a psychopath by the normal person. Sigh then I come back into reality Minato and Kishina were eating Raymond now. She looks towards me makes a small smile and says, Kishina, hey Yami, why are you making such a face come and eat some Raymond? It's really good the new Maizo Raymond Chuichi makes is a heavenly food. Plus Minato said he is paying. Minato chokes and coughs while eating Raymond when Kishina said that. She really got him wrapped around her finger. I just smile towards her and say, me, well who am I to refuse my best friend's request? Kishina then immediately stutters a little and blushes and says, Kishina, dash r dash really are we really friends? Of course we are not Kishina I thought. But I just made a weird face and said to her, me, of course we are not just normal friends Kishina me, you and Minato we are best friends right? She just shyly nods. Then after some chit chat I learn from Kishina that Mito's granddaughter is coming to visit her grave to pay respects, and to get to know her successor, Kishina a little better. Well by her granddaughter she probably means Tsunade, so she will be coming to visit her. Well then I be to prepare for it. Ash time skip dash, three weeks later. Well then it has been made public that one of the Sanin is returning to Kanoha to protect it in this time of war, while the Hokage is fighting the Rakage. Well there are probably other reasons for her visit except what the public knows, she is here to visit Mito's graveyard, and to help at the hospital, probably now that we aren't at war with Tsuna anymore. We need Tsune too to help Ninja especially Jounin heal faster and more correctly, so they can return to the battlefield faster, and she might even to be able to heal some crippled ninja. The end of the war with Tsuna has freed two out of our most valuable ninja, Tsunade and Sukumo to help other borders. Well anyways during this three weeks I also was productive, I made more experiments on the Inuzuka clan, eight special Jounin this time, and also my first test subject Akamaru. They all became low level Jounin, they just need to get used to their bodies and chakra now. But I also noticed a side effect because Akamaru needed more boosts to become a Jounin from a Chunin, while the other test subjects were special Jounin. I noticed some of his hair starting to grey after that I did no more treatments on him. I didn't want people to notice. And I also did more treatments on him than the others. After all the 8th gate is no joke even when slightly punctured, he probably has around 20 years left of lifespan leafy. And he is only 19 right now. Well anyways more importantly the Inuzuka now has 9 new Jounin level ninja even though right now they are low leveled until they get a better handle on their bodies. Then they will become average Jounin or some might even become high Jounin level. Right now I am in the front of the village gate waiting for Tsunade to show up. After all if I didn't welcome her it might seem suspicious. Then after some time I notice a ninja land on a tree in front of me. It is Tsunade Senja one of the San and she then looks at me. Then she. The first thing I notice is the romba shaped seal in her forehead. She just looks at me, jumps towards me and cues me. I must say her breasts are definitely big I can feel them even under the Kanova Jounin armor. She then starts tearing up and says, Tsunade. Yami dot dot Yami I am sorry for letting you bear that burden. It was all my fault I shouldn't have let you stay in the battlefield. I am surprised why is she blaming herself. Aha, uh -huh, I get it now the lie I told about me learning medical ninjutsu to not let my comrades die. I then sob a little and say, me, sob quote I'm sorry Tsuned sensei I couldn't protect them. Sob, this was unexpected. Then she takes my head into her hands and says, Tsuned, it wasn't your fault I promise I will protect you from now on. In their memory, okay dash okay this just took an unpredictable turn. I need to readjust my schemes a little then. Then after some heartfelt reunion Tsuned goes to her grandmother's grave and pays her respects. Then she is going to the Saratobi twins clan to pay respects I tell her that I can't go. Because I am not ready to face the guilt of my actions. And that I will go when I am ready. In reality it's just going to be a waste of time. Currently I need all the time I can get to become stronger after all there is a war going on. I then go home to my lab. I think I need to go to the battlefields to get more test subjects after all I can't really take Kanova citizens. Because now that we are a war, and a citizen goes missing, they are definitely going to investigate. And I am not strong yet to live freely outside of Kanoha. I then draw seals all around my lab to not let anyone come inside, and if people try to use force, it will self-destroy the lab of course I have taken care of all the evidence in the lab, but you can never be too sure. By the way I also burned the heads of the three sand jown and I had in my cool box. I don't really need the money, because I have a small fortune. Now there is no evidence left of what really happened that day from the peace meeting with Suna. Time skip left parenthesis tomorrow right parenthesis Sunet has finished paying respects, now she is emotionally calmer than yesterday, and finished all her work for today also. So there she is sitting in my backyard laying down in the grass in casual clothing. A short white kimono and black gym short pants she just looks at me and says, Sune, you know we are at war and I might die one day, so I want you to be my successor. I look at her this was within expectation, so the Sanin already had the emotional talk about successors. She then says, Sune, do you know my trick to my massive strength? Yes, I do from the Anime. 
but I will act like I don't. I make a thinking pose and say, me, well I guess it is kind of like the tree walking exercise where you put too much chakra in your leg and the place in the tree explodes. Suned smiles towards me and says, Suned, you are right it is kind of like that, but she gets up and punches the air I felt something with then she says, Suned, I did use my technique right now, but nothing happened to the air like a current or small explosion. Aha, uh -huh, I see so that is how it walks I get it now. I smirk towards her and say, me, I think your technique has three parts to it. One when you punch, it uses chakra control to strengthen yourself. So that means you aren't using the only the chakra explosion, but also chakra strengthening. Two, you also cause a ripple effect when you punch to spread your explosion and make higher widespread damage, and the chakra explosion is unnoticeable. Three, you also use some chakra to protect your limb from getting completely crushed from the pressure on it. Her eyes widen to be able to tell this much just from close to no hints is a genius at observation, almost like the Sharingan. That is what you are thinking isn't it Tsunade Sensei? When I explain the process like that it sounds simple, but it is nowhere near as simple as it sounds. To do even half of that requires extreme no perfect chakra control, and she can use it in all her limbs. In the Anine there were people who said Sakura could surpass Tsunade. That is absolute madness Tsunade had the talent to come up with such a strengthening technique. Plus, even though she is a medic ninja and has perfect chakra control, her chakra amount is not small after all. She is part Senju and Yuzumaki to get this kind of chakra control. With her almost s rank chakra amount is nothing but a monstrous feat. She can even crush rocks with only her natural muscular strength. Her stamina is also monstrous. She fought with Madara for a whole day and could still after the battle, and getting cut in two mass heal the shinobi alliance. The tsune we see in the anime is a woman in her mid-fifties, who spent the last couple of decades drinking and gambling, and doing zero amount of training. Anyway I look at her, she also just looks at me with her widened eyes and says, Tsunade, are you sure you are not an Ichiha in disguise or something? I have a small laugh and say, me, I wish I was Tsunade sensei. That would make learning things so much easier. But alas, some things just aren't meant to be. Tsunade the rubs her forehead Tsunade. So I quote, there was no need for such a long answer you talk like an old man. I just smirk and jokingly say, me, and you like an old hag. Then a tick mark appeared in her forehead she frowns and then says while cracking her fingers, Tsunade, careful lately you are getting cheeky yummy. I then stop smiling and look at her with cold eyes. I then immediately bow down and say, me, sorry Tsunade sensei you are the most beautiful, gentle, strongest Kinuchi in the world, and I would never get cheeky with you. She just looks at me smiles, comes towards me and pets my head gently, then suddenly she squeezes my skull. Me, or 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 Tsunade sensei why? Tsunade, you should stop acting so ridiculous. Then she lets go of my head. Wow what monstrous strength. But anyway that was so I could lighten the mood a bit. And I need them to think this is my way of dealing with depression. After all every ninja has their own way of doing it. That is why most elite ninja have a quirky personality. Me. Okay now Suo Tsunade sensei what will you teach me? She then looks at me and says. Tsunade. Okay I just need you to sit in a meditative position. Me. Okay. Then I do so and then she does the same. But then takes a bottle of ink and a brush from her kimono. Then she says. Tsunade. Take off your headband. By the way what color is your favorite? I do so then I look at her seriously and say. Me. Well I don't care either way. But I like the color red. She just looks at me and says. Tsunade. That was a rhetorical question I only have black ink right now. I look weirdly at her and say. Me. Why would you even ask that if you only have black ink? And by the way that was not a rhetorical question. She looks at me and raises her eyebrow and says. Tsunade. If you hate the black ink so much go and buy your own colored ink. Me. So I quote. Can we just go on with this now I don't care either way. She just looks at me while putting the brush in the ink bottle and turning it clockwise. Then she says. Tsunade. Exhale quote what a disappointing disciple. I always said you should have patience my pupil. Especially now because having patience is the key of this technique I'm about to teach you. I look at her and say. Hung. How should I have some fun while she is dodging the answer I want. Then I come up with an idea. Me. Why are you acting like a wise teacher all of a sudden? Then I look at her make a serious face and say, while secretly preparing to use substitution. Me, do you want to have a forbidden relationship with me or something? Tsunade then stops in shock and is frozen in place. But I just continue. Me, I understand you want to have the forbidden fruit. After all the forbidden is more exciting and tastier. Then I still ramble on while Tsunade is still in shock and say, me, blush quote I dash I dash I am also okay with this Tsunade sensei. A dash after all if I'm going in the battlefield. I also want to try the forbidden fruit, don't worry. I won't tell anyone about this. I will take this to the grave. I then make a dark, scummy smirk and say, Me, this can be a little secret. As soon as I say that she gets an enraged face and punches me in the face while saying, Tsunade, I said don't be so scummy you brat. Then my figure crashes into a tree. After the dust clears out there is a log where I was supposed to be. Then I come out from behind a tree and say, Me, ah Tsunade sensei if only you were 10 years younger. I like strong walled women like you. She then looks even more pissed and says, Tsunade, what's that supposed to mean brat that I'm too old or something? It's so easy controlling the flow of the conversation after you know someone as well as I do Tsunade from both the anime and in reality. I should have become a politician in my last life. I then make a tragic face and say, me, Tsunade sensei it's quite hard for me to say this, but I must say it. 
If you wanna go on a date, we should do it after training. Tsune then sighs and looks at me calmly. Oh ho, so she noticed I was leading her by the nose. How admirable she calmed down. She just looks at me and says, Tsune, you know kid you would make a great hokage with your way of getting into people's heads and politicking. I then shrug my shoulders and say, me. So I quote, there you go again with the compliments. You must have fallen really hard for me sensei for you to tell me I can be the greatest hokage. Tsune. So I quote, you do know I have a boyfriend right? She smokes a little. She probably expected me to be distraught or at least back away. But I'm just having some fun. I just make a normal face and say in a completely uninterested voice. Me. Oh, is that so? When is our date going to be again? Tsune. Sai, you know you are really shameless. Then I make a serious face and say, Me. So what are you going to take me Tsune? She notices I didn't use the sensei term, but she doesn't say anything. Phase 1 of the plan to get Flying Thunder God begins now. She then looks at her hands, makes it in a fist and says, Tsune. You know before we fought with Hanzo I think I had a subconscious arrogance I don't know when it started, but I stopped improving. Then I thought back on a special seal. That Grandma Mito used to siphon the leaking unused chakra of a certain being sealed in her, and was able to use it for herself. I know you are going to ask, but no, I can't tell you what it was. It's an S-rank secret. She is probably talking about the Kyubi. Tsune. I then thought why can't I use this seal to siphon my chakra, when I am not doing anything to get some of that stored up that I don't use. Well this an obvious but smart idea of her. Tsune. It was quite hard I had to learn my grand uncle's mind palace technique that he got from the Yamakas, and then make a place for the chakra, and all that it took me 6 months to fill this seal while holding the chakra control, even while sleeping and fighting. And it was hard to find the specific amount of chakra siphoning, because I could get tired fast or suffer chakra exhaustion. Ah, uh, it used to be so hard. But now it has become an automatic process. Then she makes her angry face and says, Tsune, if I fought Hanzo now well he would be in for a big surprise. Then she smiles and says, Tsune, woke the self-made technique I will teach you. The technique that has made me the strongest Sanin at the moment is named Creation Rebirth. Then she starts explaining how it works and how forces cell division, and the risk it has of using your lifespan to work. Yeah, I am not using that technique unless I am at death's door which I won't be cause I would sacrifice everyone around me to not use even an ounce of lifespan. That sounds like a better deal to me. I also would re use Kabuto's Yin Healing Wound Destruction, which the user analyzes an opponent's facial expression, movements, and the properties of their jutsu to anticipate where and how he will be attacked. He then gathers chakra to the area of his body where the attack will strike preemptively starting medical treatment in order to minimize the damage you'll receive. The more extensive the damage, the more chakra it takes to heal. The damage from Rasengan is so great that Kabuto lacks enough chakra to fully recover. But I will be able to pass that weakness with Tsunade's seal. Kabuto's healing technique is really like a miracle it uses the ability to activate and reproduce cells with chakra to heal. Of course it's harder to use than Tsunade's. But for a healing technique, it's in the same category in healing speed with Creation Rebirth. Of course we are not comparing it with Ninja Art Creation Rebirth Strength of 100 technique that makes you pretty much immortal in the battlefield. I don't think Tsunade has developed that yet. It's true that the Creation Rebirth helps you regenerate with Aught Hand Sign and heals you from Kunai Cuts or Sword Stat. But Ninja Out Creation Rebirth Strength of 100 Technique, you could get stayed by Susanu Sword, and you will regenerate quickly, you get cut in half, and you will still survive, but it cuts down heavily in lifespan. Then Tsunade explains to me some minor details, and gives me the scroll to learn how to make a mind palace which is pretty much a construct in your mind, all kind of constructs can be made there, after all it is your mind, but it has a limit of course. But it helps to counteract mind reading for a while. For example you can protect memories from someone by you build a door surrounded by chains to keep memories safe, but there is also the limitation that you can't kill something like a door that is indestructible and that doesn't open. Anyway this is really useful to me. Time skip, one month later. Well I advanced a lot during this last month I mastered the intermediate user Maki Fuenjutsu book, and I now don't see Kishina or Minato too much, and I use the excuse of me being busy with Tsunade Sensei's training. They are not really useful to me at the moment of course I am not going to ostracize them. I am just using my time better. I also learned the Creatin Rebirth Seal I now have a diamond shaped tattoo in my forehead, and I am really low on chakra reserves right now at almost all times. I have used that to my advantage and learned quite fast in only one week Tsunade Super Strength Technique, and I must say it is really powerful. I will probably have to keep the control for up to 5 months to construct my seal in my forehead. By the way my mind palace is a complete horror film let's just leave it with that, and my memories are protected well and hidden. I also have in the backyard of my horror castle, built the place where my extra chakra will stay. By the way, today Tsunade Sensei is treating me to lunch for learning her super strength technique. As I am going to the expensive restaurant where we are going I think about my plans and schemes. Ah, I have so many techniques I want to learn, but I don't have the time to. I could create the Rasengan Jutsu or learn summoning Jutsu or experiment on my clan members. I have so much I want to do, but I have so little time. I then keep thinking about my plan to make Kishina give me the advance and master scrolls of Yuzumaki Fuenjutsu. But I need to wait a little more for the opportunity to present itself, and for everything to be in place. I keep supplying 80% of my chakra to the seal every day. But I don't have Tsunade's chakra amount who was able to do it in 6 months in the middle of the battlefield, where chakra usage was at max every day. With this pace I have I should be done in 5 months. Pretty much the same as Tsunade Sensei. 
but I am in the village and don't have to fight and waste chakra every day. Then I arrive at the restaurant open the door, and I see Tsunade in a table waiting for me. I then have a genius idea. I smirk go outside again and make a shadow clone. Okay for today I can't make any more shadow clones, but if this works, it will definitely be worth it. Then I go towards Tsunade sit down order my food, then smirk at her and say, me, well hello there beautiful. She just looks at me bored playing with her drink with a straw and says, Tsunade, where did you read that in some cheesy how the pick up girls book? I still keep smiling and say, me, there it goes again my hard work doesn't pay off. She then smokes herself and says, Tsunade, yeah sometimes it really doesn't pay off. I then see an opportunity and ask with a worried face, me, what is bothering you sensei? She then sighs and rubs her forehead and says, Tsunade, so I quote, it's nothing really just the usual, my idea is getting refused and all that. I then make a smile and say, me, okay then tell me the idea. Then she looks unsure and says, Tsunade, well, she then starts explaining of having a medic ninja in the squad will help increase the survivability. The least she is asking is to have someone with medical knowledge on the team. I just smiled and noted seriously, but I was just half listening I already knew what she meant from the anaim. I am waiting for something else. Then suddenly an old woman comes to our table and says, Wait well hello there younglings, I can see that you are on a date together. Ah how romantic it reminds me when I was younger. You are simply made for each other by the way young lass you should nail him down and keep him. Cute guys like him are keepers. Then, Sunaid looks at the old woman and tells her, Sunaid, hey old grandma you need to check your eyes they might be deceiving you at your age. Then the old woman gets close to Tsunade and whispers just so Tsunade can hear of course I was a ninja and an Inuzuka on top of it so of course I heard it also. Whisper quote aha I understand now you don't want him to know yet. Don't worry at my age I know those things I know that you like him and I am sure he likes you. After all if he didn't he wouldn't have come in a date with you. Tsunade then sighs and massages her forehead in frustration. Then she says, Tsunade, you know you are a really meddling hag. Then the old woman looks sad and just says, What are the youngsters these days have no respect. When I was young I also fell in love with a younger man, but I didn't pursue, and I have been miserable science then. She then touches Tsunade's shoulder and Tsunade almost punches her out of instinct. Wow she is really on edge from being in the battlefield for so long. Then the old woman says, What when I saw you I didn't want you to end up like me. Tsunade, yeah. Yeah, whatever you say, old hag. Then the old woman smiles and then walks away while saying, Quote, remember my words, young lady, even though you dismiss them so quickly. When the time comes, always follow your heart. Then the old woman goes outside, dash old woman POV. When I am going outside, a young waitress stops me and says, Wait, ma'am, you left without ordering anything, did any waiter upset you? I then smile and say, old woman, Ah, no, no, I just went to the wrong place to meet my grandson. Then the waitress looks worried and says, What do you want me to help you find him or anything? Old woman, no, I know where he is, don't worry, young lady. Then she waves and I go in an ally and undo my transformation and then a young boy with Inuzuka tattoos comes out of the transformation and dispels himself, proving that he is a shadow clone. Ash old woman POV and MC POV. I then get the memories of my cologne, but I just shrug them off. Then Sun looks at me. I look back at her with a serious face and say, Me, I think you should listen to her Tsunade. She then gets angry immediately and says, Tsunade, you know you are becoming more annoying each day. I then smirk and say, Me, and you love it right? Tsunade then sighs and then after some more small talk the food comes when we are eating. I can't help but stare at her chest when she doesn't notice. I then keep thinking how did she get from a flat chest from her childhood to this 106 cm 3-4 chest. I am quite curious does she store the chakra from the 100 strength seal in her chest and Sakura in her forehead. Is that why Tsunade has such a big rack and Sakura such a big forehead? No, no Tsunade also stores her chakra in her forehead. Anyway as me and Tsunade are eating we make some small talk and I ask her, me, Tsunade sensei are you going to go to the battlefield soon? She just looks at me and says, Tsunade, no not really, I am going to be here for at least 3 months. I smile at her and say, me, that's good we have a lot of time to catch up. Tsunade looks at me suspiciously like I'm planning something and says, Tsunade, what's that supposed to mean kid? I don't know whether you want to spend time with your beautiful teacher, or are you scheming something? Me, Psy quote, can't a student Mrs. teacher, why are you so suspicious? But I do want to learn all your clan has to offer. Tsunade then looks at me and says, Tsunade, maybe because you are trying to seduce your own teacher. I then tell her in a ridiculous poetic voice, me, what no, no I am not going to seduce you, I am going to make you fall in love. And we are already on our first date, so I am very effective. She then she finishes her chike and breast and looks at me and says, Tsunade, Psy quote, okay then I will humor you brat. Kid you are young you don't know what love is. You don't even know anything about me. Oh I beg to differ Tsunade. I even know your future. I smile at her and say, me. Well we could get to know each other that is what dates are for. Tsunade. Know what dates are for as adults. Not nine year old kids who just had their first crush. I then look at her and say, me. Ah the cruel sensei is always, what did I do to deserve this? Then I turn serious with a light smile and say, me. Well anyway the best moment to learn about each other is in a date so Tsunade sensei. How are your pets doing? I make a hand signs for battle. As what I am actually asking is how are the front lines? Tsunade catches on to this after all the war info I have as a tune in is minimal. I do have quite some info as the clan head, but it's most patrols from my clan in the land of fire. 
This is the best place to ask after all it is forbidden for Ninja to say stuff about the war situation as it might discourage some soon to be cannon fodder. Sune. Well they are good, but sometimes when I go to sleep they bark at the window, sometimes even at the door. Meaning, so we are getting attacked by all sides except sand, as we have peace with them. Me. Ah, so they seem quite scary. I shouldn't visit for some time. Meaning right parenthesis I shouldn't go to the battlefields at the moment as they are dangerous. She then sighs and massages her forehead. Sune. Yeah, they have been quite angry lately the only way to calm them is by letting them swim in the pond in my backyard. Me Meaning, yes they are but amongst them the land of water battlefield is the calmest. I then just shrug and say, me. So I quote well, some dogs have their own quirks like some like light, and some like to play in the mud. Meaning right parenthesis so which one of the battlefields is the most dangerous? Sune. Well they hate the lights in the house, cause we have them so bright I am going to have someone to fix them. Meaning the land of lighting is the most dangerous because they have the rakage in the front lines. But we also have someone holding him back. Me. What about them playing in the yard outside like normal animals in the dirt? She then smiles and says, Sune. Well yeah they play happily in there. But do you know something interesting? Sometimes I see a squirrel just sitting in the fence watching the dogs. My eyes widen at what she just said. Meaning, there have been rumors from us spies, that the fence sitter Anoki is going to join the battlefield. Me. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay then, by the way I can come fix your pond to make it more pleasant for the dogs. Meaning, is it good to go to the miss battlefield then I make a flirtatious face and continue. Me. Maybe you could join me for a swim. Meaning, are you going to be there? She just looks at me while drinking a cup of sake and says, Sune. Well I will just be watching from far. If I want to go swim I will go alone. Meaning apostrophe. Yes, I will be there, but I will be healing and hitting the important points alone. Don't worry though, I will keep an eye on you. Then I smile and say, me. Oh, if you will be looking at me swimming, then I must visit your pond. Meaning, well, if you are there, I will feel much safer. She then makes a mocking smile and says, Sune. Yeah, but I hope you know how to swim and don't drown. Meaning, why would you take a risk to go there? You might die. Then I answer seriously. Me colon quote, don't worry, I am an amazing swimmer. And well, I want to help your dogs. And I am an Inyazuka, I will help any dog in need. Meaning, don't worry about me, I can take care of myself. I want to help Kanoha lessen the number of casualties. And I will help any Kanoha ninja. Sune. Yeah. But why would you go through all that work you know that I won't pay you right? Meaning, yeah, but you know you are not going to get paid for your efforts. Then I make a face, fold my arms and say, me, stingy tsune, but I don't need pay I just want every dog in Kanoha to know my power and awesomeness. Meaning apostrophe, I don't care about money. I just want everyone to know of my power and reputation. Sune then looks anxious as if she knows what I will say next. But she asks anyway with a shadow face. Sune. And why would that be useful in any way? Meaning, and why would you go through all that trouble? I then smile and say to an anxious Sune. Me. Well of course I want to become their leader. Then Sune breaks the sake cup in her hand. I then smile and say to an anxious Sune. Me. Well of course I want to become their leader. Then Sune breaks the sake cup in her hand. Then she angrily stands bangs on the table and says. Sune. Are you kidding me brat? You think that it's that easy to become Hokage? That you can just waltz up and say that? Squirts like you always die young. Well then we just broke any secrecy we had. And some people are even looking towards us. I then just smile and tell her. Me. Of course Sune. Who will fulfill your ideas if not your lovely student. Then she looks angry and sad at the same time. And then just gets up from the table. Walks away and gets out of the restaurant. I just look at her back and think. Well she got angrier than expected. I guess I reminded her too much of her brother. Well anyway my plan didn't go too much of rails. But I don't like surprises. So I will just have to make my plans more efficient next time. Then the waitress comes and I pay dot dot what an expensive meal holy shit Suned might be way richer than I thought just one meal cost 30,000 Ryu. That is crazy. I know the food is really good and all that and most of the customers here are nobles that come to visit Kanoha. But still, this expensive are you kidding me? That is like around $3,000 for a meal for two. Anyway I go home and go to sleep after taking a shower. Time skip, one month later. Well Tsune didn't talk to me for three days after that encounter. And even then we didn't talk about it anymore. I mean Dan probably already expressed his wish to be Hokage. But she thinks that he is an adult and Tsune probably thinks he has the power to survive having that dream. Hiram also as Centauri's death might have made her become more against the types of kids wanting to be Hokage. I mean both him and Nawaki died. She might think it's my turn. This month I was learning Rasengan, and I almost have it mastered. I believe this week I will master it. It took me so long cause I don't make shadow clones to master it faster, and I am learning to make it with one hand. I also didn't have anything new to do after I wasted almost all my chakra, so I just started making explosive tags and different seals for when I go to the battlefield. My and Tsunade's relationship hasn't developed anymore, but I don't regret what I said in the restaurant. I need her to take me seriously like an adult. Sure, that won't make her see me as an adult immediately, but you know what they say the 1000 mile journey starts with the first step. The Rasengan is the first A rank Jusu I will learn. Tsunade has offered me to give me the summoning contract for Katsu, but I refused. I know Katsu is a top rank summoning, but I don't think she is the right for me. Sure I would get a gigantic summoning, and be able to fight stronger opponents. She is also able to heal others, but I don't really care to heal others. What I want is a stronger summoning that can help me in the fight even against something like Perfect Sosano. 
Obviously not to fight with the perfect Susano directly, but give me support. I want the kind of summoning that even to someone with Endgame Naruto power, it will be useful to them. Time skip, one month later, Tsunade is trying to convince me to not become Hokage by saying stuff like all the paperwork I will have to do, long meetings and all that, but she doesn't understand me. Imagine all the forbidden techniques you will be able to learn without seeking around. By the way, my stealth is way better than Academy Naruto, but I'm 99% sure that it isn't that easy to take a forbidden scroll. It has to be harder. Naruto made it look so easy. If it was so easy, everyone would know those techniques and every spy would give his life to get them. Did an Yuzumaki make the security seals around it and allowed people with the Yuzumaki blood to be able to get in? Or is it because Naruto is a previous Hokage's kid and the seals maybe allow a Hokage's family to get in as well? No use worrying about it. In no way am I going to risk it for some techniques that I can't even use well, and most of them I can't even use. I also need to do more research in the 8 gates technique, but I am not exactly comfortable doing so, if I am not in my best shape. After all you know an 8 gate basic individual is not something I want to deal, even if I am at 100%. In the A9 when Sakura was learning 100 strength seal technique, her power didn't really drop drastically like me because she didn't have big reserves, and it took her three years to complete it. And you can't really get weaker than Sakura at that time. Still have four months left to complete the technique. I am keeping an eye on Kishina, because my plan to get the final Yuzumaki books is at the most important phase right now. If I can't get them now I don't know if I will be able to get the chance again. Then I pet my Ninkinshiro who is sleeping in my lap, and think time for you to grow bigger little guy. Then as I am in my backyard petting Shiro and watching Tsum training. By the way she is seven years old now, still in the academy, she wants to graduate faster so she can show her strength on the wall. But I sternly advise her against that, after all. I am already aware of some butterflies I am making in the world, and she could die out there together with her Ninkin. I think she has the same Ninkin as canon, even though I think I have a pretty good memory I am not sure if she had one or three Ninkin, the one with the three Ninkin, might have been her daughter Hana. It seems I am forgetting some insignificant information about Naruto, but it doesn't matter after all the things I need to know are the main plot and the character's powers. I am sure I won't forget that. I am not writing anything down about my future knowledge or anything about my first life. After all Kabuto deciphered something that is only readable with the Sharingan and Monjekia Sharingan. To read it completely I believe you need to have the Rinnegan, what I am talking about is the Ichiha Stone Tablet. I bet he could do the same about some foreign language even easier. I won't underestimate anyone in this world. I will fight and think of everyone smarter and stronger than me. If I let my guard down in the slightest I would be killed by someone. I am going to be honest with myself. I am afraid that if I love and trust someone in this world one day the one I love and trust would be put under a Jinjutsu like Koda Matsukami and would stab me in the back. Ah, uh, everything used to be so much simpler and safer in my last life. I would just surround myself with my friends, put up a dumb leader figurehead in my group of friends, and just climb higher in the society ladder. After all I was always a true underdog in my last life. Not like an I'm underdog with Naruto Koff, has a nine-tailed fox Izuku Midoriya Boom one for all it's just so ridiculous. For a true underdog to raise higher it is impossible without getting his hands dirty. Anyone who says they got at the top clean is a liar. Ah, uh, I had so much plans in my last life to get to the top ah uh, look at me I am getting nostalgic. But it would also be a lie if I told you I hate this world. It makes it possible for me to achieve a dream I had buried deep in my heart. And, and it's so exciting sometimes it is so unpredictable, unfathomable I kind of hate it. But I also like the adventure. Time skip, age 10 years old. I am now 10 years old. I celebrated my birthday by inviting all of my clan members to my house. As the clan head I am expected to do at least that. I spent about 2 million Ryo in the party. And I got to say it was boring. Only my family and friends were there. Kishina like always was congratulating me with a bubbly personality. I didn't really receive any useful gift. Tsunade Sensei went to the battlefield again. So she wasn't in Kanoha for my birthday. Sukumo was in Kanoha for some time. But he then went back to the battlefield again. We didn't really meet. After all we are just acquaintances. He was probably here for Kakashi's birth. Even though that is probably a secret dot after all. We don't want the spies in Kanoha to know the White Fang's weakness. I also finished constructing the strength of a hundred seal. And also learned Tishin Rebirth. I am going to try to create a more efficient technique from it. My body has had time to grow a little, so I trained it again at its full capacity, and I still train every day to keep it that way. My chakra also grew by quite a bit, and now that I have the stored chakra in my seal, I have quite a lot of chakra available to me. Also after I got my full capacity again I started training wind control with my shadow clones. You know the one that Naruto did to split the waterfall. I did it in a normal waterfall that I created in the Inuzuka training ground. Of course I am not Yamato. So I used a river to help me make the waterfall. I still haven't got the wind control technique down yet. But I can feel it, I am close to doing so. In the battlefield side, Kanoha and Cloud are in a stalemate. In the rock side the battle is happening in the land of rain. The main fighters on Kanoha's side are Dan, Jiraiya and Orochimaru. Tsunade is in the Miss Battlefield. But she might also move to the land of rain to fight against rock. Hanzo is just fighting both Kanoha and rock village. 
that are fighting in his country. But there is just one of him, and there are probably a lot of massacres of his people going on in the Land of Rain. By the way, Mist is being very passive, they might try for peace. Or they are planning something. I am going to bet that they are planning something. Anyway, I am not going to the battlefield at the moment, I still keep observing Kishina waiting for my moment to strike. Time skip, five months later, as I am going to the meeting place that me, Kishina and Minato were supposed to go. I think back on the progress I made during these last months. I mastered the wind control exercise, of course I don't have the chakra to use Rasen Shuriken, but I can now coat my weapons in wind chakra, and I am even able to throw them with wind chakra still being on them. I am now also able to cover my claws in wind chakra now to make them able to rip through people like Tofu. So yeah, now I am very dangerous to fight in close combat. I have also been storing a lot of chakra in my seal. I have about 10 times my normal chakra in my seal. So yeah, it's like having 11 low elite Jounin chakra in one person, which is a lot. Then as I arrive at the meeting place which is in a training ground, then I see something in the ground my eyes widen, and I think finally, there is some red hair left in that place. Well then time to start the plan. I then sense all around me and stay in there just holding the hair for about 15 seconds, and then Minato comes. And then he says, Minato, hey Yami where is Kishina? It's not like her to be late. I just look at him and show him the hair. He just looks at it confused and says, Minato, Kishina's hair. Then I point in another direction, in which there is another patch of hair he takes it in his hands, and then I say, Me, why would she leave her hair like this? But then my eyes widen and I say, Me, impossible. Minato follow me. He looks at my serious face, and he then follows me. I then tell him my speculation that something happened to her, and then we keep following the trail for hours, until we are in the land of hot water, which is bet when the land of fear and the land of frost. In the land of frost is where the battlefield between Kanoa and KUMO Cloud Village. It takes us some hours to catch up to the ninja it even becomes night time, but me and Minato just keep following the trail. Then we see the three cloud ninjas just walking with Kishina also walking tied with a rope around her upper body. They think they are in a safe right now. They didn't notice that Kishina left a trail of hair for any enemy ninja to follow. I sense their chakra and tell with hand signs to Minato that they are amber level. Then me and Minato put on a chakra suppressing seal and attack them immediately. Minato takes out one with a chop to the neck, and I take mine out by slicing a kunai behind his neck. The last one notices and jumps back. I immediately undo the chakra suppressing seal. Me. Growl. Demonic illusion. Paralysis dog binding his eyes then get unfocused. I just throw my kunai towards him with wind chakra and it paces right through his throat and spine. Kishina is still walking absent-mindedly. Then me and Minato get in front of Kishina and then both say at the same time. Me slash Minato. Are you hurt Kishina? We came to save you. Then she looks at us and she smiles before starting to fall down. Me and Minato catch her and untie the ropes. I smile towards her and tell her, Me, you will be alright now. Then I nudge Minato, who blushes a little but carries her like a princess. Then Kishina comes to her senses and says, Kishina, hey wait a minute. Then Minato jumps up, and Kishina looks at Minato's hand and sees her hair. Kishina, e dash that's Minato colon quote your hair is beautiful. So I notice it right away. I also jump right behind them, and then think ah this is so weird seeing kids doing that Romeo and Juliet thing. Then Kishina looks away with red cheeks and says, Kishina, but you always ignored me. She is probably talking about him not helping her with the bullies in the academy. Minato, because I knew you were strong in body and spirit. Then he lands on the top of a tree I lay so land on top of a tree next to them. Minato then says, Minato, but this is a fight between villages. It's different from your other fights so Kishina while looking at his face says, Kishina. So, Minato then smiles towards her and says, Minato, I didn't want to lose you. Kishina blushes and says, Kishina, even if I am an outsider Minato, why do you say that? You live in Kanoha so you are one of us. Yeah, this got boring real fast better do something useful. Then I put all the bodies in a scroll, and after some time we started returning to Kanoha. When we arrived in Kanoha we got questioned a lot by the Kanoha council. Then we showed them the evidence of three class ninja, and they checked the bingo books one was worth 14 mil ryo, another 2 mil ryo, and the last 17 mil ryo. The 2 million ryo guy was probably some hidden agent or spy, because he definitely was stronger than 2 million ryo. The council which the members Ahamura, Kahara and Danzo, all gave us the ninja's bounties, and told us to decide amongst ourselves how to split it. Then we go outside of the Hokage Tower, and we split it 11 mil for each, even though Kishina didn't want to accept her part so I said, Me, Kishina we are friends right? She nods shyly. Then I smile and say, Me, then I want you to have it. Imagine, you could buy so much Raymond with that money. Now, are you really sure you want to give that up? She seems tempted but says, Kishina, yes, I am sure I want you guys to have it. I then look at her seriously and say, Me, I will throw it in the garbage or burn the money that you give me. She looks determined and says, Kishina, I don't care, you can do whatever you want with it. How goddamn headstrong can she be? Well then I will show you. She then gives me her bag of Ryo, I then take it. Put it in the ground and start doing hand signs. Fire style. First then as I am about to use a fire jutsu she takes the money from the ground very fast. She then looks at me angry and says. Kishina. What the hell? Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? I just smirk and say. Me. Well then will you accept the money now? Kishina. Won't yes? I will accept it. Minato just laughs while looking at our interaction. We then look at him also and have a small laugh together. Time skip left parenthesis one week and three days later. Morning. 
I hear a knock on the door, while I am reading the advanced Yuzumaki Fuenjutsu book that Kishina gave me. Because we are family and friends, she also gave it to Minato, and probably didn't want to make me feel left out, after I just saved her, plus she trusts me. Now I also know why this book is not given to outsiders. 90% of the book is filled with cursed seals. Knock knock, knock knock. I then sigh and go to my front door open it, and see a Gen Corporation guy. Then he looks at me and says, Wait in Yuzuka-sama you are being summoned by Danzo-sama to the Hokage Tower. I just smile and tell him, Me? Yeah, I will be there immediately, just let me get ready okay? He then looks at me and says, Quote, okay I was just supposed to deliver the message. He then goes away. I then think why the hell would Danzo even call me is he going to offer me to join Root? No. I am a clan head, and to high profile to join Root anyway. I am not sending myself in a tiger's mouth. I am not a Chinese protagonist. I then activate strength of a 100 seal and use shadow clone. I use strength of a 100 seal because I made a shadow clone with the exact same chakra amount as me. Then I sent him to meet Danzo I then pack all my things. If Danzo is planning to kill me or something I'm running it doesn't matter if I become a missing nin. It's a shame cause I accomplished a lot in Kenora and I went through all that trouble to get in a position of power. I also had a lot of plans in Kenora. I make another clone to stay in my house as my double. I then go to the edge of Kenora sensing barrier and I am ready to bail out as soon as my clone pops himself if something troublesome happened. I need to completely rearrange my plans then if I become a missing nin. I am not going to create my own village like Orochimaru it's too much work and very little reward, but I am going to need money to do my experiments. Well first I will need to grow stronger, then I will impersonate a cage, I guess I will go with the hidden grass village, an unimportant village and well hidden, and it still has enough riches. Or maybe go to the land of snow and take over after all that is quite far. And as the war is going on, none of the five great nations is going to notice. And after the war ends, it will be too late, because I will have eight gate suicide pawns, that I will manipulate to work for me. Or if I can't do that threaten them with their families from far away, while my clone leads them. Then I would join Akatsuki with a different persona. I would also need a Bayakigan if I am going to always be followed or attacked. I will take a main branch mock, or if I can't find one which is unlikely. I will wait until Kanan and rip Hinata's eyes, she is weak, and on top of it has a weak Jalan Sensei. 30 minutes later, it has been half an hour. Did they use a special method to not let me receive memories from my clone? I then am about to create another clone to go for scoutings. But then, oh the clone in my houseboat the other clone came and told me to come back to the house. I am still suspicious, so I make another clone and tell him to go to the house while I follow him. I then go to the house my clone that was waiting sees my other clone, which he thinks is the real me, and he then pops himself. I get some memories. Aha, I see so I was paranoid about nothing false alarm. Then I laugh a little at myself, but still always be prepared that is my motto. I made that up while in this world. Then I think back to the conversation. Dash flashback clone pov. I go inside the Hokage's office I see Danzo, and the other female council member the last one seems to be somewhere else. I then look at them and I say, me, good morning council members may I know the reason I was called here. I was going to call them by name each. But except Danzo, I didn't really care to remember or know the other members' names. Danzo looks at me in his serious face and says, Danzo, Yami Inuzuka I see that you haven't been taking C rank or higher missions or going to the battlefield for a couple of years now. A whole why haven't you been to the battlefield also retard that is what I though. But on the outside I just looked guilty and said, Me, Stash sir I wanted to fight all this time. But because I became the clan head and I had to stabilize my clan. Then Suned Sensei came. And I became weakened for a period of time. He seems unimpressed probably because he thinks I would put my clan before Konoha. Then he just says. Danzo. I understand but I need you for an important mission. Right now we are short on manpower. And aren't exactly on the best situation on the war side. He then clears his throat and activates a seal. And a sealing array is around the room I recognize it as a anti-spy and silent seal. And then he says. Danzo. The village hidden in the sky has risen to challenge the five great ninja villages. I need you to go there and spy on them and relay their military strength, and if you see them as a danger, I need you to hold them back with whatever means necessary. I will also give you 20 genin from the genin core, and 72 anbu from my own root division, they are around Chunin level. He then looks at me directly. Me. I understand Danzo-sama I will complete the mission without failure, and I will try to slow them down as much as possible. He nods and also adds, Danzo, you will be the leader of this mission and the only known ninja that will take the mission. My root members will remain nameless, and the genin don't even know where they are going. They think it is going to be a simple B-rank missions. Also if you complete this mission you will be rewarded 2 S rank missions pay, and they will be added to your record. I then look at him and say, me, I understand Danzo-sama. Danzo, so I quote, I wish I had more forces to spare, but this must be done without most emergency. Then he explains me the routes I can take, and how to go through the mist territory, to be able to go to the land of sky which is quite far away. Ash flashback and MCPOV. I get it now ha 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 ha. That means that I got another little pawn on my chess game. The Sky Village huh? Well then things just got quite exciting. I need a plan on how to deal with the Sky Village. Tomorrow we are going to the land of the sky to fight against the sky village. I bought a lot of weapons for myself. I even bought a giant type sword. Danzo also gave me a scroll full of other weapons. But those were for the other shinobi. Then the scammer in me pops his head out you know I could sell these weapons to them at a higher price. 
but I bell of the root ninja aren't paid much or even any at all. And the genin aren't known to be rich either. I then return home from shopping and go to bed. I can't help but think back on my childhood ha 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 those were the times. Ash small flashback dash. First life age around 7 years old. You know there are 3 types of kids in my school. 1. The wimps slash nerds grown happy have a normal family. 2. The bullies 99% has a shitty life at home, maybe dad an alcoholic or mother a stripper etc. 3. The people who are wimps but act tough, but everyone can tell they are wimps. Then there is me the abnormality who stayed with the nerds at school and the bullies at afternoon. Recently the nerds have started buying something called UGIO cards. And the bullies always take it from them just so they can have it. Nothing interesting there until some bullies started using them as currency, while playing poker or some other gambling games. You know what they say like father like son, they are picking their parents bad habits. I have a friend with the bully squad, of course I stay with the nerds also. They are the ones with more chances of accomplishing something in their lives. Anyway my friend's name is Addy. His story is that his father registered him as a mentally challenged kid to get some money to pay for his alcoholism. Dash flashback and so yeah. I got some Yu-Gi-Oh cards and started cheating at every gambling card game I played. It was so easy to cheat against those kids they were so dumb. Then I sold most of the cards to the nerds 10 cards for $1. Then the bullies took the cards again, and the cycle continued. I was making a little money, until out of curiosity I started watching Yu-Gi-Oh! And that is the time I started knowing the rare cards, and started selling them to the highest bidder. I was making a lot of cash at that time. Then I started dueling with the nerds the winner gets the other's deck. I got them addicted to it. I was going to cheat to get more cards from them. But surprisingly I was good at Yu-Gi-Oh! dueling. No I was very good at it. No one in my school could beat me at one point. I even had the three god cards and Exodia. Until the principal caught me. But that is a story for another time. I wonder what happened to Addy. Last I heard about him was in high school. The news was that he got into drugs and had an overdose. A I had more important things at that time like how to deal with my stalker. I mean we only flirted once. That doesn't mean I love you. Time skip tomorrow. I make sure everything is ready and I go to the meeting place. The journey to the land of skies is going to take around 3 days. Then after some time I arrived there I arrived about 20 minutes early. And I only saw 3 ninja too which looked emotionless probably Root Ninja, and the last was a character I recognized that was Might Die the Father of Might Guy. This is really surprising he isn't really useful to me, except his 8 gates technique, which he probably won't tell me about. But he is the father of someone who will be a great ninja at True Underdog Rising. He is warming up while trying to socialize with the Root Ninja, which they weirdly enough are replying to him and trying to understand him, and they are being very polite. Anyway I go there and greet them. Me. Hey good morning my name is Yami and Yazuka. I will be your leader for this mission. Then they introduce themselves. When the others arrived I told them I was the leader. The Root Chunin were emotionless, so they weren't weirded out when a kid was giving them orders, and the Genin they were all from the Genin call, and I had a higher position than them, plus in this time of war, if someone questions the orders of their commanding superior, well a trip to the T&I department on suspicion of desertion or spying, will maybe make them think better, they know that, they know I know that, so we are all good, then we start the journey, time skipped 3 days later, in the journey nothing remarkable happened, we took the way I made to reach the land of the sky it goes to the land of waves, there I find a big boat that could fit us all, and order the root ninja to kill all the sailors even the captain. We take the big boat to also not alarm any missed ninja that might be patrolling, and because most ninja might not be able to water walk if any big wave hits. Then we go to the land of whirlpool to rest and check if everything is okay. I leave a clone with a lot of chakra there to check for any hidden treasure, of course I just so without anyone noticing. Then we take the boat and started sailing towards the land of the sky which took about 2 days. On we landed right now I ordered the earth style users to make camp for us underground. I also gave codes and fake codes to stop any spying. Well then time to start to search for the sky village time skip. Six days later. Okay, we found the Sky Village. And yes, it is flying just like the Anime Suo. It is going to be hard to get there. I then think of a plan on how to get up there on. Then I will do this at night, I will go there alone. Cause no one else will be able to follow me. I go to camp and organize two Chunin to stay guard the Genin who maintain the camp. The others will be patrolling. And by that I mean stealthily massacring every village they come across. We need to get those Sky Ninja in the ground. Even though they will know of our arrival when we start massacres. But it doesn't matter at that point. Because I will be in the Sky Village killing them from the inside. Dash evening I gave orders to all of them on how things should be handled. I also gave them protocols on if they are discovered. I also took Shiro my Ninkin with me. I stealthily go towards the Sky Village alone. Then I put a lot of boulders in my storage wristbands. Which were full of projectiles and explosive tags. I still have pouches with kunai and shuriken, but I keep most weapons in my wristbands. I made them myself. I then go just below the flying sky village. It's flying around 37 meters, 121 feet. So yeah, not exactly low, but also not high like above the clouds. I then prepare and get up on a tree pump my legs with chakra and together with my super strength technique, I jump high and destroy the tree I was standing on. I jump about halfway then I summon a boulder below my feet and jump again. I am almost there and then use chakra strings to attach myself there. As soon as I my feet touch the structure I stuck to it. This is weird I am upside down on a flying city. Well anyway, I put about 56 explosive tags at the bottom of the city I made these myself and made them stronger than normal. I also hid all of them well. Like in cracks and places where no one will notice. I then put my ninkin under my hoodie. 
so no one will notice. I transform into a normal looking person, and just to be sure I make a shadow clone which will transform as someone else, and follow me in case I'm followed. I then get in the city and look around. There seem to be a lot of civilians living here. I just wander around first and make a mental map. I then went towards the red light district which wasn't weird. Now Kaos I was transformed into an adult. After going in there I call the most beautiful looking lady over. And I make a scumbag perverted face. Me. Hey there whore, wanna have some fun? Don't worry I will pay you handsomely. She looks at me like I'm scum. Then we go to a motel that I pay for. We go to a room as soon as we go inside it I knock her out. Close the door tightly. Tied her to the bed and take out some torture tools. And put silencing seals all over the room. I then look at her. She has brown eyes, oval face and beautiful bulk hair. I must say she looks good for a whore. I wake her up and she sees me with the torture tools. She looks surprisingly calm. But I can tell she is terrified well. This is mostly an intimidating method after all I don't bell if I have to torture her back use. She isn't a ninja trained to withstand torture. Wait are you some creep or something? You know if you leave a scar in my body. The ninja will kill you. I am their favorite. I then make a serious face and say. Me. Oh her aren't you a brave little whore. I don't really care about the ninja. But I promise you that I will not leave a scar in your body or hurt you if you tell me what I want to know. She looks at me with calm eyes, but I can tell from her body language that she is relieved but still suspicious. Wait, how do I know you will keep your word? I make a cold face and say, me. Listen lady, the only thing that is mine in this life are my balls, and my word I am not willing to break neither of them. She looks at me smiles and says, Wait, you know you are just my type of man if I wasn't in this business. Well, there is no use talking about what ifs. She is trying to manipulate me. I look at her, turn my back towards her and say, me. There is only one woman I will ever love in my life. And she is dead. Me shoulders start shaking and I say. Me. These dash these monsters the sky ninja these guys took her from me they they. Had their way with her. I start producing tears at an alarming rate. Well this whore should know a lot of info about this place. Also I used a sad and tragic story to try to make her loosen her lips. She looks at me with sadness, and she starts telling me the info I want. Then she starts talking. Surprisingly there isn't a cage ruling the Sky Village it is actually run by some Nobels that decided to band together. There are 5,000 ninjas, 3,000 Chunin, 1,000 Jenin, 1,000 Jounin. She also gave me some other info. Damn, if what she said it true this could get real dangerous real fast. I make a clone immediately and write a message in a scroll. Though I did put in the scroll as a side note, that this information was all gathered by a questionable source, and it has not been confirmed to be 100% true. The clone will give it to a root ninja who with a team of three, will return to Kanoha to give this info. There I wrote almost everything the horse said, then I give it to my clone. After the clone goes outside the motel stealthy, the whore looks at me she probably knows something is definitely wrong with my story, cause I just made a clone. She then says, woke wh dash, but I cut her off with a senban on her neck, then I put poison in her blood, she will have a heart attack in 10 seconds. I untie her and vanish the scenes that she was tied and clean the seals around the room and pick up all my things. Well then I have a job to do. Then I go outside the motel stealthy also and change my disguise to an old man. I go to a shitty hotel and kill the owner and make a clone to act like him. This will be a temporary base of operation. Time skip tomorrow slash midday. I spent all night putting explosive tags in places that no one will find them like sewers and under the public toilets. I used clones to do that with a stick no way am I doing that by myself. I slept until midday. Then I get up and eat some ration bars. I am not eating anything in this village. After all it is still enemy territory I don't know what they do to it. And it is a great way to get poisoned by an enemy ninja. I then wait again until it's night time and go outside. This time I go towards the leader's place knock him out and make a clone to impersonate him. And to have him put explosive paper tags around the leader's tower. I take the leader to my base tie him up. He really was arrogant. He only had two jowling guards that I killed with poison when I transformed in maid. And gave them water and had two other clones impersonate them. I really am grateful to the seal that Sune taught me. I now have so much chakra to make a lot of clones. There were also 11 servants in the house. I didn't kill them because they didn't know what was happening. And would be a great cover for my plan. Time skip tomorrow. I was going to torture the leader. But he gave up everything so easily. And by everything I mean everything even the existence of zero tales and where to find it. How to get to it. Also he told me where all his money is. I looked through. And he had 535 million Ryo. I now have a mountain of money in my storage scroll which I put in my wrist storage where I store my weapons. I look at his dead body. I then go towards the leader tower. I go inside normally. You know if you act confident like you didn't do anything wrong. Then people will think you did nothing. So here I am I go in the leader's office the guard. Which is my clone looks at me and says. Clone. Do you have an appointment? I look at him with my elderly disguise and tell him. Me. Yes of course I do. He nods and lets me in. I go inside see my clone he looks at me and nods. Then I dispel him. I get his memories this is why you mustn't have a weak leader. Cases like this happen and the leader gets replaced. They are a new village. So they probably got arrogant. Just because they have some new and fancy gadgets. If this was one of the great villages I wouldn't have been able to get inside. Even if I did get inside by some miracle and was able to bypass the sensory barrier. I definitely wouldn't be able to leave alive. I see in his memories he just talks to some other people. And I also learn on how this village stays afloat. It does so by using the prisoners whom they use different methods like starvation, dehydration, pain, hate etc. to get dark emotions 
potions to generate chakra for the zero tails. Then they use that chakra to keep this thing afloat. I make another clone to impersonate the leader again. I will deal with the zero tail later. I will also steal some more money from these rats. I just stole 177 mil from another notable noble family, which I killed all their members easily. I just stealthy put poison gas inside. They had Chunin and Jenning guards which didn't notice anything wrong. Unreal it was too late, now I'm going to rob the third and last family, that build this village. I go to the last family's house they live in the western side of the city, in a stone mansion that looks like a goddamn mini castle. I also sent 16 Jenin, 5 Chunin and 5 Jounin, and 61 civilians in this house. This noble is more careful than the leader. I make three clones, and they stay outside together with my Ninkin to not let anyone escape. I also put silent seals fuenjutsu all around the mansion, never hurts to be careful. I then undo my transformation I need to be able to fight at my full power. Then I go into the house stealthy, and I wait patiently until a Jounin has to go to the bathroom as soon as he is about to pee. I immediately throw a kunai him, but he turns around and intercepts my kunai with his. He looks at me and says, quote you are surrounded, just give up and I promise we will let you live. I see so they notice me. I also sense the other Jounin have also just surrounded the bathroom. Well then I throw a paper tag in the opposite wall of the door, and then as soon as the Jounin get inside, they look at the seal and get paralyzed. It is a paralysis seal. I attack the Jounin that blocked my kunai. This time I slashed at him, and before a kunai is touched, I used wind chakra and I cut through the kunai, but he jumps back, but still gets a slash in his torso. He is really skilled. I then throw five kunais towards the paralyzed Jounin. The free Jounin then goes to black them, but the kunai explode killing them all. Well then this just alarmed a lot of people it seems I will have to exterminate them all. The eye look at the Jounin's dead bodies and think, that Jounin was dangerous and well trained, but he didn't have that much experience with real war, where every dirty trick works. The closest he probably came to war was probably frying and throwing paper bombs. Then I start going outside of the bathroom 5 Chunin and 9 Jenin have arrived to check what is happening. I go stealthily towards a Jenin and punch him behind his head. His head splattered all over the floor. This is the first time I use the super strength technique in battle. I must say it is remarkably strong. I then use all of my power and punch the ground. The mansion starts collapsing. I use earth style. Hiding like a mole technique I go underground while the mansion is collapsing. I know this isn't a good idea. People are definitely going to notice this. Even though no noise was made outside. Because of the silent seals thank god I am way too paranoid. And I did that or else I would have been surrounded by a couple hundred Jounin by now. I go around and tell my clones that we're outside to search for any treasure or anything important. I return to my base no one heard anything about what I did yet. I was going to take them all out stealthy, but I saw that it was impossible when the Jounin noticed me. I also know I'm stronger than some Chunin, but in a closed space like that, if any of them used a wide range Jutsu, I would be at best injured or at worst dead. I don't know how the Jounin noticed me, but I suspect that it was because they had a sensor I would have used a chakra suppressing seal, but that is to dangerous in enemy territory. But still did they really sense me or was it something else? I guess we will never know after all, even if you are a ninja if a couple of tons fall on you you'll die. Also I checked and confirmed with my chakra sense that there was no one alive. I didn't sleep all night, and my clones returned with 174 mil Ryu. I don't think I will have money problems for a long time. I have taken 886 mil just from robbing the three noble families who rule the Sky Village. I make a clone and tell him to go meet my clone which is impersonating the leader. Minus 20 minutes later me clone comes in and dispels himself. I get the memories and what I wanted. It was my clone which was the leader for some time they changed places. I also learned all the things I needed to do. And then I make 10 clones again, and they nod and spread out. I dispel all the other unnecessary clones that I have in the land of the sky. I only keep the leader clone, his two bodyguards and the 10 clones that I gave a duty to. I go to the market and buy the best bronze urn that money can buy. I then go to the leader's tower I am allowed inside immediately. I see my clone there sitting in the throne, and he opens a hidden compartment and I run down there. Then I see a cocoon zero tails giving off dark chakra. I look at my Ninkin and knock him out to not have him get possessed or something. I then look around at the cylinder shaped room, and see the seals used in here all around the room. What bad sealing all of this to seal the zero tails, who is not really even a real tailed beast, because it wasn't made from the ten tails. Then the zero tails seems to wake up and look at me. Is it really worth it, sacrificing all just so you can maybe reach a dream in which tragedy lies? Um so this is the zero tails influence speaking in a weird way, like a whisper in my head. What about your friend that you killed just so you could stay alive? He had a family, a sibling he was someone's child, someone's brother. What would you so, if someone killed your own little brother after all you aren't there to protect him, you left them your family, you left them behind. I look at the zero tails, my face contorted in pure anger and I say, me, why you little worm? Ash POV change dash, clones POV who is posing as the leader. I have my own part to play in the boss's plan. Then the Sky Ninja comes in panicked and out of breath and says, Wot Shimu dash Sama there has been an attack on the two noble families. I look arrogant like a noble and seem distracted, I then say, me, who was it was he captured or killed? Wot that is the thing Shimu dash Sama we don't know who was it, and all the people who own the buildings were killed. I look at him with rage and say, me colon quote what? You imbeciles you trash how couldn't you notice, call all the sky ninjas as soon as possible. I also want 100 Jounin around me at all times. I want all the ninjas to gather all the people in the village at the tower I am going to make a speech in 6 hours. Well then I hope everything goes as boss's plan if it doesn't we will all die. Then I also say, 
Me, call the guards guarding the door. I want them with me here at all times. We might have a traitor amongst us. That is the only way this type of assassination can happen. Then the ninja goes outside, and the two clones disguised as guards come inside. They look at me and say, E-L-O-N-E-1. -E so what is going on? I was made during the plan A phase. Did it go wrong? E-L-O-N-E-2. -E I am the same, but I don't really care either way. I am sure boss will take care of it. I look at them and start explaining what happened. C-L-O-N-E-2. Ah, we are in deep trouble. Now that the security has increased, it will be a bitch and a half just to be able to escape alive. E-L-O-N-E-1. -E yeah, I wonder how boss will do it. Me. I also checked for any secret exits. But there were none man they were arrogant and made our job easier. But they didn't build any secret exits in their arrogance. Damn it. How will we get outside? I know this place is going to be surrounded with ninja. But even though I asked for 100 Jounin ninja around me there will be. 895 other Jounin looking for the assassin together with 3000 Chunin and 1000 Jenin. Shit. Damn IT. That is a circle impossible to escape from. There will also be a complete lockdown. If I order the lockdown to stop I will blow my cover. What will boss do? What about your friend that you killed just so you could stay alive? He had a family, a sibling, he was someone's child, someone's brother. What would you so, if someone killed your own little brother after all you aren't there to protect him, you left them your family, you left them behind. I look at the zero tells, my face contorted in pure anger and I say, me, why you little worm, this shitty worm, I will show him what pain means. I clasp my hands together, five small yellow orbs with skinny tails emerge from between my clasped hands and move above my head before forming a circle of five. Raising my clasped hands above my head, I slam them downward, sending the orbs into the ground. As a bright light is generated in the sky above the Zero Tails cocoon, five tall and thick pillars, which are connected to each other by chains, drop on the Zero Tails and pin it to the ground. Five pillared iron weight seal this will definitely hold it down. It could theoretically hold down a four tail chakra cloak Naruto, so it will definitely hold the Zero Tails without problem. Yeah, the Yuzumaki advanced book is no joke. This is one of its strongest sealing techniques which isn't a cursed seal. I look at it, and I still keep hearing it speak. Even if you accomplish your dream, you will still just be alone for all eternity. I take out a brush and a bottle of ink. I post chakra in the ink. I then start drawing seals all around the zero tails. The seal I am drawing is called the Chakra Draining Seal. It is Kinjutsu designed to drain chakra. By placing the seal on the target, the chakra drained is transferred to the user. Yes, I am draining his chakra that is being generated. Even I am helping it generate chakra with my dark emotions. I am not some MC who can easily throw away the dark emotions. Then while his chakra is transferring to me I then look at the seals in the walls around and put my hand in it. I start transferring all the dark chakra I have to it. This should keep the sky villa v floating for some time around 2 to 3 days actually. I then look at the zero tails that seems tired and thinner, but it's still speaking. You left them, how would they feel if they knew the cruel things you are doing? This damn worm. I then take my brush and take the bronze urn I brought with me. I put it close to the unmoving zero tails, and write for jutsu seals all around the urn. Then I open the urn and clasp my hands together. Then an armored chakra hang comes and takes the zero tails, and pulls it in towards the urn. The seals around the urn start rotating and gathering all to fuse in one place, when the zero tails is fully in the urn. A red kanji meaning bronze appears. Bronze armor seal now it's dope talking. You know sealing all that beast in this small urn is kind of weird looking at it. I guess Funjutsu for the win then. Now that the sealing is done I release the five pillared iron weight seal which now is just in the ground. It then just turns into chakra and dissolves. Well then the bronze armor seal is a kind of weak seal, which could technically seal one tails aka a shikaku in a jinchuriki no problem, and it would hold him pretty good. But if it sealed the two tails, the jinchuriki wouldn't be able to sleep because of the two tails. In the three tails it will hold it for a while before it breaks out. For the other tail beasts, it won't be able to seal them. But for a zero tail it will keep him easily, it also has a weakness. The seal is easily broken even from something like the five elements unseal technique. I wake my ninkin and make a shadow clone to guide me. Well then time to start the real battle with the zero tails I then sit cross-legged close to the urn and start meditating to recover chakra faster. I still have around six elite jhan and chakra left in my seal. But I am not going to waste chakra needlessly, and in no way am I underestimating the zero tails. Around one hour later I am a full capacity. Then I touch the urn with my palm and transfer my consciousness into it. I then go inside I look around and see a field of red dirt surrounded with bronze walls all around, and I see some gears of beef you seem to be turning. I then look at the zero tails which is coiled it looks at me and says, Wait I see that you came here. What is your reason of doing that? It speaks normally now, probably the voice he had earlier was a technique to whisper into the victim, their deepest regrets and painful moments to try to a dark emotion output. It then looks at me and suddenly generates arms that come towards me fastly. I just jump back and use fire style. Fire ball jets with the zero tails, and it hits head on. Hero tail starts to make a painful noises. How weak. It starts whispering again. It's trying to gain more chakra from my dark emotions, because it can't gain any more chakra from outside because of the seal. You know for every ninja you kill you leave a kid orphaned just like how you were orphaned. Ha, huh, the zero tails is good as a supplementary ally. But its fighting power is crap. I got used to its rambling by now. 
and I don't fall for it. I then use five pillared iron weight seal again, and the five pillars hold it to the ground. It was screaming and in pain, so it didn't notice the pillars falling, but I don't really care for this weak little thing. After cutting all its arms and burning them, I then start riding some Fuenjutsu on the ground. After creating the necessary seals, the seal formula rises up in the form of multiple chakra chains, and binds the Zero Tails Beast sealing technique. Okay, so now I'm sure it won't be able to break from here in even 100 years by itself. Plus it isn't able to get any dark emotions from outside. Well then Zero Tails captured, time to get out of the Sky Village. My conscience returns to my body again, and I see the urn and think, I will keep the zero tails in that urn until I learn a way to erase its memories. I know the memory erasing seal, but the seal erases the memories of the caster and the victim of a certain event. But still though I am not using a seal that erases my memories also. I then get up and dispel my clone, and my Ninkan then goes under my hoodie. I get up and start walking up the wall of the room. I arrive at the top and give a small almost unnoticeable chakra signal. Ash 1 hour Alitarium still in the same position. Then the secret entrance opened. My clone looks at me and says, Sorry boss I couldn't open it at the moment I had some people in the room. Anyway how are you going to get out of here boss? I then dispel him get his memories and make a new clone which will know what to do. Ash clone POV, lead a clone. Well then I just have to follow the boss's plan. I then call a Jown and Captain over and tell him, Wait I will give you one of my bodyguards I said quote, Because he will help you find the culprit sooner. By the way are all the people gathered already? The guard looks at me and says, Yes sir they are all gathered. I look at him and say, Okay then we are rushing a little I'm going to give the speech in 10 minutes am I understood? The guard widens his eyes and says, Wait why dash yes leader we will be ready then. I look indifferent and say, Wait of course you will. Also take my guard he will operate in stealth and alone to be able to find the culprit also listen to all his orders. He has the authority only second to mine at the moment. The guard looks kind of nervous and says, Wait of course. One of my two personal guards with an urn tied on his waist and goes forward. 10 minutes later. I get on the balcony of the tower and look at the ninja and around 10,000 civilians on the roads. It looks crowded, but they still came. After all it isn't every day that the leader makes a speech. I look confident and use a small jinjutsu to make me look more dazzling with more sunlight around me. And I take the microphone looking device and say, Woke my people of Sky Village. Yesterday we were attacked by a traitor among us. It massacred two of the ruling families. Some people start whispering amongst themselves. I look angry and say, For someone to dare and kill in our city IT is unacceptable. I will find them. I will kill them. Ash leaders, guard POV. Seven minutes later the guard of the leader is walking stealthily among the edges of the city, and goes to the launching station and says to a supervisor, Stop all the sky patrolling ninjas I want them on the ground immediately. He looks at me and seems to recognize the one Talaki and says, I dash yes sir it will be done. But may I ask why? I look at him and say, Well amongst all these flying the culprit could just be one of them and might escape from now on. If there is any other ninja flying except me shut it down, it might be the culprit. Ten minutes later all the ninja are in the ground. Now I then take a flying device and strap it to myself, comma. This is actually a device that works by just flowing chakra through the wings, which propels the user through the air and allows for flight. With sufficient skill, the shinobi can display considerable maneuverability mid-air through the use of this contraption. One downside to this is with their chakra being used to fuel the machine's flight capabilities, prolonged use can eventually consume the user's chakra reserves. But I have enough chakra, but for skill well. This is the first time I am flying in Itsuo, yeah. I then get in the launch pad, and it launches me up. I start putting a little chakra through it, and it propelled me. I then turn slightly and it turns. I then get as high as I can. I then dispel the 10 clones I made to put explosive tags all over the city. I am so high the people can't even see me. I make a half tiger hand sign and say, Katsu boom. A gigantic explosion happens the city starts falling down I can in pieces of the towers, and the whole city is wrecked. I even got the memories of my clones that were still there. The leader clone was distracting the population and ninja while I did the work. Poof I undo my transformation, and a 10 year old kid with black hair and eyes with an Inuzuka tattoos came out. I wonder if anyone survived the destruction well then the mission is not over yet. I still have to kill all the survivors. And to survive your village crumbling down on the ground and explosions around well, you have to be either lucky and strong. Actually you kind of have to be both. I look at the wreckage of the used to be sky village. This kind of destruction. This kind of catastrophe how dumb a flying village might sound like a good idea with an untouchable village up in the sky. But if just a ninja is able to get there, it will cause catastrophic damage or even destruction. If they really tried to fight the five nations they wouldn't have been able to even battle them for a full day. They would have been destroyed with a wide range ninjutsu. It would have hit a crucial part of the city, and it would have fallen down. Well anyway, I go on the ground open a scroll, and put the flying contraption on my storage scroll. I don't know it might be useful for later. I then use earth style. Hiding like a mole technique and travel underground while upping my chakra sense to see if anyone survived. Ash 1 hour Lateri have discovered with chakra sense and a little investigation, that there are survivors specifically 56 Junin, 58 Genin, 123 Jounin, most of the survivors have bad wounds, but non-life threatening. They seem to be searching for any other survivors they don't find anyone else they found 146 lucky civilians who survived. Well then I just AP on them from afar I look at them, and I notice that some Jounin seem to have noticed something. So I immediately retreat I would go call the ninjas that Danzo gave me. 
but by then some of the injured ninjas might get healed better to attack now. After all, we are not stupid to build the camp too close to the Sky Village, so it's going to take some time to get an attack force ready. Four hours later I then started my operation to kill them. I catched animals and injected them with slow-acting poison, a type of virus you could say, and then put the animals close to the camp for them to take as food. I then also start poisoning their water supply, by using different methods from impersonation to poisoning a close by stream, where every time they went to get water, usually a genin or civilian, I would put poison in the stream. The Jounen were looking after the camp in case of a sneak attack. Ash night time while they are sleeping I look and use a poison mist in their camp. I have a gas mask I am boiling a certain concoction. And I am directing the steam towards the camp. Ah I am so tired I need a break. I still stay up all night and when morning comes. I then go to their campsite stealthy and see all of them dead. I look at the background the ruin of Sky Village. I look at my hands and think I have started becoming a villain. Ha huh, yeah right in this world exist only whiners. And the villains would always be the losers. You know the saying. The hero always wins. Anyway I make sure there are no survivors, don't want someone coming for revenge or something cliche like that. I then start returning to my base camp. I arrive there in about an hour with my top speed. Then I use an earth jutsu and go underground. I look at them and surprisingly all of them are there. They look at me in surprise and one of the root ninja says, Welcome Captain Yami. I look at them and say, Woke guys the mission is done. They look shocked for a moment even the root ninja one of them even twitched his fingers. And I see he is about to attack me. But he puts a fake smile and asks me before doing anything. Oh, did something go wrong? Ha, huh, so Danzo probably gave orders to assassinate me if I fail. Get scared or something like that. I just smile and say, well there is no Sky Village anymore. Some genins fall down, after all the destruction of a ninja village. This hasn't happened ever. Well until Pain does it in canon, and he still didn't kill every single one of them. W dash what? It dash are you joking? And dash no way man. Then of course we went to check the crash site some people hadn't seen anything, and the genin was shocked one of them said. We were kept in the dark all along we thought we were going in a long term B rank mission, not on the front line of some battle. I just look at them coldly and say, you didn't have to do any fighting at all. So really this being a B rank mission would have been kind of suspicious. I then look at a root ninja and I signal him. He looks at me nods and says, well the mission hasn't ended yet. We have to eliminate some villagers to send the land of the sky a message and make them surrender anyone who participates will be rewarded with an extra rank A reward. Then Mike Dai says, wait, wait is there really need for any more bloodshed? Tens of thousands of people have already died. I knew this would happen. So I signal the root ninja and he said, wait yes and thank god they were all enemies. You don't want our children or even grandchildren fighting in the war do you? Dai then counters and says, this is still wrong no matter how you justify it. Okay so after that 5 genin together with Dai, refused to participate in the massacre. But all the other ninja agreed 6 days later. Some more root ninja was sent by Danzo, and we have destroyed 20% of the land of Sky. Most were villagers, the nobles and Daimyo did send some assassins and samurai after us, but we moved in large groups to be safer, and we killed them all. Then as I was taking a rest the clone I left in Yuzashoga Kapoked, and I got his memories. Well my clone didn't find any treasure or special ninjutsu, he was just checking a normal house. And he activated a trap, and a scarecrow painting opened his mouth, and it shot nails and my clone then died. Well then I guess I will check that when I return back. But I will have to start killing some more for me to return faster. I have also gotten a lot of test subjects around. They are all in a stasis coma in a specially made storage seal. Ina 17 days LATER 32% of the land of the sky is destroyed and now. The land of sky has asked for ceasefire. The daimyo has requested for ceasefire. And after paying some unspecified amount of payment to Kanoha. Which then accepted the ceasefire. Then we were ordered to return to Kanoha to await further orders. Well then I start organizing my ninja group. Which is around 130 root ninja and 20 genin. You know I worked a miracle I killed 5000 ninjas. And destroyed destroyed a whole hidden village with almost no casualties. The only casualties were a couple of the root ninja that I sent to send information to Kanoha. By the way, only one of them survived and was able to deliver the message. Well as we are sailing in a boat towards Izashovika the same boat that we came with. Then as we are in the boat I look towards Mike Dai who was with the other genin who didn't participate in the massacre. I just look at him sitting in the ground and looking at the floor absentmindedly I then say. Wot so Dai Dash San how are you feeling you seem sad. You can tell me if anything is going on. He still keeps looking at the ground and says. Nothing is really going on. I then sit in front of him and say. Can I ask you something Dai Dash San? He turns and looks at me seriously and says. Sure then he looks at the ground again. I don't mind that and just say. Wait when I was asked to do this mission I didn't want to accept. But I did it anyway. I have a girl which is like my little sister. And I thought I didn't want her to see war or be a part of it. He just looks at me and smiles slightly and says. Sometimes I forget you are a kid. But. I also have someone special I want to protect. I have a kid you know he is just 3 months old. And I really needed the money that comes with the mission. Because I am a single father I know I am a killer. I am a ninja after all, but I will never kill innocents and civilians who have nothing to do with the ninja wars, they are only the victims of our war. I just look at him with an emotionless mask and say, Wait this is where me and you differ I will do anything to protect my loved ones. I then get up and go towards some root ninja, and make some pointless conversation to pass time. I am still putting 94% of my chakra in my seal. I want to try and understand more about the 8 gates. I have an idea for a medical procedure related to it. I will use it on myself. I look at my small childish hands, and make them in a fist. 
I first need my body to grow, and then train it to 100% before I do the procedure. Ash two days later will arrive at Yuzashogaka. I tell them, you guys rest a bit, but don't leave your guard down. I am going to scout the island. I will check if anyone got wind of our mission yet, and if there are any ambushes or traps in here. If I don't come back in 6 hours Max you must assume something happened to me. They nod and start setting up a perimeter. Wow this world really respects personal strength. I mean they take orders from a 10 year old. In my first life not only we didn't take orders from a 10 year old, but we don't even listen to what they say most of the time. The only way we listen to them is if we are at court, and the kid is saying where his weirdo uncle touched him. Well then I go towards the place where my clone died and see a normal wrecked house. I then send another clone inside, and not even 3 minutes later he comes outside with a scroll in his hands. Then I dispel him and catch the scroll. I also got his memories, and apparently there were no more traps actually. And at the end of the tunnel was nothing. But if you move the picture of the scarecrow that shoots needles out of his mouth inside the wall is a safe, and there is a scroll inside it. The safe didn't have any trap seals only a locking seal, and a destruction seal to destroy everything inside the safe if the seal is open forcefully. I solved this quite easily it was mostly made to not be opened by those of not Yuzumaki origins. And the best way to do that is to put seals that only Yuzumaki know, and I obviously know because of the books about Yuzumaki Fuinjutsu. I make another clone and make him open the scroll to see if it was a trap or something. He opens it and, it was not a trap and after 2 minutes just to make sure there was no trap, I then dispel the clone and get his memories of what he saw. And then my eyes widen, and I go to take the scroll and see for myself. As I open the scroll I read the technique and think, the technique's name is Chain Jail. It is an inferior variation of the adamantine sealing chain that the Yuzumaki use. It was made for those Yuzumaki without the talent to be able to produce the adamantine chains, which would be able to hold the nine tails for a very long period of time. Kishina wasn't able to hold the nine tails down for as long as she would have been able to if she was in top condition during the nine tails attack but still this technique could hold down the six tails for a long period of time and seven tails for some time how the technique works is that you write the specific seal in a part of your body and the seal will generate a sealing chain made out of your chakra the max that can be inscribed in the body is four seals so that means four chains can be made at max the chakra requirement is extreme for the average ninja to make even one chain I should be able to generate three chains at max with my natural chakra amount. But I probably will only generate one chain to fight efficiently. I could generate all the four chains with the chakra in my seal. But if I am not fighting a tailed beast then one chain would be more efficient. I then put the technique scroll in a storage scroll. I will learn this when I return to Kanoha and have more time. I really hit the gold mine this time. I was lucky I am not usually this lucky I guess there is rest for the wicked. I return to my camp and I rest a little, and then we become ready to depart again. Ash one day later are now at the land of waves. We destroyed the boat before arriving on the harbor and stealthily walked on water towards a desolate part of the shore. As soon as we arrive in the shore, a lot of projectiles are thrown at us I immediately use earth style. Earth wall and put extra chakra into it still we still lost some people around 50 root tune in and almost all the gen and I think only die survived we have a lot of injured ninja. We were ambushed and had a catastrophic loss we need to retreat. Then I noticed the chakra signatures that were hidden before. So they used a technique that hides their chakra signatures and attacked us. I sense 10 Jaunin and 84 Chunin. I have around 70 Chunin and a couple of Jaunin under my command. Then 5 of the enemy Jaunin clap their hand and use lightning illusion. Flash pillar I see that, and I immediately start violently running chakra through my body from the seal. And as I do so I see the 5 other Jaunin use girl style. Laser circus towards us and I use user style. Mud wall a gigantic wall of earth appears and stops the attacks that took a lot of chakra. Then the root ninja get out of the Jinjutsu, so I just tell them with hand sings my plan. They get atop the wall and we all use. Fire style. Flamethrower and as we are doing that I cut of my fire ninja to induce wind style. Great breakthrough to power a fire style and a great tsunami of flames appears going towards the enemy. They used water wall, but it wasn't able to handle our jutsu completely. 51 enemy chakra signatures disappear. They let their guard down for a moment they seem like they are fighting in unnatural territory. They probably aren't Miss Ninja even though they have Miss Village headbands, some of them seem kind of tan. If they were Miss Ninja they would have used more water walls together to defend against a jutsu. I think they are Cloud Ninja after all they even use lightning techniques. What they are doing here I don't know. But I will think about that later. The root ninja retreat and take the injured with them. I that signal my ninja and we all disperse in different directions while I leave a couple of shadow clones to distract them. Minus one hour and 30 minutes later have all regrouped in a specified location. It was in a cave under a small bridge. We retreated because even though we took them by surprise with a fire technique we were still at a disadvantage. They had 10 jaunin and we only have me. If we fought the battle we would have had a 30% chance of winning, and I don't like odds like that. I look at our survivors there are only 82 root chunin, with 13 of them injured, and 7 of them critically injured. I am treating them right now, and by tomorrow all of them should be able to fight again. I am not Suned's student for nothing you know. Actually even Sune would need about a week to completely heal the critically injured ones I used their lifespans to make them heal faster. That is why they are able to get better so fast. 4 Genin survived only Dai was not really injured only some scratch which I checked and they weren't poisoned. 3 of the Genin were injured and 2 of them heavily injured. I also healed them. 
This mission won't be a 100% perfect completion like I thought it was going to be. I need to think of a plan, and take the Cloud Ninja all out in a fellow swoop. It won't be as easy as with the Sky Ninja. After all the Cloud Ninja are more alert and experienced than them. Hum. Ash four days later dash. Dash POV change question mark question mark question mark dash third person POV. In the camp of Cloud Ninja a young man who is short for his age, with rather tanned skin and an athletic physique. He possesses ruffled burgundy hair that casts notably dark shadows on itself, combed back to expose his forehead, and wide, dark eyes with white pupils, that appear dark pink around the lower section of their arises. His name was Ken, a Chunin of Cloud Village. He was born and raised in the slums of Akizaya, which is a city in the Land of Lightning. He had a sickly mother he deeply loved. In order to pay for medicine, Ken pickpocketed from people in town, but was caught three times. The guards beat him and marked him with tattoos, threatening to cut his arms off the next time he was caught, in calling him a demon child. When Ken returned home after his third beating, a villager informed him that his mother, having heard of his arrest, hung herself. In the letter she left, she stated she wanted Ken to live a full life, and didn't want her to be a burden to him. She also said that she didn't want to take medicine if it was earned by dishonest means. The beatings didn't hurt him, but the death of his mother did. He felt that she wasn't a burden after all she was his mother. At her death he was devastated and lost. He didn't know where to go and what to do. With his criminal tattoos and no home to return to, Ken was eventually banished from Akizaya. Devastated by the loss of his mother and enraged at this society they lived in where he couldn't afford his mother's medicine, he picked fights with people and beat them up. One day, after nearly killing 10 adult men in a village, he was approached by Han. Han is a ninja from the village hidden in the clouds. He is a black-haired and brown-eyed older man with a muscular body and unshaven stubble, and a very cheerful personality. He is also a Jounin from Cloud Village, and a clan head of the small clan which consisted of him and his daughter. Annoyed by the man's cheerful demeanor, Ken challenged him to a fight, but was defeated with ease. Han took him in so he could nurse Izuno, Han's sickly daughter. Her mother, her previous caretaker, drowned herself due to stress, and Han had to do a lot of missions to keep them afloat and pay for Izuno's medicine. So Ken was tasked with tending to her already accustomed to tending to his mother. He had little trouble tending to her, though he found it awkward whenever she burst into tears. One of those times, unbeknownst to him, he had indirectly motivated her by telling her that there will be a next year to see the Lightning Festival, which celebrates the first defeat of the Octopus Bull demon. Han also started training Ken to be a ninja. Three years later Izuno was in good health and could stand and do chores. Ken continued training with Han to become a ninja. One day, Han offered Ken to take over the small clan and take Izuno as his bride to Ken's surprise and embarrassment. He agreed, silently vowing to protect both of them even at the cost of his own life. At the lightning festival Izuno told him of her past, asking if he was really okay with the proposal, to which he reaffirmed his vows to her, promising to protect her for the rest of his life. He went and prayed to the grave of his mother before going to war, and told her of his latest experiences at the age of 17. He was a Chunin almost a Jonin in about a year. He should be able to become one he still remembers the ambush that happened against the Kanoha ninja. That was really just a coincidence they were supposed to deliver a message to the Mizukage that was their mission. But they already stealthy sent two Chunin and one Jounin to deliver the message. While they distracted the Kanoha ninja at least, if the Kanoha ninja were planning to attack us, and they haven't returned to Kanoha yet. He went to war together with Han, who is now his father-in-law. He is actually one of the Jounin. At that time Han came to towards Ken and smiled and said casually, Hey Ken, how you doing? He then immediately goes alert. That greeting was a code that was made in case we are surrounded, and not to let lip readers notice. We then start getting ready casually with no sudden movements. Then all of a sudden we are surrounded we all go to fight our enemies, and as we are fighting them, Ken notices that someone killed one of them, and it was a shadow clone. Then all of a sudden an explosion happens, and that is the last thing he saw before he only saw darkness and died. And that is how one of the countless victims of the second ninja war, died an easily unforgettable death. Some time later when Izuno got the news that her father and the love of her life died, she committed suicide. And Yami never knew who Ken was, and what happened even if he did he wouldn't really care and see POV, some seconds earlier. I look at the camp with binoculars, and see that one of the clones got killed. Then I do a half tiger seal and say, Katsuboom. A huge explosion happens, and I signal the root ninja we had all used shadow clones, and filled them up with explosive tags under their clothes. We then went and took care of the survivors, there were 17 survivors, we tortured some of them and got information out of it. And once we got what their mission was, and I immediately start a retreat, we don't even clean the site. After all, we could be surrounded by Miss Ninja at any moment. Ash three days later, we returned to Kanoha, we only saw some Miss Patrol teams, and we killed them all and we arrived at Kanoa safely. I just smile and think, I wonder what has changed since I was gone. Did my bounty change? Did I become some kind of war hero? Ah, the plan goes on as I am going towards the Hokage Tower. The root ninja disperse and only die and the three other genin. Then as I arrived there we then were told by the secretary that the Hokage was expecting us well. I guess he already knew we were coming. He probably saw us in his crystal ball or an amber reported to him. Then as I go inside I see the Hokage and all the village elders are there even Danzo. 
The Hokage looks at me and can't keep a smile from forming of his face, and he then says, Work Yami and Yazuka I congratulate you. I keep a serious face to mask my depression slash trauma from killing all the people I did. This is what you call a double layered mask. I then answer seriously, for what Hokage dash Sama. He noticed my mood and says seriously, you are promoted to Jounin. The Jounin's eyes widen after all a 10 year old Jounin is the youngest Jounin ever recorded. This is literally witnessing history. But the Hokage continues and says, and also he picks a book from his desk and throws it to me. I catch the book and read it. Aha, uh -huh, so my bingo book page got refreshed. Yami in Yuzuka code name. Red Fang slash Sky Slayer Yami Bounty. 73.000.000 Ryu rank. It's description. He is believed to be good at Tajutsu. Tsunade Senju the Slug Princess was his Jounin teacher, and he might have her freakish super strength. He has big chakra reserves. His strong point is ninjutsu. He is also believed to be good at Jinjutsu. Be aware the ninja is a schemer. IT is suggested he is dealt with quickly and with no time to prepare. Do not underestimate him because of his age. He used that to overcome Chiyo of the White Troop when he was younger. Wanted for the destruction of the village hidden in the sky. The land of the sky also offers a noble status to anyone who brings him in. He is known for single-handedly destroying the village hidden in the sky, capturing the one-tailed Jinchuriki, cutting of the arm of Chiyo of the White Troop, massacring the defenseless land of the sky civilians, numerous killings in the battle against the village hidden in the sand. He is the only student of Tsunade Senju who is still living. He graduated at apostrophe there were a whole lot of information about me critical and important information. No one is going to underestimate me now. This is a big disadvantage to me. True the reputation will help me get high paying S rank missions even in peacetime. But I don't really care about that. After all, I am only going to do a minimal amount of missions in peacetime. It is better to train or experiment. And I know my power best I am not S rank material then as I am about to put the book down on the Hokage's desk. He looks at me smiles and says, Wait you can keep the book. No need to get a new one for yourself. You just returned. So it's some reading material while you rest. He then says seriously again. Anyways your reward will be 12 S rank and 7 emissions to your record. The rank of Jounin as I already said. And he then takes a check and gives it to me. 6 million Ryo. I just look at the money and say. Hokage dash Sama I don't want the money. His political senses go off. And he notice where I'm going with this. He narrows his eyes and brings his hands together to his chin. He then says. Then what is it that you want? Oh that means that he is ready to pay a big reward to me. Well then let's continue this acting in front of the Genin and the councilman. In the battlefield I noticed how I was unable to protect myself. And I want an S rank technique as my reward. Except the Hokage all the others widen their eyes. But no one refuses after all it is a fair trade. And I didn't ask for an S rank forbidden technique. Just an S rank. Then the Hokage makes a signal and Anbu comes down he then says. The Ambu will guide you where we keep their strength Manjesto. But first you will have to give me a report for your mission. I then do so and of course I hide some details like the zero tails or my half truth of me torturing someone I dodged. Saying it was a prostitute to keep my image cleared. Then after I do so I am escorted out by an Ambu and him taking me to the Ambu base. Then as we are walking I ask him. Sue I have been gone for a long time what happened around here. He just looks at me with his mask which I can't see the eyes. But he says sure. And he starts explaining what happened. Hokage returned to Kanoha and Orochimaru withdrew from the land of rain. And took his place in the war against Cloud Village. Soon they returned to the Mist Battlefield. The Spectre Dan is now holding the rain front lines against Rock together with Sand which are temporarily our ally. Jiraiya asks for a break and because of his contributions he was given one. If my estimation is correct he should be training Conan, Yahiko and Nagato at this time period. He then starts explaining me some of the alliances we made with Waterfall and Grass Village. Then we arrived at our destination. The Ambu base is actually located surprisingly in a run-down apartment complex. Then when we arrive there we go inside, the Ambu escorting me does a secret hand sign to the man in front, who then opens the door for us. But the Ambu says, wait here. Then as I am waiting I open the bingo book and look at the bounties in there. I open the book and read my bounty 73 million Ryo 60 mil, came from the land of the sky, and 13 mil from the land of wind. Then I look at other bounties Tune the Slug Princess. Had 103 million Ryo bounty, Orochimaru the Snake Master 118 million Ryo bounty, Jiraiya the Toad Sage, had him 113 million Ryo bounty, Hanzo the Salamander 134 million, Hiruzen the Professor Slash, the God of Shinobi 171 million, Chiyo of the White Troop 82 million, Almighty A the Third Rakage, had a bounty of 181 million, the White Fang Sukumo 150 million Ryo, Third Kazakiyage the Iron Wasteland has a bounty of 133 million Ryo Chiyo's brother, Ibizo of the White Shroud has a bounty of 84 million O. Oh, I found an interesting one. Heartless Kakuzu 147 million Ryo, Anoki of both scales slash fence sitter Anoki, has a bounty of 142 million. Of course these were only the characters that we see in the main story there were other people in their rank like. Full Metal Toroi from Cloud Village 55 million Ryo bounty, has the ability of magnet release, when he shoots a metal projectile if it touches you, it will follow you like a homing missile. Not the magnet release which has the ability of sand control like those of the sand village. There is also the third Mizukage nicknamed the dragon with 101 million Ryo bounty. He hasn't really done anything noticeable in this war. Yet there also isn't a lot known about his abilities even from the bingo book. The only thing that the bingo book mention is that he is the Mizukage obviously. And that he accompanied Thiefus Mizukage to the first ever 5 cage summit in Kanoha during Thiefus Shinobi war. There is also Dodo the Rubberman 89 million Ryu bounty he uses rubber that he makes from his lava style. I believe he is the guy that helped Naruto against Ido Tensei third rakage. Oh look there is Blue Bee. 
the current 8 tail Jinchuriki 131 million Ryo. There are also a dozen more S rank ninja, they weren't in the main story, but I will still memorize their info just to be sure. After an hour of reading and memorizing the bingo book, the Embu comes out with a paper in his hand, he gives me the paper and says, These are all the S rank techniques which aren't forbidden you will be able to chose one, and I will then go to the Hokage get a confirmation, then I will deliver the technique scroll to you. I take the paper and read all the techniques names and their short descriptions. There are 98 techniques the Ambu looks at me and he says, There are 98 S rank techniques, and do you want to know the best part 39 of those S rank jutsus were created by the second Hokage. I then read some of them and just doing there. Water release, rising blast rank, description, ash using large amounts of chakra. The user creates water from thin air and forms so much that it creates a mini tidal wave. The water then does not dissipate for the duration of the battle, thus creating an arena where the user has a large advantage. If the climate is exceptionally arid, such as a desert, the water only lasts for a short while before draining into the sand. The depth of the water once the wave has settled is anywhere between 3 to 4 meters. 9 8 minus 13 1, water style. Tidal wave jutsu rank. Its description colon an even better and more devastating water technique than the Sushala technique. This technique can drown a large village, but requires enormous amounts of chakra and stamina. Usually an all or nothing technique as it is not used under normal circumstances due to the widespread and indiscriminate destruction that it wreaks. Earth style. Rock finale jutsu rank. Its description colon rocks and debris materials as well as chunks of the earth will continuously barrage at the opponent from all directions. As soon as each of the pieces of earth, rock or debris approaches the opponent, they will explode causing a brutal destructive force with all the pieces exploding. Standing still. The user will clasp their hands and stomp a fort. All material not held down will immediately pop up into the air and hover, and they will fly towards the enemy. And if they touch something they will explode. So long as the user keeps their hands clasped comma. They may move about freely to avoid the danger of being close to the target and ensuing destruction. Lasts for so long as the hands remain clasped. Fire style. Fire Hydra Technique Rank. Its description colon an extremely powerful technique used only by the most powerful ninja. It has been known to destroy entire landscapes in one fell swoop. By somewhat summoning a large, fiery monstrosity in front of them. A fire dragon with three heads. All of the techniques are amazing, and they are not even the S-rank forbidden ones. I want them all I mean imagine if I knew only the S-rank elemental techniques in this scroll, and was a Jinchuriki of the Six Tails or a higher number tail beast. I am sure I could compete with some of the most legendary ninja. I would even be confident of defeating most of the ninja of the past, present and future of course the monsters like Madara, Sasuke, Naruto and Hashirama, don't count though. I would be able to contend against Hokage Minato. I would just use a wide range S-rank ninjutsu against Kanoha, and keep doing that until he exhaust all his chakra, and leave an invisible poison gas in the area, 80% chance I would be able to kill him. But of course in a battle there are a lot of different factors. Like would the Anbu help him against me? Do I have allies? A lot of unstable factors in my calculations, but still I would definitely be a one-man army. There were a lot of other techniques of different elements and non-elemental techniques, and as I looked at them, I looked at the one I was most interested. There were a lot of other techniques of different elements and non-elemental techniques, and as I looked at them, I looked at the one I was most interested. Flying Thunder God Rank. So the user needs to be a Grandmaster in Fuenjutsu to be able to use it and make his personal seal. Needs great chakra reserves. It is mostly used as a transportation method. The use in battle is almost impossible because of the teleportation the user might be teleported in front of a kunai. The teleportation is almost instantaneous. To be usable in battle, it depends on the thinking process and analytical speed of a person to be able to teleport fast and efficiently. Well then I mean there are all kinds of techniques, but the Flying Thunder God is definitely the best non-forbidden s sank technique, no questions asked. I mean another S-rank blood-bending jutsu that Toborama has invented sounded good was able to manipulate those weaker than you, and paralyze those of the same level for a couple of seconds. I mean for an average Jounin in a couple of seconds, he can pretty much slice you around 30 times. I mean the impure world reincarnation is one of the techniques that I think could surpass it. But the technique is an S-rank forbidden one, and it's not in the list. I then point towards the technique I want and say to the Anbu, Woke this is the technique I want the flying thunder god. He just looks at me and says, Woke you crazy. Are you out of your mind? The Flying Thunder God hasn't been mastered since the second Hokage. I look at him calmly and say, I know that. He then looks at me and says while pointing, Ah, oh, you don't get it, okay? Let me explain it to you Kid Hokage-sama was student of the creator of the technique Toborama-sama, and the previous god of Shinobi Hashirama Senju, who brought all the tail beasts to their knees. You know tail beasts are like the trump cards of most nations. Suo Lord Hokage who also had Mito-sama to teach him Fuenjutsu, and the creator of the technique as a teacher to help him was unable to learn it. And he is 42, and still hasn't learned the technique. Man he sure says Sama a lot. I then just look at him seriously and say, Can I get the technique now? He then calms down and says more calmly, He is not an Anbu for nothing. Quote, I am just saying kid you shouldn't waste your time like this you are young. You should expand your jutsu repertoire. Quote, I just look at him and think he doesn't know what I know and has my best interests in mind. But I mean come on I know Minato learned it. As I am thinking that the Anbu continues speaking. Quote, plus even if you did master it. If you don't have the terrifying instinct that the second Hokage had the only thing you will get from Flying Thunder. God is a fancy and fast way of traveling long distances. I just look at him wow he, he really is wasting so much of my time. So I just tell him. Quote, I wanted to try to see how it works because I have hit a bottleneck in my Fuenjutsu. I thought this might be able to help me. 
plus the other techniques are way to check her intensive and would be difficult to use in a situation, plus I am not ready for a wide destruction S rank techniques. Get the hint you piece of shit, you are just wasting so much of my time. He looks at me and says, yeah, even though your chakra amount is very large dot dot. An elemental S rank ninjutsu isn't the best idea you could get hurt and even crippled. He is right with my chakra I would be able to use an elemental S rank technique only once. Well, more like 1.5 times. But still it would not be very efficient. He then continues and says smiling this time. Okay then I will take your decision to the Hokage see if he will allow it. And then I will deliver the technique scroll to you. By the way don't get discouraged. If you aren't able to learn it. I mean I had 16 years. And I still haven't learned it. He then shunchens away. What did he mean when he said that he had 16 years to learn the technique I start walking home. I keep thinking. Do Ambu have access to S rank ninjutsu at least the ones which are not forbidden hum. Should I become an Ambu when the war ends no. That would be a waste of time. Just patrolling and protecting important people. Better get an Inuzuka in there. But I need to ensure who will be loyal to though. Cause if they aren't then I will have a problem in my hands. I mean someone telling the Hokage that I ask S rank techniques from Ambu is a big red flag. They might also become double agents against me. I don't need a retarded version of Itachi who likes dogs, and is generally less cooler and way weaker than him as my clan's Anbu though who would be a good person to become an Anbu. I need someone young so I can mold Anne's brainwash easily, and someone who is close to me then as I arrive at my house. I see Tsum training in the yard. When she sees me a smile takes form on her face, then she runs towards me happily and says, Wait Yami Omi Chen you are back. I look at Tsum's smile and say to her, Hey there Tsum Dash Chen I see that you are training hard again. She looks at me and says, Yes, I want to graduate soon I am 9 I am going to war and be the strongest ninja ever. I just look at her and smile on the outside. But in the inside I am thinking well she would die fast. How she survived up until canon in the story is nothing short of a miracle. This kind of personality unless you are the reincarnation of Jesus of the Naruto world. INDRA and Asura. Then there is no way you will survive with her shitty talent. I mean if she met a Haichunin. Then who is going to save her? Hum. I mean if she died. It wouldn't be that much of a big deal in my plans. But what about the timeline? I don't really care about the timeline. But I need certain events to happen for my plan to go smoothly. Hum, her death would also be kind of suspicious. I mean first the father then the daughter I would be the number one suspect. Plus I don't have anything to gain from killing her. I look at her and say, Won't assume Dash Chan you mustn't graduate until you are 10 years old. Or I give you permission. She just pouts and goes back to training. I then go towards my room for some rest. I note Sume has tried graduating early behind my back. But you know me as a Sanin student. My words have some pull. Plus the teachers understand me, and what I am doing is for her own good. I go to my bed and lie down. Time skip, 5 months later MC age 11 well. I am glad they let me take such a long vacation. I mean I have a lot of merits, and I kind of pushed it with the vacation. But who cares in the war side of things Orochimaru and Sakumo are still holding the lightning front lines, though the Raikage has been pushing them back a lot. On the rain side of things Jiraiya is still probably teaching the rain kids, and a new name has appeared in the battlefield against Rock Village, people have even started calling him a hero yeah, my fame from destroying a whole village, single handedly is kind of dwindling. I would take care of him if he was a threat to my plans. If I was a guy who really cared about a dead guy starting to catch up to my fame, his name is Dan Kato, also known as Dan of the Spectre. Before he appeared even all the S-Rank Sand Ninja were barely able to hold back the Tsuchikage. But then Dan came, and he used his technique to possess people close to the Tsuchikage and attacks him randomly. It is said that he was able to make the Tsuchikage suffer one loss after another, and that hasn't happened in a long time. Tsunade is easily holding the water battlefield pretty successfully, she is probably the biggest legend fawn in this war. If she wasn't here the casualties on Kanova's side would have been twice as much. She has saved so many lives it is pretty much impossible to count. I think she is 50% of the reason that Kanoha will win the second ninja war. Anyways I have mastered the chain gel fujutsu in 2 months. I also made my own technique the Rasengan is able to be made with one hand and is perfect for future Minato because he will hold the Horatian kunai in the other hand. But for me at best it is just a way to be able to beat people with high defense, and not really my trump card so to say. I then make some hand signs. Tiger apostrophe horse apostrophe rabbit apostrophe rat apostrophe dog and then blue chakra comes towards my hands chakra scalpel. Then I start infusing wind chakra through my hands wind style. Chakra scalpel the cutting power is through the roof. I haven't tried it yet, but I believe that it has the ability to cut through the Susanoo rib cage. Rasen shuriken is an S rank monstrous technique, but my technique is monstrous in its own way. Still the chakra control to do this is needed to be perfect. I think my chakra control now is in the top 2 in the ninja world. I should be right next to Tsunade. My physical stats have also advanced now that my body is growing. My natural strength should be around high Jounin, which doesn't really matter counts. I have the super strength technique of Tsunade. My natural agility is low elite Jounin. I can raise that to almost S-class speed. With my 4-legged technique, these natural stats are really impressive for an 11-year-old. But it didn't come from nowhere the training I do is inhumane, together with my medical knowledge well. 
Let's just say that Lee has nothing on me with my training efficiency. Though he does beat me in effort I have other things to learn not just to jutsu. But even though I train efficiently, I don't think there is anyone also who can train like me because of the immense pain. So I just nullify my pain with a little senbin in my nerve system, and do the calculations to not hurt my body accidentally after all I don't feel pain in that period of time. Anyway on the flying thunder god technique, I haven't made a lot of progress. I have 6 clones working at it at all times but almost no progress is made. I also have the last book of Yuzumaki Fuenjutsu, but I still can't use the Flying Thunder God. Even when I learn all the Yuzumaki Fuenjutsu, I'm not sure I will be able to use it. I mean the Fuenjutsu formula looks simple at first sight, but I feel like a kid who just learned 2 plus 2 equals 4, and then he gets a math exercise with 4 unknown factors. How the hell did the second Hokage come up with it? I have a whole different perspective of him now. How did a guy like that get killed by Ginkaku and Kinkaku I don't know. But anyway, I look at a note in my hand, it was left by an MB yesterday. To meet with the Hokage, yeah, I am important enough now, and can't get summoned at the whims of other people, they need to send me an appointment first. I wear the usual green hoodie and ambu pants with sandals, they are like the only clothes I have they are efficient and good for camouflage. I am not really trying to look good anyway. I wonder what the Hokage is calling me for, it isn't a clan head meeting. They aren't held in wartime unless a Sharingan is stolen, a clan member is a spy or something like that. I wonder what is the reason I am being summoned, though I have a good idea what it is, for I then go to the Hokage's tower. And as I enter I see the receptionist, she looks at me and says, Wait the Hokage is waiting for you in Yuzuka-sama. I arrived exactly on time. I go inside the office and I see Hiruzen and Danzo in there the other two council members are missing. But there is a Shikamaru looking guy probably a Nara. They are usually the strategists of a battlefield. Then the Hokage looks at me, smiles and says, I see that you are getting stronger every time we meet. Wow I feel like he starts every conversation with a smile I just say to him. Well hard work never betrayed anyone. He looks at me and says humorously, Yeah you're right. Hard work betrays no one. He then gets serious and says, Then let's get right to the point. I need someone to go support Tsunade on the Miss Battlefield well. Not really support there has been Cloud Ninja seen in the territory of the battlefield between Mist and Konoha. Never hurt to cautious you will act as her second in command. Then Danzo comes forward and says cynically, We also want you to end things there in the Miss Battlefield. I want you to kill the commanders in the Miss Battlefield. These guys are they playing good cop? Bad cop? Is it a way for them to test me or something? Are they suspicious of something I don't like not knowing things? This all went through my mind in half a second, so I just look at them seriously and said, Well, I will give it all my efforts when do I have to get ready to go there. Then the Nara lookalike says, We will set off in five days I will also be coming with you. I look at him and say, Okay, I am Yami Inuzuka sir. He just looks at me and makes a smirk and says, I know you kid my kid used to talk about you a lot Sai, what a drag that was. Plus you are kind of famous around Kanoha. I look at him, and think I was famous really. I might have have destroyed a village. But I thought I might be overshadowed by the San and I mean Jiraiya also destroyed the Dragonfly village. That action also started the war, though Saratobi was there. But it was more a support to make sure no one escaped, who then might come back for revenge. At least those are my thoughts on the events it is described with way too much propaganda on the Kanoha books so I didn't even read past a couple of pages. I mean they accused them of stealing a very benevolent noble or something like that, when in reality Fire Country just wanted to expand their territory. Well as they say history is written by the winners. But in the other countries they say that Kanoha massacred the small ninja village, and the other countries wanted justice. But in reality, they were afraid of the Fire Country getting more land. So they also started attacking their small neighbors to also get more land to be able to keep up with Kanoha. And then Kanoha was like why are you massacring weak villages? Because Kanoha was now afraid of them. Then they were like apostrophe well you started it. They started with small conflicts amongst each other, and Kanoha said to stop attacking the small villages they didn't. And then Boom War comes with Kanoha in the middle of all the ninja villages. So it became a very disadvantaged situation for Kanoha since the beginning. But Kanova was able to survive thanks to many legendary ninja like the Sanin, White Fang, the Scepter, the Professor, the Darkness of Shinobi etc. I just look at him and say, Are you Shikaku's dad? He smokes and says, Yeah, I am Shikaramu Nara, the current clan head of the Nara clan, and I represent Ino Shikacho Alliance Sai, which is such a drag. What the hell is up with that tired aura around him that is weird, kind of like killing intent. But it just expresses his boredom, and it is pretty much useless I wonder does he do that unconsciously killing intent can be made unconsciously and consciously anyway I just tell him. Well I see that you know me. But I would like to introduce myself. My name is Yami and Yazuka. I like training. My Ninkan and Kanoha. I dislike war and needless killing. My hobbies are eating delicious food and learning new things. My dream for the future is to become the strongest Hokage so I can protect Kanoha and all of those I love. The Nara looks at me with his sleepy eyes and says way too much info. I didn't really ask for or need. Well, I need you to think you understand me and have me figured out. Because I am not really sure if I can hide things from an experienced and intelligent Nara, who is best friends with the head of the clan, who specializes in reading memories and dealing with information. I just look at him in a serious way and say, Well, we are comrades and we need to know each other. Plus, I don't think you are a spy dash change POV, Shikaramu Nara. I look at Yami and Yazuka this kid. He is definitely wearing a mask. You notice these kind of things. When you are always on guard against spies in our midst. Even though I wasn't sure in the beginning that he was wearing a mask, his body language is perfect. Not surprising since he is a medic, 
But that is also what made me suspicious in the beginning. It was too perfect even with Tsunade. You are able to notice how she is feeling from her body language and slight face twitch. Though if I was an enemy and she was on guard, there is no way I would be able to notice it in the midst of battle even though sometimes she is very expressive of her feelings. But this kid, he is too guarded even against the Kanoha ninja he is hiding something I can count the people who would be able to notice his mask in one hand and three of them are in this room me included. I then say to the kid, Wait sure, sure kid Sai, this is such a drag anyway my name is Shikaramu Nara. I like cloud watching and playing shogi with my friends. I dislike dishonest people. He doesn't even flinch slightly when I say that. This control over his body's natural reactions are scary, even for ninja especially ninja his age. But I continue selling. Dot, dot. And people who go out of their way to disrupt my cloud watching. My dream is to live until this war ends so I can be lazy and play shogi all day. He just looks at me without an even trace of anger and just says, You know old man you are really lazy. This is the thing that makes me suspicious of him. His teammates died because some ninja were lazy or didn't look hard enough and led a big group of ninja with Jounin and Chunin pass. I thought he would criticize me. But he is so calm like. Well anyway, the Hokage then says. Yami is the second in command. If Tsunade is ever fighting against an opponent I need you to lead the ninja. If you want to just go and help Tsunade. I need you to give command to Shikaramu. Because he will be your second in command. And will be a critical part in planning strategies. He looks at us and then says. I understand Hokage dash Sama quote then the Hokage says. I won't keep you any longer I am sure you need to prepare for the journey. He gets the hint and goes out of the office. When he is gone there is silence for a couple of seconds and I say. Sue. I am sure you notice that the kid is wearing a good mask. Then the Hokage looks at me and says. That kid he lost two of his teammates in a mission. In the reports from the medic they say it was a miracle he was able to stay conscious and come back alive after the battle against him San Jounin. I then say to them. That is true he doesn't like to show weakness. And he has a mask we don't know what is hidden behind the mask. But what I believe from all of the information that I have about his life is that he hides his so-called weakness or as he proceeds his emotions behind a mask. I believe for his mask to be so good he started wearing it young. Probably when he learned that his father was dead quote, then Danzo is also looking at Hokage dash Sama then he says. If we weren't at war, he would have been perfect for my root program. The Hokage frowns, looks at Danzo and says. No, you aren't allowed to take clan children or ninja with talent in your root program. We need them to be the light. I look at them and think Hokage dash Sama really hates the root program. I mean 99.9% .9 who know of it hate it. But still the Hokage knows that root ninja are efficient and very useful. A root Chunin could assassinate a Jounin with a suicide technique, or just simply attacking and having paper bombs wrapped around him. Not even the most devoted ninja will do that. We have thousands of Chunin, but only a handful of Jounin if even one is taken out, it is a great loss. They are after all the best ninja in their generation there is a saying that there is no weak Jounin. Even though the root missions will never be made public, I hear that they are very gruesome from assassinations of whole bloodlines from the elderly to the babies torturing nobles and killing the family one by one in front of them to make them talk. Torture techniques that would make even the most veteran ninja throw up like our peeing daughters in front of their families, torturing their kids in front on them. That is why none of the clans even dare to get any smart ideas I am brought out of my thoughts by Danzo's voice who says, I know I wouldn't take him even if you gave him to me. We all know that is not true. I think that while Danzo continues speaking, look at the strategy he did in the land of the sky, he is without a doubt an asset to Kanoha. If he wasn't so young, I would have even recommended him as a frontline army commander. The Hokage looks at Danzo with a little surprise, then he smiles and says, Are you getting sentimental Danzo? Does he remind you of a yourself when you were younger? Wait how does he get that UIC now the father died in the battlefield of war same with Danzo? Comrades dead same as Danzo well that is pretty much it. But I bet you could match that background with 80% of the Kanoha ninja. I am sure the Hokage is just trying to get under his skin. Danzo looks at the Hokage and says calmly, Aren't you too old for these types of games Hiruzen? The Hokage shrugs his shoulders and says, Oh well. Then an Ambu signaled us that the next visitor is coming. Ash change POV, Yomi's POV, as I go outside of the office. I think back to the conversation I feel dot no. I know I am not getting something that happened in that room. Those answers. Those questions with the Nara they were shit, shit shit goddamn IT. He played me he got me that Bartard okay I need to calm down first. How would they think of me obviously they wouldn't jump to the conclusion that I am a reincarnated person. They shouldn't have been able to see through my mask and see my real personality. Even if they did it doesn't matter they think it's just another Orochimaru. And that is not bad. Since he hasn't left Kanoha yet that behavior isn't considered bad. Since it's only being used against the enemy. Okay I get my mistake now I wasn't able to understand the game the Nara was playing. Until it was too late what I lack is wisdom that comes with experience. That is true the most I manipulated in my last life was a teacher or a classmate. People who I know their personalities are easier to manipulate and predict. I was able to manipulate people because I knew so much about them from the Anime. Hokage and Danzo are dangerous because even if I might be able to manipulate them, I am 50% sure they will notice my intentions after all they have experience in that anyway. Now that the gig is up, I need another personality one, which isn't that different from the last one one, where the Nara won't notice that what I'm hiding is dangerous. Hum, how about one where I don't blame anyone else except myself for the death of my teammates? But I need to make it seem natural I didn't notice that he was leading me on. I need to be more careful after all. I am more dangerous than Orochimaru. I am not some sadistic guy who kills for shit and giggles. 
I am someone who is unpredictable to these people. After all, I am acting based on my future knowledge. Dash five days later, I am waiting for the others to arrive here. I have prepared a lot for this war. I even have like one year worth of food in a storage scroll. That is in case I am banished from Canova and need to go in hiding. I will live for a year in a cave and train or something, though that is a very, very unlikely possibility. Dash five minutes later they have all arrived, and we are waiting for the Nara to show up. Then I sense the chakras of some ninja coming towards my direction. I sense 20 Jowen, 26 Chunin and 61 Jenin. When Shikaramu arrives exactly on time we start the journey, towards the mist battlefield. The front lines are in the land of noodles or at the beaches near it. The mist ninja have an advantage because we are near a lot of water, and most of them are either Keke Jinkai users or have water affinity. Ash three days later in the road we didn't meet any obstacles. We only meet some genin who had understood their position in the battlefield, and they deserted we of course, noticed them hiding and took care of them. When we arrived at the camp a Jounin came to greet us and ran some tests to see if we were the real ones, and not some disguised enemy. Then Chunin and Jenin went to get familiar with the camp, while the Jounin which also included me, went to meet with the leader in the meeting tent. She then looks at me, smiles and says, So you are my second in command huh? You sure you are up for the challenge brat? I just look at her and say amusingly, Why of course Tsunade. Then after some more chit chat between me and Tsunade, we get to the main point, and I start explaining the mission from the Hokage, and how we need to end this war quicker. Then Tsunade started explaining that she would have already ended it if they were in any other battlefield. The terrain gives them an unfair advantage. Plus their camp is in an iceberg made by the Yuki clan of the Mist Village. Our numbers are about the same as them. But we still have the absolute survival advantage with Tsunade here, and she has a high chance of single-handedly with the help of Katsu, to kill a huge chunk of them all in land, though it would take some time. But those odds do a 180 degrees turn if we are fighting on water, their advantage became able to keep Tsunade at bay, and for her to not attack. But they also don't dare attack us on land recklessly, or else they would be annihilated by Tsunade. Then Sun says with a small smile, Well since you are here Yami, or should I call you now Sky Slayer Yami or Yami of the Reed Fang? I just say humorously, Well you could call my honey or darling. If you want the ninja look surprised at our humorous relationship, but they don't really make a big deal out of it after all. It's just an 11 year old kid trying to be like an adult. Like I was older world son Senja doing something with her student as well scandalous, though that is highly improbable. Anyway Tsune just smiles and says, and you should call me mistress, then okay this is just getting out of hand. Can't you see that there are people around us well it is entertaining, and it is not my reputation who is going to get a big hit, so I just say with an embarrassed face, W dash well if you want that M dash mistress. All of the people in the room are shocked. Even Tsunade who was used to me acting like this didn't think I would really say it. She rubs her eyes and says in a tired way, Sigh, you know kid you are really tiring and shameless, she then gets a serious face and says, No joking around let's talk business now that we have 2s rank ninja here we have a lot more options now. I have decided that we will take the initiative and attack the miss ninja first, she then takes out a map and puts it in a big table points at a point in the sea and explains. This is the location of the mist camp in an iceberg made by the Yuki clan, but the location also changes because they move the iceberg. I will now listen to any ideas you have, so we can make a plan that has the highest success. Tsune then takes out a map and puts it in a big table, points at a point in the sea and says, This is the location of the mist camp in an iceberg made by the Yuki clan, but the location also changes because they move the iceberg. I will now listen to any ideas you have, so we can make a plan that has the highest success. There are people who give some ideas, some of the ideas get accepted some do not. When when it comes my turn I just say I can't really think of anything in a water biome. After all there are not a lot of ways to be able to seek up on them, though I could think some plans of the bat butt. They are kind of morally wrong even for ninja, plus I am not the leader. Tsunade is the leader, and she probably won't accept my plan even if she did. It would ruin my image that I need for some of my plans after all. We are really going to need a scapegoat if my plan works and that just shows how vile it is. So anyway we are going to attack the Mist Ninja tomorrow. Minus one day Latrox so we are going towards the Mist Camp. I still think that this is not a smart idea. It would be better to draw them out somehow. But there are not a lot of ways an army will move. I was thinking of someone AK or me. Infiltrate the Mist Village, kidnap someone important to the Mist Camp leader and torture him or her, and let him know about it. Also if we are able to torture it in an easily watchable area. So the commander will be able to watch it from far away. To confirm the person is real, and not someone transformed, then he will come out with or without an army. But he might also not have anyone that close to him. There are also a dozen other plans. But each of them is messed up, and even those plans who aren't cruel, will make Canova appear weak, which then might entice the other countries to attack fiercely or in the worst scenario band together in an all-out attack against Canova. Anyway enough thinking about plans I need to concentrate 100% in the battle. I am now running on water towards the mist camp. Ash one hour ladder can finally see the mist camp. We immediately, without even resting go towards them, trying to take them by surprise. But as we get closer a Hyoga ninja notifies us that the enemy seems to have noticed us. Well that is not really a surprise, since it's hard to sneak an army of almost 2000 even if they are ninja. Plus we are in the sea, and not exactly a lot of places to hide. Anyway as we get closer we see some ninja form a line and start doing hand signs. Then as we get closer I see that they are still not coming to climb with us in the middle of the battlefield, and I immediately stealthily made a shadow clone and go underwater following my clone. Then as it seemed like the ninjutsu of the enemy ninja was over, we were close enough to them, and we threw some projectiles towards them. 
but then some other Mist Ninja came in the front line. They used water style. Water wall jutsu and the projectiles were blocked, though some did go through. Then suddenly snow starts falling. Then Sun throws a kunai which touches a snow faki, and the snowflake blossoms like a flower, but with ice spikes all around it. Then I hear Tsunade shouts loudly, everyone underwater now. All of the other ninja go underwater even my clone. I just pop my head above water to get some air and go underwater immediately. Then some snowflakes touch the water and start freezing the water all around us. They are obviously trying to suffocate us. Then Sun goes touches the ice, then brings his fist back and throws a punch at it and it immediately starts to crack, and it then gets destroyed. Then we all go above water and the battle starts. Tsunade goes after a feminine looking guy. I can tell by his body that he is a guy it seems like he is the leader of his camp. Ash clone Povi just take out two kunai, and I run when chakra through them. I then go against them so a hail of kunais being thrown towards me. So I just throw my kunais in the air and use water style. Water wall it stops the projectiles. But then I sense some jutsu coming towards me. As soon as the water wall is down, I can see a tsunami of water coming towards me. I see the jutsu, look at the ninja behind me, and I remember in every battlefield I was I used to hide like a rat, always afraid, always weak, I hate it. Even though it was necessary that weakness I hate it not having your fate in your hands. But tsunami is coming closer. I look at it and with a smile in my face I use wind style, chakra scapel, and the tsunami is cut in half, clone POV continues, the tsunami is coming closer I look at it, and with a smile in my face, and I use wind style, chakra scapel, and the tsunami is cut in half, when I came to this world I didn't know how weakness can be this frustrating, but I need more power to become really strong I then see mist ninja coming towards me. I see thousands of them, but what I am really concentrated on is the four ninja leading them. The special thing about them is the swords they have, they are four out of the seven ninja swordsmen the swords they are using are Kiba, twin swords that are imbued with lightning which increases their cutting power. They are said to be the sharpest swords ever forged. Kuba Kiribacho, a giant sword with a butcher knife-like appearance. The wielder can use the semicircle on the blade to decapitate an opponent's head, hence the name. The sword has an ability to regenerate using the iron absorbed from the blood of those it cuts down. It is also called Executioner's Blade. Nyabari, a sword in the shape of a needle with a long thin wire that resembles thread attached to it, which can be used to pierce enemies and sew them together in human bundles. Shibuki, a sword that has a scroll full of explosive tags incorporated into it, lined up behind the blade combining swordsmanship and explosions. They are definitely dangerous the swords that is, not the ninja using them, they are at best elite jounin, but they have become too dependent on a weapon I can tell that much, but still I will not underestimate them. In the bingo book they all have a bounty between 50 million and 65 million ryo, mostly because of their swords, but that still makes them S-rank ninja. As they get closer I give a signal to Shikaramu Naro to take command and go to battle. As I do so I stealthily put explosive bombs all around my body. As soon as they see me they signal each other and immediately start attacking me, not leaving me time to think. As soon as they are close I boom, Yomi POV. I see the clone explode, but I can still feel the ninja swordsman. I make another clone, but this one I order to go and order Shikaramu to do something for me. I then go outside of the underwater and go towards the four ninja swordsmen I look at them, and as soon as the smoke clears out, I see them unhunt how. Aha, I see so they use the explosion blade to cancel out my explosion, and the executioner's blade as a shield to propel them backwards. They are experienced and work good as a team I will give them that I take out two kunai, and then go towards them. As soon as I get close the guy with the executioner's blade comes slashing towards me. As soon as it does I act like I am going to block it. As soon as my kunai touches his sword, it cuts right through it. Because I ran wind chakra through my kunai as soon as our blades touched, he jumped back. But I knew my wind chakra will still cut him but my kunai is stopped by the guy with the lightning swords. I am about to slash with my other kunai. Then I feel a thread wrapped around my other hand. Then as I am trapped I see the guy with the explosion sword slashing towards me. She yet I use my super strength technique and force my arm to get cut off in the wire as I then grab my cut off arm with my teeth and jump back. I see the four ninja swordsmen stare at me with a little surprise after all. An 11 year old kid had the willpower to cut off his own arm. I understand something now. I look back at them and say to them with with gratitude while smiling. I am really grateful to you guys you made me learn something. The one with the explosion blade looks at me and says bewildered. Have you gone crazy kid? I came so close to death today I then put my cut off arm towards my stump and think I was really a fool to think that I could achieve my dream without giving IT my all. Strength of a 100 seals activate. As soon as I do that tattoos start spreading all over my small 11 year old body. When it is finished I look at my detached arm and see that it has connected with the stump. I squeeze my hand in a fist to test it and everything feels normal. What amazing power. I just activated creation rebirth to heal myself and the process is so quick it really is bizarre. Though I should end this fast after all I am spending chakra that I have in my seal. Plus my lifespan to reattach my arm. But I should also take this more seriously now no joking around and getting drunk on this microscopic power of mine. I run towards the four ninja swordsmen and as soon as I get close the explosion sword guy attempts to blast me apart. But as soon as he does that I jump on top of his sword and use earth style. Iron skin to protect myself from the explosion and any internal damage is healed by creation rebirth. I then take out the kunai and am about to stab it in his eye. But it is stopped by the lightning swords guy and the executioner's blade swordsman is about to cut me and I don't see them. 
but I know there are some wires around me by the needle swordsman. Even though it seems I'm in a pinch, it was all according to plan. Chain gel, then a huge amount of chakra condenses in my back, and a chain comes out of it. Then I swing the heavy looking chain around their heads. Crunch, 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 three necks broken, twisted in weird ways. I surprisingly took out all three of them as expected of a technique able to hold down the six tails. Though it is very chakra intensive even with my chakra stored in the seal, now it is only the needle swordsman he looks towards me. And I thought he would be angry that I killed his comrades. But he just turned around and ran. Well, I am definitely not letting my enemies escape and come back for revenge. He knows my trump cards. He knows too much about me already. He is too dangerous. He needs to die. I pick up the three ninja swords and the corpses and put them all in a storage scroll and ran after him carefully. Not to get myself trapped. These are the times I wish I had a Sharingan or Bayakigan to see this stuff as I chase after him. I keep my chain gel active just in case there are also some missed ninja who try to get in my way but they are quickly killed. After some time the needle swordsman turned around, and he raised his hand towards me with his palm open, and then squeezed it into a fist. So in cocoon, all of a sudden thousands of wires come out from underwater, and make a sphere of strings all around me, and they are getting closer. She, this guy is the trickiest opponent I have ever fought. Then I just wrap my chain around myself. Chain jail. Cocoon I am able to protect myself like this from the wires well. Then let's test the strength of these wires. I start forcing my chain to rip the wire, and it does so quite easily. When I rip out of the cocoon I see that I am surrounded by Mist Ninja. I knew this would be a trap, but come and you don't need to take me so seriously after all I'm just a kid. I sense around 109 chakra signatures who have surrounded me, most of them are Chunin, with, with some Jenin in them and a couple of Jounin. This is really bad their numbers are too big I will run out of stamina if I fight them all. That is if I don't get my head cut off first by a surprise attack. I don't have a giant summon to help me take care of big numbers of ninja. I just look at them and I'm about to use a wide range Jinjutsu on them all, and run away. But then I get the memories of my clone who went to order Shikaramu, and to tell him my strategy. Well then it seems like my luck just turned around a little. I just look at my enemies and think sinisterly. Well then time to take care of some of you. I continue acting worried to not give off anything. Then I start howling. Howl, demonic illusion. Dog binding, even though it is a low chakra cost Jinjutsu, it is still takes a lot of chakra to use as an AoE attack. If I didn't have Tsunade seal that stores chakra I would be exhausted already. As soon as I see that my Jinjutsu takes effect I I throw a smoke bomb and make a run for it. I sense a couple of them break out of my Jinjutsu, but there are still almost 100 ninjas stuck in it. As I am making a run I notice the people who broke out of the Jinjutsu are not chasing me. I was going to stealthily take them out, and then join Shikaramu to complete my plan. Damn it I am really having a bad day. I need to kill the Needle Swordman. He has too much information in my skills, and a battle between ninja is a battle between information him spreading information about me in my bingo book page, is like him making me weaker, because people are going to take countermeasures against my abilities. I don't give a shit how many Kanoha ninja die, but me getting weaker is not allowed. I will abandon the plan then I am killing the Needle Swordsman today. No matter what. But I am in a big disadvantage of our battle being in water. And I only know a handful of water ninjutsu. And if I sneak attack them the needle swordsman definitely has string traps around himself. So I might end up ambushed instead. I wish I had a Sharingan to be able to see them. Wait. We are in the middle of the battlefield. I can get a Sharingan. This is actually the best way to get a Sharingan. Okay, I need to calm down first and plan. I look towards the Mist Ninja's direction. And I turn around and flee from this place. I will definitely kill every one of you for my safety and peace of mind. I then deactivate strength of a 100 seals. I make another clone. And he goes towards Shikaramu to give him instructions on continuation of the plan. I run towards where the Kanoha and Miss Ninja are clashing. What was Tsuna thinking when she gave this order to fight in the middle of the sea against Miss Ninja? I go to the front line where the main fighting is going on. I then make a clone to protect me. I see a couple of Achiha around the battlefield. I know most of the clan people in the battlefield. I take out some binoculars and look for a person with a Sharingan and with about the same pupil size as mine. That after I seal my Sharingan it will look natural to complement this. I also have natural pupil's eyes. After all, even if temporary, I am not having a faulty Sharingan. I find a person who fits the description. He seems about 15 years old, with a one Tomo Sharingan in both eyes. Well, I can work with that. Then I use a chakra suppressing seal to hide from some Bayakigan users. That means I can't use chakra externally. Still, I go underwater and as the battle is raging on Iho under the Achiha, and just grab him and underwater, I put a Senban on his neck, and I put him in a fake death state. I then drag him away from the battlefield. I then destroy the chakra suppressing seal. When I am far away from the battlefield, I meet with my clone. And he nods towards me and takes him off my hands. He will take him to land and hide him in a place. And he will then dispel himself. Well then time to complete the plan with Shikaramu. Then I go back to the battlefield and immediately Chanel a huge amount of chakra and howl demonic illusion. Dog binding all of the Chunin and Jenin ninja on the battlefield are paralyzed then. As the Jounin break out on my Jinjutsu. Shadow possession Jutsu shadows come from the depth of the sea. And bind all of the moving Jounin. All of a sudden all the Kanova Jounin come to my side. And we all start doing hand signs. I make five clones that go behind the ninja. Fire style. Flamethrower as they finish that I and my clones come forward and use wind style. Great breakthrough to fuel the flames. 
Even though we are on water at Tsunami of Flames is created from our combination jutsu. Then I dispel my clones. The Kanoha ninja immediately start killing the lucky survivors. Well, I just turned this around. I sense that some lucky ninja were able to escape. Then I look towards a certain direction Tsunade is there fighting with the Miss Camp leader well then. Well, I just turned this around. I sense that some lucky ninja were able to escape. Then I look towards a certain direction Tsunade is there fighting with the Miss Camp leader well then. Oh, let's go see what is going on in there. When I arrive there I see that one of the fighters is missing an arm. Obviously it was the feminine looking Miss Camp leader and he seems pretty exhausted too. Well, it seems like Tsuned has this in the bag, but I am not honorable enough to let it slow down my plans for even a second. I stealthily go behind the camp leader who is distracted by Tsuned and his injuries, and I just punch him in the back of his head. Squelch, you all gross, his head just popped like a ballon. Well, anyway, I look towards Tsuned. Tsuned just looks back at me and says pointedly, I had that handled, why did you interfere? Well, obviously I need to get something done, you blonde bimbo opposite of what I'm thinking. I just say to her, well, if your pride is hurt, walk it off, we are ninja, we don't need that stuff. She just looks at me, and I don't let her analyze my words further to see if I insulted her or not. I obviously did so I just continue talking. I need your permission to hunt down all the retreating enemies. And obviously get myself some brand new Sharingan. She then looks at me turns around and starts running towards the Kanoha camp. I follow her and as I do so she says, No, I need you to help me heal the injured Kanoha ninja. Plus it might be a trap. Shit. I knew there was a high chance that she would refuse well. I guess it's time to pull out the big guns. If you let me chase them I can promise you. I will be able to end the war with Mist within the year. She just looks at me without any of her playful attitude and says seriously. How much time will you need? Three weeks. I answered without a beat. I could handle the job at max within six days. But I don't know how much time I will need to get used to the Sharingan. She looks at me and says, make that two weeks I know you like to be prepared about everything and just said three weeks just in case. Well, with us spending quite some time with each other, she has learned some of my quirky traits. That I have, well, more like I let her learn some after all. If I seem perfect, that is very suspicious. Then I look at her and say again, Sue, is that a yes? Sigh, yes. It is a yes. As soon as she says that I sprint into the side, and I go toward the direction of the mist as soon as I am far enough. I change directions and go towards the land of noodles. Where a camp is well then time to get some Sharingan way before plan. But it isn't really a huge change from the plan. I was still planning on getting some Sharingan just that it was going to be later. As soon as I arrive in land I immediately remotely cancel my clone. And I get his memories of the location where he hid the Ichiha. I immediately start going there. I go to a forest and in a random place, use an earth just suit and the ground opens up. And I walk on the walls and start going down while closing up the earth behind me. When I arrived at the bottom which is quite deep I must say. Well as expected of my clone he takes great precautions. I then make a crude earth platform in the place of a table. Table, take a white cloth of a storage scroll of mine, together with some surgical equipment. I put the white cloth over the table, and I took out a jar with strange liquid. I then put the Achiha on the table lying on his back. I made a clone, and he held started tying the Achiha in the table with earth shackles, and started putting chakra suppressing seals all over the Achiha's body. Then he closed his eyes and kept running chakra through the seals, to keep them always up. That even if the Achiha tries to break them, he won't be able to do so because my clone has higher chakra amount than him. While I take some of my scables and put a surgical mask on and order my clone to do the same, I pull out the Senbin and the Ichiha, and he wakes up. I also put another Senbin in his lung area to stop him from making noise. He just looks at me scared with a little Ichiha pride behind his fear. Well, he definitely won't hold that pride after I'm done with him. I don't really know if I can evolve my Sharingan beyond one Tomo after I take it. Kakashi was able to do so, but there were several unsolved and mysterious circumstances involved in that, so I will try to evolve my Sharingan to at least three Tomo. How I will do that? Obviously by torturing the Ichiha. I will fully evolve his Sharingan and see if I can make him awaken the Monjakia Sharingan. I have chakra suppressing seals all over him, so he won't be able to use a Matarasu on me or something like that. Let the procedure begin. Three hours later, the three Tomo Sharingan has tears all over it by now. Well he got the three Tomo Sharingan he got them during the first hour of the torture TCH well. I guess I should start healing him again to make sure he doesn't die. HHHHMMMMMM I guess I should use my last resort I use. Water clone just so well this is the only other clone technique I know. They only have 10% of my strength so pretty useless in a fight. But I need it to use my last torture technique. I don't want to remember that. I also put a blindfold on my shadow clone. Which is holding the chakra suppressing seals on the Ichiha. I turn around and after a couple of minutes. Oh eh? I then turn around and see the Achiha has blood running all over his mouth. So he forced his lungs to scream, and in the process destroyed them. He is gonna die choking in his own blood, in a couple of seconds. But it doesn't matter it was all worth it in his eyes. I see the Sharingan has a shuriken pattern on it. Yes sir I got him on Jekyo now. Anyway I take out his eyes and put them in a jar. Dispel my water clone and cut off the head of the Achiha. Just in case I then also dispel the shadow clone, and make two others I nod at them, and burn the Achiha's body. Though I do keep a little of his blood in a storage scroll of mine for a project I had in mind. I then lie down on the table, and one of the clones stabs me with a senbun, and I am knocked out. Next time I wake up I will have a monjekyo, 10 hours later. I wake up, and I feel well rested. I probably slept around 10 hours. And I can see normally I look at the clones who are just standing there. Then one of them said, 10 hours. Okay so that confirms it I take out a scroll. 
and I take out a mirror. I look into it and I see my eyes. I see the weird skin texture around my skin. There is actually a Fuinjutsu seal on my skull around my eye sockets. My eyes have their normal color towards them. I then dispel my clones and make a new one. Then I take my stuff go above ground together with my clone and then collapse underground room. I don't get the instinctual knowledge about my Monjekyo, so I will have to test it out myself. I look in the mirror again. I run chakra towards my eyes. But as my Sharingan activates Fuinjutsu markings appear in my skin well this is unexpected. But I really won't be showing my Sharingan to anyone I won't kill. I look at my slowly rotating Tomo. I then look at my clone everything seems clearer. And I can see the chakra in my clone I move my hand. I see it moves in slow motion. I tell my clone to punch the air with full speed it's still slow. I move towards my clone it seems like I am moving to slow. I now get it why the Ichiro got arrogant. I can copy any ninjutsu into jutsu. I can do jinjutsu at only eyesight connection. I can see my enemy's next move. This is quite amazing still I will need some time to get used to it. Let's try the Monjekyo now. I look towards a patch of grass and put a lot of chakra in my right eye. I have my clone with a fire ceiling scroll just in case. Then suddenly my field of vision changes ugh. I immediately fall into my knees with a hand over my eye. Wow that is quite some pain I look at my hand with some blood in it. So my eyes did bleed. It seems like my right eye has the ability to teleport me towards the place I am looking at. I then look at someplace else with my left eye, my field of vision changer again. So my left eye has the ability to teleport to a place I look also. So I got one when I purchased two. It definitely feels like I got scanned 10 minutes later. Okay, so after some small tests, I discovered that I am only able to use one eye to teleport. Then I have a one second cooldown, if I want to use the same eye again. But while in the cooldown I am able to use the other eye to teleport. So it kind of covers the other's weakness. Also to heal my Monjekia from going blind is going to be a pain I can figure out a way. And I don't have the blindness problem yet, but still though. Now, I guess it is time to give chase to those Mist Ninja. I'm sure that Needle Swordsman thinks himself lucky to have escaped his latter comrade's fates. How foolish even though they have a 10 hour head start. That is nothing to me now. This race is more like a test run for my newly acquired and evolved Sharingan. I activate my 3 Tomo Sharingan Shunshin even though I can see clear as day while performing Shunshin at night and do it with pinpoint precision. There's an imbalance in my previously perfect chakra control. One that prevents me from going full speed as I have to constantly make adjustments. A foreseeable complication nonetheless. Same as with any new skill or power. I still need to get used to it in order to use it effectively in battle. Although thanks to my nigh perfect chakra control, it shouldn't take more than a few times I knew the Sharingan was good, but not this good. Minus 4 hours Letaria have been traveling at speeds unseeable to the human eye for quite a while now. Their chakra trails start to become clearer by the second they're close, even though I had to stop and track their direction a couple of times. I've finally caught up to them. In water that would have been a little harder, but here in the mainland. I could see their lingering chakra trails with relative ease. Now I've caught their scent too, so I am sure they are pretty close. I am officially in mist territory now the confrontation is imminent. I start analyzing the field in which I will fight them. One can never be too cautious when the enemy has this level of field advantage. Or otherwise for that matter. The water country island closest to the land of noodles is where the battlefield lies. I had prepared for the worst, and this dash luckily for me is not it. I move deep into enemy territory 2 kilometers into the island. There lies the mist military camp. I take a vantage position on top of a tree and start doing recon. The first thing to catch my attention is a makeshift earth wall surrounding the perimeter, built with justice. Its usefulness being only to alert them in case of a surprise attack and nothing else. A head-on attack anyway. They are expecting an army to come after them I laugh at their stupidity. Without their inexhaustible water sources, they would have been annihilated long before, and the proof lies in front of me. I hear chatter and even some laughter from time to time. They are resting security is nowhere near as tight as one could expect from a military camp this size and so relatively close to the enemy. Though I must say they are still on guard and haven't given up on their lives just yet as I continue scouting. Looking for weaknesses in the perimeter, I barely managed to see something with my Sharingan. I see almost microscopic chakra strings around the camp, WTF so this is how the Mist Ninja always knew when I was going to attack. I didn't think that the Mist Ninja would be able to use chakra strings this way. I was too quick to discard their cognitive abilities, TCH, I must prevent myself from underestimating my enemy again. Underestimating me was the doom of hundreds upon hundreds of poor bastards. Who was to say that I couldn't fall victim to the same mistake? Anyway, I get my head back in the game, looking even more carefully at the strings and HMPH. So that's how it's gonna be, huh? Well then, time to move. These ninja won't die from inanition while I wait. Earth style. Hiding like a mole technique I go underground, so as to not be noticed by the mist ninja. The perimeter was breached just like that. Their defenses still mean nothing to me in theory, but I can't afford to make that assumption before actually engaging. I made sure to readjust my calculations for this battle accordingly, just in case. I stealthily come out from under the ground. I obviously don't immediately go and try to kill the Needle Swordsman. After all, even with the Sharingan, I am not sure that I can take him out stealthily, and would only get myself surrounded by hundreds of ninja. Not good. I'll do it the right way. The cold-blooded way. I start off killing the weakest genin by the dozens, and swiftly get to the tune in some minutes and drop bodies later. I've killed 202 ninja. As expected, it was noticed by the patrolling jonin, that people were being killed. But they still didn't know my location I remained unseen and unheard. That body count kept rising despite their efforts to find me. I'm dealing with the cannon fodder that might interfere in my fight against the needle swordsman. I will allow no imponderables in our duel. 
I start slashing away at my enemies and killing them, using a peculiar way of concealing myself. By transforming into the most recent person I kill then going on to kill someone else, transform into him, and so on and so on. Relaying in my speed and in doing clean kills, in 20 minutes I've killed everyone except the Needle Swordsman, without ever allowing them to even know what I was doing. As I originally expected, they never stood a chance. With the help of the Sharingan, I could take care of all the minuscule details. Throw in some Jinjutsu and like that, I'm able to kill them all no problem. The Swordsman seemed to be more concerned with setting up his string defense and preparing for the imminent fight against me, than with helping out his comrades. He probably thought himself untouchable and didn't want to risk it. I duly thank him for his cooperation. Now it's time to cash in my chips and take him out. I finally reveal myself and stand 20 meters away from him, letting my wonderful Sharingan do some intimidating for me. He tried to hide it, but he was certainly shocked to see I had it. After all, we've already fought and he identified me as Inuzuka. Not that it matters what he thinks to be honest. He'll be dead in a few moments. We keep staring at each other. But this isn't a child's game, this is a battle between elite ninja. Right now the both of us are observing the other stunts, analyzing outcomes and risk planning our next dash and possibly last move. That's what a ninja showdown is. All or nothing. He an advantage in this terrain because he has a wire trap shield all around him. By tying it around the trees, and with the help of his sword, he can control those wires with precision and speed. Terrain advantage. Now that's something new he must also have a greatly developed calculation ability. After all, just a wrong move and he could very well cut himself to pieces but nothing I haven't taken into consideration. I then look at all the threads and calculate a trajectory. This is so easy now I take out a shuriken and slightly blow on its edge to get it infused with a generous amount of wind chakra augmenting its slashing capabilities tenfold. I throw the shuriken towards the needle swordsman and immediately after, I secretly throw something else, keeping it hidden inside the shadow of the shuriken then, as the shuriken is cutting through some of his wires. Suddenly, swish a head flies into the air. Oh well, this certainly was anticlimactic, but this is life I guess, although the simplicity of it is not a problem for me. Thrill and excitement don't matter. Only results. Positive results. I had thrown the first shuriken with wind chakra to distract him and prevent him from noticing the second shuriken. The one hidden in the shadow of the first one, which had mangled on the wires and cut his head with his own wires, turns out he wasn't as good at calculations as he thought he was. Normally the chance of this happening is 0.01%, but with the shuriken, I can turn most odds in my favor. With its prediction ability together with my knowledge of physics and reactions, I was able to make the probability of this scenario happening a 99.99% outcome. Talk about overpowered bloodlines I take the needle sword, and now I have four of the seven swords of the mist. That's four fourths of those I've faced. I also take the swordsman's head to claim the bounty on it actually scratch that I burned the head right there. He witnessed I had the Sharingan, and that is a big no-no one of the biggest for me right now. After doing that I just burned down the rest of the camp and disintegrate the earth wall with a couple of wind jutsu. It wasn't even that strong to begin with. Nothing remains. I don't want or need anything from here. I especially make sure to burn the bodies so that not even a single bone gets left behind. No Edo Tensei corpse spilling my secrets now. Knowing the future is so good I mean not only do I know the strengths and weaknesses of some of the most powerful ninja in history, I can plan along with almost 100% accuracy of my plan succeeding as well. The only thing that might mess things up is that infamous butterfly effect I don't really care about it, but that doesn't keep me from taking measures against it. A clear example is when I destroyed the Sky Village. No need to leave anyone alive, especially the kids no need for them to come back seeking revenge 10 years later. And just to be sure I took the Zero Tails as well. Once once I am done with the camp I eat some food from my storage scroll, and I deactivate my Sharingan. I didn't plan to get a Sharingan so soon, but I guess this time is as good as any, and its Manjiku ability is pretty useful to me for now. I will definitely change it later though, as I finish up my rations. I get up and then make way for Kanoha's camp and I wonder, what would Tsunade's reaction be when I show her four of the seven swords of the mist? I get up and then make way for Kanoha's camp and I wonder, what will Tsunade's reaction be when I show her four of the seven swords of the mist? As I arrive at Kanoha's camp, I immediately go towards the command tent in the very center of the camp. I step inside, and as soon as I enter, my eyes meet her Tsunade. She's standing up, arms crossed, close to her seat at the center of the table, the one with the strategic map and documents. And she is giving me that annoyed. I'm gonna make your face my punching bag expression. Nothing unusual in her to be honest in a moment's notice. I have the undivided attention of every Jonin in the room. I don't pay much attention to the rest and say, What's the matter Tsunade Sensei? ECH after a loud tongue clicking, she just turned her head in another direction, so as to not look at me ha ha wow. She sure as hell is letting her childish side take over now. There's a Sanin for you. At the lack of an answer, dash one with words anyway. My gaze turns to Shikaramu Nara, as if requesting an explanation sigh. What a drag. It has been decided by the Hokage and the Kanoha Council, that Tsunade will be sent to another theater. They need her advanced medical nin skills desperately. Our front line against the Land of Lightning has suffered increasingly heavy casualties in the camp's infirmaries. Sai therefore, as her second in command, naturally you are appointed as the commanding officer of the forces in the Land of Water. Oh 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 everything is so going according to plan. It almost seems unfair almost. It was hard to keep my grin from showing up in my 11 year old face finally. I have the authority and power to do some of the more complex bloodline experimentation I've been meaning to for a long time. This will greatly further my plans. But still though, taking Tsunade away from the theater, it will definitely weaken my forces. But they can't exactly let a Senja take orders from an Inuzuka, kid or otherwise even if I am an S-rank ninja. And no matter how they sugarcoat it, 
I know what they are doing the Land of Lightning Division is constantly suffering heavy casualties HMPH, and that is why I love politics, they're putting me to the test, to see if I can replicate the feat I pulled off against the Land of Skype, probably Danzo's idea as I expected, although they seem to trust my abilities, enough to put a child in command of the second largest theater anyway, but the things is, that they're underestimating me just as well not contacting me directly as soon as I arrived at the camp. No summon delivering a message as I was en route even ignoring my clone no doubt, the pretension is to have Shikaramu as the one in actual command. They know I'm not stupid and that I'd figure it out sooner rather than later. They're trying to pass it as a controlled test of my capabilities, when in reality they're putting my mask to the test, but want to see just how coming this kiss, and if I suppose a potential threat to them, even if they tried to hide it. It has Hiruzen Saratobi written all over it, that pipe-smoking rascal. I mean, sure I might get all the renown, but if I don't have the power and authority, all of that doesn't matter. Fame is irrelevant to my plans at least for now. Political scheming sure is complicated and entertaining. On a different note, looks like that Four Swordsman of the Mist debrief is old news to them right now. I had already sent a clone with my mission report as soon as I finished cleaning out the camp remains. And while it's protocolary to be debriefed by one's dispatching officer, in this case Stunade, it shouldn't become a problem for me later on given the circumstances. This actually works great for me. The fewer questions asked, the better. They already know what I wanted them to know. The icing on the cake is that four swords of the mist I collected remain in my possession anyway. After a couple minutes worth of a somewhat awkward silence, I look at Tsunade and in a fake sad voice, I break the ice with one of my patented child mask jokes sigh, so the student has surpassed the teacher huh? Don't worry Tsunade, I'll never forget what you did for me once I become Hokage Tsunade, then turns to me with an even more pissed off look, was that even possible at this point, and says, you are really pissing me off Yami don't push it. I just smirk slightly, only to then get serious and say in a tone as domineering as a child's voice can allow. I have some things I want to discuss about the new battle plan with former commander Tsunade. In private they just nod and comply. Now that we're all alone, I look towards Tsunade and say, you know they are doing this to you because you didn't meet their expectations right? TCH, I told you not to push it. Do I really look like I'm joking right now, Tsunade Sensei? Sai she sits down on her chair, throwing her feet over the table and bringing her hands to the back of her head. The cue of me using honorifics worked. I get what you mean Yami I know it's just complicated okay. They expect me to pull off miracles just because I am a senju. Well I do feel sorry for you, but I need you to do me a favor. She gives a small nose exhale in amusement and then looks at me with a mildly curious look for my prodigious student. I guess I can, but depends on what it is. I need you to take Shikaramu with you to the front against the Cloud Village or else I am definitely killing him if he stays in here. A mountain can't hold two kings. I don't want to take the unnecessary risk of killing someone as smart as Shikaramu. He will definitely leave clues on who the murderer was the cunning bastard. Why would you want to get rid of someone like Shikaramu? He would be a valuable asset to you and has a great head on his shoulders. I look at her with a bored look and say, Psy political schemes Tsunade they are trying to undermine my authority, and I haven't even started. It took her a second to understand what I meant. Oh I get it now. It won't be easy to take him away. Though after all, it won't do my reputation any good. If I make this decision well, you won't even have a reputation to worry about in the future. But I can't tell her that so, look at it this way. I'll be on your debt, and you can collect whenever it can be any favor. She looks surprised and harbors a little doubt in her eyes after all. A favor from an s rank ninja is not something that is given away without a good reason even if it's limited. In this case it isn't of course. That would be an empty promise. She still doesn't know me well enough to know. It's not like I will keep my end of the deal. If it's against my best interests so let her think that I owe her anything she wants I notice that she is in deep thought about this okay. I will get him off your back, but don't forget your promise excellent. Everything is falling into place as it should. Yes, thank you. You have no idea how much this will help me. I will now begin my plan to end this war. Her eyes widen a little when she looks at me. Then she says, I understand Yami. Then she gets up, and as she is leaving the tent she says, Don't make me regret this, you understand. I give her a smirk as I nod. I never break a promise to Nade. Tomorrow, as I wake up I dispel the clone that keeps watch while I sleep. I get dressed, and after that do my daily morning exercise. It keeps me in peak physical and mental condition as also I mix it up with light meditation. After an hour of training, I get out and ready to say goodbye to Tsunade and the squad she's taking with her. I also make a shadow clone and order him stealthily to go back to Kanova and contact a certain Kanova council member, with utmost secrecy. After I said goodbye to Tsunade, I waited for 5 hours just to be sure. I then called someone from the torture and interrogation department and asked him, Tell me how many prisoners do we have here? With the characteristic expression of a torturer, one devoid of all emotion and as cold as your ex, he answers dutifully, All of our prisoners were taken to the T&I facility on the outskirts of Kanova. All except 6 Jonin. The former commander ordered us to hold them in the camp, as she pretended to use them as bait to lure in the remaining swordsmen of the mist. However, there have been no signs of enemy movement near the camp, and ever since in Yuzuka-sama's assault, they have retreated even further in order to regroup. Those six have been forsaken by Kurigika, Chim PH, I see anyway, do any of them possess any of the village's special bloodlines? Most notably, there is a Yuki clan member, but he is currently in a dire overall health condition, and all valuable intel has already been extracted from him. Therefore, I've scheduled his execution in four hours. 
That is all in Yuzukusama. Good job, officer. Dismissed. Hi. Well, that was certainly disappointing. I was hoping for at least a Yoten. Lava release, user. But alas, we can't always get what we want now, do we? I go towards my tent and get to work right away. Everything's ready to begin the construction of my own private lab at first light tomorrow. As the camp's commander, I have available to me all the space and resources necessary to build an underground lab. This way I can safely keep my most sensitive material away from prying eyes. I'll obviously set each and every kind of territory protection for you and Jutsu I'm able to can't leave my ocean of knowledge open for just anyone to swim in not even an Anbu. This undertaking won't be a secret per se but only the quartermaster and some camp officials know if it works for me. On the other hand, I'm sure the brass back in Kanoha will see this as standard procedure as well. Given that I'm Tsunade's best and last student and a somewhat reputed medic nin myself, they should see no problem with me looking for new and better ways of healing their soul dears. If anything, they should encourage it. They also won't expect results anytime soon. Thanks to medicine in this world, advancing at the speed of a crippled slug, I don't have to report to them either. They'll probably have their eyes and ears everywhere within the camp by now. But that also means I'll have to tread very carefully, even more so now that my first mask has already been seen through nothing I can't take measures against though. Anyway this is the power I wanted the power that I needed to make some real headway on my projects. Shikaramu had to go and there's no doubt about it also. I didn't have to kill him, so that's a plus. I wouldn't want to deal with his annoyingly cunning self yet. Time skip. Three months later, these past few months I have spent doing a lot of research, while a shadow clone does all the tedious work of running a military campaign. I dispel the clone every night, take in all of his memories and experiences, and then make another that already has his orders for the next day. I've mastered the shadow clone jutsu, at such a level, that nobody has noticed the deception, as long as he doesn't get attacked, everything will continue to run smoothly. Whilst the real me is attending more pressing matters than dispatching cannon fodder out to die, in such instead, I like to focus on my experiments and research, but of course, that doesn't mean that I can just neglect my duties, as commanding officer of the Mist Division, and the Shadow Clone patented method has proved to be my ace card in this affair. Excellence and discipline is my motto. I like to run a tight ship and I've done well so far. Having zero tolerance for any insubordination or inefficiency, no one dares to question my authority now. Good. I intend to keep it that way. I must say these past three months have been quite productive to say the least. Most recently, I've been working with my brand new test subjects. I've been kindly procured by my hardworking subordinates. I am currently going over my new Tajutsu moves. My body has gotten a little stronger now as I haven't dismissed my training, not one day. Of course, when I say going over I mean using a prisoner as my punching bag. This way, I get the most accurate data regarding my damage output chakra and stamina consumption and replenishment rates, the effects of striking certain tenketsu, chakra points, and along etc. If this is formal scientific work, and without precise data results, there's no point in me wasting my time with these experiments. Now, analyzing the current condition of this used to be Jonan meat bag. I start taking notes. The man isn't conscious, obviously. He is a black-haired feminine man from the Yuki clan. I have already conducted several experiments on him, so he evidently looks like a mess. 23 days of incessant physical and mental strain have rendered his already weak mind completely blank, and at this point is hardly able to process the simplest of my orders. To be expected, since I have been trying different memory manipulation techniques and additionally training my Sharingan's Jinjutsu capabilities on him, his body is in an emaciated state with several healed and recent fractures, muscle tears all over bruises, and some organ damage to top it all off. To be honest, he actually went beyond my calculations and managed to stay alive for 7.2 hours longer than I had predicted. I'll make the pertinent modifications. Not my proudest piece of work, Dash I'll admit as much, but it was a necessary one. There are many sacrifices to be made if I am to reach the apex, and his life is one that I'm willing to make I go on with my session, putting aside my pen and notebook. Come here number one. He comes towards me in a strange crawling motion fitting a zombie, and as soon as he is two meters away from me, slash I cut his throat so fast that my movements couldn't have been seen by the untrained eye, putting him out of his misery. I didn't do this out of pity though, he simply is no longer useful to me. Afterward, I burn his body until nothing remains as usual. I've implemented a crematory in the lab with an optimized exhaust system, and a chimney that remains hidden between some rocks, well beyond the camp's premises. The remaining Jonan prisoners have also seen the end of their usefulness. Their cause of death was my new Tejutsu style called Death Fist. I secretly used used my Sharingan to copy the basics of the Hayuga Tajutsu from a scout, the Gentle Fist. Even though the Gentle Fist itself can't be used without a Byakugan, the main principle for my technique derives from it, along with a combination of the 8 in the gates technique plus my Chakra Enhanced Strength technique. This particularly devastating to just obliterates the Tenketsu of the target with a silent Chakra Shockwave effectively crippling them in the best case scenario and killing them in a full-on direct hit. However, it is not yet battle ready. It'll take some more trial and error in order to complete it, but the progress I've made so far is to not be disdained either. It's just a matter of time, really on another note. I have currently stopped studying the Flying Thunder God Jutsu. The reason being that even though I now possess all of the Yuzumaki Fuenjutsu and made substantial progress on that front as well, I've also inevitably hit a wall. 
and a quite considerable one at that. This is a technique that needs 100% of my attention to develop from now on dash which I most certainly will eventually dash. I've already grasped the core principles of the technique, but now I need to develop my very own kind of technique formula to be able to teleport. This formula consists of two elements. The fingerprint, that in this case would be the fuenjutsu, and the ink with which to inscribe it. Chakra, in theory, there wouldn't be a problem. But the thing is that the kind of fuenjutsu used in it is unlike any other. Anyone who tries to learn the technique has to start by creating their own fuenjutsu mark. One that is tuned precisely to one's chakra flow and vibration at the time of casting it. And chakra is the combination of physical and spiritual energies in other words. That means that each technique formula is unique for each individual that casts it. It's basically tailored to a specific body, at a specific time, under specific conditions. Nigh impossible to replicate, no matter how many tests are run at least with the current technology. So the giant wall that stands in my way is this. Not even my shadow clones have a formula 100% identical to mine. Theirs might be almost 99.99%. But they don't have a physical body that can be hurt or that needs to eat, et al. This becomes a problem when their fuenjutsu mark dash the fingerprint isn't the same, and in turn, the formula is unequivocally altered. The solution to that dilemma, however, is also the main complication for me right now. I need to study the jutsu on my own. That means no shadow clones hack regrettably. Given the aforementioned, I postponed it at least until the second ninja war ends, in order to be able to study it on my own, and dedicate myself fully to such endeavor. Going on with my inner monologue, I have completely unveiled the profound truths of the eight inner gates technique, and have been trying to combine it with the creation rebirth technique. That would counteract the eight gates weakness, the destruction of one's body inside out. Such a dreadful combination could very well become my trump card. Just remembering how Mike Guy brought six parts Madara to his knees, when he unleashed the eighth gate, is a testament to its undeniable potential. The potential to open the eighth gate without dying or crippling my body forever. It certainly puts things into perspective, but there comes the reason why not all ninja learn the eight gates technique besides the difficulty of learning how to open the gates, when even someone as untalented as Guy was able to do so, when just the first gate would already be able to help any ninja tremendously in a battle, the reason for it couldn't be more judicious. And it is that whenever a gate opens, you can't use even the simplest of ninjutsu or jinjutsu. The chakra is literally rampaging all around your body. It is statistically impossible, no matter how good your chakra control is. Plus there's a high chance of it backfiring if the user isn't in top physical shape, potentially leaving the user as a maimed vegetable, and that's just with the first gate open now imagine how it would be in the third or fourth, let alone the seventh, though this method might be impossible. There should be a way to train your body, using the eight gates finally. About my next course of action during this three months. There have been no battles against the mist as they took huge losses. They lost around 30% of their army last time, and there was even a high number of Jonin casualties indeed. There have been some skirmishes. It's not like they surrendered or anything. I took care of the majority without any remarkable development other than taking some more prisoners. I couldn't pass the opportunity to obtain fresh test subjects. That's something I can never get enough of. They didn't last much though, as their level was at most tuning in any case. Now that I've got my Sharingan 100% mastered, I am planning on venturing into enemy territory once again. Obviously not with an army at my back, otherwise they'd notice that 100 miles away after all. The mist still has scouts all around. I left my second in command dash a random Jonin officer in charge, while I'm away conducting my advanced reconnaissance tactics and preemptive trap setting. Also, the shadow clone I commissioned to secretly go back to Konoha and contact a certain council member, has concluded his mission satisfactorily. I asked Danzo to give me some information on the mist and their patrol routes. I also added in some bullshit speech about the greatness of Konoha, and how we mustn't lose any more forces over a lack of preparation. Obviously, I won't be taking the safe route he graciously marked for me. Danzo is probably on my top 5 people I wouldn't trust in this world no matter what. The true objective of that meeting, however, was to get a way in with Danzo. Firstly, because he has a way to get me more test subjects during peacetime, just as he did for Orochimaru in the canon. And secondly, because I also need him to vote for me when I contest for the title of Hokage. His political support is invaluable for my plans. I stealthily go out of the camp, only the Jonin Dash including the Brass's spies know that I am going away and I didn't even go into much detail. When I inform them of my departure, as soon as I'm a couple dozen meters outside of the camp. So it begins, my journey well into the land of water while on the road. I try to organize the information I got from Danzo, and combine it with my knowledge of the canon Naruto timeline. This way I can finally get a clear picture of what is the current situation on the land of water. So the land of water has the smallest landmass of the five great nations. Their territory is mostly water. The country's landmass is composed of many islands, each having its own unique people and respective culture. The weather is temperate all year round, and the islands are usually covered by mist. The islands themselves also feature many lakes. Little else is known about the country, and it apparently leaves itself out of most political affairs. This is due to the fact that it is composed of vast islands relatively far from the continent, containing the other four major countries. It doesn't come as a surprise for each small settlement to have adopted an isolationist policy regarding foreign conflicts. What it is known, however, is that the country used to be overwhelmed by wars between clans during the Warring States period. It was during this period, that most of the Keke Jinkai users Dash and their clans, earned fearful reputations as slaughterers and monsters, sometimes fighting for their own clan, sometimes selling themselves as mercenaries naturally. 
It caused many to view certain clans as harbingers of war and death. It means that Abido didn't start a civil war out of nowhere. He just gave them a little push after all, even if the Mizukage says something like, Hey, let's kill anyone with a Keke Genkai. No one is going to just say, Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, not without a reason anyway. Also, the ninja clans who founded Kurigaka have a higher standing than the ones who were integrated after being conquered. Currently, the Mist Village in the brink of civil war Danzo has been trying to make it happen for some time now. But the Mist Village Council and the leaders of the Land of Water are no fools. They have been sending out the clan ninja on consistently hard and even suicidal missions, all of that just to keep civil war from erupting. Though that method is just a time bomb waiting to go off the Land of Water also has a good relationship with the Land of the Sea. Kiri Shinobi take a lot of missions from there. After some time, I have arrived to the heart of the Land of Water. The main island where both Kurigaka and the country's capital are. This is where the Daimyo lives. There are going to be a lot of opportunities for me here. I think back on the several clan compound locations on the map that Danzo prepared for me. That bastard is really useful. That is probably why the third Hokage kept him around. Danzo is not afraid to get his hands dirty. To get what he wants and doesn't care about his reputation. Anyway, I change my direction towards a certain clan hideout. Out. When I arrive there, I see that the clan compound doesn't have any strong chakra signals I know from the Anayim. That the Kagaya clan is dumb enough to challenge the Mist Village all by itself just to satisfy their bloodlust. But to leave their clan compound almost completely unprotected. I am not nice enough to let a chance like this go not when there is so much loot for the taking. One hour and thirty minutes later, the Kagaya clan compound is all covered in blood civilians. Men, women, children, elderly, even the cattle none were spared. They've all been killed in the most efficient way possible. Their brains pierced with a senban or throats slit with a kunai. Third person POV, in the Ingala, Japanese style porch, of the clan head's mansion, a person dash or what remained of it. Could be seen the lifeless body nailed to the wall by dozens of senban. There are clear signs of struggle. The cheeks slightly moistened, maybe by tears. Or just the night dew, and many other characteristics best left to the imagination. Right next to where the blood puddle stops its way through the wood, there's a kid of approximately 10 to 13 years old. Sitting in a lotus position on the floor, who appears to be reading some old books and scrolls, his eyes stand out in the dark with a bloodshot collar, along with strange markings on both of them. And third person POV, the person nailed to the wall used to be the wife of the clan head. I had just tortured some information out of her. I am currently studying some books about the Kagaya clan's Keke Jankai. Shikotsu Miyaku, Dead Bone Pulse. It was an extremely rare and feared bloodline even within the clan itself. It was often regarded as the definitive Tajutsu technique by many experts. But of course, that was without considering Kagai's Tomogoroshi no Hakotsu, Murderous Bone Ash. Or the Eight in the Gates technique in any case, all of the clan's users of this KK Genkai are out on a battlefield right now damn, talk about bad luck. I wasn't able to find even a kid with the Kagaya bloodline in the clan compound. One hour later, after I memorized all the techniques and information of the Kagaya clan, I made another checkup around the compound just to be sure, so as to not leave behind any loose end, or the cliché 10 years later revenge kid just as back then with the Sky Village no survivors. I always follow my patented method of Kolobu, which stands for, kill everyone, loot anything of value, and then burn whatever's left. It delivers the best results for the less amount of risk of getting tracked or killed. Flawless work I take much pride on. By the way, the Sharingan is really useful. This photographic memory is one of the best abilities of the Sharingan. Even more so for someone like me. I mean sure I might have a good memory, but like any other average human, I eventually start forgetting things but, if I see something with my Sharingan, I'll never forget it. Localize eidetic memory processing capabilities or just photographic memory for short, it makes learning things way easier. Anyway, getting a bit sidetracked there. I also looted 45.000.000 Ryo from the clan's vault. Now I have a total of 967.000.000 Ryo to my name. That is equivalent to approximately 19.760.100 United States dollars. Not bad for a kid, huh? Poof, 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 poof. I make five shadow clones. They have to burn everything here while I get away. You know I wouldn't have it any other way after that. They will dispel themselves. In other words, a perfect mission with no evidence of my activities. Except for the massacring of hundreds of people and the destruction of an entire clan compound. Not much really, I won't linger here a second longer. After all, a fire for a ninja is just like saying, Hey, I am here. Come kill me, please. Oh, one more thing. The information I got from the clan head's wife. The whereabouts of her husband and the Kagaya clan army naturally. That is my next destination, after what must have amounted to the same time it used to take me to microwave some popcorn. Oh how I miss popcorn. I finally arrived at my destination. The Kigaya clan military camp and yes, you read that right. I said military. You see, I've been lurking in the shadows for about half an hour, not deactivating my Sharingan for even a moment after fully mastering it. I've managed to drastically optimize its chakra consumption rates to a ridiculous amount, so I could probably use the Sharingan as indiscriminately as Itachi and not feel tired at all, despite not being in a chair. Kakashi couldn't do the same simply because he didn't have the second best chakra control of the shinobi world. My Manjiku remains unaltered in its deteriorating effects on the user's eyes and body. Unless I get myself a pair of EMS. That's how it's gonna be, regrettably anyway. Back to the point I was making. I've been doing standard reconnaissance of the camp, evaluating risks and such. But then I realized that this looks more like a beer festival, than it looks the camp of a feared warrior clan I mean. 
They've got large banquet tables with several foods, mostly meat, right next to a giant bonfire, carts with uncooked meat in some crates, and tons of barrels of beer and sake. Almost 90% of the ninja are intoxicated right now I mean yeah, they kinda have patrols going on, but man, this is outrageous. They don't even have a perimeter set up, just tents scattered everywhere. And, ugh may I remind you, that these people have declared war on a hidden village. I mean WTF this must be some kind of trap or something right? Sigh the mist camp I infiltrated had a similar vibe, with people celebrating and whatnot. But this is on a whole other level. They at least had a wall, and went as close to their enemy Sai, this Kagai bunch, I tell you. Besides being ugly as fuck, they are also way too stupid. Even for muscle brain standards, no wonder they got exterminated in the cannon hair. Now that I think about it it doesn't really matter they're living on borrowed time. The people have just been exterminated, their compound burned to less than ashes, and they don't even know it. Let them have their drinks and delicious meat, maybe it's for the better. They get to enjoy their last moments on this accursed world of shinobi a privilege that not everybody has. At any rate I think we can finally get back to my citrate. So, I've calculated their numbers using my enhanced Inuzuka senses and the Sharingan with 100% accuracy. There are 284 ninjas scattered around the camp with varying chakra amounts. 51 of them have Jonin level chakra nevertheless. Jonin level chakra doesn't mean there are all Jonin level per se. But still, no matter how much I may look down on these savages, I do a lot. I'm also not willing to compromise the mission for anything. Nope, not happening. I'll make this another flawless mission on my personal record in any case. It's time I go back to what I do best. Hi for indefinite amounts of time while analyzing stuff, calculating stuff and planning even more stuff. That's my ninja way. I guess after another hour of doing what I do best. I have identified the clan head's tent. It's basically the same as any other tent, so it was truly harder to find than your average command tent. Hum, maybe they're not so irredeemably stupid after all. I also made sure that this wasn't a trap and memorized their patrolling itinerary, if you could call it that anyway. That was the easy part, seeing as there are so few ninja on actual guard duties. I don't have much nighttime left, and I've got my targets identified not wasting any more time. I proceed to make my move firstly. I sneak close to one of the patrolling ninja. I'm already relatively close to the camp. So it takes me a moment to reach him. Just as he makes a turn around a shadowy corner next to what appears to be the armory. Unguarded by the way. I use my patented seven to the back of the neck technique with surgical precision. This knocks him out cold and without any noise as I prudently grab the unconscious body as it collapses. Then I make a shadow clone that instantly transforms into the ninja I just took out. The clone resumes the ninja's patrol in his stead. Following that, I take the unconscious ninja further into the darkness of the forest and tie him up with some chains and put a gag on his mouth that I took out from a storage scroll. Then I carefully pull out the Semben off his neck. His muscles spasm a bit whilst he instinctively tries to recover, making some muffled groans. I immediately force open his eyes and give them a death stare with both of my Sharingan. It's time I put my first original Sharingan skill to use. This one, I've been working on for quite some time and have finally perfected it barely a couple of hours ago. It was with the clan head's wife actually. I didn't just torture her for the fun of it. When I could have just used my hard-earned Sharingan to get any valuable information no. You see I was actually taking the time to make the most of my somewhat disappointing visit to the Kagaya clan compound yes. I worked on her since she had an incredibly strong mind for a civilian. That allowed me to play for a bit with all kinds of mental and physical pain all to get the exact formula and translate the results into a master Jinjutsu. That would put your average Ichiha to shame. That was also the first in-depth field experiment I have conducted. And it was quite efficient as well, since it bore fruit only 38 minutes in now. What is that precious technique which I have developed? As you may be asking yourself well, that is or just memory extraction jutsu for short. As I delve into his mind, the ninja's eyes gain a noticeably hollow look. That yende going to kill you look. This Jinjutsu is used to break the will of the captured target to make them give as much information as possible. And that's where the similarities with other interrogation type Jinjutsus end. You see this a perfect hybrid of the most powerful interrogation techniques of the Shinobi world. The Yamanaka clan's mind probe technique and the Sharingan. Interrogation Jinjutsu. The first one I learned from a member of the T-Andai force on my camp. The one that brought me the test subjects. Using my proxy clone as bait. I managed to copy his clan's secret technique when the clone accidentally mentioned having created a new A-rank Jutsu. And faked regret after revealing that secret. I knew he wouldn't resist the idea of probing the mind of his superior for his secret technique oh, The irony in the end, what he found was images of me having dinner with Tsunade, while she demanded the waiter to bring her more sake hey his expression afterward a mix of cringe, anger, and shame for the usually cold as ice tea and I agent, it was certainly priceless. As was the technique I obtained, unmistakably the second component technique doesn't really need an explanation, does it? Now onto what this master interrogation technique does. It's basically breaching the target's mind with such a powerful and yet simple Jinjutsu, that its defenses are not able to react in time, giving me full access to my target's mind. It's like shooting a catapult boulder through a gateway before the gates can be closed. Simple in theory but exceedingly effective. I can then freely browse through the target's entire memories. Not just what he's thinking at the moment, and take whatever memories I want for myself. Like copying a file from a PC into a pendrive, 
It allows me to obtain reliable and clear information, which I can access at any time with my Sharingan's photographic memory. No bloody mess, no interrogation nonsense, and it's also time efficient since time inside the victim's mind elapses at 5% of the real time. It almost sounds too good to be true, but of course, it isn't. Too good, I mean. This technique has a fatal weakness. If the target has a strong enough will or countermeasures against Jinjutsu, the technique is rendered effectively useless. Why? Because I risk it backfiring on me. And you know what that would mean I would be utterly and royally fucked. Therefore, if the target starts to resist it, I would have to employ other techniques, and that would probably end up with the target's brain, becoming a useless lump of tissue Jinjutsu on top of Jinjutsu. It's just nasty. Consequently, I have to be extremely careful with whom I use the technique on. The good news is, most ninja below Jonin level, and maybe even a few Jonin, are in the necessary mental strength range for my master technique to work appropriately. It is kinder overpowered. But you cannot say that I haven't spilled blood, sweat and tears in developing it back to what's happening with the poor bastard, and his hollow eyes. I chose this ninja for two reasons. First, he's barely at Chunin level from what I gathered. His reach Reaching this level is nothing short of a miracle, given his early 30s appearance. The second reason is that I noticed during my reconnaissance, that he's profoundly insecure, from things like not looking at his peers in the eye, fidgeting when talking, to the way he walks, etc. Normally I'd run many more tests before actually using a new technique on the field, but the risk of failing against such a weak individual is negligible. And then my father Sniff, never acknowledged me, Sniff as his son just, because my mother was a servant, since then everyone on the clan looks down on me plus I am weak, and all that Sniff okay damn. The Jude whined about his pathetic life to me thinking it was all some kind of dream, and that I was his spiritual guide. Awesome shit turns out, that if the target has an extremely weak mind, he may be called directly into his mindscape and talk to me free of inhibitions, although in this particular case, it was mostly a pain in the ass. Only after 52 minutes, 2.6 minutes real time, has he finished telling me his whole life story. I only bore with it, because of the next part of my plan. After the sob story time is over, I end the technique only to knock him out again, and making a clone to watch over him. With that taken care of, I can see my other transformed clone on the distance doing some patrolling. I rush towards my clone, dispelling him in an instant, and at the same time, I transform into the patrolling ninja. Then I take out a scroll and go towards the clan head's tent, I run towards the tent's entrance from the other end of the camp, guarding it. While having a few drinks, there are two middle-aged guards. As drunk as they are, both have Jonin level chakra and most definitely are Jonin level per se. I don't let my guard down, and now comes the reason why I didn't just take that Chunin's memories. I wanted to experience firsthand how he interacted with others, to correctly impersonate him time to get into character. I started to act nervous and fidget. He excuse me Jigami sama, Meru sama I, I, they look at me like I'm trash with an eyebrow raised and a smirk, spit it out brat, where'd you wanna say? Dash says the one on the left, the other one laughs only to add, well, he gonna be spitting something eight. His teeth if he doesn't start talking in the next five seconds. Wow, really funny guys. Arrogant drunkards like you are only any good as lab rats still. I keep on my wimp mask. I ah, yes, s sir. Mizukich sama has sent a message to be delivered directly to the clan head. The ember was injured, so I sent him directly to the medic's tent. They just look at me, come on now I am ready ask me questions, I have prepared an answer to all of them. Even the ones of why would someone even give me the message, if it was meant to be delivered directly to the clan head. I even know the answers to personal questions, if they ask me how. Huh? Then they look at me seriously then, go inside. Now, I will wait what this sounds suspicious as hell what the hell. I memorized that guy's whole life story for nothing. And I can't ever forget that shit. Because I used the Sharingan to memorize everything he said fuck, despite my annoyance. I keep my act going. Why yes sir. As soon as I get inside the tent, I see the clan head. He has a big build with black hair and a scruffy goatee on his face. He is sitting in a cross-legged position on the ground with a Japanese low table in front of him, and a half-filled bottle of sake on it. Putting down an empty small cup on the table, a questioning look is drawn on his slightly blushed face. As he turns to me, I promptly bow down to hide my face from him, and I secretly activate my Sharingan. I also extend the scroll I had on my hands towards him in an abysant manner, Kimurusama. The Mizukage sama has sent an urgent message for your eyes only. He rudely takes the scroll away from my fingers, and as he's opening it, his eyes widen in shock indeed I have done with his clan as I willed, essentially unopposed. This time with my patented method of espionage, the three eyes. Infiltrate, interrogate and impersonate. He looks at me with a look that reveals his futile realization of what has transpired anger, impotence, despair, even a hint of sadness. He looks at me like he's about to say something, probably Probably his last words or perhaps dash but then his gaze helplessly shifts to my bloodshot eyes that realization came all too late as if those spinning shapes were singing to him as soon as he is in my jinjutsu i knock him out with the usual senbin to the vital points in the neck this time i use eight of them just to be sure after all people with the shikotsu Myaku bloodline and the naruto and i'm are said to have a different body structure from normal humans also i lay him on the ground and pull up his shirt to expose his stomach i run chakra through my fingertips and jam them against his stomach i make his chakra go haywire well he will be out of commission for some time now. A dark sealing formula appears in his stomach. I could have used some more dangerous seal. Or test some self-made seals. But I don't want to hurt my precious test subject. At least not yet. I then put the leader on the side of the tent and cover him with a blanket and a little dirt under the blanket to the side to not make it look like a body. Also on top of it, 
I put a camouflaged Jinjutsu on it just to be sure. I then transformed into the leader and made a clone that transforms into the wimpy guy I impersonated to get in the tent. Then I order my clone to go outside and act like the wimpy guy to not raise any suspicion. After waiting for about 10 minutes just to be sure everything is in place, and no one suspects anything, I then go outside, and I order my guards, gather all of the ninja. The situation has changed the Mizuki just sent word of an emergency, they bow down. Hi, Kimura-sama- dash they, both answer at the unison. Then they immediately go to notify the other clan members. As they do that I go inside the tent again and make 10 clones. They know what they have to do. They immediately start using earth jutsus to go underground. Every minute after that, I made 10 shadow clones and started spreading them underground. I had to start drawing chakra from my strength of 100 seal to make more clones. Currently, my natural chakra levels are only around elite jonin level, but with my seal I store as much chakra as I can in there whenever I am not in a combat situation. I also ordered some of my clones to band together and replace all of the genin in the medic's tent. After all, I need to keep the scheme keep going at least for a little more, though I could probably make a couple of thousand shadow clones. If I used all of my chakra from the seal, that would be an incredibly inefficient use of chakra. But I can still definitely say that I have one of the biggest chakra availability in the Naruto world at the moment after I make 100 clones, 50 of which are underground while the others are hidden on trees and bushes. The camp is surrounded no one is from here escaping today then after I sense that all of the chakra signatures in the camp are in one place I go outside of my tent transformed as the leader. I also see my clone transformed as the wimpy guy in there. Well then time for some wordplay. I put up my cold mask on and plan what I'm going to say. I think back on all their traditions and such all of them are looking towards me in expectation. My clansmen my brothers. I have some grave news for you all. The Mizukich has just given me a message. There has been an attack on our clan's compound. They are all shocked what? How is this possible? Did an enemy village attack us? IT must be those damn council members in Karigaka IT must be a ruse, while most of them are panicking and screaming at each other. I signal my clones boom 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 boom. They immediately come from underground and attack all of the Jonin individuals, 15 of them fall down. Knocked out soon, all of the others are running in different directions. How a howl is heard. All of the Jonin and Chunin. The Jonin are stopped for a second before they can break out of it, and another 5 are captured then, as the other 30 Jonin are getting away. I give another signal to my clones, and suddenly, as the Jonin are about to reach outside of the camp perimeter, a transparent purple barrier is formed around the camp. Group up don't let them take you by surprise. Dash I order them loudly. I say that to all of the Jonin. They listen to me as I am still transformed as the leader. And then they are all grouped around me. I immediately take a small round ball at the size of my palm, and secretly crush it. I hold my breath and 16 other Jonin fall. That was invisible and odorless paralysis poison. Even though it seems only the ones closest to me got knocked out the other 14 immediately get away from me and look at me suspiciously well. Now they are on their guard still kind of late though. What have you done to our leader? And who are you? I act like I don't even take them seriously. I take out and crush another ball that nullified the poison in the air. Even though I have developed a resistance to this type of poison, this is a poison I made myself in order to take out ninja, especially ones with weird bodies. That means that even with my resistance, I can get dizzy from it. I look at them as if they would just pray. It manages to unnerve them even further, and only the ones close to me got knocked out. The Kagaya clan truly has a peculiar anatomy. They look like rabid beasts ready to strike at any moment. What kind of trash village are you from stranger? I don't even answer. No need to talk with an enemy opponent, if it gives you no advantage. Also, it seems like this identity is no longer useful poof. I undo the transformation. And I show them my real form. An 11 years old kid although. I noticed that this time my opponents didn't get distracted. Oh well. They are not Jonin for nothing. Four silver chains come from my back. It was instinctual for them to look at my chains for a split second. In that second I activated my Sharingan, and when some of them looked back at my eyes, ten of them are caught into it. The others are about to help them break out of my Jinjutsu, but my chains immediately attack them, and they dodged, with only four left now. They are easy prey. They have all got some bone swords on their hands, hum. They should be good at Tajutsu then, but I won't fight in their strong point. Even if I know that I could beat them with my super strength, nine clones appear they go to handle the three of them, one of them against three of my clones, and the last of them versus myself. My opponent is also looking at my feet, and no longer looking me in the eyes now HMPH. It doesn't matter I immediately appear behind my opponent. I stab a Senban on his spine and paralyze him instantly. I look at my other opponents. They are now all taken care of as well good gather all of the bodies. And after we go far enough two of you burn the place to the ground. I want no witnesses no evidence, the clones simply nod. My clones cancel the barrier and seals that stopped any chakra leaking out to signify that a battle was going on in here. I then lifted the Jinjutsu that my clones had around here. That made it look like nothing is going on after 3 hours everything is ready. It seems like even amongst the fighters of the Kagaya clan only 49 people had the Shikotsu Miyaka bloodline. Therefore, I killed the others who had nothing special about them, mainly just denser bones than normal, and put them in storage scrolls. I then killed 24 of the 49 Shikotsu Miyaki users, after all 49 of them, should they manage to escape and seek attack me somehow, then they become dangerous. I seal all of the dead bodies of the Shikotsu Miyaki users in another scroll, and put the scrolls back in my pouch. Then as I have all of the unconscious Shikotsu Miyaki users' bodies ready with my clones, and am about to leave at the edge of my chakra senses, 100 meters, I can sense a vaguely strong chakra well, time to get out of here because of my paranoia. 
I always kept my Sharingan active. The next second from 100 meters away, I sensed the huge chakra right next to me IT's coming ironic same as the clan leader. That realization came too late for me, Uriah. I immediately tried to jump backward. Crack I can feel my neck getting slashed and broken. Boom I got thrown on the ground and a crater is formed all around me. I can feel blood bursting out of my neck. The only thing holding my head together with my body is my spine. I can't even move my body below my neck anymore, as the lighting running through my system has temporarily paralyzed me. I hope this can heal my injuries, come on please, I, I don't want to die, I am scared shit the flesh is too far apart. IT's not healing, okay calm down. I extend chakra strings from my head, and bring the separated flesh on my neck closer together. My attacker is being held back by my clones. But they are getting destroyed in about 2 seconds. And he already has destroyed half of them. When I get the memories from my clones, I immediately recognized my attacker. He was a tall, dark-skinned man with a large muscular and well-defined build. He had a full head of white hair that flowed into his back along with a long beard. He had unusual eyes, which had green eye rides, dark sclery, and no pupils. His face has pronounced cheekbones and tear troughs under his eyes, and a prominent crease across his forehead, with a mole above his right eyebrow. His top lip also had a darker pigmentation than the bottom one. His canine teeth were also slightly elongated. He has the kanji for lightning tattooed on his right shoulder. He also had a lightning bolt-shaped scar that runs across the right side of his chest. There's no doubt about it. IT is the third rakage. Then I feel the ground under me shift a little I panic. But when I notice the two chakra signatures under me I relax. Crack two of my shadow clones come from underground and take me below the ground. Then they start running away from there. Now that I am safer I need to think of a plan. When the third rakage appeared far away within my range of detection, he didn't stop to look for me. He just charged, so the most likely conclusion is that he had a long distance sensor with him. And a good one probably. Because why didn't the rakage attack my other 100 clones? The most probable answer is because the sensor is able to sense which is a clone or which one is not. I need to run away now since once he meets with the rakage I am a dead man. After almost 4 minutes my neck is all healed. But even with the healing, I have a huge scar surrounding my neck. Boom I hear the rakage attacking the earth on the surface. He knows that I probably went into hiding underground. I am having the two of my clones fix my arteries and vocal cords. Or I won't be able to talk for the rest of my life. Even creation rebirth can't perfectly fix an almost cut off head with lightning running through my body fuck I was so close to dying. If I hadn't jumped back to lessen the impact my head would have been separated from my shoulders. And I would have died after healing me. I have ordered my last two clones to take out the last members of the Kagaya clan. It's a shame that I wouldn't be able to have them as test subjects. But I can't let that uncertainty in my plan live. No loose ends. Boom the rakage is still rampaging about. But I need to first wait for the sensor to meet up with the rakage. And then kill the sensor to escape. Because even if I escape now. They would follow me anyhow. After all even after almost 10 minutes since I disappeared underground. He hasn't entered my chakra sensing range. For a ninja traveling at that speed. It must mean that the sensor has a detection range between 5 to 10 kilometers. That is crazy. I don't know anyone even in Kanoha who has that type of range. The longest I know is the Yamanaka clan head, who is said to have a sensing range of 3 kilometers. But I know with the rakage here the chances of me killing the sensor are almost zero. Also, there might be other ninjas with the sensor then my chances of getting out of this alive become 0% with a 100% chance of death. If I travel underground with an earth jutsu, I will be too slow to escape. I need to get on the surface and somehow run away from the rakage now. I make 50 clones and they know what to do. It seems like I need to make sure my plan goes 100% accurately in order for me to survive. I wait for about 10 minutes. When I go outside of the hiding spot, I immediately sense the rakage come for me. I just look towards a mountain nearby. My Sharingan starts to change shape. As soon as I see that my surroundings have changed I sense the rakage hastily following me. Even with the extreme pain that comes with using the Manjikyu Sharingan, as soon as he is an arm's length away from me, I just mentally smoke all. According to plan, boom silver chains with Fuenjutsu in them come out of the ground. I point my palm towards the rakage and make it into a fist. A slash N. The chain Fuenjutsu that he found in the ruins of Yuzashogaka. The chains came from his clones. Chains start to trap him. A couple of them are broken, but with so many chains. No matter how strong the rakage is, unless he is at Madara level, he will be restrained. First, his right foot gets entangled in one chain, and then the other chains swarm up both his legs like serpents. He's in prison now. My clones are still channeling chakra through them, and yet it remains quite hard to hold him for long. Plus he saw my Sharingan already, so I've got to kill him. The only jutsu in my arsenal with even the slightest chance to injure the rakage is my wind style chakra scapples. But that would mean that I would have to beat melee distance to the rakage to even be able to connect with the jutsu. And that would be a very bad decision that I am not dumb enough to take besides. That would only deal some moderate cuts to the rakage. It would take a lot more of those to cause him to bleed out. But I have a better idea I then perform two hand sings quickly. The earth starts to suck in the cocoon of chains in the muddy, watery quicksand. Well then, let's see how long it will take for him to suffocate underground as soon as I do that. I sense a dozen of chakra signatures enter my sensing range fuck me. This fucking day has been fucking terrible one amongst the ninja I detect even has a strong signature, and I would guess that he might be an S rank. All of the others are no slouches either, with everyone being at least Jonan level my levels of chakra for the first time in a long time, have started to feel extremely low. And that's taking into account the meager amount of chakra left in my seal. 
but I know that I can still take them on. I look at the ground under which the rakage is suffocating to death. I can sense that monster thrashing against the chains that can hold down tail beasts, and it seems like he is hitting their weak points. What a damn monster. 50 of my clones using a tail beast restriction type of ceiling, and he can still manage to move around. He can actually do a lot more than move, as I have a suspicion that he might break out of them before he suffocates well damn. I guess I'd better take care of the Jonan and S rank before that happens, or at least take care of the sensor. Otherwise, I will endlessly be pursued until I run out of stamina, or I collapse from the lack of sleep. So killing the sensor is the safer choice. Just as I am about to go towards them, boom, the earth behind me explodes. I immediately turn around and see a familiar figure. What the fuck question mark question mark question mark exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point he broke out so fast. Blitz I see him coming towards me using my shuriken, which then morphs into a shuriken shape, he has his ultimate technique pointed towards me. I can see he is aiming for my head, he wants to finish me off, this bastard. I immediately appear below his outstretched arm. I look at his elbow and calculate something with the help of my Sharingan. I slam a Rasengan into his elbow in an uppercut move. His arm changes its trajectory, and just as it's about to hit his lighting scar in his chest suddenly, his hand stops midway and changes direction, he's incredibly strong WTF. How did Naruto made this work fucking plot armor? And it comes back to hit my head damn it. As a last resort, I have to meet his technique head on launching a punch with my right hand all the energy, chakra, stamina and whatever the fuck else left in every cell in my body, supercharging it into an attack 10x times stronger than one Suned level punch, boom. The rakage gets knocked back with immense speed, and is sent flying, crashing into a tree. This might seem like I won the exchange, but I then look down at my right arm or rather the shallow stump that is in its former place now. My arm was completely obliterated by the power bout I look at my stump. I now have for an arm damn IT. I can't even move from the lighting running through my body. I can feel the cold grip of fear, grab my heart. My body is in a state of panic calm down I need to run away now or I am going to die come on think. My Manjik ability is amazing at running away. While the rakage is momentarily a distance away from me I got IT. I extend one chakra string from my left hand and grab a stone and like a slingshot it shoots into the air. My Manjik looks at the stone that is shut up. Swish I am teleported to it. This should be a distance where he probably can't jump to I immediately start to fall together with the stone. I then run wind chakra through my body to repel the lighting that is paralyzing my body. In two seconds wind chakra is a counter to lighting. It repels it. I can feel the pain wreck in my brain like it is being punctured by a hundred needles. I can turn around and look at where I see the rakage calmly looking at me damn I can see that he was not hurt by my last all out attack okay. Then I need to run away now. I grab the same stone again and throw it forward again and this time even higher in the air. Floosh now I am in such a height that he definitely can't jump to me. I can even barely sense him anymore that is how high I am. So it should be around 80 meters 260 to teleport to it. I look at the sky and see if I can spot any clouds damn. It is also a clear day. So I can't hide in the clouds fuck anyway. This teleportation ability can only teleport me to something that I can see clearly. And with my Sharingan I can see stuff from far away. That is if my vision hadn't started already getting a little blurry as of lately. My creation rebirth has been holding the deterioration of my eyes by a great deal. But I have been using it a lot lately. Swoosh again. I teleport to the stone I grab it again. And I can sense the rakage hot on my tail. He is following me. But let's try this. I throw my stone again this time I throw it in a straight line. Swoosh I'm temporarily out of the rakage's sight with my one hand. I make the tiger hand sign poof, and a shadow clone appears next to me. Shit the chakra in my seal is almost all gone. Then I make another hand sign. Immediately my body gains a see-through cover even while falling. I really should be glad that I'm so paranoid and mastered most of my critical life-saving jutsus to be able to do them with only one hand sign. I then look in a faraway place in a tree. Fwash and I am immediately teleported there. Because the rakage doesn't have a chakra sensing ability I should able to slip right past him, as he comes closer to my place while following my clone. Okay? I need to calm my heart, I do that by putting chakra pressure in it, and clogging my blood vessels to stop them from moving, and giving out any signs of a living being. I can only hold this state for one minute at most. I can sense the rakage is getting closer. I can hear lighting crackling swoosh. He doesn't seem to notice, and still goes after my clone. He is 50 meters away. Yes, 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 after he is out of my sensing range sigh. I let out a sigh of relief. I am almost about to cry from happiness. That is if I was dumb enough to waste time doing that. At last, I finally escaped him temporarily that was risky. But the thing paid off, now I have a little bit of leverage to move around. I can sense that the sensor squad with the 10 Jounin and S-class ninja is coming towards me. I wonder which one of them is the sensor I had my clone run the opposite direction to the sensor team. So they won't be able to catch up with the rakage's speed. Then they shouldn't be able to meet up until the rakage destroys my clone. I also know what I did wrong during this exchange fuck. I shouldn't have gotten arrogant I shouldn't have tried to take on the rakage. Did my recent power jump to my head? Did I think that I could hold someone who would need to have at least two strong S ranks to hold him back? I should have taken my chances and escaped immediately. I should have taken the risk of being hunted down. That almost cost me my life damn IT. I look at my stump where my arm used to be at least I must get rid of the sensor if I know one thing about long distance sensors is that the close distance sensing ability is very blurry even Minato who is also a long distance sensor has to use a technique from the second hokage he puts a finger in the ground and sends a chakra pulse so he can sense any living being in the perimeter anyway I need to go and kill the sensor at all costs 
I know what happens when a shadow clone uses the Manjiku Sharingan until it goes blind. I will also lose my light. I will become blind and lose my Sharingan and Manjiku Sharingan as soon as my clone is destroyed. This is a weakness that the so-called experience of the shadow clone brings that will bring me back a huge amount of pain too. And also with the Reikage as his opponent. I would give my clone at best 3 to 4 minutes until it goes blind from Manjiku overuse and can no longer use his ability. And then the Reikage destroy it and he will figure out what is going on. By that time I need to have finished my objective and be far, very far away from here this is the only way out. Yami immediately starts going towards the sensor team at his top speed. Though he noticed that his balance is off a little. It seems like I will need to master this shit real quick. After all there is an S class and 10 Jounin ninja that I am going to fight against. They cannot be underestimated especially now that I am weakened so much. Apostrophe when I arrive at their destination in around 7 seconds. I see 10 ninja with Jounin level chakra and another one who I knew was S class. I hide in the trees and look for the sensor in their midst. No one seems to be using any sensor techniques. I can see that with my Sharingan. They also seem to be acting strange. I can pick that up in their body language. Aha, I get it now. They already know that I am here and are trying to lure me in a false sense of security. Well then I make a tiger hand sign. Poof a shadow clone appears next to me. Now all of my chakra from my seal is gone. So I only have my natural chakra amount. Damn I haven't run out of chakra in a long time. Since I know that I will go blind anyway. Then I better use these eyes as much as I can. It's truly a shame I never figured out how to use Susanoo. Though I better be careful. Usually I am not worried about the chakra consumption of the Monjeku ability. But now I still need to not accidentally pass out from chakra exhaustion. As soon as I see that they already have noticed me. I order my clone to stay back while I attack them. I also have an absolute advantage over them. They don't know any of my abilities. Then I take out a scroll. And poof a giant blade comes out. This is the explosion blade. One of the four blades that I stole from the four ninja swordsmen that I killed. I then pick up the huge sword. I bet that I look ridiculous with this sword. A one and 11 years old kid with blood all over his clothes, and a huge sword on his remaining hand. I look at the middle of their formation. Immediately I appear in the middle of the formation. And before they have even a chance to be shocked I attack the three Jounin who are closest together. Boom the explosion hits them. Ah I immediately sense two chakra signatures disappeared. So they are probably dead. And the last one seems heavily injured. But I didn't stop there with the help of my first explosion. I propelled myself towards another Jounin. And I swing the sword to attack him. Lava style. Rubber wall boom my sword then hits something bouncy TCH. It was blocked by a rubber like substance. I look towards the S class ninja he is the one who used rubber to block my attack and protected his ally from death. I need to end this fast. Rakage POV. Following the kid with the strange ability to teleport wasn't honorable. This war was a mess ever science had begun. Killing such a talented kid is a shame. If only he was born in my village. Well, there is no use trying to think anymore about this. It also seems like the teleportation part of his ability comes from his eyes. Third POV. In about 4 minutes later the clone starts falling from the sky. The rakage immediately follows him. The clone extends some chakra strings from his hands to tie around the trees to stop his fall. And soon the rakage appears in front of the clone and is about to attack him. But then, the clone bows down with his head touching the ground. Please let me live rakage dash sama. Immediately the rakage's face morphs into a frown of disappointment. After all he thought that at least the kid would be have a little dignity. But even then he is a ninja. So the third rakage can only suppress his feelings and try to at least try to get some information for from the kid. After some thought the rakage asks Yami, clone, what can you give me kid? The rakage asks Yami with a cold look. After all he can kill the kid whenever he wants. I holds all of the cards. I will still kill the but he will have to wait if the kid has any useful information. As soon as I notice that the kid is lying, I will kill him. Yami looks at the rakage in the eyes. The rakage can see two hollow eyes staring back at him. Like a mist in front of Yami's original eyes who had a pure black color. They now have a gray color. The kid is blind, so that teleportation ability of his did have a drawback. I know all of the current s rank ninja placements. Together with me being one of the best medical ninjutsu. If you take me to dash the rakage immediately gets a suspicious look on his face. He is just saying non-specific stuff. So he is trying to buy time I already know how troublesome he can be so boom. The rakage immediately punches Yami's head off his body. And just then the rakage's eyes widen poof Yami bursts into smoke. When the rakage sees that it was a clone, he immediately looks around for a sneak attack or something of the sort but then, the kid is sneaky he shouldn't be as oblivious as to attack head on, is he hiding underground again or maybe in the sky? Did he transform into a nearby object? Rakage POV. I could use a lighting sensory technique that senses chakra signatures 50 meters around me. But I would have to drop the lighting cloak, and I would have to be a special kind of stupid to make such a fatal mistake against an enemy like this. The kid is young and small but very dangerous. I had heard about him, a true S-class ninja from such a young age. But he is definitely more dangerous, because even science the beginning of the fight I never underestimated him, and went 100% from the beginning. But where is that kid he is a sensor so, wait don't tell me. Fwash I immediately start retracing my steps and running back where I came from. That little brat, he was after my team all along, after 20 seconds while running back on where I came from. I noticed something in front of me damn. It's he there are mutilated body parts everywhere. Some even pissed on the trees. These are my team. Even with all of the rage inside of me. My face does not show any emotion. My brain is 100% alert to my surroundings. Waiting for a sneak attack, a trap. I was expecting chains to come from underground and surround me at any second. 
Those things were dangerous, so I need to be careful. Then after looking at the blood of my comrades, my close friends, they were my chosen squad that I would entrust my life to them. If only I had noticed it earlier then with a calm voice I say, anyone alive when no one answers cough as soon as I heard the cough. I went to the side of my teammate. He had his hands and legs both of which were bent in ways that they were not meant to bend. Immediately as soon as I saw his face I knew who it was. It was one of my best friends did I. I went towards him carefully in case it was a trap. But when I looked at my friend's mouth area, I noticed that even his tongue was cut off. I couldn't handle the guilt anymore, and I immediately went to his side. His face was a little bloody and messed up. I know the ruthlessness of that kid. Did he leave him alive to hold me back on not giving chase to him? The blood still seems fresh, so he should be close. Around here. But I can't let my daughter die. I'm not even sure if I would be able to find the kid also see is dead. He was the best chakra sensor in Kumo. Or even the whole elemental nations. Finding him now is going to be like trying to find a Senban in a haystack. I look at the horizon and swear in my heart. I will kill you next time kid MCPOV. I spread my chakra senses all around the cave that I assume is in a dark place. The only thing I sense is my clone that I made before starting the fight. I let one of my enemies alive, and had my clone put him in a simple jinjutsu, to make him cough when the body hears the Rakage's voice. That was plan B in case I couldn't get away from the Rakage in time. So for the love for his comrade in critical condition, he will then go to the Mist Village to heal his friend. Though Dodo's injuries even though they seem bad from the outside, they are even worse on the inside he is crippled forever. Also I place a certain seal in the inside of his skull, and in 24 hours it will explode, and it will blow up the hospital. It will put quite a strain on the relationship between Mist Village and Cloud Village. Even if they figure out that it wasn't them who planted the trap, they wouldn't dare admit it publicly especially in this village or else the bloodline clans which were being discriminated up until now as soon as they see a weakness they would feast upon them like a wolf feasting on a sheep so it seems both outcomes are good for me i turn towards my clone and even though i can't see him i can sense his chakra the clone still has the sharingan because he was created when i still had it he will only last for some hours with the chakra that he currently has and i can't even transfer some to him because I am almost to the brink of chakra exhaustion. I just look at him and say calmly, go and Jinjutsu a bird and write a warning about the Reikage's change of battlefield. Say in the letter that I can hold him back for some days. Write it in a confident way. Also tell them to recall some s rank ninja from the other battlefields to prepare for the Reikage. Then I hear the clone say, okay, but you need to calm down. What is he talking about I'm calm? Your hand is shaking, and you have a childlike happy smile in your face. It is honestly creepy. Wow what a rude bastard dot I try to calm down and touch my face. And I can feel a joker like smile in my face I know I should be in panic, because the rakage almost killed me. But I am so happy that I am alive, I then try to calm down. Well then since this is over I should relax, I should let my body rest. My body today got wrecked, but still I am so happy that I survived. Ouch. I feel my body calm down and let the adrenaline wear off. After all the battle, I could feel my body begin to rest. When I sensed that my clone came back, I just looked at him with half-closed eyes and asked him, How long do you think you have left? Five hours at best. I am a good medic, so the transplant should be over at worst in two hours. I then let myself fall asleep while taking out a storage scroll and giving it to my clone. One hour later, as soon as I open my eyes the next time, I get up and I feel that my body is still tired. But at least I can see I see the lights all around me, and even a bed storage scrolls are really convenient. When I look at my clone's face, he was frowning and had a nervous look on his face immediately I ask him in a rushed voice, what is wrong? He just gives me a mirror, and when I look at it, I couldn't help but say fuck. While looking at my face at first I didn't notice anything wrong until I looked at my spiky hair. Some strands of hair almost unnoticeable by the naked eye had started turning. White, fuck. The overuse of the creation rebirth technique has started to finally take his toll on me ho oh, how much lifespan. Did I lose probably in the battle against the rakage I lost most of it Sune was able to use her creation rebirth more because of her senja heritage. And even then, at around 50 years old, she looked like a hundred year old hag. Without her transformation on damn it okay I need to. Calm down that just means that I need to become immortal sooner than expected the plan can just be adjusted a little. Instead of waiting till Naruto cannon comes around to become immortal. Then I just need to become so sooner I can do that but I need a plan for it I wanted Kagai's immortality with some higher regeneration on the side. But it seems like I will have to temporarily settle for some other type of immortality, or I could invent my own type of immortality then, after some thinking I finally concoct a plan. Oh yeah that could work, but that will take some more planning to get the finer details of it worked out. First order of business is to go back to Konoha, and not spend any more of my vitality and lifespan on this war, which no longer has any benefits for me. I already exterminated all of the Kagaya clan members. I already have enough dead bodies that have the Shikotsu Miyaka bloodline limit. I then get up and look at my clone who still has the Sharingan activated. I just dispel him immediately and get his memories. Then I sit down and take out another scroll and poof, a lot of food comes out. From cut ramen, vegetables, dried meat and I immediately start eating. I will just wait in this cave for three days, and then return to the camp, just in case the Rakage decides to take out his anger somewhere. It will be the camp, and if the Rakage doesn't attack, I will take the credit of holding the Rakage back all by myself, so it's a win-win situation for me. If he does attack I just say to the higher-ups that I did my best. I even lost an arm and almost died. 
but the first situation is the better win for me. Ash three days Laterium currently still in the cave. I sent a shadow clone to scout out the Kanoha camp and see if the Rakage already attacked it. After some hours I get the memories of my dispelled clone. The camp was okay? The memories were mostly from the clone, confirming if it was a trap or not. The clone after much inspection, confirmed that it was not a trap. So I myself went outside of the cave for the first time in three days. I could feel the sun shining in my eyes ah. Not having a Sharingan is going to suck everything just became 120% harder. I stealthily get off the island, and start running on water towards the land of Noodles. Which is the place where Kanoha and Miss Village fight, in order to not destroy their own lands. When I got close to the camp I didn't hide anymore, and one of the patrol ninja noticed me, and came towards me. He looked like your average Chunin. I saw in his eyes that he realized who I was. He also looked at my missing arm and the huge scar in my neck. I didn't bother to hide either of them. I need to be seen as a hero for when I return to Kanoha. Even though he recognized me because of protocols he still asked me in a serious voice. The Raymond in the land of noodles is hot. I just look at him seriously and answer. But the tea in Kanoha is better also the Raymond has gotten cold lately. The code changes every day. But this was an answer that showed that I was the real deal and that I had been on a long time mission. He just nods at me and signals for me to follow him. I do so and go to the camp. When I go inside I see some of the Hyuga and Ichiha clan members look at me suspiciously. Well I know why they are acting like that I already have a plan on how to take care of it. The Jounin that I left to run the camp are still all alive. As soon as they see me they tell me to follow them. They will escort me to the camp leaders. I secretly do a hand sign to them without the Chunin even noticing anything. I ask them with hand signs what is going on. It seems that apparently 2S rank ninja was sent to hold back the rakage, and while I was away, it seems like me having a Sharingan has become a sensitive situation. Apparently I am under suspicion of killing an Ichiha and taking his eyes. So I confirmed what I already suspected. I knew that making promises that I probably won't keep to these Jounin would pay off one day. I go into the tent and see who it was the first face that I saw has eyes with snake-like pupils with long hair and pale skin. He is wearing a Jounin jacket. As soon as I saw him I was immediately in 100% alert mode. It was a Ruchimaru I will need to be very careful around him, especially with what now is the me having a Sharingan situation. Damn I can never get a break can I? Also the other person is. The other guy beside a Ruchimaru is Jiraiya, even though he will become Kanoha's spy master in the future. I can still somehow handle him. But I need to be extremely careful around a Ruchimaru. Though I will still need to be on guard. Even against Jiraiya, Jiraiya is smiling towards me and says in a cheery voice. Haha ha, it seems like it was true you were able to hold back the rakage. I just smile at him and point towards my missing arm and the scar in my neck and say with a melancholic tone in my voice. Honestly I was barely able to get out of this alive. Then while sitting down on the ground, he points at the ground beside him and says, come sit down and relax, you fought one of the strongest living ninja, a cage, a leader of a whole ninja village. He then grabs a cup of what it smells like watered down sake and he drinks it. You should be happy it calls for a celebration so come on let's eat some nice food that I brought directly from Kanoha. Then his face scrunched up in disgust. I know how gross the cardboard food can be on the front lines. He takes out a storage scroll and poof, a lot of food and drinks come out of the smoke. I just smile politely and sit down on the ground with the table in front of me, facing Jiraiya and Orochimaru. I look at Orochimaru who still has a cold look on his face. Looking towards me then suddenly a small smoke appears on his lips, and he says, you can relax now. No matter what we can protect the camp, it is no longer your responsibility. He definitely is a perceptive snake. After half an hour of eating and talking, Jiraiya is doing most of the latter, when suddenly he says, I need to go to the bathroom. When he goes outside of the tent the atmosphere immediately becomes awkward, and I don't care about the awkwardness I need an opening in Orochimaru to be able to slightly manipulate him. Plus I need to be extra careful with smart and dangerous people like him suddenly Orochimaru is the first to break the ice. And with a weird smile on his face he says, I wonder is it true that you were able to hold back the rakage? Or were you lying this is it? I just smile slightly, and with a strange tone in my voice, and a pitying look I say to him. So you suspect my story I suppose it is only to be expected. Though you have my pity. There is no such thing as truth or lies in this world. There never has been. There is only plain, hard facts. And yet, all beings who exist in this world take only those facts that are convenient to them, and take them to be the truth. They do so because they know no other way to live. However, for those powerless beings that make up the majority of this world, it is those facts that are inconvenient for their own self-affirmation, that make up the real truth. The more I talk the more his eyes wide and he has a shocked look in his face, it was hard to keep myself from smoking. Sometimes it is easier to trick a genius than an idiot. Also checkmate Orochimaru then after a couple of minutes Jiraiya comes in. Orochimaru now has a calm mask on. But I can see it in his eyes. The barely hidden curiosity and contemplation the rest of the day pass like this. Jiraiya messing around as soon as Jiraiya came back from the toilet. Orochimaru excused himself. And he went away. Then I had all night to try and keep an act and a lie going on. Always being 100% alert and on guard. To not let anything slip out dot. Though I am smiling on the outside. This is a very stressful situation for me I had to describe a whole different battle against the rakage, which did not even happen. I had thought of what to say, but then Jiraiya kept asking stupidly accurate questions. I had to do a lot of very careful improvising. Tomorrow you know Jiraiya is way more smarter than he seems. 
I mean even though I tried very hard to give accurate descriptions mixed with a lot of half lies, and at the end I tried to lead the story on him to think that I am hiding something, and when he mixes the clues together with the story I had cooked up, he will discover what I am trying to hide. The truth is that I used the Rakage's teammates as a hostage and such. I also got the confirmation that I can return to Kanoa whenever I want now, after getting everything ready and even having a team to escort me. Before taking off, I go to Jiraiya's tent, and when I go inside I see him writing some book or something like that. He turned towards me, and when he locked eyes with me he smiled and said in a cheery voice, do you need something Yami or did you come here to say goodbye to the gallant Jiraiya? I just smile slightly and take out a scroll from my Jounin flak jacket and toss it towards him. After he catches it, I just smirk at him and say, there are four of the seven ninja swords in that scroll. I promised Tsuned Sensei that I would single-handedly end the war against the mist. It seems like I won't be able to do so. Use the swords as a bargain or something to help end this horrible war. I act a little sad when saying the last part. Jiraiya then looks at me with a serious look. Don't worry Yami you have comrades you can depend into. He then smiles again. If you ask them I am sure they will give you a shot to lean on and help you hold that burden. I just nod and smile at him. I then thank him then I go towards the team that I will be traveling with. There are 14 members, most of them are Chunin. There are a couple of Chiha giving me the stink eye. But I just simply ignore them I think back on the words that Jiraiya said. But he doesn't understand that to trust in another person's ability is the same as to rely upon that person. Reliance is for weak. It is of no use to me at the end of the day the only person I can rely on to fix my problems is myself. And as soon as I arrive in Kanoha the problem with me allegedly stealing a Sharingan, it is upon my shoulders to fix that problem. Then we immediately take off. Jumping from tree to tree this is another thing that I lost now that I don't have the Sharingan. I used to travel with Shunshin everywhere. I would have been in Kanoha in 20 minutes tops. I then look at my squad. And with these guys dragging me down, now it will probably take around 3 days. Sigh. This is going to be a long journey. Surprisingly we arrived in Kanoha only after 2 days. But it sure felt longer than that. There was not a lot of conversation going on. I got close to all of them except the Ichihas. Anyway we are finally here. Seeing the giant gates of Kanoha almost gives me a sense of relief. As soon as I go towards the gate, the guards greet me and look at my arm. I just nod towards them and the Chunin team splits and they each go their own way. Then, I am about to go towards the Inuzuka clan compound. But suddenly three Anbu appeared in front of me. They all had masks with animal drawings in them. So that means that they probably are not Root Ninja. Then one of them with the eagle mask says to me in a calm voice. Jan and Yami you are invited to report your battlefield experiences to the Hokage. Then there will also be a clan hearing after that. I just look at them then I smile and say to them, Oh, okay, I will remember to do so after I go and greet my family. I haven't seen my mother and Sum in a long time. Then as I am about to walk away the Anbu with the Hawk mask touches my shoulder and says in a stern tone like scolding a kid, I would suggest that you go see the Hokage, Yami-san, Anbu POV. This one armed kid who does he think he is to refuse the Hokage, as soon as I grab the kid's shoulder, he turned around and he had a very serious face. His eyes cold and bloodshot that put chills in my back vorm. I could feel a formless pressure from the kid, and then the kid says quietly in a strong voice, I will kill you, right here, right now. Chirp 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 then a heavy killing intent comes out of the kid, and even birds started running away, as if sensing the danger suddenly the world turned red all around then. I feel like I am being butchered with a dull knife. Pain is ringing all around my body. Blood is flowing like a river from all of my wounds. I could hear the loud scream of a woman in pain right next to my ear. I turn back and see those cold eyes staring at me, and the dull knives start to gently skin me alive ah. In CPOV I look at the guy who is standing in front of me. He has let go of my shoulder, and his Anbu mask fell off. His mouth is open and his eyes are dull. I put him in a Jinjutsu as soon as he touched me. The other Anbu are looking at me in shock, and they seem ready to attack. Then I disperse all my bloodlust and smile at them slightly with a ridiculing look in my face. I am just joking. Then the Anbu who touched my shoulder, seems like he broke out of my Jinjutsu, and as soon as he does so, he gets on his knees and blah, he throws up on the ground. It seems like I will have to get rid of the innocent and naive kid mask. I just look at him with a serious face. You know you are lucky that I am so nice. If it was some other S rank Kanoha ninja dot dot like Orochimaru, you would have thrown up more than your lunch. And then I started walking towards the Inuzuka clan compound. I don't even stop at my mother's house and immediately go towards the clan head's house. When I enter my house, after making sure no one is around, I go into my room and stomp hard on the floor. Bam, a piece of the wooden floor is broken. I take out the broken wood and jump down on the hole I created, and I land on the ground. Then I make a hand sign. Poof a clone appears next to me. I extend my hand towards him and he does the same. We start doing some hand things together. I use an earth jutsu to move the earth below me, and a hole that only someone around my size can enter. The clone nods at me and waits up there. Then I jump down again with chakra strings attached all around to slow down my fall, and at the end of it after 20 meters or so underground, I see a jar with a kanji meaning iron inscribed in it. I pick it up and I jump up with the help of chakra strings. After getting to the top, I sit down cross-legged, and with my hand I touch the jar, with my clone keeping watch over me. I let my conscience go into the jar soon I am in a white space, and I see in the middle of this white space, there is a creature that resembles a dark purple leech with a serpent-like body on its face. It wears a blank white colored mask that has the kanji for zero on it, 
which is tan in color, and five red hair-like strands sprouting from it, four at the top and one at the bottom. It is surrounded in chains holding it down together with five giant steel pillars connected by chains in a circular way. All of that is holding the creature down. As soon as it sees me it tries to send some duck chakra towards me, but it is blocked by all the seals. Then a mouth on the mask and the mouth in the mask moves and it says, I see that you only have one arm now I can heal it for you if you want I can give you unimaginable power, power that can strengthen you. The stronger your enemy is I can make you stronger. So he can talk huh? I just look at it, smile and say to the zero tails in a calm voice. I always assumed that you had some sort of intelligence. But I am surprised to know that it was so low let me explain. Then I make a hand sign, and the pillars shine with lightning around them, and then boom, it started shocking the Zero Tails. Ah, the Zero Tails gets shocked, and his body tries to move because it's in pain. But the seals don't allow him to move at all. His body just shakes a little, and he screams. Ah, I keep the lighting going for 20 seconds, and then stop. I get close to the Zero Tails, who now has smoke come out of his burned flesh. I look at it and say in a cold voice. So have you come to your senses now do you understand now? Our relationship isn't as equals. I then look at its face and say, you are my pet and I am your master, so never misunderstand our relationship little leech, another temper tantrum like this, and you get demoted to elaborate. Immediately as soon as I say that, it doesn't move. I have plans that when I go into the Kanoha clan head meeting, there is a chance, however small, that they might be unreasonable or maybe by my influence. I have changed the canon timeline, and the Hokage is under a Jinjutsu. So if they might try to silence me or even someone like Madara who currently should be in a cave in an unknown location, might do something unexpected and ruin my plans. So if I need to run away I will release the Zero Tails in the middle of the village, and become a missing nin. Maybe go over to the village hidden in the grass, kill its leader, impersonate him and continue lurking in the shadows researching, and then come out and join Akatsuki. Assassinate the Beto and impersonate him in the fourth ninja war. Get the Ten Tails and the rest will be history. That I will write as I will be the victor, so if I see that there is no other option than to become a missing nin, that is the day Yami and Yuzuka will die. Though this is a world that I know the future of, there are many unstable factors in this thing, that this has become like a house of cards. If I am not careful enough with some minor details, my knowledge of future events without my careful intervention, everything will fall down also like a house of cards. So I need even my plans to have plans and my secrets to have secrets. I have to keep my mind open to numerous possibilities, and options never let myself get tunnel vision and concentrate on only one enemy. I have enemies everywhere inside and out of Kanoha. I look at the leech again and say, have we come to an agreement? Then the leech gives a quiet yes. I immediately make a hand sign and the pillars start flashing again. Then his eyes and his mask widen and it quickly says, yes, yes master. I then drop my hand down and the flashing pillars go back to normal. I start walking away. But as I do so I turn around towards the zero tails and tell him in a mocking tone. Next time don't say it that loud it sounds weird. I don't look at its face and I make another hand seal and wash my conscience is pulled out of the jar and now I am in front of my clone. I then take the jar in my hand and throw it towards the clone. He catches it. I then take a normal stone from the ground and put some chakra into it. As soon as I do that strange seals start being made on the stone. Another invisible seal appears into my hand. I look at my clone and he nods seriously. He knows what to do. If the stone breaks release the zero tails on the village and with the negative emotions it has been creating by itself, it will wreak quite a havoc before it stops giving me a window to escape. Soon I get out of the hole in my floor and I am back to my room. My clone will move later and get into position. I go take a shower which I haven't had in a long time. The battlefield sure is a nasty place. Then as I am wiping my hair and look at my 11 year old body with one arm countless scars all over my body. But only two stand out one in the neck which I got recently from the rakage. And another giant slash scar into my chest. This was from that sand ninja during the ambush. I also notice the slightly graying hair. I then wear a black kimono with ambu pants and go outside of my house. As soon as I go outside, I see a dog with white fur come towards me. It took me a second to recognize him. It's Shiro my nink and he has grown a little. He used to be as small as a pup. Now he has gotten bigger and looks like a snow white wolf. But he is still kind of small as soon as it comes towards me and starts rubbing his face on my leg. I bend down and pick him up by the back of his neck. I bring Shiro up to my face level and look him in the eyes. He looks at me happily wiggling his tail with his tongue out. I then squint my eyes and say to him in a serious face, You have put on some weight Shiro. His tail stops shaking, and his ears fall down in sadness. Then he just looks down and whines a little. Then I just smile at Shiro, put him down and scratch the back of his neck. He then lies on his back and shows me his belly. I just smile and tell him in a jokingly way, wait for me little guy. Then I get up, walk outside of my house and start going towards the Hokage Tower. When I arrive there I look at it with a cold calculating look in my face. Then I open the doors to the Hokage Tower, and immediately I see all of the clan heads in there crowded. There also seem to be some of the successors of the clan heads in here. Except the Yamanaka clan head, who is a proxy, Senju and some other unimportant clans who are probably on the front lines. 
As soon as I enter I see all eyes on me. The clan leaders are all sitting in a big circular table, with the Hokage having the highest chair, showing that he has the highest position of power. The Hokage looks at me at me with a strange look. He probably wanted to meet me before the clan head meeting. I would have gone there, he would have probably tried to help me. After all, I am the most talented ninja that Kanova has had in all of its existence. I would have gone to him for help if I was innocent that is. I definitely don't underestimate Hiruzen's ability to read me. He will be the longest Hokage in power in the future. You don't go that far by being nice and good all the time. I am not saying he isn't kind. But if he knew I really did steal the Sharingan well that would backfire in me. By not going to him it might make him suspicious, and it will definitely make Danzo doubt me. But I am still only a kid, an 11 year old kid who just was in a death battle, and is just having a temper tantrum. Third POV, the Acheha clan leader sits to the right of the Hokage. He looks at his successor 19 year old Fugaku sitting to his right, and his young daughter Makoto to his left. He communicated with hand signs with Fugaku, telling him to not cause a ruckus or anything like that. When all of the clan heads sit down, they don't whisper anything or even talk. They all communicate between each other by using hand signs. Yami looks around and sees that there is no seat for him. Then he just simply takes out a scroll, everyone instinctively tenses up, and Yami runs some chakra through the scroll poof, a normal chair comes out of the smoke, and Yami rings it closer to the round table and sits on it. Taking his seat as the Inuzuka clan head the other clan heads are looking at him with cold looks. He just challenged their power play. It's the same as Yami challenging their authority. When Yami sees this he sits down he looks at all of them and smiles. Hello, long time no see. I really miss Kanova. Ah, it is so sad that I couldn't meet Sum and my mother. Even when I was tired I went to my house and didn't find them there. Then I remembered an Ambu told me that there was a clan meeting and immediately came here. Finally taking a shower without having to use a water jutsu or being afraid of a kunai stabbing me in the butthole. Some of the clan heads politely laugh, while some are truly laughing. The Achiha and a couple of other clans don't even smile. Yami just looks at them secretly, while memorizing every one of the clan names that would be a problem. Playing dumb can turn a power play on its head, when someone has to explain exactly how they are threatening you. It becomes either laughable or plain evil, both of which are more easily resisted, thinks Yami. Then suddenly the Hokage clears his throat, and all of the clan heads immediately stop communicating with hand signs. Then the Hokage looks towards Yami and says in a calm and serious voice, We are glad to have you here Yami. Fugaku Achiha is about to say something, but the Achiha clan head notices this and looks at him coldly. Fugaku's words got stuck in his throat, and he didn't say anything. The Achiha clan leader can't help but look at the Inuzuka kid in a new light. The kid melted all of the ice and suspicion when he got here by acting like he did. He already knows what is happening. He also showed that cold look to Achiha. The Hayiga and the Kurama clan he is telling us not to act against him no. He is ordering US. That kid just because he got a little fame he thinks. That the Achiha are so weak even though the anger inside the Achiha clan head was like a volcano. He had an impassive face like nothing happened. He looks towards Fugaku. The future clan head that the current clan head is trying to make him understand the political side of Kanoha. Just strength and pride are not enough to be prosperous in Kanoha. Fugaku will need some more self-control before he can be married to Makoto and take over as the clan head. Hiruzen smiles and says to Yami. I heard that you did some amazing things on the battlefield and saved hundreds of lives. Tsunade is very proud of you. Yami didn't stop smiling at all, and said in a sincere voice. Thanks, Hokage-sama. I am glad that I was able to help also I gave Jiraiya-sama the four ninja swords that I took when I killed their welders. I hope that Jiraiya-sama is able to use them to broker peace with the land of water. The Hokage nods and then he gets a serious look. Jaun and Yami in Yuzuka due to some troublesome news they say that they have seen you using a chain like Funjutsu technique. Everyone is looking at Yami with a serious face. But Yami seems like he is oblivious to the looks around him, and says with an even wider smile. And he seems completely relaxed, everyone is looking at Yami with a serious face. But Yami seems like he is oblivious to the looks around him, and says with an even wider smile on his face, completely relaxed then Yami says in a cheery voice. Oh yeah, that is a technique I created. I was intrigued when I read about the Yuzumaki chains. It was truly amazing able to seal chakra and restrain even the strongest of monsters. It was hard, but with my best friends Kishina and Minato, Helping me learn some Fuenjutsu, I was able to figure it out. All the clan heads nod. After all, no matter how you look at it, there is no other way that he was able to do so. The only slightly surprising thing was his talent in Fuenjutsu. Then suddenly the Achiha clan head speaks in a cold voice. What about the Sharingan that you seem to have immediately a cold atmosphere descends on the room? The Hokage looks at the Achiha clan head for daring to interrupt him. But he let it go after all. A lot of Achiha did die in the war, even the Achiha clan head son did so. So if Yami and Yuzuka did take the eyes of an Achiha that is a very grave crime. It could even be considered treason of the highest level. Then there is the possibility that the mother Yami and Yuzuka cheated on her husband with another man, and Achiha more specifically. That is the thought process of almost everyone in the room. Yami looks a little surprised and shocked at this, his smile vanishes while he says. Wait what do you mean about Sharingan? I don't think I have the Sharingan I am from the Inuzuka clan Achiha-san. The clan head frowns and is about to say something but he senses a strong gaze with a little killing intent directed at him. He looks towards the gaze and sees the Hokage's gaze. He stops himself from talking anymore, but he still doesn't apologize to the Hokage. After all he is the Achiha clan head, and he won't embarrass himself over something as small as this. The Hokage even though he is a little angry about this, he doesn't show any emotion in his face, and says to Yami in a calming voice, due to some secret intelligence, 
We now know that you somehow were in possession of the Sharingan, and were able to use another secret technique of the Sharingan that only the strongest of Uchiha should know how to use it. Yami looks at the Hokage weirdly, and then Fugaku covers his eyes with his hand as if rubbing them. Yami then says in a serious tone, Is that so-called secret informant the Rakage did the Rakage's say of how I killed all of his teammates in front of him, and that he couldn't protect them, and how I escaped him? The people in the room seem confused at something. Then Yami gets up from his chair that he was sitting during the hearing, and he points towards his missing arm. I lost this against the Rakage, but he lost all of his subordinates, and one of them who was a censor and another was their Shrank Shinobi Dodai, the rubber man. Then Yami dramatically spreads his arm to the side and says, Why? I used a Jinjutsu in my eyes that made them look like the Sharingan then there seems to be some dawning realization in all of the people in the room. Then Yami continued with a smile on his face. And that gave me a big advantage over them they were afraid of looking into my eyes. The teleportation was also a clone of mine creating illusions for the Rakage to kill, while I was taking care of his teammates. The Hokage seems to physically relax a little, and he said to Yami, Truly an ingenious tactic, though it seems like the Rakage underestimated you for it to work on him. But it truly was a genius plan. Not only did you eliminate some strong enemy ninja, you also were able to hold back the Rakage, and you notify the camp of his presence and to prepare for it. Also you exterminating the mad dog of the Mr. Kagaya clan, and that will give us a huge adventure in the war against Mr. though. I know you are hiding something Yami and Yuzuka then the Hokage takes a breath and says, Jan and Yami and Yuzuka, you are awarded 17 S rank missions to your record, also another 15, a rank to your record, due to your good leadership on your part, and another 20 B rank missions, will be added to your record, you will also receive pay for the B rank missions. Yami just nods towards the Hokage. Then the Hokage's eyes look around the room, as if asking for anyone to dare to challenge his decision. Then as a final saying the Hokage says, The accusation against Yami and Yuzuka are all dismissed. They were all the lies of an enemy ninja. All of the clan heads nod. Even the Achiha. They don't dare to challenge the Hokage on his decision. Then after the matter is finished and done all of the clan heads go outside of the room. When they are outside, they go to Yami to make some small talk, and get to know the new hero of Konoha and current Inuzuka clan head. The Hayuga are an antisocial bunch, so they immediately left. But the Achiha also went outside and left soon after the Hayuga the clan head then says to Fugaku. Never again activate the Sharingan in a clan head meeting like that. Makoto looks surprised when her father said this. Fugaku looks at the clan heads back and says, I apologize Yashiro-sama it will never happen again. But the other clan heads didn't notice me. So I didn't see the harm in it. Yashiro looks at Fugaku and says sternly, All of them noticed you, even those who didn't were secretly notified by the others, of what you were doing Fugaku. Let this be the last time you ever do something like this. Fugaku looks at Yashiro, Ichiha clan head, and says seriously, I understand Yashiro-sama. Then Yashiro looks sideways at Fugaku, completely ignoring that Makoto was here and he said, Well what is done, is done and can't be changed. So what did you see was he lying? Then Fugaku makes a strange face and says, Well what is done, is done and can't be changed. So what did you see was he lying? Then Fugaku makes a strange face and says, No he was not I checked his heartbeat, blood flow, body language and everything else. He didn't lie Yashiro then nods and keeps walking forward. I seek on them Fugaku. Mikoto you two will need to also learn how sometimes you need to use diplomacy to solve problems. After all Fugaku you are the most talented Achiha of your age. And the next clan head of the Achiha. It was true Fugaku's talent with Jinjutsu is one of the best the Achiha has ever had, MCPOV, when everyone else dispersed. I invited one of the minor ninja clan heads in Konoha to join me for a walk. After some time I am able to convince the Onokuma clan head. I just smile at the Onokuma clan head and say, Thanks Enki-san the Onokuma clan will always be a friend of the Inuzuka. This is one of the minor clans of Konoha. The Onokuma clan who uses a possession type jutsu with their bear summons. We just made an alliance together in case something like this ever happens to any of us I will have his vote, and he will have my my clan is stronger than his, so I will be the leader in our decisions. The other strong clans like Nara already are in an alliance. The Aburam clan don't need an alliance anyway, since they are one of the four noble ninja clans in Konoha. Then I separate from him and go towards the Inuzuka clan compound. While walking I can't help but think of Fugaku activating the Sharingan. That was a lucky break the Achiha probably will not question me anymore. After all with their pride they will never even question if their eyes are wrong. I had the Sharingan of course. I developed some methods on how to lie to it. I also knew that they won't use any mind reading techniques on an S rank ninja like me. I can easily stop a mind read with few injutsu. But that would definitely mean that I did something wrong. In the end it all went according to plan. When I go inside my house I sense someone trying to hide from me. And they are doing a very bad job at it. He yeah I got you Yami. Soon drops from the ceiling and is trying to drop kick me. Without even looking at her I just dodge her kick and kept walking towards the kitchen. She why 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 don't ignore me you bastard. She then tries to punch me. I just dodge out of the way with speed that she can't even see. The whole way to the kitchen she kept attacking me. But couldn't even hit me at all. I go into the kitchen and start making some teeth Soom is still attacking me. I just dodge her attacks. And she is punching my after images Soom looks angrily at me. And gains an evil light in her eyes. How about this Bakayami? Bam she kicked the teapot while it was heating up all of the tears in the air. And the pot is about to fall down. 
I just calmly look at her grab the teapot almost as it is about to touch the ground. I then use the teapot garb all of the tea in the air. Then I use some weak fire jutsu to continue warming up the tea. I then grab a cup with my chakra string, go to the kitchen table and sit down. I pour some tea for myself and look towards Sum and say to her in a relaxed voice, Do you want some tea then veins appear on her forehead? Wow that is unhealthy for someone her age shut up you bastard. Says Sum while she is trying to punch me again. No wonder the future Kiba had such a terrible temperament. It seems like it was an inherited trait from his mother. I have already read her feelings, even though she tried to hide them from me by acting like this. I just smile at her and say, Don't worry Sum I am okay. It was just an arm. Then her anger melts away. Her eyes start tearing a little. Then she covers her eyes with her wild hair. She then gets close to me and hugs me. Then I see her face Yami I thought you were dead. While looking at her I can't help. But think so being it Sunday really isn't as easy as it seems then I just bet her head and say Suo. You don't want tea. Then she jumps away from the hug and just points her finger at me. Why the hell are you so concentrated on the tea? You ruined a touching moment damn it. I just shrug my shoulders. I sense her ninkin outside of the house running around with Shiro. So where is your ninkin Kuromaru then I widen my eyes for some dramatic effect. Don't tell me you lost him. Or maybe he died a very painful death, while sacrificing himself for you to be able to run away. Soom's body just starts shaking in anger again. Then she screams towards me no he isn't dead. Why are you making up some depressing story all of a sudden? Then I take a sip of hot tea sigh. I get up from the table, get close to the angry Soom and hug her. I am back home Soom. While saying that I can't help but think of another home in another world then Soom tears up again. She hugs me back and says in a quiet voice. Welcome back Yami. I just smile slightly at her I should go visit my mother soon Miss Yoon, Yami's mother POV. While lying here in bed not knowing whether today will be the day that someone comes to the door with the news that my son is dead. My hair is a little disheveled, and I have gotten thinner from the stress. When I was younger I used to consider myself the luckiest woman in the world I was married to a shinobi who made a lot of money, and was very powerful and during the peace times. Death of a Chunin in missions was almost non-existent. Then in a day just like this, the news came of my husband's death I recently heard stories of Yami's achievements. How he ended the war against Sand Village and all that. But he will always be my little baby boy. When he was younger, he was always such a nice kid. He never cried too much, neither was he too naughty. He was just a normal sweet. Kid I remember like it was yesterday when he came and asked me to teach him how to write and read. He was only three back then I was so proud of him. But also a little curious what my little angel was doing with that knowledge of his. I got that answer the next week when during my birthday he gave me flowers and a card with his bad handwriting to the best mother in the world love you from. Yami I can't help as some tears fall from my eyes he is such a sweet kid. I don't want him to die in this war I knew I shouldn't have let him go to the ninja academy. I knew something like this would happen, by guiding him in a career that he is destined to die. It's the same as killing him with my own two hands all alone in this empty house soon who is such a sweet child, comes around but lately, when I asked her about Yami, she seemed a little nervous, and she kept. Stuttering Tsum is an amazing girl, but she is also a terrible liar. Something happened to Yami and she isn't telling me. I am now expecting every day to hear the bad news, Yami POV. I am walking together with Tsum towards my mother's house. Tsum looks at me and says, You know I asked her multiple times to come live with me. But she always said that she likes it in the small house, and that it reminds her of you. I then act a little sad and nod towards Tsum. After I finish this greeting with mother, I need to go and start working on a prosthetic arm. Then with me at 100%, I can confidently ask Danzo about the thing. I still have some blueprints from when I studied Chiyo's puppets. I will look through the research scroll and try to make an arm that will be able to allow me to at least use Tuned's super strength technique with it. When I get closer to my house I can sense my mother's chakra weakening. Shit is that bitch about to die she can't die yet I need her to be alive for dangerous people like Danzo and the others to think that they have an advantage against me. I need them to think that I have a weakness and an attachment to the village. I then start running towards the house leaving Tsum behind, and I hear Tsum loudly tell me, Hey Yami, why are you rushing? But I leave her behind to follow me. As soon as I arrive in the house, I immediately go inside her room and see her there. Disheveled hair, thin body and void eyes holy shit is she depressed or something. I can guess that she is probably depressed about me, but come on can't she be a little more strong-willed. I am not even dead yet. I mean I don't even have my family in this world. And you don't see me bitching about it. I immediately use a diagnosis jutsu on her okay. So she is healthy. But just a little weak then when she sees me her eyes gain life again. And she immediately sits up from her bed and envelops me in a powerful hug. I could feel her tears falling on my shoulder. I just hug her back and smile while telling her. You shouldn't have worried for nothing mother. Your son is powerful and a hero. So there is no need to worry about me. Also I am not going to war anymore. I then use a subtle jinjutsu on her. Before she notices my arm. I don't want her to have a cardiac arrest. Or anything like that. It would be very troublesome to heal her back then Tsum finally arrives while breathing heavily. Then when my mother sees Tsum she just smiles at her. I see so you are back from your C-rank mission soon. Then my mother looks at me and says while smiling. Isn't she cute Yami she was so nice to me while you were gone Yami. She even helped me cook. Then I notice mother secretly making an okay sign towards Tsum who blushes profoundly I just smile slightly while seeing their interactions. Wasn't she very depressed a couple of seconds ago what a drag after some catching up. And me still maintaining my jinjutsu in my mother for her to not notice my missing arm. Then I look towards Tsum while eating some food that mother made. 
I then say to Tsum, so you have become a genin now, huh? She just nods while eating. Then she tilts her head like she remembered something, and she takes something from her ninja pouch, and ties it around her neck. Then she looks at me and while smiling she says, Tada, I just look calmly at her and go back to eating without saying anything, it's really fun to mess with Tsum. When she sees that I didn't say anything to her, she then gets a little nervous and says, Stash, so how does it look? I look away from my food and back at Tsum. It was a smart decision to put it in your neck. I unconsciously touch my neck, where the scar that the rakage left when he almost chopped off my head. Though like all of my scars they are covered under my transformation jutsu that I keep on at all times to cover my ugly scars. Then I noticed Tsum smiling slightly at me and she says, I know right, most people put in their forehead, but that would cover my hair, and that wouldn't look as good. Oh, dodo. Right, I am used to ninja war veterans doing everything to protect their weak points Tsum, probably hasn't even gone in one war mission. If my dates are correct, comma, her graduation should have been just recently. My mother just looks at Tsum, and me talking she keeps smiling in silence, while seeing us act like this. Like this we all keep having some small talk until it becomes night time. Even though I don't want to to keep up my act, I still ask my mother if she wants to come live with me and she says yes so, sigh this will be such a pain then when we arrive at the house. I look at my mother and tell her, you can choose any guest room you want mother. She just smiles and nods then she goes upstairs. Soon goes to do her own things in her room. Most likely fall asleep I should sleep too this has been a very stressful day. But before that I need to reorganize some plans for the prosthetic arm I go into my lab door and put my hand on it and a seal array appears all around the door and the seal burns off allowing me to go inside. I look around and all seems normal. The self-destruct sequence is not broken, and neither is the alarm, and the barrier seal is also not broken, and neither is the notification seal or the second self-destruct sequence. There is some dust around, but everything else seems okay. I guess no one was able to break in, even if they tried they wouldn't really get anything from it except a destroyed room. Then as I summon three clones to clean this up after five minutes everything is clean again. Then suddenly I hear a knock on the door. Can I come in? So it's soon what does she want at this time? Sure come on in. When she comes in I see that she is wearing a green kimono, and she seems to be blushing I see that she is nervous, so she then pulls down her kimono on one shoulder then while stuttering she says, Zess so since you lost an arm I understand that you might die one day, so since you are the most talented in K-Kanoha, I have read some books there and S so let's have a baby together. I just look at her seriously go towards her and grab her by the back of her neck, lift her up soon. Then gets a shocked look in her face I go towards the door, open it with my chakra strings and whoosh. I threw Tsum outside she falls on her butt, and while closing the door I tell her, kids shouldn't stay so late go to sleep Tsum, and I close the door. Tsum then is knocked off of her shocked state she says nothing and just walks away, though I can hear her quietly say to herself, bark at Tsum that was so embarrassing well, how will I talk to him tomorrow, then I just deactivate my spying seal that I have all around the house kids are really weird. In this ninja world I know that Tsum is a kid, her affection for me is definitely not love or anything like that. It is mostly a childhood crush and a huge amount of admiration that she has for me, and I should know this after all admiration is the emotion furthest from understanding or love. I then open the storage scrolls and poof, a lot of different books and scrolls come out of the scroll. Then I search through some of them, and I finally find the one that was a study upon Chiyo's puppets. That I did a long time ago I open the book and start doing some light reading sigh. I really miss the Sharingan I will need to get another one soon. Dash one month later I am currently in my yard lying in a beach chair while drinking some horrible tasting medical juice that I made. I am wearing sunglasses with black shorts and a white loose white t-shirt. The juice helps my body develop faster strength and dexterity. Also it helps my hair roots produce black pigmentation. I don't want other people to know of my weakness yet. I then pick up the juice with my arm. The one who used to be only a stump. Not it looks like a normal arm with the same skin color as the rest of my body. And all that, it's not even a transformation jutsu. Though the arm is a prosthetic that I made by myself with fake plastic skin. To make it look like my skin. Then I look at the genin team in front of me. Who are cleaning the grass as a D-rank. Mission poor bastards they are doing the job all by hand. While their Nara Jown and Sensei is lying down on the porch cloud watching I look at the genin team. Two of them are civilian ninjas so totally unimportant. But the third genin is Tsum ever since that day. I keep teasing Tsum about what she did he <laughs> it's just so fun Tsum POV. I just look at Yami, who is drinking his gross juice. I asked him once what it even was, and he with a serious voice told me it was the source of his strength. Then when I secretly tried it once I immediately threw up and had to stay all night and clean it, so Yami wouldn't notice. And in the morning he just had that knowing smirk in his face. Then there was that time when one morning he just came out for breakfast with a new arm like nothing happened then while well, he is so annoying Tsum what are you doing? Then when I get back to my senses I look at my hands and see that I have pulled the grass together with the root sensei looks at me. He is lying down. Then he just sighs and turns the other way with his back facing me damn it. I didn't know Yami was this annoying. I used to admire and think of him as a hero. But now even I see that he is a dork I mean he is only a little older than me. And he is still amazing. Only recently he bought. 5 dango shops, 1 small clinic, 1 veterinary. 10 new shops that make something called Picker and 5 apartment buildings. Now all of the civilian Inuzuka are employed by the Inuzuka clan. I have even heard Nara-sensei say that he is a genius merchant, and anyone who wants to sell something knows to go to Yami Inuzuka. He will give you the best prices. I don't know where he got the money. 
But apparently it is all legitimate. I mean I know nothing about money. But even I can sense that he did something very fishy. Nara sensei says that if Yami continues like this, the Inuzuka clan's wealth will surpass the Achiha and Senja clans in only 5 years. Also I have only done D-rank missions since I came back. That is also very suspicious. And 99% of those missions are from Yami. Clean his yard, helping Lady Miss Sume with grocery shopping, entertaining Shiro, giving a full body massage to Shiro, washing Shiro, playing catch with Shiro. He spoils his Ninkan Shiro way too much, and the little bastard Shiro as if reading his master's mind. When my Jen and team went to buy him his dog food, he just tires us all around Kanoa trying to find his favorite food, which changes every three days. I look at Yami, and he as if sensing my gaze looks at me. He takes his sunglasses off and with an obviously fake blush on his face pulls his shirt down on his shoulder while badly acting embarrassed this bastard is so annoying Yami POV. After having some more fun with Sume, I wait until night time. I am in my lab during this time I look at my prosthetic arm and say, go get me a drink. Suddenly the arm dispatches from me and a rocket like black flame comes from the place where it used to be connected to my arm. Then the arm goes and gets me a glass of water and comes back. I usually control it remotely. But I wanted to see if it works like this too. I check the seals and everything seems in order. This new arm has rose in my combat ability by at least 50%. I then look at the arm and smile at it. Good work everything seems good isn't that right little leech yes. I have sealed the zero tails inside the arm. With a lot of seal modifications I can use its full ability without any drawbacks. I did also learn the body revival technique. But it was not as good as I thought. Anyone who knows or can see where the chakra points in a human body are will be able to completely cripple and easily defeat a user of the technique kind of like Sasuke did to the guy who used this in Naruto. Though I do use it to train my body by just sitting down then I look at the clock 10pm. Just 2 more hours to go then. When it is immediately midnight. I wear my Anbu pants and a black shirt. And start going towards an old building in the outskirts of Konoha. I go inside and immediately I notice Anbu with blank masks hidden in the shadows. Then I soon arrived in front of a rundown door. I open it and inside is Danzo waiting for me. Then I look at him in the eyes well then. Let's see how you play the game Shimura Danzo looking at Danzo in front of me. I am absolutely calm. I am stronger than I was in the fight against the Raikage, and I could kill Danzo together with the 73 root ninja that he has with him. At max 3 minutes also I have shed off all of the stress that has been accumulating since all 11 years of my life in this world always without a break. Now that I have relaxed and again remembered why I wanted to become immortal in the first place. That was a goal I had in my last life. I now kind of understand myself much more when I become immortal. I know I won't be satisfied with just that. I will want more and more as soon as I get something I will want something else even more precious. That is my expression of human greed and will. Never satisfied with what I have anyway. I sit on the chair in front of Danzo, and I know that he won't appreciate any jokes or dull conversations, so I immediately go to the point and say to him, I want some Hashirama cells. Can you find that for me? Danzo's eye just widens a little, and he says calmly, what would such a thing be useful for to you? He didn't even ask how I know that he is in possession of Hashirama cells. I just calmly calculate all of the risks and say the most appropriate response. It doesn't matter to you what I use them for, I know that as long as it doesn't hurt Kanohu you won't care. He looks at me with his emotionless eye, even though he acts cold like this. I know that deep down Danzo wants to be acknowledged and appreciated for doing his duty to Kanoa. I know that he feels inferior to Hiruzen, and I will use that against him. He just looks at me coldly for a couple of seconds and says, Let's say that you are responsible with them, and you somehow gain my trust. What does Kanoa Village gain from it? Trying to figure me out, aren't you? Then I just act like I'm thinking of something, and like I have finally come to a conclusion. I then calmly said to him, I promise you that in one year Kanoa will have a wood star user Danzo then looks at me a little surprised. After all, there hasn't been a wood-style user since Hashirama Senju. Even his children and grandchildren haven't been any wood users. Then after some quiet thinking, Danzo sighs and says with a deadly calm voice, I will accept your offer, but you will owe me a favor of my saying in the future. Yes, checkmate, even though I am excited in my head. I just calmly look at him calmly. I frown a little and say, I will accept if it's favor which won't go against my morals. He just looks at me for a while, I could see him thinking hard on this. But he doesn't know that I have already won this game old man. Now I'm just acting to not make him suspicious or anything like that. Also I'm definitely not going to keep any promise or do any favors if they don't suit my needs. I mean he could ruin my reputation by saying that I don't keep my word. But then he would expose himself. So that is a definite no-no actually. After giving me the Hashirama cells. He just kind of became useless to me. Should I kill him? Nah. He still has one final use. Before I take everything from him, also managing Root isn't something I am planning for at the moment. Danzo after some time just stood his ground and said harshly, It's either this or no deal. As soon as he said that his mood and posture kind of changed like he is getting ready for me to attack him. Danzo doesn't respect people who are weak like Hiruzen. I guess he thinks that I'm kind of like Hiruzen. He might not even keep his deals. If he thinks like that well that just won't do now. I just look at him and for the first time during this meeting I just smile. No need to be so on guard Danzo-san I am after all only an 11 year old kid right after that. I release a little bit of killing intent towards Danzo as soon as I do so. Fwash Tan Root Ninja, they are around Haichun in level, they appear all around me stabbing towards my vital areas with their tantos, as soon as they seem about to stab me clank, they meet an invisible barrier blocking all their tantos. Fuinjutsu deals a lot with barrier jutsus I know quite a bit of them, 
I just look at them and point my prosthetic arm at them. Then I just point my finger towards one of the root ninja and suddenly it falls down. Then all of the 10 root ninja actually fall down and die with no injuries to their bodies. Danzo sees them and doesn't say anything. I know he is panicking, but he doesn't express it. Well, barriers aren't made just to stop physical attacks. This is my modified barrier that stops a certain type of poison stored in my prosthetic arm from going over a certain radius and killing everyone around me. Then I just look at Danzo amusingly and say okay I accept the deal and I will still owe you a favor. This action of mine is my warning to him I am not Hiruzen. As soon as he steps out of line or does something I will kill him. He won't know when or how but he will die if he takes any action against me. Then I stop all of the poison and suck it back into my prosthetic arm with the help of another seal then I get up and start walking away while calmly telling him. I will expect one of your root ninja to deliver the package. And then I walk outside. When I am outside of the worn down building, I can't help but think to myself damn the ability of the Zero Tails to sense negative emotions is really useful. After that whole conversation with Danzo I go back home again Sum and Mother are both asleep. I then go into my lab room. There are several unimportant experiments and notes around. Then I go into one part of the wall and run my chakra through it. A hole opens up below me and I jump inside it. When I arrive at the bottom hundreds of Fuinjutsu seals restrain me then as soon as I go there. I pass through the hundreds of identification seals and dozens of self-destruct seals. When I enter there, I see the results of hundreds of millions Ryo that I put in it. The room has seals all around the wall, making the walls seem like they are painted black, making it impossible for anyone to even enter in here. I am confident that even if Madara Echeha wanted to enter here, he wouldn't be able to do so. Well, he might be able to brute force his way inside somehow, but as soon as he does so the lab will self-destruct and will take everything inside it to smithereens. Even future Obito with his ability won't be able to enter in here. Anyone who is in here except me it will self-destruct. The lab floor is about 300 square meters. There is also another lab one floor down from here, and there are are mostly the research material that I have on the Zero Tales and so-called demons, naturally created from people's chakra and negative emotions. On this floor there are dozens of humans inside capsules filled with green liquids. Inside of them are members of the Kagaya clan. The liquid doesn't allow their dead bodies to decompose. There are also dozen of big, ancient-looking computers around. Then I turn on the lights, and then the room is completely lit up. Then in the middle of the room are three tables with three people from the Kagaya clan in them. They are dead, but I have healed their injuries completely and activated their brains they should be alive, but they are not. They are missing a key component in their makeup they can breathe, and their heart also beats, but they are missing their soul. They have no conscience and can't learn. They can't produce chakra or anything like that. They are completely active and their bodies are alive with the machines attached to them, but they are not truly alive. So by studying this is where my theory on my own rebirth came from. That if it was my normal soul from my world, I wouldn't have been able to use chakra or even activate a body from this world, since it is so takes chakra. I might have even been paralyzed at birth if I had the same soul from my last world and a body from this world. A consciousness but unable to move. So that means that when my soul came here it devoured the soul of the original Yami and gained his life M-E-M-O-R-I-E-S as a fetus they were non-existent. And I even took his chakra. Since my soul was more mature, it is logical that I ate his soul. But how did my soul move from my world to this world death? No that's not it by some energy no. That's not it either there are only two current possibilities that I know of how I came here in death by some complete accident. That generated enough energy to create a crack in the multiverse death system. The only thing I know about it is that it exists or I was brought here or more. Specifically someone brought me here I will assume the worst case scenario. Which is the second option then I instinctively start biting my nails that means that. Okay I need to calm down since this is out of my power. I will just keep getting stronger until I can start getting answers. It's useless to worry about something out of my power. If it was some god or anything else I won't think about it anymore. Everything that exists has a logical explanation to it. So I will just experiment until I discover it. Anyway now I have learned all that there is to know about the Keke Genkai of the Kagaya clan the Shikotsumyaku. Users of Shikotsumyaku possess three unique skills. The ability to control their osteoblasts, cells responsible for producing bones. The ability to control their osteoclasts, cells responsible for breaking down bones. The ability to regulate their bones calcium density. So long as their body does not tire out, users can take advantage of these abilities without limit. Quite a good ability. Then after I check that all the bodies are stable and I go downstairs. This is a totally different room there are different flesh parts from the body of the Zero Tails. They sealed in tubes with green liquid. I have studied that every part that I cut off it creates some type of mini Zero Tails. But they die soon after they are cut off and turn into chakra. I keep them always fed with chakra on tubes, so that they can even stay alive a little longer. I have created some techniques that incorporate Fuinjutsu and Dark Chakra they are surprisingly very compatible together. I can't wait to use them against a real opponent. Then I look at the middle of the room where a giant cube made out of glass filled with green liquid on the inside. There is also an animal in it as big as a lion attached with a breathing mask and tubes attached to it. The creature has duck fur dam. I really should have chosen a better name for him three months later. I am currently eating breakfast with my mother and Sume who just looks at me and in a bored manner while she says. So when is Shiro going to finish his secret training? I don't look at her and just look at the eggs that I'm eating. Shiro should be done soon Shiro before the experiment was at Chunin level. For him to go beyond that he would have to wait for another 5 to 10 years. And at max, he would only be able to go up to low level Jounin. That might seem good, but to me that is pretty much useless. 
I thought that he might die during the procedure to nourish him with the flesh and dark chakra of the Zero Tails. I have already put numerous Fuenjutsu all over Shiro's body. From anti-corruption seal to the clear mind, anti-possession seal and all that. I even put a seal in him so that I could summon Shiro whenever I might need him. Kind of like a summoning animal, but not really. Then I firmly replied to Soom. Soon he should be done then I get up from my seat and thank my mother for the food. Then I go to the bathroom while I am washing my hands Soom comes in after finishing her breakfast. When she looks at me she just smiles a little yeah. She has gotten over the phase of me teasing her. She knows what I am doing is just for fun. So she doesn't want to give me the pleasure. But I also know her weak point. I just smirk at Soom a little and say. So anyway how are your missions going? Her team hasn't been in a C-rank mission ever since I came back. Obviously I am manipulating the system a little. It isn't all fun and games as it seems actually, and I am doing this for a reason. Since my link to the village which is currently my mother, she is my weakness that keeps people from thinking of me as a greedy monster with selfish aspirations. I have seen that my mother is a person with a weak wall that might just die from the stress of me being in danger. I need to train Soom as my next weakness. I mean Danzo hasn't done anything to me even when I threaten him. Because he thinks that he knows my weaknesses he thinks that he is in control. While they are all dancing in the palm of my hand, the ninja are looking underneath the underneath but I just keep building more and more layers. Then Soom just looks at me a little angrily, and she just fumed off and goes away without even washing her hands. I just smile a little and say how unruly she is, and how dumb she doesn't understand, that she is being manipulated all along. Although this teasing seems like it is 90% for fun which is true. It is mostly for fun then there is also the other 10% which is for Tsum when she grows up and understands that I teased her, because I had a crush on her, and didn't know how to express my feelings. Also she isn't pretty enough for me to try so hard to get her she is like a 5 tenths, and if she really tries hard, she might be like a 6 tenths. I then take a shower to get ready for a very important procedure today. Then I again go into my underground laboratory in the new third floor. I put 100 mil Ryo in it. This floor is meant for a Chiha and Hashirama cells experiments. I had almost 1 billion Ryo from the stealing during the war. But with all of the expenses I only have about 230 million Ryo left. It isn't bad, but it also isn't good either. My clan treasury, me, has an income of 8.5 million Ryo a month with all of the clan taxes, restaurants, one clinic, and the six apartment buildings that I own. After the first big buyout for me there are no longer enough people that want to sell things in Kanoha. Though my clan treasury income is up there with the best of the clans in Kanoha but my clan members still aren't as rich as the others like the Achiha clan members since their clan mostly has ninja which is a good paying job and there are a lot of Jounin in the Achiha clan when I enter the third floor there are six capsules with dead Achihas in them of course I took their eyes and even transplanted a pair of them to myself how did I even get a Sharingan while I had my clones go out of Kanoha from the Soa system which is the only place where there is a weakness in the barrier and someone can go out undetected it took me a long time to find that weakness and a lot of ninjas die in the war, even at Chihis, and some bodies not being found is a normal thing in this Celtic war. Also in the middle of the room there is a smaller capsule filled with green liquid, and there is an arm in that. The arm has thin wires and tubes attached to it, getting and pumping red blood into it so in about 20 minutes all of the preparations should be completed. I then go to the second floor of the laboratory. There are no stairs so I just chakra walk. There it is my little puppy Shiro. He has full dark fur as black as darkness. His eyes have now become red. Then I press a button at the side of the giant glass cube filled with green liquid. The liquid is all drained from it, and Shiro Shiro who is now the size of a horse. I sense his chakra levels, and I am quite pleased with his progress. He has the chakra levels of an elite Jown and nice. But let's see if I need to kill Shiro or not I look Shiro in the eyes. I couldn't sense any malicious intent from it. But since he was recreated from the Zero Tails flesh and Chakra might be able to somehow cheat the Chakra sensing. Then I just look at him, extend my hand toward Shiro, and say to him calmly paw. Wind Shiro just winds a little, and puts his now giant paw into my hand. I immediately ran a full diagnostic jutsu on him. He is perfectly normal the Zero Tails Chakra only changed him physically, so no special Chakra stealing ability. And all that it just simply gave Shiro a stronger body, and some more Chakra. Then I tell Shiro to use the Inuzuka Man Beast transformation to transform into a small dog. He does so and after I order him to go outside of my lab. He listens to me as soon as he is out. I let out a sigh of relief. After all the seals that were around the room were about to obliterate Shiro, as soon as he gained consciousness damn. I really put too many seals in here. I had to remote control thousands of them to not kill Shiro. Then I go back into the third floor again I activate my new Sharingan and see that the arm is stabilized. Then I take out my prosthetic arm and link it to my shoulder blade to be able to be summoned whenever I want, so I now have like three arms. Once I finish the transplant, though the third prosthetic arm will be in a seal most of the time, but I will still be able to use the abilities of the Zero Tails. And I know how useful the abilities of the Zero Tails are from Chakra stealing to me, being able to sense up to 3000 meters clearly, and even being able to sense negative emotions. I need to keep it on just in case at least until I figure out how to be able to use those techniques by myself. Then I lie on a table and do a hand sign. Poof a clone appears next to me he nods at me and goes towards the class capsule. He dries the green liquid in it, and then he opens it. He then takes the arm which has a pale color, and he looks at me. He then activates his Sharingan, and my clone says to me, let's see if this procedure will be a success. I just nod and activate my own Sharingan. While looking at the pale arm that my clone is holding, I can't help but think every person in this world is born with a certain amount of talent the world truly is unfair. But it doesn't end there. 
because the world is even crueler when we are born, we also have a limit both physically and chakra-wise. My studies showed that when I studied myself, that my natural physical limits were. Physically at max I would be in mid-elite jounin and chakra-wise, when I tried to do the test, it would be at max high elite jounin rank chakra amount. Though with techniques this could be negated but for me who chases after something perfect, I wouldn't have my body be so flawed, so this transplant will truly help me extend both of my limits. Naruto truly was born great with a mother, who even amongst the Yuzumaki clan, she had a huge amount of chakra. His father is the Hokage. Naruto is also the child of prophecy. Also let's not forget that he has the strongest tail beast inside of him. He is also this world's Jesus reborn. Oh yeah, he also got trained by legendary ninja Naruto Yuzumaki's story isn't of how an underdog won it was how a very lucky and special person born with extreme advantages curb stomped everyone else. How will I even compete with someone with all of those advantages? I wasn't necessarily even reborn lucky, or into a good clan. I am not necessarily talented or anything like that even in my first life I wasn't some genius, and I always had to try hard and use underhanded means to get where I was trying to go in life, and the world simply expected me to bow my head be nice, and hope Naruto comes to save me no fucking way. That is happening if someone is going to save me it will only be myself I will slaughter even the gods who try to control me. I will show them my human greed, then I just look at the clone who then puts the arm made out of Hashirama cells 8 to my stump, and he ties me up tightly to the table. Then my clone uses the chakra scalpel jutsu to slowly and delicately cut off a part of the stump, to reopen the wound and unclog the blood vessels. I shake a little from the pain I didn't use any painkillers or anything like that, since it might raise my chances of not noticing something like a rejection by the Hashirama cells. Then he closes the arm made from Hashirama cells. The arm was specifically made for me as soon as the arm and my stump touched. I felt a slight burn at the connection point. Then suddenly I felt like something was crawling up my arm. I am ready now for my body to reject the cells and start fighting for dominance. My clone also started connecting the veins and arteries together with chakra strings. And with his Sharingan active, he was able to see them all perfectly. He even passed some healing chakra through the strings. Wait, when is the rejection happening after all transplants like this? Always have a rejection rate, it's true that I made the arm perfectly for me. From the configuration of veins to fingernails, everything was made to fit me, and have no rejection dash one hour. Letary waited one hour after the transplant, just to be sure. Then I just ordered my clone to untie me, he does so. And as soon as I get up, I flex my new arm, everything seems normal. I start doing hand signs everything seems normal. My speed of doing them is about as good as when I had both hands. I check my body with the shering and everything is normal my chakra is stabilized. My chakra control is perfect like always then I go outside of my lab and into the house. I immediately go towards the Inuzuka training grounds. There were some Inuzuka genins training in it. But I just told them to go and train in one of the public training grounds since I will be testing some ninjutsu. Then they went away. After that I check if anyone is spying on me, and I also check if the Hokage is looking at me through his spine ball. When I confirm that no one is spying at me I use a normal earth wall appears in front of me, nothing special about it then I try suddenly. Floosh a huge amount of water spews from my mouth, making half of the training ground, a mud swamp amazing making a C rank jutsu have the power of a B plus. This is good immediately, I pull out a storage seal, and summon a chakra paper. I suppress my wind chakra a little, and I run chakra through it. Then the paper is cut in four pieces. I look at the paper. Half of it is damp while the other half is normal, except a little part of it has crumbled to earth amazing. So I now have a natural water element. It's like I was born with two elements this is amazing. Then I do a couple of hand signs and some muddy water raises from the ground. I was hopeful for me to get wood style. But it seems like it wasn't effective then I look at my new arm, and decide to punch the ground boom. A giant crater is created. I look at my hand everything is normal. Then I run some chakta to my right shoulder blade poof, another arm appears. It's my prosthetic arm with the zero tails in it. I control the arm to open its palm. Then the hand starts. Morphing and slowly forming a cannon head let's see how good it is now the cannon head rotates with duck chakra forming in the middle of it, and taking the form of a dark laser. Then after 3 seconds view, the laser flies off and hits a tree. Boom it ran through a couple of them, and caused an explosion just like before, when it was my arm it has around the same power as a C rank jutsu. The longer I charge it the stronger it becomes. Also if I grab someone with that arm I can suck out his chakra, and it will store it into my strength of a hundred seal everything seems in place. I now have a Sharingan, Hashirama cells, and the zero tails I am at the peak of my power again currently, except getting a new better Manjekia Sharingan, which I am currently working on there is no way for me to get more powerful, I will just need to wait for my body to grow up, I am still only 11 years old after this war is over, I will attempt to reverse summon myself, and learn some jutsu, it seems like the only thing that I need to grow is time which I do have quite a bit I guess, with the help of the Sharingan, I should learn some jutsu I, should also use clones on it then I look around at the wreckage all around this will have to be cleaned, then I smile slightly I guess Zoom is getting a C rank, cleaning mission dash 2 months later dash, MCH 12, dash Zoom POV, after Yumi's birthday, which was yesterday 3 days ago I asked him to spar with me. I know that he always says that a ninja must be prepared, so I have boba tripped this whole training ground. Also I have started getting C rank missions since 2 months ago, 
And I am definitely not happy about it. I tease just cleaning Yami's messy practices ninjutsu. And my team has to clean and fix the hole in Yazuka training ground. Dash two hours later. Dash where the hell is that bastard? I tease been two hours since it was the meeting time. Then suddenly I catch Yami's smell. I look towards the direction of where it is coming from. And there he is walking casually with a dango stick in his hands and a bored look on his face. Then he looks at me. He just sighs. Then he waves and then he says in a bored tone, Hey, sorry, I'm late. I just didn't want to come. Okay, control yourself. Tune breath in. Then why did you accept the spa? I just couldn't control myself and screamed at him. Then Yami looks at me and cups his chin and makes a thinking position. Ah, I was drunk during my birthday. I just narrow my eyes at him. You never drink. Then he takes another thinking pose. Hum. Then Yami points a finger at the sky like he had an idea. Then he smirks and says, I did this to test your willpower. Then I can't help but scream at him again. Just admit IT that you forgot instead of making lame excuses. Then Yami eats the last part of Dango in his hands. Then he throws it in the ground. I know that he will hire my team to clean his mess again. He always throws trash in here, like there is no worry in it. He sure is an annoying bastard. Then Yami shrugs his shoulders and says in a tired voice sigh. Okay, here it is the truth. In the morning I totally forgot about our meeting until I saw you at breakfast. Then I really didn't want to do it. So I went around Kanoa's shops to buy some dango. Then, since I was already late by then I thought that you wouldn't wait for me. So I went to this new Raymond place. This bastard sure is annoying, and he totally didn't want to spar with me. He could have just said so in the morning, instead of making me wait here. But then Yami still goes on. Then after that, I went to a tea ceremony house. I always wanted to try one of those. Then after that I went and climbed the Hokage Mountain and enjoyed the scene from there. And then I had an amazing inspiration for a new business idea I was going to call it a maid cafe. Then I narrow my eyes at Yami. And I can't help but think how long is this story. But I was scared that I might forget the idea. So then I went back home and wrote down the idea. Then while I was coming here I was kind of hungry. So I went and got some more dango. Then I thought surely you must have been gone by now. So I came here to enjoy the quiet atmosphere. But then you know this bastard. My body is shaking from anger at him this bastard. My body is shaking from anger at him. Then I immediately run towards Yami. He just yawns a little. And while he is yawning. Four legged technique my nails sharpen and my hair stands on point. I then get close to him and am about to kick him in the head. Then he just brings the back of his fist to stop the strike. When I see that I put even more power into my kick. Yami creates a chakra sphere on the back of his fist. And and when my leg connects with it. Boom I am thrown back and hit a tree. I try to move but my body is frozen. Then after two seconds I am able to move I look at Yam Andy. He is looking at an anthill and touching it with a stick. He even annoys the ants. Also it seems like he isn't even paying attention to me well then. How about this? I signal my Ninkan Kuromaru who is hiding in a tree fang over fang. Both me and Kuromaru start rotating to use the technique and we at the same time attack Yami Fush as we get closer at our attack hitting Yami. I see that he is still messing with that anthill this bastard we will see. How much not taking me? Seriously will cost you then as we are an arm's length away from Yami. He just does a hand sign. Bang I hit something invisible with my head oh 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 oh. I clutch my head while rolling on the ground. What the hell even was that some invisible barrier or something after the pain subsided a little. I get up, jump back towards a tree. And I look at my Ninkan to see if he is ready to what the hell Koromaru is on his back while Yami was rubbing his belly. Then Yami says in a ridiculous voice, who's a good doggy. Then I take out three kunai and am about to throw them at Yami. But I stop myself. I change my target and throw my kunai towards another tree. I hit a rope and cut it which drops a rock on a seal. And it activates the trap I have been working on for three days. Then I hide behind a tree. Thousands of kunai come from all of the trees. And go towards Yami's general direction. Then I do some hand seals and poof. I summon Kuromaru to me. This is something that Yami gave to the Inuzuka clan. We are now all able to summon our Ninkin to us. This is an attack that I prepared for three days. I will make Yami acknowledge me. I will let him know that I am not a little kid. I had a storage scroll maker come here and paint storage scrolls all over the trees. And plus buying the kunais. This cost me a lot, plus the projectile for a seal this cost me almost all of my savings. Then the kunai go towards him and hit him how is that possible I didn't want to kill Yami only impress him no 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 then. Poof where Yami should be there is a log. Then suddenly I hear someone whisper into my ear. The kunai were thrown very slowly. I turn around and try to backhand Yami. Flush then he disappears from there and appears on the ground again. He is treating this as a game. I jump down from the tree and land in front of Yami. I frown and in a serious voice I say to him. Take this seriously and no fooling around Yami is still just smirking towards me. Not even heading my words. Then I just continue and tell him. Do not hold back. Then Yami just sighs and says. Sigh. Are you sure you want that I just narrow my eyes at him ye dash? Before I can even finish what I am about to say Yami disappeared from my line of vision. Fwash then I hear Yami say from behind. A ninja should also know when he is outclassed and run away I turn around. And the only thing I see is a giant fist coming towards my face. I can feel the wind pressure almost suffocating me. I close my eyes. I could feel the scythe of the reaper across my neck. I id don't ww want he to die. Fwu then I feel as the wind pressure is about to hit me. It goes around me and boom. I feel a giant explosion I open my eyes and I see a fist in front of my face. It had stopped about 3 centimeters in front of my face. 
Yami then lowers his fist, and I see him turn around and start walking away. I am going to try some sushi. I will be home a little late today so don't worry about it. I can't help but think back on what my father always said, that only the strongest survive, while the weak die I am prepared to do almost anything in order to become stronger. Then I look behind me. But I can't picture myself even approaching Yami's power. I think that as I see half of the forest behind me destroy third POV. Then as Yami is walking away as soon as he is out of Toon's sight. Poof, he dispelled himself. It wasn't Yami it was just a shadow clone all along Yami wasn't even here. Yami POV I am currently in an Akamichi restaurant eating some very delicious beef. This is good I look at a certain woman who is sitting alone on a table far away from mine. She is drinking and crying at the same time. Then I look at the person in front of me. He is an average looking man with black hair and black eyes. He also just tune and who just keeps rumbling on. Then when I get the memories of my clone, I just blink a little and analyze all of the information. Well, that was a waste of time even for my shadow clone. But I guess it did raise Soom's opinion of me. Then after the Chunin finishes his rambling and he finally gets to the point. If I didn't have a deal with him, I would have gotten out of here a long time. A go then the Chunin makes a serious face and says, So about the price. This Chunin is nothing special. He is just a teacher at the Ninja Academy. Pretty much trash cannon fodder. But he is a guy I bribed to talk to children about my heroic deeds and such. I look at the Chunin straight in the eyes and tell him, What about the price? Then the Chunin looks a little nervous and says, I think that you know the job I do is very beneficial for you so I think that it should be more expensive. I just look at him coldly him, how to handle this with the best benefits for myself. Then I just squint my eyes threateningly at him and say, let's negotiate then. I currently pay you 100,000 ryo a month. That is about as much as a good paying B rank mission give me a suggestion. His face then lights up a little, and he has to try hard to keep his smile from showing. Okay, so I was thinking 120,000 maybe. I just look at him what a shitty negotiator, and weak will too, but that is the main reason why I chose him too scared to betray me, and too afraid to risk anything, and likes for other people to think of him in a positive light perfect as a useful tool and a scapegoat. Then I interlock my fingers and release a minor jinjutsu to make him more nervous, and make me seem more intimidating. Then I say to him in a normal voice, 90,000 the tuning just looks at me confused and says, are we what? Then I just look at his eyes and coldly say to him, you go up I go down, 80,000, then he starts panicking, okay okay I'm sorry for bringing it up, I continue to look at him coldly, you will get paid 80,000 Ryo this month. I never want to hear about this again, or I am going to find someone else. I immediately get up without even giving him a chance to answer. I go towards the drinking woman. She has tears in her eyes as she takes another shot of sake. I then sit in front of her. She doesn't even bother to look up. Her hair is disheveled and she smells of sweet sake. She is my teacher Tsunaid. I look at her outfit. It isn't her Jounin outfit. It's her casual green kimono when she looks at my eyes. I can see my reflection in the ma yes a teacher flashback. And see, age 12. Two months after his father's death. 6.40 am. Like always I get up from my bed early. Go into the bathroom and look at my face in the mirror brown eyes, with a hidden sadness in them, and black hair slightly above average in looks. When I see that sad look into my face I just smile at myself in the mirror. I need to be happy. Mother already has enough problems now. I know that she is worried about her poverty. My brother is only 3 years old. And she has to go to work she doesn't need to see me sad. When I look at my smile showing too much teeth I smile in the mirror again this one looks fake. Then I smile again in the mirror 10 minutes later. I come out of the bathroom with a natural happy smile on my face. Then I go towards my school bag and grab it. Then I go into the kitchen and I see my mother who is already in the kitchen cooking food. When she looks at me I smile at her, and she gives me a weak smile back then when I arrive at school. I greet everyone and they greet me back. I look at Linda and I wave at her, then she waves back. I go towards her. Before my father's death I used to joke around and ask her out we are friends. She always used to tell me that she will accept to go on a date with me. When I really mean my confession. She is so pretty intelligent and she has a nice personality. Then when I get close and look at her blue eyes while I say to her with a smile on my face. How is my princess today? Since my father's death I haven't asked her out anymore. It would just feel awkward to ask her out, since I know that she would pity me and accept. I don't want a useless thing like that. I want it to be real. She just smiles slightly and twirls her blonde hair. If you keep saying things like that I might just fall for you. Then I smirk and say to her, if you fall I will catch you. She just smiles slightly and says, cringe. When she says that we both laugh at it, Ash after Shul as Linda is picking up her stuff she just waved at me and said while smirking. So it seems like the perfect student isn't so perfect anymore is it? I just smile at her and say, I am a bad boy. I will be whatever you like. She smiles a little and soon her smile drops. Then she comes close to me and grabs my hands, looks into my eyes and says, I know it's been hard on you and your family you know that if you need anything you have me here. I just smile at her she truly is kind be good and good things will happen to you. My mother says I am sure that good things will follow Linda. Then after Lisa goes away and school is finished milliseconds, Johnson opened the door and came into the classroom. She is wearing jeans and a plain white shirt. She has curly black hair and brown eyes. Then when she sees me sitting on my desk, she leaves her bag on the teacher's table. Then she comes close to me and sits on the chair next to mine. Then she turns around and looks at me in the eyes. You are always a straight A student Andy you mustn't let yourself go like this life goes on. I am sure that your father was a good man. He didn't get killed by anyone and didn't leave any grudge behind for your family. He is in a better place now. I start to tear up a little. And she just hugs me comfortably and says to me, 
Every day after school I will stay behind and help you catch up to the others. Then she grabs my face and makes me look into her eyes. Then she smiles and says, You are smart, so I am sure that you will surpass them in no time. Change POV army. I just look at Sunaid's eyes and I can see myself in them. When I think back on those times, always looking at the best in people. How naive understood that later when my teacher seduced me. I always thought that she loved me how idiotic I was, never in control of anything, always afraid of everything. Then, when she got run over by a car right in front of my eyes, the world is a number of infinite possibilities. That must try to control I will be in control now. Also I remember Linda flashback MCH 15. I just look at Linda in front of me her blonde hair swaying in the wind. I look at her blue eyes, and see myself in them I have changed so much the world is a cruel place death is inevitable. I can't change that, so I want to know how the world works my eyes have gotten a little colder. My face now most of the time has a fake smile on my good uncle who tried to help me die from a rat bite. That he thought, that it was just nothing. But the rat had a deadly disease in its teeth humans are truly fragile. Being's life is way too short so I must have no regrets then Linda looks at me, and she says in a cold voice. I see that you don't have those whores who always surround you. I just give her a weak smile while trying to act sorry. Hey Linda, how have you been? Haven't seen you in a long time. So how about we go and grab some coffee together and catch up? Then her face goes from indifferent to angry. Then she says in a soft voice, Andy, let me ask you a question. I just raise an eyebrow. Then she continues, Who are you right now? My eyes just widen slightly. But she just continues saying, The Andy I knew was smart, caring and someone trustworthy. Then there is the other you. The one who has his little whores all around him. And every word that comes out of his mouth is a lie. Fake promises, manipulation, I don't know you anymore. This is getting serious. Then I try to defuse the situation by smiling at her and say with a joking voice while smiling. I will be whatever you want princess. Then I see that her eyes have started tearing up. I notice that it is not out of happiness it's out of sadness. Then while crying she says. I can't even hate you no matter what you do I just pity you. This bitch even with all that anger inside me my eyes just narrow a little. Then my face becomes indifferent while I turn around and say to her. I would say that it has been a pleasure Linda. But it hasn't then I start walking away then Linda says. Wait I said wait Andy I want to help you. My eyes go cold for a second then I turn around and tell her. Who are you Linda you don't need to answer that. I already know you better than you do yourself. You are a little girl who has abandonment issues also a girl who no one wants even your parents abandon you. Then I give her a fake sincere smile. So please shut the fuck up trash. Yami POV Tsuned banging a sake cup on the table wakes me up from my thoughts. She just looks at me with a strange look and then a light of recognition flashes in her eyes. Then she says in a drunkenly voice. Yami long time no see when she says that I notice that it is almost an automatic response. She isn't even that concentrated on me. There is only one way to describe Tsuned right now weak before she only used to drink on joyous occasions. Now she has become an alcoholic. This is why I never drink alcohol. It doesn't let you be in control of your own body. To me that is scarier than any deadly poison. Then I call a waiter over and order some food and a glass of juice. I look at Tsuned who is still drinking out of her sick sake bottle. While eating I ask Tsuned, what happened? Even though I know what happened I still needed to hear her say it. She just looks at me with hollow eyes and she says, Dan Dan Kato died. I just raise an eyebrow towards her to express my confusion. Then I say in a bewildered voice, so what all people die eventually, except me that is, she just frowns a little and says in a slightly annoyed voice, Sai, you are truly inconsiderate sometimes yummy. Then she leans her head down on her hand which is on the table. Her hair also falls down a little. She still has a sake bottle in one of her hands when I look at the bottle. I can't help but think about my teacher in my last world control. Then I secretly summon something from my wristband summon scroll. Then I pick the thing and drop it into the drunk Tsunade sake bottle. This time, I will be in control morning. Tsunade POV waking up in the morning. I sit up and pull my arms up for a stretch when I notice that I don't have my nightgown on. Then like a damn that was broken memories of what happened last night, come flying back oh no oh no what have I done? I look towards the other side of the bed and see Yami a 12 year old boy naked what have I done I asked him for this last night. I shouldn't have done that then as I get up, I wince a little at the pain on my hips damn it. We did it all night long me. The last hair of the Senja clan, have seduced my 12 year old student even while thinking all of this a darker part of me enjoyed it. The forbidden fruit of having sex with my student of mine damn IT. I instinctively punch the wall next to me, but I control myself. I don't want to destroy half of the building I just look at Yami's back, and I can't help but think it seems like I truly do need to go on the vacation. I started putting on all of my casual clothes from last night, and with a D-rank Jetsu, I got rid of the smell of the alcohol all over me. At least a console to myself is that Yami probably wasn't a virgin, and I didn't take his first time. He showed an experience on the act, so I am sure that I am not his first time at least. I didn't take something special from him. Then I think back on all of the girls that he knows whilst at that Tsum girl. Or was it some other woman who took his first time sigh? I better stop thinking about stuff like this. When I finish putting on all of my clothes I use a transformation jutsu to make myself appear as an average looking woman, and then I go outside. It seems like I will have to notify Shizun that we will be setting off today. Yami POV. As soon as I sense Tsunade leave, I let my breathing and heartbeat go back to normal Tsunade, also has a slightly different memory of how we hooked up. She was the instigator from her perspective. Then I get up from the bed, and think about all of the effort that I put into trying to make her romantically attached to me. That obviously didn't work out I wanted to try at least once. 
how good Trine was. From now on I am sure that there will be no romantic feelings between each other. I am not a man patient enough to chase after only one woman. Love that to me is a very complex feeling. I know what love is, and I have experienced it before I still love my mother and little brother from my first world. After all family is everything also to me romantic love doesn't exist love is a pure emotion, but romantic love. It is just a fleeting emotion, usually just mutual lust disguises affection in that way I did, and still do love Tsunade. But not really real love is something pure. If I truly loved Tsunade, I wouldn't care if she is pretty, or even if her face is carved, and her skin is all peeled, even if she had a grotesque terrifying appearance, if I can look her in the eyes, and still not even flinch and my love for her be unwavering by neither time or distance, then I can truly say that I love her. The only thing that I love about Tsunade is her physical appearance. So in a simple manner, I lust after Tsunade after I finish putting on all of my clothes. I get up and touch the wall. The silencing seals start receding back into my hand, and they cancel as I go outside of the room. I think about the future Tsunade will definitely move away. Especially after what she and I did she will start her drunken habits like canon again will see if she comes back during the third ninja war. As I go outside of the hotel I look at the sun shining bright on the buildings of Kenora I can't. Help but smile a little. Finally I can start making some moves time skip. One year and six months later I am currently playing Shogi against Tsum's Jiao and Sensei. And I just lost again well he is a Nara after all. I win Yami-san. I just smile and nod the Nara truly are intelligent. Playing this game against him will keep me sharp and never let me underestimate my enemies. Then as we are about to start playing another game, I sense the Ambu as soon as he enters my clan compound. As soon as he is on a tree he jumps down from it. And I see that it was actually a male Ambu with a weasel mask, then he bows down in front of me and says, Yami-sama, I am here to notify you that the second ninja war is over. MCH 13 second ninja war is over I currently have sunglasses on, and am trying to get some tan on my skin, by lying on the beach chair on my porch. I am drinking some horrible tasting juice that is healthy. I kind of like the grassy taste now, and it also helps my body growth, and I still have the whole shit with my lifespan still to fix. My hair has now started producing black pigment again, so now my limited lifespan won't show physically. But I know that even if I don't use Creation Rebirth anymore in about 10 to 15 years, I will start to show symptoms of weakness of muscles, slower natural regeneration, and such problems that are most common in old people. Though the Hashirama cells have pushed this limit to about 30 to 40 years later, because of the crazy vitality on its cells. Then a clone comes from the inside of my house with a paper in his hand, and he gives it to me. Since there is no form of entertainment that I like in this world, I have made a new form of entertainment for myself. Then I look at the paper that he gave me. In Yuzuka clan money, 230 mil income, lust 60 mil slash month imamas, bullet 65 ninja, hero elite jan and 15 jan and 2 special jan and 9 chunin, 39 gen and bullet 98 civilians, 62 academy students I just smile at it. In Yuzuka clan, my Income is probably the highest of all the clans in Kanoha. I could have already made the Inuzuka clan the richest clan in Kanoha by stacking my money. Since this is how riches are counted during this time, since there are no stocks or such things, I never try to leave more than 100 mil ryo in the treasury. Since that means that the money is just sitting there and not doing anything with it is the same as not having it. That is one of the things modern times taught me I already have businesses all over the land of fire. My business plan was for example, pay some folks to destroy a shop and steal everything in it. Oh no what is old Peter going to do now? Well of course I will pay for his shop to be repaired, and make him sign an overly complicated contract that he won't understand without a lawyer which are not yet a thing on here. Also I have been adopting a lot of orphans who I deem decently talented into the Inuzuka clan. When they get older they will all marry within the clan, and my clan will finally have enough Jan and Ninja. Then there will be no need for me to keep pulling the clan up by the nose. So that is pretty much my business plan. And since there are really no laws against this type of thing in here, I just take over businesses while the fat nobles stay in their castles doing nothing in there. Then after some decades they either become my puppet government or they get obliterated. Then after some time relaxing I sense an Ambu land in front of me. I signal him that it is all clear and he takes off his mask. Immediately his most notable feature is the Inuzuka tattoos on his face finally I was able to get one of my own in that division. And I made a lot of sacrifices I spent a lot, 4 hours, of my time, carefully making holes in Akira's 8th gate, and closing them again, to give him a permanent physical boost. Though he will die in around 20 to 30 years. Thanks to the dark chakra I ran through him to lessen the symptoms. At least he won't die for nothing, like cannon fodder he will die for my benefit. I also remembered from that one villain in Naruto, that said that because he had the body revival technique he wouldn't be killed even if he opened the 8th gate. That was a complete life first even with only the first gate opened, he would suffer a backlash, since he wouldn't be able to control the raging chakra on his body in second. The eighth gate can't be opened and then live to tell the tale. It will literally expend all of the lifespan plus with the gate full opened it will destroy and burn your body from the inside. A death that is very painful and only people like Guy who know pain from his extreme training and opening the previous gates would be able to handle the pressure. Yami-sama there is a new development on the after war. Plans then he explains to me how after the war, the Hokage didn't take any territories over, and how he played passive on the cage summit okay. So now I know why there will be another ninja war soon. It was because Kanova didn't flex its muscles. After the war could this even be called peace? There will definitely be small skirmishes among the nations it seems like heroism was too soft against Sai. I can't help but sigh at this, a leader needs to have both compassion and cruelty to be a good leader by doing this. 
We didn't even take any territory over, and let's be honest. The war was started for more territory and resources. We should have gotten that at least the Hokage probably didn't want any more bloodshed. But by doing this, he undermined all of the sacrifices from the dead ninja. The reality of war is to exchange the life of soldiers for resources. That was true in my last world, and it still holds true on this one. So at least honor them by trying to get a good deal out of their lives. After that I dismiss the ninja I have already placed numerous seals on him in case of a betrayal, so I am sure he isn't dumb enough to do that. After all I gave him his power, and I can take it away by eroding my seal on his 8th gate and killing him. I have already checked if he is a double agent, and all that I don't want an Atachi in my clan after all. Then it seems like it's time to start the next phase of the plan. I notify my mother that I won't be back for some time. Since I have something to take care of like usual, she started asking if it was dangerous, or anything like that after reassuring her. I went towards the Inuzuka training field. Then I did some hand signs, and I slammed my hand on the ground. Poof as soon as the smoke surrounds me, I can feel myself sucked in by the space around me. Then for one tenth of a second, my vision goes dark then poof. I again see myself covered in smoke, I also see that I am high up on a tree. Immediately I have my senses on 100% and then I sense a big creature as big as a truck flying towards me. When it was only an arm's length away from me, I dodged by using Shunchun to travel a couple of meters to the left, just enough to be out of its range. Then as soon as it was at the position where I was, I activate my Sharingan and see that it was a giant bat. Then I go for a karate chop towards its neck. I use the technique on my right hand, and I slash towards the bat's neck as I am about to cut off its giant neck fwosh. It manages to maneuver himself mid-flight away from my slash. I just look at its appearance, and think that is right as a bat. It was probably able to sense my attack with its allocation. I just immediately analyze my surroundings. It is a dark shadowy environment. It is not a cave since there are trees in here, and there is a small amount of light coming through the barren trees. Everything around here seems so out of life. I look down, and it seems like a red swamp sniff sniff. Is that blood a bloody swamp? And even though I can't sense any chakra from the swamp, but using the power of the zero tails, can still sense countless negative emotions from at the bottom of the blood swamp. Then the bat lands on a tree upside down. It looks at me and it says, Human just let me eat you. I don't even answer it the bat is a flying enemy. Let's see if that new technique works I point my two fingers towards the bat. I generate dark chakra on my fingers comma, with a black dot appearing on my fingers with some kanji to it. Then I throw it at the bat and it gets absorbed in the bat's body. The bat just looks at me strangely, when he himself starts releasing dark chakra, which envelopes him with a powerful torrent of gravity. The bat has an ugly look on his face, and he says desperately w what is dash. But then the chakra that he himself is expelling starts taking the form of a box of black energy, covered in several spear-like protrusions which pierce the box, lacerating the bat inside from head to toe. Then when the bat is dead the coffin dispels into nothing and the body of the dead bat punctured with countless holes all around. It starts falling down, leaving a trail of blood behind splash as soon as it falls into the swamp. I just look at the body with my Sharingan to see what the thing in the blood water in the swamp is. Suddenly I see a giant figure move in there, and there seems to be thousands of other minuscule small figures around it. I try to see the true form of this creature hum, when I see the creature close to it, should be a leech interesting. Her size is also pretty big, it is around the size of a Sanin summons, maybe a little larger also with this hiding ability, it is quite good. Then after conforming all of this I look at the bloody swamp below me, and then I call out loudly. Hey you big leech I need you to answer me some questions. Suddenly the leech stops moving then, as if a river of blood is rising forth the earth the leech stands up, and its head reaches up to the tree where I am standing. It is only a a couple of meters I can see its mouth full of rows of teeth dyed red in blood. Then the creature speaks in a deep voice. Since you feed me a bat I will answer your question. What do you want to know boy? Whoa its breath smells really gross. But I just look at it definitely don't judge a book by its appearance. It has a rational personality then I asked him in a serious voice. Do you know what and where this place is the leech just nudes? I don't know what he is thinking, since he doesn't have a face or anything like that. Then he says in his deep voice, You are in the blood swamp. I just look at him and ask him again, In which land is this blood swamp? The leech then answers, Ah yeah, I forgot that you were summoned here. Well it is in the land of waterfalls I nod. And I have noticed that here in this place, there are multiple summons unlike Mount Mayaboku, where the frogs dominate, or the Rochi cave where snakes dominate. After analyzing all of this information I say to him, I see that the situation in this place isn't that simple can you tell me the situation of what is going on here? The giant leech has a moment of silence, and it then says, I see that the situation in this place isn't that simple can you tell me the situation of what is going on here? The giant leech has a moment of silence, and then it says, You are asking too many questions boy. I just look at him, and I get a certain idea with a smile and say, I just want to help you. Then with a little anger on its deep voice the giant leech says, I can sense your chakra kid. Although it is good for your age we have been living since the time of the sage of the six parts, you are too weak and inexperienced to help me. I have answered all of your questions now let me return to my slumber human. Then the giant leech turns around, and it is about to go back down to the blood swamp. These old creatures think that just because of their age, they have some kind of superiority against younger beings. Their pride won't allow other people to help them well then. I guess only showing my power can change his mind well. 
I could probably coax him into it, if I stay here for a week, but, that is just a waste of time, and I don't like wasting time, and what is the use of power if you don't use it, then my face immediately goes cold and emotionless, I start releasing dark chakra all around me forming a tornado of darkness with me in the middle of it, the leech senses this and turns around to look towards me then, with a nonchalant voice I say to him, anyone who uses their age to display some type of non-existent power, is truly pathetic if you are as old as you say, and this is all of the minuscule strength that you have, then you should be ashamed to tell other people your age, all this shows is that in the thousands of years of your life, you never really achieved anything significant. As soon as it hears this the leech doesn't say anything but it starts producing crazy amounts of negative emotions then poof, on my shoulder blade appears a third mechanical arm which I use to fuel my dark chakra reserve, with the help of the zero tails sealed inside it. I appear at the top of the leech, and I punch down splatter then all of the leech parts are dispersed. As I am falling down I just extend some chakra strings from my back and go to a tree and stick to it sideways. The punch definitely wasn't strong enough to blast him to smithereens like that, plus I can still sense his dark emotions. So that means that he is still alive, so this old guy truly had some tricks up his sleeve. Then I sense malicious intent behind me fwosh. I immediately dodge and appear behind my attacker. It was a miniature version of the leech. I just look at it with my shering and actively recording everything that just happened. I just kick the leech and... Its body pops like a balloon with blood flying everywhere then all of the body parts and blood of the giant leech flows together like a tornado and the leech is now fully formed back to his full size. He is kind of weak, but his regeneration ability is quite good then. As soon as the giant leech was fully formed, it was ready about to spit something at me. I immediately clasp my hands together. Then five small yellow orbs with skinny tails emerge from between my clasped hands and move above my head before forming a circle of five. Then I raise my clasped hands above my head and I slam them downward, sending the orbs into the ground. As a bright light is generated in the sky above the leech, five tall and thick pillars, which are connected to each other by chains, pin the giant to the ground. Boom, the leech is pinned to the ground, and then it starts to disassemble its body. I make another hand sign. I summon six thin, wide beams of light that slam into the leech's midsection, holding him in place. Then it stopped moving at all as if paralyzed. The leech becomes unable to move any part of their body, including the parts that were not struck by the beams. Dealing with a regenerative opponent is easy. You either obliterate them completely which I won't do yet. Since I don't want to kill this leech, the other method is sealing, which I am quite proficient at. I am sure that I am the best Sue. Master currently alive even better than Kishina or any Yuzumaki I already know all of the Yuzumaki seals, and have even started creating my own, usually to combine with Dark Chakra oh yeah. I look at the giant leech. I should try that new sealing technique, since the leech has such a strong regeneration even if anything goes wrong. It probably won't die then I point both of my hands towards the giant leech I create 8 black holes that emit dark chakra in the personal space surrounding the leech, with a ninth black hole manifesting in the center of the leech's body fuum woe. I can feel as if gravity is holding the leech in place. This is pretty good anyway. Then I get close to the leech, and say to it with a cold voice, ready to talk now. The leech doesn't say anything for a couple of seconds, and then in a defeated voice it says, this place the blood swamp is a place where numerous summons exist from birds, alligators and many more. But there are three powers that rule the others one of them is me the leech sage, then they're the bat summons with their leader the bat sage. They currently have the advantage because they have the numbers advantage, and the last major power in this swamp is the mosquito sage. Then he keeps explaining the dynamics amongst the smaller summon clans in the blood swamp. Alligators and flies and dragonflies are at all at war against each other, pretty much this place is a blood swamp, and the blood running through the swamp is real blood from the countless giant summons that die here. Then I ask him another question with a nonchalant voice. So now, tell me everything that you know about Leech Sinjutsu quote then, as he is about to answer me I interrupt him, also lying to me isn't a good idea. As soon as the leech heard me say that he stopped the lie that he was about to say even if his physiology is different from humans, I already have memorized his patterns of when he lies and does different things with my Sharingan. Then it continues saying in its deep voice, the leech sage mode works like any other Sinjutsu. I will just use some of my mucus on you, to help you sense the natural energy, and dash I don't even listen to him anymore he is still hiding things from me. I guess some old monster like him might underestimate my ability to notice him lying really old creatures who are above 100 years old, and are simply just strong I mean I am a patient man, and like to plan things slowly and carefully but, if they haven't already become the strongest, being in existence by that time or if they stop searching for a higher level of power for themselves, and get too comfortable in their position, is just simply trash, they will simply be overtaken by someone with a higher ambition, that is how the world works then, after the leech finished talking. I just looked at it and said, your age has really rusted your brain's leech. I just clasp my hands together, and a blue ball comes out of them, and it floats above my head. Then my jutsu ignites at a single point above my head, blue energy extends upward to four points, and forms an inverted pyramid, which solidifies into a barrier around me. This should keep any outside forces from interfering. Then I make another hand sign and the pillars start flashing. And I summon some black chakra from my mechanical arm. After that I make a ball of chakra in my hand, and use the duck chakra to corrupt it, and I also use some fuenjutsu on it. Sorry little leech. But it seems like you have to go I then throw the ball towards the leech, and it gets absorbed by it then after 2 minutes the dark chakra ball comes out of the leech, and now it has a dark red color, as then I make a small seal on my abdominal muscles and store it in there. The leech then says something, who am I? I just smile at it and touch it with my right hand, and then I pull up my shirt and draw a circle with fuenjutsu all around it, and a spiral in the middle of the seal, 
I make sure to not connect it with my life force, and such things and more correctly, the seal is not on my body, but on my skin. Then I touch the restrained leech, and then with my other hand I touch my seal. Who are you? Ash the leech asked confused before, it was sealed on my skin what I did was steal its memories, and I am pretty sure that torture against millennium old creatures like them is ineffective. So I took its memories and sealed its body. I didn't absorb his memories, since only dumb people absorb another person's memories. That is like asking for the memories to take you over, especially this leech who has thousands of years of memories. It will definitely be able to take over if it absorbs my memories. Then I slowly use a seal to review the memories in my brain like a movie with my Sharingan one hour later. Holy shit I know he was hiding something, but for it to be this big. I thought he was hiding something. But this is good he has some memories of meeting different summons. And all that but his most important memory for me, is that the leech sage which I learned from his memories is named Hiru. The sage mode of leeches, could also be used in a synthesis way the leech fuses with his summoner, and the leech draws in nature chakra while the user concentrates on. Fighting this is amazing I just have to force Hiru who now has no memories to just gather nature chakra. But I will also need to invent another seal like the seal of 100 strengths that I learned from Tsunade. But this time it will just make it to store nature chakra it shouldn't be too hard, especially with the leech doing the accumulation of nature chakra. But first I will just keep them on me, and then I will make this thing work after I return to my lab. Also I won't sign the summoning scroll of the leech summon, since the leech is sealed on the end. Its summoning scroll is inside his stomach anyway. I already got the information that I wanted I will also review his memories. 100% after I return to Kanoha, this guy really did exist since the time of the Sage of the Six Parts anyway. It's about time to get myself some new pets, and these all have the strength of around S rank. But I can beat them easily, especially since I know the way that they fight, and their special abilities from Hiru's memories. Well then better go and search for them Flosh. I start running towards the location of the Bat Sage. Third POV. When Yami arrived towards the nest of the bats, it was inside a giant hollow tree. There are nests all around the tree Yami analyzes the situation and looks for any opening, and then he counts how much bats there are currently flying all over the tree. There are 28 giant bats, all of them about the size of a truck then Yami just uses and, like a ghost with no smoke or anything after using the technique Yami appears above one of the bats, and immediately feeling the disturbance with their echolocation, all of the bats look towards him but he just neck chops the bat below him knocking out unconscious. And as he is falling down together with the bat Yami just uses Shunchan again, and appears above another bat, and even though the bat can sense him with his echolocation, his body can't keep up with the speed of Yami. And he is knocked out also this happens another 26 times, and all of the bats are knocked out. Then after defeating all of his enemies before him Yami seemed to relax, but as soon as that happens, a surprise attack comes trees, and attacks towards him a giant bat, bigger than any of the other ones he has already fought, and the bat bites Yam on the head I and, it rips out his head from his shoulders, with deep red blood, spewing all over like a fountain. But then the dead Yami turns into water, and all of his blood that was spewing, is also turned into water, when the giant bat sage sees that it was a Jinjutsu all along, and he tries to break out of it, but he feels a hit behind his neck, and his world goes dark. After all of that Yami also takes the memory of the sage bat, and examined it, he finds some echolocation sensing techniques and a sound, wave type of attack and CPOV. When I look through his memories I also see the bat sage techniques they were pretty good, but not as useful as the leech's techniques. Then after that I take the bat summon scroll from a hidden part of the hallowed tree, it was hidden simply under some hay. I also put seals on all of the bats in here, and return the memories to the bat sage, and the Fuinjutsu memory sphere flies back into the bat sage. I also wait for some more bats to come here. They will probably come soon after 30 minutes, and knocking out another 8 bats. I also knock them out, and put certain seals on all of the other bats. The first to wake up is the bat sage, and as soon as he sees me he is about to get up but I immediately activate the seal on his body, and the bat as big as one of the Sanin summons stops dead on his tracks, when the bat sage is paralyzed by my seal. And no matter how much he tries he can't move, so I just smile sweetly at him and say I have already put his memories back in place. I am afraid that you won't be able to move, he just looked at me and noticed who I was the one who he was trying to sneak attack but failed. Then with my smile still on my face I say to him, I have put some seals on all of the bats in here, that if they disobey they will just simply die so, I wanted to offer you all to become my summon animals. He just looks at me, and then with a neutral voice says, what happens if I refuse? I just raise my eyebrow in a questioning look, and say well obviously you will die. He just looks as if he has given up, and then he says, so not much of a choice is it? Then with my same still on my face I just say to him, well if you choose death, you won't have to serve me and teach me all of your techniques, and also better not try to hide anything. The last creature on this swamp that tried it, let's just say that it disappeared and the leech was quite submissive at first. Two, as soon as I say that I noticed that the bat noticed what I was trying to convey and said yes. I accept the deal the bats shall always be in service to you and your bloodline till the end of time. I just nodded him and smile a little I see he said my bloodline also so they will most likely try something in the future, but by then, I will either be so far out of their reach, that they won't even think of such possibilities. And just like that after two hours, I had the whole bat summon clan under my thumb, to summon any of them whenever I like, then I look at all of them bowing before me. They don't know that with just a thought I could obliterate the whole clan even if someone as new is born from them, and they might think that the newborn is free wrong. 
The newborn also has a seal automatically made into his brain just in case. Then after that I travel while flying on the back of one of the bats, as it was taking me to the Mosquito Sage, and with my little army of bats following me. When I arrive at her territory, I see thousands or maybe millions of small mosquitoes, apparently the Mosquito Sage is a single person controlling all of the mosquitoes in the Blood Swamp also. The mosquitoes in here are all the same size as normal mosquitoes. When I start going forward and thinking if I should just burn all of the mosquitoes, the horde of millions of them split in half to reveal someone that I have never seen in reality. But I have seen it from the memories of the summons under me. I also know of all of her powers. When I look at her, I see that she is a tall and large woman and has the appearance of a humanoid mosquito. Her body is very light, allowing her to fly, and her limbs have been enlarged and have clawed tips on them. Her biceps and shins are covered in long bristles and stripes, which are a kind to that of a mosquito. She has long hair and a human-like face. But other than that, her head resembles that of a mosquito with a second pair of compound eyes, two antennas, and a large stinger on her forehead. Wow, she really does look like a part human that is gross anyway. I start walking towards her, she just says to me. I give up and accept to be on your service. I just look at her and a smile comes into my face, and then with a happy voice. I say him is that so okay then I accept give me your summon scroll. I also admit that I used mosquitoes to spy on you when you arrived here. She just throws a small scroll towards me, and I immediately see that from its few injutsu. It was the real deal I just bite my thumb a little, and write my name on it, and the same as with the bats. I put the summon scroll in a storage seal on my wrist while I'm still on top of one of the bats. I just look at them and smile at them all. While saying so the blood swamp is now under me also bats get every other summon creatures here I will be signing some more summon contracts. Then I jump off the bat that I was flying on, and with perfect equilibrium, I stand on a tree sideways, and then I point towards the mosquito lady and say to her, you will be teaching and explaining to me sage mode time skip one years later slash mch14, kakuzu pov, when I enter the bounty building on the land of fire. I have a ninja on my shoulder some Jounin from Kumogaka, even though the second ninja war was over, there wasn't a definite winner. And in all of the lands, there are skirmishes happening between the elemental nations, which is good for me. Since I can catch ninjas like this guy, and earn some money around 3 million here and 4 there it all adds up, so that is pretty good. Then when I am inside the bathroom I open the door when I use the sink and go into an underground room. There I see an empty room like usual and go towards one of the corners, and when I push a part of the wall, it opens up like a window with a guy coming out. When he sees me he smiles, and his eyes brighten a little when I notice this I immediately say, Braley you haven't gotten any bright ideas about the bounty on my head have you? Immediately as soon as I say that Braley puts his hands up and says, No 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 I was just excited to see you. I just look at him with an intense stare, as soon as he says anything suspicious I will kill him living as a rogue ninja, and letting anyone have bright ideas isn't a good thing. So I with a threatening voice I say to him, And why would you be exited? He takes the body and gives me the money. Then he says well someone came asking for an assassination on a certain individual from Kenora. I just look at him I have known Bradley for a a long time like three years. He has this weird habit of his, that seems like he is about to almost get to the main point. But he doesn't, so I just ask him, get to the point, or I am going to strangle you by your own intestines. He just looks at me panicked and says okay. Okay? It's just some kid from Kanoha his name is Yami Inuzuka. As soon as I hear this name I grab Bradley by his collar and say to his face, do you want me to die or something Yami and Yazuka might seem like a kid, but from what I heard he went against the third rakeage, there is no way I will fight someone like that. Bradley while he is still panicked he says no no it isn't like that. The guy who put the assassination order said that he is someone close to him, and in two days Yami will go to the land of fire capital. He even showed the route he will take, so we can put traps along the way, also he said that he will poison Yami that day, so the kid will definitely be weakened, plus he said that he will pay 500 million if the assassination is successful. Immediately my eyes widened at the extravagant amount of money the kid must have pissed off some powerful people then Bradley continued saying, he also has hired someone else some famous assassins from the land of the sky, they hold some grudge with Yami and Yuzuka too, also he will give a down payment of 100 million, I thought this through for a couple of minutes, and made my decision yes, I will accept at worst, I know I will be able to escape after all, I escape the first hokage there is no way anyone else on the elemental nations will even be able to catch me, if the god of shinobi couldn't after two days, we put traps all along the way, and when I look at my partners in this assassination, I can't help but feel the chances of success rising. They both have a pretty good amount of chakra. They look like a man in his 40s with long blonde hair and a muscular build. While the other is an old man with a mustache and short silver hair, I haven't heard of them except from Bradley but even though Bradley is a greedy shit, he can still be trusted to have important information after the assassination. I was planning to kill them and take their part of the reward, but it's better to keep things to myself and not do that those guys have a dangerous vibe then. After a couple of hours of us hiding a kid who is pretty tall for his age with spiky black hair and black eyes Yami and Yazuka is here. Also I see that he seems to be breathing hard for a ninja like him to do that it means he is already poisoned from our contractor. Then Yami stops leaning against a tree, and he is sweating like crazy. Cough he coughs into his hand, and Yami and Yazuka sees that it is blood his eyes wide and and immediately as soon as I see that now, I decided to attack him immediately. Still Kakuza's POV. Then immediately I attacked Yami and Yazuka when he turned around. He had a strange smile on his face that sent shivers down my spine my hearts felt cold. I could immediately sense that something is wrong suddenly I felt darkness claim me as I fell down on the ground w what am I going to die like this am I Kakuza the ninja, 
who was able to escape the god of shinobi die here. Like a bug squashed by a little kid Nuo that was my last thought as I felt my consciousness also slip into darkness general POV. Next time Kakuza wakes up he is under a tree that he was sleeping while leaning on it when he wakes up he says damn. What was I doing then he sees the dead body that he had next to him. Oh yeah. I should go and deliver this to Bradley Station. I know that guy will give me the best deals. After Kakuzu dusted himself off he couldn't help but think it's nice to rest sometimes. When he arrived at the Bounty Hunter Station, he went to the bathrooms and opened a secret door on it. And then he went to the secure room. And when he entered Kakuzu saw Bradley like usual sitting there on with only a hole in the wall big enough to fit the average human body Kakuzu. Then goes towards him and says Bradley. Here it is a new body Bradley looks at it and says him a jown and he has a 3 million bounty. Then he takes a sack of money and hands it to Kakuza while saying, here it is your money. Kakuza counts all of the money there, and after doing so he just walked away. If he had looked at the other side where Bradley was staying, he would have seen another Bradley tied up and unconscious, with a hollow look on his eyes. Then the Bradley who talked to Kakuza just said, you can come out now. The so-called assassins who were from the land of sky came out of the shadows. Then they all poof were back to their original appearances. They were all shadow clones of Yami and Yazuka one of them, then pulls out a sealed memory, and puts it into the real Bradley's head, that was in case someone ever investigated this thing, and Bradley now has the memories of, really he himself doing the transaction with Kakuzu then they untied him, then they all poof dispel themselves, Yami POV, I come back to Kanoha through the Soa system, and then I stealthily make my way towards the Inyazuka clan compound, I saw my clone just chilling and drinking green tea, when my clone sensed me he went to the bathroom, and I went there too. Then we changed places when he dispelled himself. I have to be careful inside Kanova a lot of spies watching me the Nara seem to have taken an interest in me. They are dangerously smart better teach them that curiosity killed the cat. It would be a shame for the same to happen to them. Then I go to the garden and sit down on my chair and drink the tea that my clone was drinking. After taking a sip of its salty tea. Tastes horrible, but I kind of like it I can't help but remember how easy it was for me to defeat Kakuzu. Just one bat sage Jinjutsu scream and it was over and I even planned so much and even had two of my clones act as assassins to backstab him. I guess sometimes I forget how strong I have gotten. I have always compared my strength with monsters like Kigaya or Ten Tails Madara I will always keep doing that. But then I pull out a small vial with black slithering goo inside of it earth grudge fear a dream to immortality at last time. Skip one years later slash mch15. I am currently inside my laboratory. I can't help but laugh like a maniac ha 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 ha. Yes, finally. I just look at my hand then fosh I used and cut off my hand when it falls in the ground. There is blood all around it. Then with a mental command from me from my stump. Or more specifically from inside my bones black tendrils come out, and also from my cut off hand, black tendrils come out, and then they connect together, and my hand comes back into my arm and, I heal it perfectly like there, is no problem I can use this to extend my lifespan indefinitely and repair and revitalize my organs, even when they get thousands of years old I have combined it with the earth grudge fear, with the dead bone pulse, to create a metally strong bones, that can have the properties to be as strong as metal, and as flowing as water whenever I want them, and I still have my fleshy body with blood and all. That plus now I can remotely control every single part of my body manually. If I want I will never need to train, and my body will always and forever remain. Yes, I finally reached immortality I reached my dream to immortality then, an uncontrollable maniacal smile appeared on my face, while thinking, but I want Mariyu. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.